Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 1. I despised the world. Right after I was born, I was abandoned in a bag meant for trash. I had absolutely no reason to cherish the world, for I had been treated like a stray beast my entire life. I hated the world for making me one of them. I was disgusted by the fact that I was classified as a human, grouped with those pretenders who wore human masks, but were blinded by their greed and ambition. That is the reason why I did not trust humans. Whatever I had to do, I did it alone. This mindset remained the same even after the world transformed in its entirety. On January 1, 2020, the world metamorphosed into a game-like state. Dungeons and monsters began to appear, and so did players with the power to stop them. An unprecedented change in human history had begun. In my perspective, however, the world did not change very much. For the strong still took advantage of the weak the fact that the ones with everything took from those with nothing did not change. Players used the threat of dungeons and monsters, which terrified the world, merely as an opportunity to fulfill their ambitions. In the world, there is nobody you can trust. Only one. Only one person seemed different from the rest. I will kill the final boss of this game and put an end to it all. Lee Sejun. One of the first seven to become a player, and one of the few who had been chosen by the Sacred Light he was also a man that has held the title of the highest level player ever since he partook in the Sacred Light ritual. Only he was different. Therefore, he will be the one to save the world. While all the other players treated the new game-like world as their stage for satisfying their ambitions and greed only Lee Sejun was selfless, and dedicated himself to saving the world. He hunted monsters even if it did not bring him any benefits, he annihilated the dangerous dungeons that everyone else avoided, and he also judged the players and guilds who defied the law. In other words, to save the world, he fought against the world itself. He was the first. It was the first time in my life that I met such a person, someone who I felt I could trust and follow wholeheartedly in this shitty-ass world. That was why. Hunting dog Kim Woo Jin, I need your strength. When Lee Se-Joon, he, reached out for my hand, I didn't hesitate for even a second before accepting it. I would follow him to end this damn game, I was willing to even risk my life in order to change this world. Life as a companion to a savior who will one day save the world was incomparably onerous compared to a carefree lifestyle. Players with a vested interest didn't want this game to end, so the closer the Messiah Guild came to beating the game, the voices of the world swarmed towards them and only became louder and louder. However, I never thought of giving up, not even once. We will save the world I believe that risking my life for the sake of my fellow men, who were united by that shining noble cause, was never a waste. I believe that as long as I were with them, I could change this ugly world. Master, the only thing that is left now is the final battle. The final battle does not exist. What? I never thought of ending the game. What do you? I was certain I was hearing incorrectly. There must be wolves for the sheep to be obedient. P.U.K. Before Ba Meng, even dragon leather was pierced like a sheet of paper the moment Ba Meng pierced his chest, Kim Wu Jin heard the system notifications. HTTP, type Moen Wikiakum Wiki Ba Meng. You are under the effect of Ba Meng's curse. All resistances are reduced by 90%. All defense stats are reduced by 90%. All healing effects are reduced by 90%. You've done a good job Kim Woo Jin, without you, we would not have been able to make it this far. What I heard afterwards was Lee Se Joon's voice. So, Lee Se Joon's voice, which did not overlap with the system's notifications, bluntly entered Kim Woo Jin's eardrums. Wah, what do you mean? However, Kim Woo Jin could not understand a single word coming from Lee Se Joon's mouth. Well what do you mean that you never had the thought of ending this game from the beginning? What do I mean? However, Kim Woo Jin's question wasn't answered by Lee Se Joon but by a different figure. Crimson leather, as if it was cut from blazing flames, made up the robe of a bewitching beauty who stood behind Lee Se Joon's, and looked down upon Kim Woo Jin, who was kneeling in front of her she then spoke. If the game ends and the game system disappears, the powers and items we obtained would disappear, 
along with the all the dungeons and monsters the reason why people obey our every word will disappear as well. Park Shinhai The heiress to the Hansung Group, the largest Chabel group in Korea, who was Lee Sejun's biggest financial investor in the early days of establishing the Messiah Guild. If we end the game, then how can we rule the world? Kim Woo Jin looked gravely toward Lee Sejun after hearing her words. Lee Sejun, however, did not say a word. It was an unambiguous response. At such a response, Kim Woo Jin gritted his teeth. I need to take the sword out first, I can't hope to do anything while Ba Mom is still stabbing me. His primary instinct was to live, he desperately wished to live and listen to Lee Se Jun's explanation. I want to hear a more detailed explanation. He didn't want to hear it from some other person, but directly through Lee Se Jun's mouth alone. Venom of the Thousand Snake is spreading throughout your body. At that moment, a new system notification rang in Kim Woo Jin's ear. PHT. Simultaneously, Kim Woo Jin threw up blood from his mouth. Kai. The blood that Kim Woo Jin threw up melted the floor. Venom of the Thousand Snake. As expected, quite impressive. The person who spoke to the miserable Kim Woo Jin again was still none other than Park Shin Hai. To think that the effect of the poison manifested only after being stabbed by Ba Mung others were easily taken care of by the might of the venom of the thousand snake alone. Others? In that instant, various faces appeared through Kim Woo Jin's mind. Don't tell me. Companions who would give up everything, even their lives, for humanity, and people who would gladly sacrifice their lives for these companions. The moment he recalled the faces of his dear friends, the expression of his eyes changed. His eyes began to emit an aura of strong killing intent and resentment. This was the proof of acceptance. It was proof that Kim Woo Jin finally understood the truth of this situation, and accepted it. Lee Se Jun, so from the beginning, you never thought of becoming the hero or saving the world. In addition, Lee Se Jun's silence was also an irrefutable evidence then Park Shin Hai spoke. Yeah, you are right that was our plan from the start if not for that reason, do you really think our Hansung group would risk everything in support of the Messiah Guild? In place of the silent Lee Se Jun, the explanation that came from Park Shin Hai proved everything was true. Lee Se Jun, who stood in front of him, was not a hero. From the beginning, our plan was to create an empire that is able to dominate and rule the world in order to achieve this, we needed to get rid of the competitors, and play the hero to distinguish ourselves from those competitors. A villain in a hero's mask. He was an insincere guy who wouldn't even speak the truth using his own mouth. Finally, all the preparations are complete. Park Shin Hai said everything, instead of Lee Se Jun. Dragon Hunter, Grouse, Deadly Poison King, and even the King of the Undead actually, we were going to trade with the King of the Undead at first, since I would have had to risk my life if I tried to kill him but to think that a hunting dog would kill such a monster that was quite unexpected. Lee Se Jun, I dedicated my life to him, and to think I could not even hear the reason behind his betrayal from him directly, but only through Park Shin Hai. Well, I was supposed to finish you off after I joined hands with the King of the Undead isn't it ironic? I mean your nickname is Hunting Dog. It was extremely difficult to suppress this chaotic feeling, which was beyond description. So, how do you feel? There was no fucking way I would feel any kind of happiness or joy. He can't even fucking spurt out a single excuse. From Lee Sejun's actions alone, from beginning to end, he felt abject betrayal. The fact that he didn't even say a word, with his own damn mouth, in a situation like this, made him look like nothing but a goddamn coward. Facing this reality, he was overwhelmed with rage. You even killed those who trusted you with their fucking lives. Countless men had sacrificed their lives in order for Lee Sejun to be here right now. Disregarding everything they hold dear, their boundless determination and unshakable resolve to save the world was the only thing that pushed them forward. But you got rid of them because they're now in the way. And you won't even say a word of explanation using your own damn mouth. Pathed. This was something one could not analyze or understand rationally. Lee Se Jun, if you have anything to say, say it with your own mouth. The last string of rationality he had left made asking this question possible. Why even bother with you when you are just going to die anyway? Shut up, I am speaking with Lee Se Jun. 
However, Lee Sejun did not respond, despite the repeated imploring from Kim Woo Jin. Instead, Lee Sejun turned his back on him. In that moment, everything was clear to him. After all, there is no one in this world that one can truly trust. He had dedicated his life to the hero who he thought was destined to save the world however, but that was nothing but a lie in the end, he was betrayed by the hero. Furthermore, like he had always believed, there was no person in the world that one could believe or trust such a figure did not exist. He was our only hope. Kim Woo Jin's situation was clear. So it was also very clear what Kim Woo Ji had to do. I killed everyone and everything that hindered the dream of ending the game so, if you are going to kill me, you better do it right cause if I survive, I will do everything I can to stop you bastards. Making a traitor pay for his betrayal. That is the end of the story of Kim Woo Jin. On March 7, 2023, it was the story of his future one which he remembered after waking up from his slumber. Chapter, 2. January 1, 2020. The game will commence shortly. That single phrase changed the world into a game. Like a game, dungeons started to appear, and monsters began to come out from them. The people were able to experience these changes right away with their bodies. What's that? Hey, what is that black hole over there? Hmm. Something is coming out. Dungeon gates spawned everywhere around the world and the monsters that resided on the other side of these gates started to break out. Mon, monster. RR, run. Monsters turned the whole world into a battleground in a flash. Of course, the monsters that initially appeared weren't of any threat to the human race as a whole the monsters were not powerful enough to handle the weapons developed by mankind. At the very least, there were no problems dealing with low-level monsters in the beginning. We have taken care of the ogre that appeared in Seoul. Another ogre has appeared again in Incheon. An ogre has appeared in Busan as well. Nobody knew that it was the beginning of a nightmare. Tegu, it appeared in Tegu as well. Are you talking about an ogre? Uh, uh, apparently it's a dragon. The true horror was that there was no end to this nightmare that had begun. Even though they avoided the complete destruction of the city by hunting all the monsters, new monsters began to appear over and over again from the gate in unpredictable intervals. Unless the dungeon that existed beyond the gate was destroyed, their only option was to continually repeat this painful and disastrous war. Thankfully, an answer to such a problem soon manifested. Players appeared. From this point forward, this dungeon is obliterated. Players who went past the gate to destroy the dungeon brought them hope. The world, which had changed to become like a game, had reorganized around the players. And in 2023, the people that survived finally adapted to the changed world. Monster warning issued in food district Miyajori, Payu province. Warning level 1. People now accepted monsters as a routine part of their lives once the warning had been issued, they escaped without becoming flustered due to the appearance of the monsters. People who hunted monsters were deployed. At this point, it was now rare for the military to move. The number of times monsters appeared has decreased lately, while the number of players keeps increasing. So what if the number of players increase? They're only walking around in the first or second floor of the dungeons, scared of losing their petty lives. Nevertheless, they get paid in millions the same work, catching monsters like us but they get paid hundreds of millions of dollars, and are treated as celebrities by the public, while people like us are treated like dirty hunting dogs what a shitty world. The mercenaries who were deployed were employed by the corporations who had contracts with the government. It was the most cost-efficient arrangement rather than allocating and spending more money on the military to kill the monsters, outsourcing was much more efficient in terms of management and cost. Mercenaries were easier to dispense of after as well. When a soldier sacrifices himself for his country, the country has to come forward, and give his family and loved ones a pension as well as compensation, but the mercenaries didn't have such rights or qualifications. Of course, a sensible person would never work as a mercenary, for they could die at any moment. In other words, every mercenary had at least one complicated circumstance or reason that prevented them from living a normal life. If I didn't have a criminal record, I would probably have worked part-time at a convenience store. This was the case for those who were now on the military trucks to deal with monsters in Payu. 
I am pretty sure that you would not get the job with a face like yours. What? What's wrong with my face? Do I really have to tell you? Fucking asshole. What about your face? Better than yours. Either one had a criminal record or was desperate for money to the point of selling their own life or at least head over heels in debt. For those who could not lead an ordinary life, there were few options other than to risk their lives against monsters as mercenaries. Anyway, Kim Woo Jin, this bastard, sleeps so well even in this kind of environment, while I'm here dying of motion sickness. Kim Woo Jin, a young man who had fallen asleep with his arms folded in one of the trucks, was also a hunting dog. When you look at him like this, he looks like a normal college student, but the moment he opens his eyes there is no crazier dog than him. On the outside, Kim Woo Jin looked like a normal youth. Just like a normal person, he lacked presence, for he was a young man without any distinct features. This is still better. You are saying this is better. However, Kim Woo Jin's background was totally different from his appearance. Before the monsters showed up, he used to hunt guys that looked like gangsters. Gangsters? Yeah, he used to mug gangsters, even hunting them for a bounty. Kim Woo Jin, he was a criminal hunter. So, he was an apostle of justice. It's not like that. Of course, hunting criminals was never for justice. He didn't catch gangsters or criminals for justice he did it because they were supposed to be okay to even kill. What? Isn't it? Have you seen a gangster reporting to the police that he had been robbed? No matter what was done against criminals, there aren't much consequences afterward. Over ten organizations were destroyed by his hands alone. That's the reason Kim Woo Jin became a criminal hunter, and this was the reason why he became a monster hunter. Anyway, he is a fucking psycho the fact that he initially worked as a mercenary already proves my point, but he is a psycho that is on an another level, compared to assholes like us. Psycho. The sleeping Kim Woo Jin's lips opened. Hop. As Kim Woo Jin was right in front of them, they were surprised, and choked on their own breath. Soon, Kim Woo Jin opened his eyes and looked around. Because of his action, the young man who was telling the story of Kim Woo Jin yelped, surprised. Wu, Woo Jin I was just. Kim Woo Jin frowned at his figure. He had an appearance that could be found anywhere however, the moment he opened his eyes, the look in his eyes did not appear to be human. It was more similar to a ferocious beast that had noticed a scent of lingering delicious blood. I, I was. Kim Woo Jin, who was observing the company with a dangerous frown, said in surprise, Yang Jae Ho. Uh, yes. Are you Yang Jae Ho? Uh, yes. The young man, Yang Jae Ho, replied instinctively. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin approached Yang Jae Ho and closely observed him. It was a most bizarre sight. Ki Ike. Ah. Aha. Holy crap. Suddenly, all the people sitting on the truck were swept away. Monsters. Monsters have appeared on the road. Everyone, get your weapons and come out. Then, at the sound of the radio, everyone jumped out of the truck, rushing out with their weapons. Each of them began to pray as they moved. God, for heaven's sake. I pray that a member of the Messiah Guild comes here. Please have someone from the Messiah Guild come near here. At the sound of the prayer, Kim Woo Jin had a blank expression on his face. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin was honestly very confused. Didn't I die already? He thought. Kim Woo Jin touched his chest with a vacant expression there, he found the location of the wound that was once pierced by that sword. However, the wound wasn't there. Is this a dream? It was as if everything was a dream. Or perhaps, did I have a dream? No, that can't be. However, the resentment and hatred that filled the heart of Kim Woo Jin made it clear to him. That wasn't a dream. It definitely was not a dream. Orc. An Orsish squad appeared. When the sound of a radio was heard, Kim Woo Jin did not ponder on his doubts anymore. I will just have to confirm it, he decided. Humans are weak. A naked man cannot even beat a large dog. However, humans with tools are different. With just a bag of guns, it is easy to annihilate a group of simple monsters. 
In fact, among the monsters who stood against humanity, there weren't any monsters that threatened the human species as a whole there wasn't even a need to use nuclear weapons. The main issue was collateral damage. If even one of the countless cars running in the ten lanes in the downtown area of Seoul crashes into the sidewalk, it will cause immense chaos, massive carnage, and widespread panic. Then what would happen if a monster that can be only taken down by a hail of gunfire appears in such a crowded area? Of course, there would be a tremendous number of casualties however, the property damage dealt to the area would be beyond description. Unquestionably, the most important priority when taking care of the monsters was to reduce the property damage. That was the reason. Fuck, why does it have to be an Orsish squad? What a pain to kill one of these orc bastards, we have to use at least one of our magazines. Orcs are not the kind of monster that can be killed with a rifle in the first place we need at least an RPG to kill bastards like them. The reason why the mercenaries were only provided with automatic rifles was. There's not much ammunition we might have to fight them with an axe. Furthermore, the amount of ammunitions they were provided with was nowhere near enough. Naturally, that was the case if people hired to dispose of monsters by the outsourcing companies who weren't even part of the military were to be given weapons like machine guns, tanks, and grenades, and used those weapons with a bad intention, the situation could deteriorate to something much worse. Liabilities was also the reason why they weren't provided with a lot of ammunition. So, only pull the trigger when you're certain don't waste any ammunition. Okay. Roger. Good, now let's take a deep breath and prepare for battle. Once again, the mercenaries began to breathe deeply. Tang. However, the sound of gunfire was heard just as everyone began to take a deep breath. Huck. Who the fuck? The sudden bangs of gunshots sent everyone in a frenzy then, someone shouted, Kim Woo Jin. That crazy bastard Kim Woo Jin charged into the squad of orcs alone. Kim Woo Jin. That name was all they needed to understand what happened. That bastard, of course he would be the one to fuck up and get us into trouble. It was a situation that could not be understood through common sense what Kim Woo Jin was doing was completely unreasonable and incomprehensible. Crazy fucker, if you want to die so badly die by yourself. Wah, what, is he doing? I, don't know. Instead of firing from a long distance, he was pulling the trigger again and again as he drew closer to the orcs that were running toward him. He was single-handedly putting a bullet in each orc's head. That, that's possible. One shot one kill. But this isn't even a game. However, Kim Woo Jin's shots were undoubtedly far beyond the normal level of accuracy. Everyone was staring, as if Kim Woo Jin was using some kind of sorcery. It was as if Kim Woo Jin was using a weird magic to put all the orcs he confronted to sleep. After the twelfth shot like that, there wasn't a single orc left standing. Am I dreaming right now? The mercenaries stood speechless in front of such a scene. And Kim Woo Jin, who had finished his hunt, also stood still. What I saw wasn't a dream. However, he wasn't mindlessly standing Kim Woo Jin was calmly analyzing his situation. If everything was a dream, I wouldn't be able to do something like this, he realized. At the very least, he understood that he wasn't dreaming and that what he experienced was also not a dream for, if what he experienced was inside of a dream, he would not have such accuracy. Furthermore, the feeling of murder, the smell of the monster's ripped flesh and blood, and their miserable screams that Kim Woo Jin had heard a little while ago could not be considered a dream. In other words, everything Kim Woo Jin had experienced was likely to be real. To be perfectly certain, however, he definitely needed more evidence. For example, I need to experience the future reproduced in front of me, that level of evidence, he decided anyway, that person Yang Jae-ho I definitely met him while I was working for the Delta Company I was associated with the Delta Company back in early February 2020 until March 7, 2023, the day I woke as a player during the orc hunt. Kim Woo Jin heard the notifications of the system at that very moment. You will be awakened as a player, the undying fighter reaches out to you, the emissary of the underworld reaches out to you, the silent hunter reaches out to you. To Kim Woo Jin, the sound of the system was the most definitive evidence that he had been betrayed, murdered, and returned to the past. Chapter, 3 Most people would like to return to the past. However, nobody ever prepares for that. 
If they were told to make a plan for returning to the past, they would try to remember the winning numbers for the lottery nevertheless, normally, nobody would bother remembering lottery numbers that people already won just in case they returned to the past. Kim Woo Jin was the same. Kim Woo Jin did not have a contingency plan ready for returning to the past. I returned to the past. After the monster hunt, such thoughts constantly occupied Kim Woo Jin's mind. Without achieving anything. He did everything possible to try to end the world, which had turned into a game however, he returned to the past without accomplishing that single dream. Shit. Therefore, in his heart, Kim Woo Jin did not feel the joy of being given a new chance instead, he felt frustration at his failure rather than being excited, he felt bitter and rotten inside. Lee Se Joon. First of all, there was no way to describe the feeling of being betrayed by the first person he trusted, someone he viewed as a hero. He is the worst possible enemy. And after facing the fact that the world's hero became his enemy, Kim Woo Jin inevitably became silent that was what Lee Se Joon represented he was always the world's strongest. When I awakened in 2023, Lee Se Joon's level was over 150, and he should be clearing dungeons with five floors by now. On January 1, 2020, Lee Se Joon was one of the first seven to become a player, and one of the five players who were chosen by the Sacred Light he was also a man who always held title of the highest level player. Messiah Guild is probably firmly established as well. Lee Se Joon was not alone the Messiah Guild was backed by numerous powerful and influential individuals in particular, the Hansung Group, which was number one in Korea the Messiah Guild was already one of the top five guilds in Korea. When excluding the Messiah Guild, two of the top five guilds were supported by the US government one of them was funded by the European Union and the last one was backed by the Chinese government so, the fact that the Messiah Guild, which was only backed by a powerful conglomerate, made it into the top five world rankings, was extremely exceptional. But all those things were inconsequential compared to the title that Lee Se Joon was known for. The Messiah the fact that Lee Se Joon was not just a figurehead could be seen by turning on a smartphone and looking at a news portal no matter which major news site you visited, articles about Lee Se Joon and the Messiah Guild were always in the spotlight also, there was at least one story about Lee Se Joon and his Messiah Guild running on the news every day. It wasn't just simple cheering and support. If a story or article did not come out, his fanatic followers claimed such an act was a conspiracy against the hero by the rich and powerful. It was obvious at a glance when looking at the comments concerning the news about the Messiah Guild. The social networks had the same problems as well, except it was even crazier. That was why, even when the majority were unhappy with Lee Se Joon and the Messiah Guild, they could not be openly hostile. If you bear your fangs at him, it was the same as making the world your enemy now, Kim Woo Jin had to fight against such an idol. If I were to hunt him alone, it will take a lot of work in the future. He had to do it alone though Kim Woo Jin did not even consider working with others after such a tragic betrayal, how could he trust someone with his back when he was facing a hero known as the Messiah? It was unrealistically comical he wasn't sure of anything else, but Kim Woo Jin was certain of this, in this life, he would not join hands with others. He was planning to end this game by himself. That was why the choices he had been given were of the utmost importance to Kim Woo Jin right now. Which halo should I choose? Halo to put it simply, they were the same as jobs or classes one would select in a game. When a player awoke, one had to pledge to or follow a transcendent being with various attributes and powers to obtain a halo, which dictated the direction of the player's growth. The fact of the matter was, not everyone received several options to choose from actually, most of the players didn't get to choose their halo at all. Only one out of a thousand players would receive the right to choose from two halos, and those people who were granted three halos to choose from were a thousand times more rare than those with two choices. In other words, only about one person in a million players would be able to select from three halos. Before I returned to the past, I was an undying fighter. The halo that Kim Woo Jin chose before returning to the past was the undying fighter. Kim Woo Jin's halo, which literally meant immortal warrior, was a threat even to Lee Se Joon, who stood at the very top. Without the support of the Messiah Guild, it would be nigh impossible to become that powerful again. 
It was all possible due to the support of the Messiah Guild no, it was only possible because of the Messiah Guild excluding their support, the Messiah Guild was the only group that attempted unfathomably difficult challenges without any hesitation, while everybody else was busy trying to keep their lives intact. This isn't enough to kill him. This was why he was not going to select the Undying Fighter, as his halo this time. It already failed in his past life and going with the same method again was not going to work on him. Now he was left with two choices, Silent Hunter and Emissary of the Underworld. Should I pick the Silent Hunter? Silent Hunter was a ranged damage dealer and an assassin without classes with outstanding mobility, powerful ranged attacks, and mysterious secret techniques, it was hopeless to explore a difficult dungeon exploring a dungeon without them was the same as a person with a bad eyesight trying to walk without their glasses. Although Silent Hunter can be a game maker, it can't be a game changer. Unfortunately, that was the limit of this class the proof was Kim Woo Jin's record itself. Among those who had a halo of the Silent Hunter, no one was stronger than me. Among the players who had a halo of the Silent Hunter, there wasn't a single case where they were able to live after being turned into Kim Woo Jin's prey. Furthermore, stuff like assassination is not going to work on Lee Se Jun. First of all, due to the fact that Lee Se Jun had the most enemies in the world, he had to face countless assassination attempts, and probably the most out of everyone on earth. Nevertheless, no assassination attempt had ever succeeded. I can't choose the Silent Hunter either then, the only option I have left is the Emissary of the Underworld on the other hand, the Emissary of the Underworld is. The Emissary of the Underworld it was the one of the varieties of black wizards that had abilities for many different roles, such as a damage dealer, a tanker, and a debuffer it was one of the halos of the Sacred Lights moreover, he had more knowledge and information about halos than anyone else in the present. The King of the Underworld also held the halo of Emissary of the Underworld. The last enemy of the Messiah Guild, a player who made even Lee Sejun uneasy one who had signed the non-aggression treaties, the King of the Undead, King Johann George he was an individual who had the Emissary of the Underworld as his halo. That was why there wasn't much information regarding this halo. If Lee Sejun was a hero, then that guy was a monstrosity. Kim Woo Jin knew how scary the player known as the King of the Undead, King Johann George could be, since the one who killed him was none other than Kim Woo Jin himself. In order to kill him, Kim Woo Jin investigated and researched him more than anyone else, he was an expert on the details concerning the emissary of the underworld. All things considered, there wasn't a halo more suitable for him than the emissary of the underworld. In a way, he didn't even have to think about which halo to choose. The problem, however, was the notoriety this halo held. If the Emissary of the Underworld did not hold such strong notoriety among its users, Kim Woo Jin would not have such a hard time deciding in other words, the enormous notoriety given to a player, for the class with the highest potential and strength, was too much to bear from the start, this halo gave the user the rare powers held by the Emissary of the Underworld, which differed from all the other halos. When the other halos granted their powers to a player, they conducted a test based on systematic examination and criteria however, the Emissary of the Underworld conducted the test based on a battle evaluation this meant that in order to reach the apex of what this halo had to offer, one had to first devour the likes of the King of the Undead and that meant he had to defeat the monster-like players such as the King of the Undead, Johann George to unlock potential of his halo. As a result, most of the players who chose the Emissary of the Underworld as their halos grew very slowly that was mainly due to the presence of King Johann George. This was why when Lee Sejun and the other players with the Sacred Light made their names, only two names from the Underworld were known. The King of Deadly Poison and the King of the Undead. These two players were monsters. Recalling those two, Kim Woo Jin clicked his tongue briefly those two were monsters such an expression was enough to describe them facing the facts, Kim Woo Jin no longer worried. I just have to devour those monsters and become a monster myself. Kim Woo Jin chose a new path. Next, I have to choose a guild. He now had to address a new concern. At this point, the best guild for me to use and leech from is the one and only number two guild in Korea, the Phoenix Guild. It was a very brief consideration. Chapter, 4 When it was discovered that only players could destroy the dungeon, each government began amassing players at first, the governmental and military forces were deployed however, it didn't take long before they realized that it was not the government, but rather the players who held the knife. 
Just like that, guilds consisting of players were born. In other words, it was a way for the players to protect their profits to them, guilds were like a mint that printed money there was only one exception to such a rational practice and guidelines. The Messiah Guild they did not seek after profits but instead pursued noble values the existence of the Messiah Guild made the other guilds look like a heap of rubbish, a rabble of luckily awoken players who were blinded by their own interests among those guilds the Phoenix Guild had the worst reputation however, their standing was second only to the Messiah Guild in Korea. The atmosphere here is always the same. First of all, the office of the Phoenix Guilds had a very unusual atmosphere in front of the 25-story building in Samseongdong, an office of the Phoenix Guild, five people stood with their signs and shouted. Phoenix Guild, get a hold of yourself. Wake up, wake up. Phoenix Guild, compensate for the monster rampage. Looking at the situation, the monsters escaped from the dungeon after it was destroyed by the Phoenix Guild and caused some serious damage right now was when tensions the guilds and the public were at its height. Year 2023 it was a time when the number of monster dungeon victim cases were at an extreme in Seoul, excluding the area surrounding to the Han River and the Gangnam district, where politicians, wealthy people, big business executives, and players resided, there was virtually no safe place for people to reside in. After two years, there will be no such protections. These protests would be hard to see in two years. Since it'll be a time when you would be lucky to even survive. Two years later, people would have to thank the guilds for letting them off with their limbs attached if they so much as mention compensations. It's not a situation that can be solved by a mere Phoenix Guild. In fact, in a sense, the damage caused by the Phoenix Guild was hardly their fault on the contrary, the Phoenix Guild had the best dungeon clear record amongst the guilds active in Korea, that is, excluding the Messiah Guild calling the blunders they caused a mistake was debatable when you compare it to the mistakes caused by guilds that were mediocre and uncoordinated however. The target of such protests had always been the Phoenix Guild it was rare to see protests like these in front of any other guild headquarters. The reason was simple. It was always tough being the number two foot. It was due to the fact that they are the number two guild in Korea, if people were going to denounce and condemn someone, it was going to be one of the top ten guilds protesting a guild only in the top fifty ranks wasn't going to lead to anything significant. Well, the Phoenix Guild members are sons of bitches in this aspect. Of course, this did not mean that the Phoenix Guild was an innocent scapegoat considering the mistakes upon mistakes that the Phoenix Guild already committed and the mistakes they would commit in the future, it wouldn't be weird to see protesters throwing explosives into the Phoenix Guild headquarters. If it weren't for the selfish practices of the guilds like the Phoenix Guild, there wouldn't have been a reason for groups like the Messiah Guild to be born. From the beginning, it wasn't due to skills and capability that the Phoenix Guild became the second-ranked guild in Korea in Korea, there was a saying, you're not a man of power and means if you are not qualified enough to be bribed by the Phoenix Guild. Just from this saying alone, one could imagine how interwoven the connections between the Phoenix Guild and the real estate industry was also, most Korean players were on the side of the Phoenix Guild on the contrary, the Messiah Guild had very few supporters amongst the players. Without the support from the Hengsung Group, the Messiah Guild would have disappeared a long time ago. If it had not been for the protection of the Hansung Group, the Messiah Guild would have already been trampled upon by the Phoenix Guild. No, it may have been the other way around. At this revelation, Kim Woo-jin realized something. Rather, it was the Hansung Group who took advantage of the Phoenix Guild. Even they had been mere tools, chess pieces in a plan arranged by the Hansung Group and the Messiah Guild. By using the Phoenix Guild, they further increased the prestige of the Messiah Guild. Using the evil mirror known as the Phoenix Guild, they made the image of the Messiah Guild shine even brighter in any case, the Korean government and large corporation support for the Phoenix Guild was far greater compared to the other guilds, and such support continued to nurture the players who were members of the Phoenix Guild that was the why Kim Woo-jin wanted to leech off the Phoenix Guild. The Phoenix Guild is awful but so is the Messiah Guild even if I kill off either of them, there wouldn't be any issues. On the other hand, this realization left him laughing it was a laughter brimming with mockery there wasn't anyone to feel guilty over no matter who he killed. Fuck. What a fucked up world this was. Overflowing with wacky emotions, Kim Woo-jin entered the Phoenix Guild headquarters. 
Year 2020 The number of dungeons constantly increased ever since the game started in the beginning of that year at the same time, the number of floors in the dungeons also increased in the year 2020, the highest floor of dungeons that appeared was the fourth floor, but the highest floor of dungeons that appeared in the year 2023 was the sixth floor. Let alone reducing the damage caused by the dungeons and monsters, it was getting worse and worse, day by day the game had truly begun when the value of everything in the world could be calculated for the players. Here are the conditions of the Phoenix Guild. Evidence of that was in the hands of Kim Woo Jin at this very moment a contract the offer that was proposed below his name was out of the ordinary it was something that far surpassed the expectations of a normal human being. First of all, the salary was on another level. For signing a two-year contract, the signing bonus is 600 million won. The standard two-year contract came with a signing bonus of 600 million won, the standard for a three-year was a billion won moreover, this was only the signing bonus. Clearing a one-floor dungeon will have additions rewards of 30 million won each time. When the first floor of a dungeon was cleared, the player would be rewarded depending on the results of one's clear, and in a situation where the second floor of a dungeon was cleared, a clear reward would be given once again, this time in hundreds of millions of one. All the items acquired in the dungeon will be given to the individual that found the item however, to sell the item, one must sell the item through the guild. The ownership of items acquired in the dungeon was obvious, it was all given to the players themselves although players could only sell the items through the guild, Guilds like the Phoenix Guild would always give the players more when they could they would never cut down the price of their items in many ways, it was an extraordinary condition. They are pretty much meaningless. However, Kim Woo Jin was not even slightly interested in such conditions. It was not like money was useless no rather, Kim Woo Jin needed more money now than ever before. With these paltry amounts, I wouldn't be able to buy a single item that I want. The problem was that Kim Woo Jin needed an astronomical amount of money it would not have been enough even if he went back in time as the eldest son of a Chable family. It is shocking. Things within Kim Woo Jin's expectations definitely did not exist within this contract. As expected of the Phoenix Guild these conditions are incomparable to the conditions offered by the Messiah Guild. Certainly these conditions cannot even be compared to that of the Messiah Guild so, would you like to sign a contract with the Phoenix Guild? I have no reason to reject such an offer by the way, how would I prove to you that I am a player? Even if I were to activate my status window here, others wouldn't be able to see it. When asked by Kim Woo Jin, the team leader of the Phoenix Guild's recruiting team, who stood right in front of him, pulled out a luxurious leather envelope and handed it to Kim Woo Jin. It contains the exclusive skill pages for the Emissary of the Underworld. Skill page it was literally a piece of paper that could be used to learn a skill players could obtain skills by ripping a skill page however, nothing would happen for normal people if they were to rip a skill page. Meaning, one could identify whether someone was a player or not, just by letting them rip a skill page. There were, of course, many other ways to prove if someone was a player it would have been enough just by using the inventory right away, since players could take items out of the dungeon and were able to keep stuff like monster ingredients in their inventory. The showmanship is incredible. The only reason why the Phoenix Guild used this kind of method to determine if someone was a player was to demonstrate the guild's prowess we are this much different from the other guilds, that kind of display. I appreciate it nonetheless. To Kim Woo Jin, he was grateful for this situation. Pick one and rip it please. A grateful Kim Woo Jin did not refuse smiling, Kim Woo Jin checked the fifth skill page. What is this? The smile on Kim Woo Jin's mouth disappeared as he became very serious. Blood poisoning thoughts of that bastard was what made Kim Woo Jin turn serious it was a skill that did not look that strong in terms of its overall effectiveness it was because people were not animals with a lot of blood. An adult that weighed about 70 kilograms would have around 5 L of blood, and when blood output exceeded about 2 L the person would die also, Blood having a poison effect could cause a variety of problems to the people around him what if blood spattered during a battle. Or when when someone had to treat his wound. The more potent the poison was, the greater the risk became therefore, not many people were interested in blood poisoning there were only a few players with a halo from the emissary of the underworld to begin with, and there were countless better skills one could learn as an emissary of the underworld. Everybody thought so, that is, until he appeared. To think I would learn the signature skill of the king of deadly poisons like this. 
The king of deadly poisons although he awakened very late, he was an influential player who instantly became a ranker with the might of his poison alone. This skill, blood poisoning, was the key to what made him who he was. With the use of blood-sucking skill, he removed the limitation of his blood volume, he then created blood golems with all the blood he acquired through the blood-sucking skill it was truly a nightmare. Blood poisoning, blood-sucking, and blood golem the strength of this triple combination threatened even Lee Sejun even he had to step backwards Lee Sejun couldn't do anything but retreat when confronted by the king of deadly poisons, guarded by his blood golems. That skill now fell into Kim Woo Jin's hands. I will use this skill page. And in that instant, Kim Woo Jin ripped up the page. Jig. Like that, the skill page of blood poisoning that was ripped by Kim Woo Jin's hands turned into darkness and was absorbed by Kim Woo Jin's body. This was the evidence that Kim Woo Jin was indeed a player belonging to the emissary of the underworld. After confirming the evidence, the team leader of the Phoenix Guild's recruiting team held out his hand and spoke. Thank you for joining the Phoenix Guild. He said. Kim Woo Jin shook his hand then, the team leader of the Phoenix Guild's recruiting team asked a question. By any chance, is there anything you need? At such a question, Kim Woo Jin answered immediately, as if he had been waiting for it. To what extent can I borrow from the company? Chapter, 5 Why is Wu Jin Appa's nickname Hunting Dog? At the question, everyone but Kim Wu Jin looked towards a woman in her early twenties with snow-white hair Kim Wu Jin himself was smiling with a smirk. Isn't it odd? Someone like Wu Jin Appa's strength is comparable to members of the first seven, such as the King of Deadly Poisons and the King of Undead, but why on earth is there a dog? In his nickname? Shouldn't he be called a hunting king or something? Nearby, a man answered that question, he decided to answer for Kim Woo Jin. You are mistaken, he wasn't given the nickname of hunting dog because of his hound-like hunting style. Huh. It's because he resembles a dog. He was like a dog everyone, excluding the one who had asked the question nodded a little after remembering the things Kim Woo Jin had done on the other hand, the woman who asked the question remained confused, and decided to raise another question. Like a dog? What do you mean? It's just like I said maybe you would understand if you became Kim Woo Jin's prey this is bastard is just like a fucking dog. Our hunt is starting. That was the end of the conversation. Get ready for the hunt. After that order, Kim Woo Jin's eyes changed that was the end of his recollection. That was a dream. Kim Woo Jin opened his eyes after the recollection. Tang. 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 At the same time, an old alarm clock on top of Kim Woo Jin's mattress began to ring boisterously. It feels like deja vu. Kim Woo Jin turned off the alarm and got up from bed afterwards, he quickly got ready for work. Today's first hunt won't be a problem. It was his second time clearing a dungeon for the first time. Dungeon gate it was literally a door that connected the dungeon to the real world if the dungeon gate was left unattended, the monsters inside could come out therefore, the dungeon gate needed to be monitored as soon as possible after its discovery once the dungeon gate was discovered, mercenaries or soldiers who had a contract with the government regulated the area surrounding the dungeon gate. Currently, this area is restricted. Of course, entry was restricted for normal civilians for safety reasons, only authorized personnel were allowed into the urban park in Guangmindong, Guachin province. Come on, I just want to take back my parked car. That action is prohibited by regulations. But it's not like monsters will come out the moment I walk in. It is still not allowed. The regulations in place were extremely strict and thorough. You, which group are you from? Do you know who I am? If you do not abide by the regulations, you will be arrested or detained. The regulations weren't something that could be altered or bypassed with a such poorly executed threat however, there were occasions when such regulations were overlooked a red Ferrari, which just entered the gate leading to the park's parking lot, was an example of such a case without even the need to get out of the car or verifying the identity, the Ferrari entered the restricted area, as if it were entering a department store parking lot. I wonder if that's a player. It probably is who else but players would come to places like this, driving cars like that. 
Players were the only ones who could freely ride in expensive foreign cars like that while economic growth was consistently negative, inflation soaring, and unemployment high it was just as expected already, there were three expensive cars parked in the parking lot that appeared to be worth a billion one. Soon, a young man came out from the parked Ferrari he was a burly man packed with muscles, it was apparent that he exercised quite frequently. Hey Juseep. Three men and women waved his way. Everyone arrived early. Everyone there was a player belonging to the Phoenix Guild they had gathered to clear the dungeon that spawned in the Guangmo Urban Park. To think of it, isn't it our party's first hunt? That's right, we have to come early, since it's our first hunt. In addition, for the four of them, today's dungeon run was their first time hunting as a group there was nothing unusual about it the dungeon they would enter today would allow a maximum of five players under LV10 to enter at the same time it was also was rated as a mere E-class dungeon. It might be the first dungeon run for you guys, but it's already my fourth time clearing a dungeon. What's more, it was the man called Bang Juseop who led them he, who had already cleared three dungeon with other, could be described as a veteran with a significant amount of experience. I even leveled up twice already. He was already LV3. I believe in Juicy Young. I will believe only you, Juicy Papa. Yo Juicy take good care of me. For the three who gathered under the leadership of Bang Juicy there was no fear of their first dungeon clear. Anyway, isn't this a new model of Ferrari? Isn't it really expensive? After he calculated his income, he realized he could afford it too he just had to wait for the regular rewards that he was going to receive. Well, the dungeon clear pays out almost 10 million one even after sharing also, if a rare item were to drop. Moreover, they thought their expectations were not unreasonable and instead inevitable, for they were the chosen ones. Anyway, isn't there supposed to be one more person with us? Yes based on the stories I heard, he is a player who awakened just yesterday. Yesterday? How odd I was only allowed to participate in a dungeon hunt after I joined the guild for a month. Apparently, he used to be a mercenary. Ah, he was a mercenary wait, what? Cold water poured down over his expectations. What's that over there? What is that thing? A car approached the parking lot where they were standing of course, it wasn't weird for a car to come in the parking lot. A light car. TL note. Think about those small compact square cars. The problem was that it was a small car it was not a new one, but a very old model that was discontinued ten years ago the small, compact car that appeared, parked in the space between the Ferrari and Bentley at long last, a young man came out of the car he was the fifth member of the Guangmo Urban Park Dungeon Team. As you may have expected, Kim Woo Jin's first impression of those four people was not good at all, especially that Bang Ju Siap they were obviously not going to along. What the fuck does that bastard think he is doing? He calls that piece of trash a car and drove it here. Wasn't the Republic of Korea a place where people are judged by quality of their cars? Isn't that why people were more inclined to ride more expensive cars to show off their status? Furthermore, all the players thought they were chosen beings like medieval aristocrats, they judged that their fundamental existence was different from ordinary people at the end of the day, the extravagant showcase of the four players, including Bang Juseop, was the evidence of this of course, this did not mean that all the players cruised around in expensive cars however, no player anywhere in South Korea had ever driven a small, compact car that was discontinued for over 10 years it did. Not even exist in the Messiah Guild, whose sole goal was to save the world. At that time, Bang Juseop and his party each made a similar hypothesis in their heads. He must have had a lot of debt if he has to ride a car like that when the Phoenix Guild's down payment alone is so enormous. They made a hypothesis that Kim Woo Jin was not a guy who was frugal but one who was too poor. They said he started as a mercenary. Who would become a mercenary if they weren't desperate for money? Furthermore, the fact that Kim Woo Jin used to be a mercenary provided strong grounds for their hypothesis finally, Bang Ju Siap and the rest of the team came to a conclusion. Is he a beggar? He is probably broke, huh? With a car like that, he probably only has supplies for items. It was not necessary to develop a close relationship with the man named Kim Woo Jin, who appeared before them Kim Woo Jin, who got out of the car as if everything was normal, immediately introduced himself to Bang Ju Siap and his party with a smile. I am called Kim Woo Jin. While introducing himself, 
he held out his hand to Bang Juseop. Bang Juseop took Kim Woo Jin's hand, gave a look of contempt, and introduced himself. I am Bang Juseop. The voice of Bang Juseop, who spoke out, showed signs of disapproval of the other party. Bang Juseop was not the only one. Bang Juseop's colleagues were the same, nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin smiled at them, shook their hands, smiled, and even greeted them eye to eye. I'm Lee Hyun Young. I'm Park Sung Moon. I'm Kong Hyun In. Then he listened to their voices, paid attention to their names, and pondered, I don't recognize any of their names, I don't remember their faces either. He was checking if there was anyone important he clearly remembered or anyone who used to be his prey. I guess there isn't anyone I have to kill for now. Among the four of them, there wasn't anyone who could obstruct Kim Woo Jin after thinking for a while, Kim Woo Jin stopped caring about them this was the moment when the lives of those four were spared. He acts strangely, as if we are close friends. He is not going to ask to borrow money, is he? I should avoid him. Naturally, they would never know the truth they didn't even have the chance to know. Ah, everyone is here I am Koo Sung Hoon, a member of the support team I'll start the dungeon briefing. Afterwards, the dungeon run started right away. Goblin's Nest Dungeon Depth, 1 Floor Dungeon Difficulty, E Rank Maximum Entry Capacity, 5 People Entry Condition, Below LV10 Clear Condition, Eliminate All the Goblins Within the Dungeon Kim Woo Jin carefully checked the dungeon information through a holographic window that only players could see however, Bang Juseop and his colleagues were different. Finally, a dungeon run. Everything will be fine, right? There won't be any issues, right? There shouldn't be any problems we just have to deal with it like we trained. Their nervousness was clearly evident on their faces, which had been full of expectations for the dungeon not too long ago. Don't worry this time I spent a lot of money and bought a rare long sword it cost me 50 million won I'm sure that monsters like goblins will be sliced like a slab of meat just trust me. Although I had to buy it on credit since I didn't have much money left after buying the car. Bang Juseop, who was boasting about his new items, was also quite nervous it was a reasonable response. If there is a problem, please let me know at any time. Don't force yourself inside the dungeon. Only players could go inside the dungeon meaning, inside the dungeon, players had to solve their own problems they had to get rid of all the monsters inside the dungeon by themselves furthermore, there were several restrictions upon entering the dungeon. Everyone check your inventory again. The biggest constraint was the inventory the only items one could bring into the dungeon were the items obtained from dungeons or items created using materials found in dungeons furthermore, one could only bring items that could go in the item inventory. The most basic item bag could contain up to 20 types of items that weighed up to a total of 20 kilograms to be precise, players received a 20 slot inventory as soon as their inventory was opened and could put up to 1 kilogram of items in a single square if the weight exceeded the limit of 1 kilogram. It would take up more slots in the inventory a 34 kilogram sword would take up 4 slots worth of inventory. Furthermore, equipped items also took up inventory slots wearing basic items such as a helmet, armor, gloves, shoes, weapons, and shields consumed a minimum of 7 slots of inventory. In particular, please check the supplies. Of course, there was a limit to the amount of supplies they could carry that was the reason why players had to manage the item inventory very carefully Kim Woo Jin also checked his inventory once again slowly, he checked his items, beginning from the supplies before long, Kim Woo Jin had checked his last item. Goblin Champion's Whip, Item Grade, Unique Physical Attack, 19 must be above LV1 to use item description, it was a whip used by the Goblin Champion to control the goblins it will apply fear effects to the goblins when equipped Constitution 5 when attacking basic damage increases by 10% when attacking goblins damage increases by 30%. A whip that was the weapon that Kim Woo Jin had chosen for this dungeon in addition, the weapon had been purchased by Kim Woo Jin by spending half the money he received from Phoenix Guild it was a weapon as expensive as the Ferrari that Bang Juseop bragged about however, Kim Woo Jin did not care much about the fact that he spent so much money on just one weapon rather, it was something else that made Kim Woo Jin feel unpleasant at that moment. I could have bought a better item if I borrowed about 1 billion won. It was the fact that he was not satisfied with his loan from the Phoenix Guild. I guess I'll just have to keep earning money like a dog for a while. 
It meant that he had to keep spending money while earning however, such aggravating feelings did not last long. Then, we will begin the dungeon entry. To a hunting dog, such feelings were unnecessary. Chapter, 6 A shining light, too bright for the eyes to look at, dimmed down, and a verdant forest revealed itself in front of Kim Woo Jin's eyes. Whoa! After a few seconds, a clamor poured out from behind. Oh my god! Exclamations came from Bang Jusiep and his companions, who were all awestruck. Impressive doesn't it feel like we are really in another world? I feel like I am playing a virtual reality game. Virtual reality games can't even compare to this, this is indistinguishable from reality. After such exclamations, they all began to talk. This is a cruel place where the rules are vastly different from the reality we are used to if someone were to die here, it's a world where we can't even retrieve their dead body. Bang Jusip, who was talking, drew his sword from the sheath that was hanging on his waist. Shying. The sound of the sword he drew from the sheath was very ominous. Everyone, do not relax your guard. Bang Jusip, who brandished his sword, wore a very grim expression. Gulp. Faced this situation, his party answered by nodding their heads, and nervously swallowed their saliva on the other hand. Kim Woo Jin was unruffled. Kim Woo Jin didn't even try to manage his expression. He had no interest in the current situation nor Bang Ju Siap and his party's behavior at all. It did not concern him that Bang Ju Siap and his companions were making enough noise to provoke the goblins that may be nearby. Nor did he care about how Bang Ju Siap was arrogantly brandishing his sword. To soothe his companions' nerves, Kim Woo Jin did not have the slightest interest in them at all. It was for the best. Kim Woo Jin was only interested in the information given by his surroundings. This tree is a dumb pre tree quite a bit of sap comes out from it the terrain is a forest but there are many slopes. Identifying the surrounding terrain was the very basics of dungeon hunting. If you look at the footprints left behind by the goblins near that tree the goblins must be in groups of more than three that means there's quite a number of goblins, and by looking at the surrounding terrain, they would mostly like be occupying a den there were also traces of goblins around there but the particular smell of a goblin was not present, meaning there weren't any goblins over there for the moment. Then. Did you say your name was Kim Woo Jin? Bang Ju Siap asked Kim Woo Jin. I heard that this is your first time hunting and that you used to be a mercenary. Without replying, Kim Woo Jin just nodded his head. Then you must be familiar with monster behavioral patterns could you possibly act as a scout? This was Bang Ju Siap's proposal it was not difficult to grasp the real intention behind his proposal. So he wants to use me as bait, huh? Bang Ju Siap intended to use Kim Woo Jin as bait and lure the goblins. As I expected. Such a proposal was already within his expectations Kim Woo Jin already realized what kind of players they were from the moment he first met them no, to Kim Woo Jin, there were only two types of players they were either committed to saving the world or intended to devour the world as much as possible. Had Bang Ju Siap and his party been willing to devote themselves even a little to make the world a better place, they would not have chosen to join the Phoenix Guild. I guess it would be even stranger for them to be friendly to me given the way I acted. It should be noted that Kim Woo Jin never displayed his abilities to his party at an expected outcome for them to not have any confidence or trust if Bang Ju Siap was friendly to him in any way, he would have gotten suspicious of him. Sounds good. Regardless of his intentions, Kim Woo Jin had no reason to refuse him. How should I search? After hearing that question, Bang Ju Siap replied as if he had waited for such an answer. I want you to search over there while we clear up the area you can rejoin us at any time if anything goes wrong. Got it. That was the end of their conversation it was more than enough Kim Woo Jin left his seat, and after he disappeared, Bang Ju Siap turned towards his colleagues and spoke. I thought he would resist but that was surprisingly easy. Everyone smiled at his remark. Right? I thought he would cry and try to cling to us much as possible. Maybe he is happy that he was given a role to play? Well, I guess you can look at it that way. Everyone, let's focus again. Bang Ju Siap said to them with a serious expression Listen, from here on out, we are about to engage in a bloody fight. The goblin hunt had begun. 
The roles of the players were determined by their halo it could be said that the undying fighters were the warriors, the keepers of knowledge were the mages, and the totems of prayers were the priests more than 80% of the players had one of these three jobs, and as a result, these three jobs became the standard composition for a party when attempting to clear a dungeon basically. Bang Juiciups for man team had one more warrior than that of a standard party their composition had no particular problem in theory, it was a composition without serious faults. As usual, however, the problems were in the people themselves Bang Juiciup realized this fact the moment his sword got stuck in a goblin's body. Puak. The sword he swung dug almost halfway into the body of a goblin it was an impressive display of sharpness and power. Ha. Huh. Ah. Uh. Such power became a vulnerability. Two can't pull it out. The sword went too deep into the body of the goblin therefore, it could not be removed quickly. Shit. Shit. The unexpected situation startled him, and another goblin rushed towards the back of the flustered Bang Juiciup. Kaya. Arf. The goblin in front of Bang Juiciup crashed into him, causing both of them to fall onto the ground then, at that moment, the other goblin attacked Bang Juiciup from behind that goblin took advantage of the opportunity exposed in that moment the goblin struck Bang Juiciup's head with a stone in his hand. Kang. Kang. Fortunately, Bang Juiciup's helmet mitigated the bulk of the attacks. Arf. Arf. However, Bang Juiciup's rationality was a mess due to the intense noise resounding through his helmet. Help. Help me. Bang Juiciup screamed for help from his colleagues, who were still fighting the other two goblins in response, Bang Juiciup's distressed cry aroused the hearts of his colleagues. What, what do we do? One won't he die like that? Instead of resolving the situation, his call for help caused everyone to panic in such a situation, all the education training they received was useless if it weren't for the items that they had prepared that is, if they had been like the early players who had entered dungeons naked, they would have already been killed by the goblins in other words, it was thanks to their items that they survived so far. You fucking goblin bastards. Bang Juiciup and his colleagues were finally able to beat the six goblins after over 30 minutes of intense struggle they immediately sat down as they collapsed in exhaustion without any complaint or conversation, they began to rest it was too bad the dungeon did not allow even that. Kia. Wah, what is that? Sue, suddenly what the heck is happening? The forest overflowed with the screams of goblins. Warrior type players usually started with a sword as their main weapon humans had many different kinds of weapons but most modern people had strong preferences for the sword moreover, in games, movies, cartoons, and novels, swords were depicted as very powerful for ordinary people who had been exposed to such media, the sword was the strongest, most versatile, and most effective amongst all weapons. However, in reality, a sword as a weapon was not as effective as people may have envisioned it was even less effective than imagined against actual monsters the distance to the monster would have to be shortened, which was defiant of common sense Kim Woo Jin could not accept such irrationality. Kim Woo Jin did not intend to avoid a melee dog fight against the monsters, but he would never intentionally brawl with ridiculously strong monsters unless he had no choice it was prudent for Kim Woo Jin to choose a whip as his weapon of course, a whip had its own limitations, and was even more restrictive than a knife however, if all the conditions for using a whip were met. It could show unparalleled effectiveness compared to most other weapons Kim Woo Jin proved this fact when fighting. Against these three goblins. Chwak. The end of the whip produced a horrifying crack as it cut through the air. The snapping sound was followed by the continuous scream of a goblin. Took. Amidst the scream was the sound of the goblin's left arm falling on the ground it was as described the whip cut off the goblin's arm. Kia. That was the power of the whip the whip was a slashing weapon Kim Woo Jin took the whip and swung it toward the second goblin. The whip made a terrifying sound as it hit and slashed the goblin's stomach. The moment the goblin started its scream, the bulging stomach of the goblin opened up and its intestines started to leak out the goblin fell onto ground while holding onto his stomach and collapsed. Now, only one goblin was left. Key, key. Unfortunately for that remaining goblin, it was only able to shriek and scream, and unable to take any meaningful action. Key. It was because the goblin could not understand Kim Woo Jin's attack through his common sense from the goblin's point of view, 
something invisible from Kim Woo Jin's body flew out and killed his ally so, the goblin could not even choose to run. Key. The fear of something invisible cutting him down if it turned its back made the goblin behave as if it were a statue Kim Woo Jin swung his whip at the goblin. Along with the sound of a gust of wind, the whip cut off the goblin's head. Kek. The third goblin could not even scream as it collapsed onto the ground. You have leveled up. A notification rang inside Kim Woo Jin's head at that very moment. You have gained the interest of the emissary of the underworld. Achievement noticed one foot has been achieved. Kong Wu Jin also heard some new notifications at such an announcement, one end of Kim Wu Jin's lips rose into a smirk. To think I would gain his attention just by doing this something as mediocre as this. Noticed one. It literally meant that the player had gained attention from his halo a simpler explanation would be that he was like a rising star. This achievement has a lower requirement than I expected. It was the second time that Kim Woo Jin had achieved this feat he had achieved this feat even when he used to have the undying fighter as his halo. It increases the player's stats by 1%. For this reason, it was not necessary for him to check the effect of the achievement. Status Window Therefore, Kim Woo Jin only activated his status window. Kim Woo Jin Level, 2 Halo, the Emissary of the Underworld Stats Constitution 11, Strength 2, Mana 3, Unallocated Points, 3. Kim Woo Jin invested all of his unallocated points into Constitution right away. After all, whether it's now or later, you can't do anything without physical ability. That was why he was planning to invest all of his points into Constitution even in the future. Lee Se Jun, it's even more important when I fight against him. Furthermore, his prey, Lee Se Jun, boasted the most powerful constitution out of everyone in the world without enough physical strength, forget about tearing him apart, one's teeth would break as soon as you tried to bite him if he was going to face Lee Sejun alone, constitution was even more important in order to kill him after all, he planned to do everything on his own. Who in the right mind would help me kill a hero who is trying to save the world? No, even if I were to find a colleague, its existence is something I cannot trust there is no one in the world who wants to kill a hero and has the right morality or sanity. Stat allocation is done. After finishing everything he had to do, Kim Woo Jin headed towards the last goblin, who had fallen down after trying to run away when its arm was cut off the fallen goblin reacted after sensing Kim Woo Jin's footsteps. Key. Its reaction was filled with fear it appeared very cowardly and it did not sound like a goblin that would bare its teeth until the moment it died. As expected of a unique item. It was due to the special option of the goblin champion's whip there was no better option than that fear when hunting goblins to be honest, looking at the item's options, it was definitely worth its cost in fact, the fear effect on the goblin champion's whip was a very expensive option if this option had been on popular player weapon type like a sword, spear, or bow. Kim Woo Jin would not have been able to afford it even if he drove himself into debt however, because extremely few people knew how. To handle a weapon like the whip, which had little to no demand, he was able to buy it. Kim Woo Jin stood in front of the terrified goblin, and stared at it however, Kim Woo Jin did not kill the goblin, the real hunt was about to begin. Chapter, 7 A goblin was hanging from a tree. Nah, it is more accurate to say that a goblin was decorating the tree. If the goblin was hanging there to be an emergency food source, it would not be hanging from the most conspicuous place it was very easy to notice. Moreover, although the goblin was alive, it appeared no different from a corpse precisely speaking, it was yet to be a corpse but it was just barely alive if Wu Jin had intentions of eating the goblin, he didn't need to keep it alive like that. In conclusion, there was a different reason for letting it live. Karar Karar Key 15 in total, 15 goblins were hanging from many different trees, each of them barely alive they were issuing rescue signals, begging other goblins for their help they weren't all gathered in one place, they were arranged more like a fence. For the goblins, it was as if the very definition of fear became a reality instead of feeling sympathy or fury at the sight, the scene filled the goblins with dread they had no recourse but to turn their backs in despair rather than to fight in indignation despite the fact that a grievous astro city had befallen their kin, for goblins, it was obvious what needed to be done. Key. They did not dare to approach the horrendous arrangement of ornaments they did not heed the rescue calls of their own kind. 
this was a characteristic of the ways the goblins as a species functioned. It was a natural instinct for them to want to survive, even at the expense of their peers it was also how they coped with unbeatable enemies in a brutal world there was, of course, no such thing as revenge. Rather than seeking revenge, the goblins reduced their radius of activity to avoid facing the same tragic fate as their peers additionally, they also limited the types of activities performed outside. Key ee -e key. Most of the goblins decided to lodge in their den they buried themselves in the deepest parts of their den if they could it was cramped, even though goblins were small. Ka. As if that was not enough, the goblins blockaded the entrances to their den they put up as many defensive barricades leading to their fortress as they possibly could the fear that suffocated the goblins was terrible to such a degree. As one may expect, the goblins lacked proper craftsmanship their craftsmanship and constructions were very sloppy and deficient fortunately, there was someone there to help the goblins fix that problem. Tuck. Tuck. Kim Woo-jin used a shovel he had prepared in his inventory to cover up all the entrances to the goblin's den with dirt he even put up a wooden fence with the help of an axe Kim Woo-jin turned the goblin's den into an impenetrable fortress and prevented both entry and escape a few minutes later, smoke rose from the goblin's den. A player's net worth was out of the boundaries of common sense it was illogical that a level 1 player would receive over 100 million won just for signing a contract then they were given the social status, respect, and dignity befitting a government official nevertheless. The reason behind such treatment was rather simple the main reason was because it was normal for them to die the nature of their jobs was just that dangerous. Shit. Bang Juseop and his colleagues realized this truth from fighting the goblins no, they realized it now that it was undetermined whether or not they would survive. To think we would end up like this against mere goblins. If their lives were threatened by something stronger like an orc, fought desperately, and defeated it at the end, they may have a felt a great sense of achievement instead however, weren't monsters like goblins closer to fodder or prey than an enemy? To Bang Juseop and his party, who were struggling as their lives were threatened by mere goblins, the dungeon was no longer felt like a land of opportunity it was a world of full of monsters that could kill them at any time. Shit. When they realized this, Bang Juseop and his party could no longer hunt they were too afraid to leave their camp and they were even more scared of fighting the goblins so Bang Juseop and his party decided to spend their first day resting regrettably, the party did not move out on the second day either. To be exact, they couldn't advance the fear of death, that undeniable fear, prevented them from even getting a proper rest. Fatigue grew in intensity with each passing day the fear of death also persisted and became more apparent it was a situation where nobody had the will to move they would only act if they were forced to do so however, no one opened their mouth. Bang Juseop, their leader, also avoided confronting the problems. Anyway, I wonder what happened to that person, Kim Woo-jin. He probably died already I mean we haven't heard from him since then. Damn it it would have been better if we just moved together having one more person would have made the hunting easier. In the meantime, Kim Woo-jin's absence further heightened the fear felt by the party. Ultimately, Bang Juseop and his party also spent their second day resting, without taking any action on the third day, they finally changed their minds. We can't stay like this. It wasn't courage. At this rate, the food will run out first we have to kill the goblins before that. The fear of dying of starvation won over the fear of goblins it forced their priorities to change. They are only goblins after all. Under these circumstances, Bang Juseop told his colleagues, it's true that it was hard at first, but here we are, all safe we still have enough food as well there's no reason we can't mop up the goblins we can do it if we try. We can do it. He spoke as if he were giving orders to himself and his colleagues such orders were surprisingly effective. Yeah, there's no reason we can't do it. We can just hunt them one by one. I'm not going to die before I spend the signing bonus I got from the contract first. The fear that dominated them gradually subsided determination and resolve filled the gaps where the fear receded. It was at that moment. What? Huh? The dungeon was cleared. I wonder what's the most effective way to hunt goblins who hid themselves in a den. Go inside the den and hunt them. That's the stupidest idea not only was the den made by the goblins, the paths are too cramped and uncomfortable for humans to move in. Furthermore, no living being will peacefully submit when an enemy invades their homes and tries to kill them. Then, should we wait for the goblins to come out? 
It's not a bad idea if sufficient and proper traps were prepared, there was no easier way to hunt there is a limit to the food the goblins can store however, there is a better way. Wererek. It was setting the den on fire to be more exact, it was putting smoke inside the den that was what Kim Woojin chose to do. I think all the exits are blocked. When he was ready, he made the entrance to the den look like the opening of a kiln, set the fire there, then kept adding fuel to the fire. Considering the size of the den, about ten minutes will be enough. Snakes named Heat and Smoke crawled inside the den then, the smoke inflicted critical damage on the goblins. Ki ek. Ki. The goblins suffered from headaches and dizziness the carbon monoxide poisoning and oxygen depletion had begun. Kia. The goblins sensed something was off and naturally began to move towards the exit however, getting outside was not easy. The reason was simple. Ki. Ki. They were hiding too deep inside the den in order to avoid the monster that butchered their kin, most of the goblins were gathered deep inside the den it was the place where that monster was the least likely to go. Since they are inside the deepest areas, it would not be easy for them to come out. This was obviously Kim Woojin's intent he knew how the goblins would behave if he afflicted a devastating terror upon them he knew it better than anyone when all the goblins tried to stampede out of the den at the same time, accidents were inevitable. Moreover, some sickly goblins were mixed in. Some of the poisoned ones should have died by now. There was some of Kim Woojin's toxic blood inside the prey that he intentionally let escape. Although not toxic enough to be immediately evident on their body, it was poisonous enough to eventually be fatal. Thud. Some of the goblins that attempted escape collapsed on the floor, while other goblins tripped over them and fell. As if a series of crashes broke out on a path, the entrance to the den was utterly obstructed in the end, only about six or seven goblins got close to the entrance however, one could not say that they were lucky what the goblins faced was a road of fire before the blazing road of fire, the goblins could not help but stop. One of them plucked up his courage and rushed through the flames unfortunately for him, his attempt was effortlessly blocked by something solid the entrance to the den was blocked nevertheless, the goblins repeatedly smashed their bodies against the entrance in an attempt to get outside. The goblins were desperate to survive any way they could. They cried with excessive determination. Kek, kek. The thick smoke made it difficult for the goblins to even scream it was a gruesome sight to witness was it necessary to be so cruel. The scene was so appalling that one would wonder. Waiting outside the entrance to the den, Kim Woo Jin was very well aware of the aftermath of his methods he knew better than anyone that his actions were inhumane. Last ditch effort I see. That was all Kim Woo Jin did not have to think deeply about the facts. He didn't have to. What he faced were monsters, actual monsters the word, humane, did not apply to them. This hunt was much easier than I thought. He wasn't there to play games Kim Woo Jin was not interested in the fierce and frantic competition the other players engaged in to prove their value he wasn't interested in competing by hunting stronger monsters or obtaining powerful items. Nor did he desire self-satisfaction by killing monsters with his overwhelming ability as if he were challenging a game. That is why Kim Woo Jin did not dispute that hunting dog. Should be his nickname. Kim Woo Jin did not wish to achieve, be recognized, be applauded, or be appreciated like most human beings. Looks like Johan George played the game more mundanely than I thought. He was satisfied just by the recognition from his halo. Like that, Kim Woo Jin's first dungeon clear ended. Chapter, 8 At the Urban Park Gate entrance, a man appeared from beyond the gate. Thank you, Mr. Kim Woo Jin. It was Kim Woo Jin. After the arrival of Kim Woo Jin, the gate distorted then disappeared from the world. Wooah! It's over. All the soldiers saw it from a distance, then cheered and applauded. With the gate gone, their mission was now over. It was natural for them to be happy. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin did not put much thought into the looks of admiration and cheers of the soldiers. In a sense, he was used to receiving cheers more than anyone else. For the Messiah Guild, every action made under their banner was cheered frantically and wholeheartedly by the whole world. Unfortunately, not everyone looked at Kim Woo Jin this way. There were a few people who gave him a distinctly leery stare. It was Bang Ju Siap and his companions. So he was alive. 
While the soldiers saw Kim Woo Jin as a hero, the four were looking at him like a monster. It wasn't odd for them to do so. That bastard, who is he? Didn't they say this was his first dungeon? He still managed to clear it by himself. I don't know I'm scared. While they were fighting a few goblins and struggled for two days in vain, the person that they thought was a burdensome leech ended up killing all the goblins on his own. Of course, to Kim Woo Jin, that kind of rumor was beneficial to his reputation. However, right now, that wasn't important. Did you hear the report of what happened on the other side? Kim Woo Jin asked Ku Sung Hoon, a member of the support team, who replied after a nod I heard about it they just said the dungeon was suddenly cleared. Ku Song Hoon's expression was not good. How did you do it? As a member of the support team, it was his duty to write a report on how the dungeon was cleared for him to write such a report, the players in the dungeon had to explain how it was done. After crossing the gate, however, Bang Juseop and his party only said that the dungeon was suddenly cleared. Furthermore, they didn't say anything about what happened in the dungeon. It was hard to understand from the perspective of Ku Sung Hoon. Based on the current condition of Bang Juseop's party, they probably weren't able to fight properly. In everyone's view, Bang Juseop and his companions were the main players in the attack. Kim Woo Jin was just a free gift attached to the group and it was thanks to Bang Juseop and his companions' presence that the Phoenix Guild even permitted Kim Woo Jin to participate in the attack. However, given the present condition of the party, it was hard to say whether they played a part in the attack. But that would mean that Kim Woo Jin had to eliminate all the monsters on his own. In other words, Kim Woo Jin cleared the dungeon by himself. Kim Woo Jin explained his strategy to Ku Song Hoon. By doing well. Yes. Ku Song Hoon was perplexed by Kim Woo Jin's explanation. What do you? He couldn't help but panic. At this rate, wasn't he about to write that Kim Woo Jin caught the goblins by doing well? In his report, Kim Woo Jin, however, didn't seem to care much about Ku Sung Hoon's circumstances. I pretty much caught them all, so please tell them to deposit 90% of this dungeon clear rewards into my account. While talking, Kim Woo Jin gazed at Bang Juseop's party. Ku Sung Hoon's gaze followed Kim Woo Jin. Bang Juseop and his party instinctively avoided his gaze and looked away. If they object to my request, please prepare a room where I can be alone with them for a while. Faced with such a spectacle, Ku Song Hoon did not know what to say. The man in front of him was so fearsome that even Bang Juseop's party avoided him. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a short break. Someone like Ku Song Hoon would not dare to confront Wu Jin just to get the information out of him. Ah shit, the team leader is going to yell at me again. At that moment, Ku Sung Hoon braced himself to be yelled at by his boss. While looking at Ku Sung Hoon, Kim Woo Jin thought to himself. I can probably talk to the team leader after about 30 minutes. Kim Woo Jin passed by Ku Sung Hoon and moved toward one of the temporary waiting rooms made of tents. I guess I can look at the catalog while I wait. Catalog. As soon as he shouted the command, a thin booklet appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin. It was a booklet that was slightly larger than a palm, made up of a material similar to parchment paper, and was about 5 mm thick. It was an ordinary looking booklet. However, to players, it was the most precious kind of books in the world. It was because inside the catalog were choices for items and skills. A page in a catalog literally contained choices for either an item or a skill. When you tear up a page, you can obtain what you saw on that page. The color is. The most important feature of catalogs was that the color of the light emitted by the page it was what determined the rarity of the item. Normal grades don't give off any light but rare grades give off a silver light, unique grades a gold light, and as for legendary or mythical grades the texture of the page itself changes. Meaning, if one was lucky enough, they would be able to receive a legendary grade item. This catalog only has white colors. Of course, miraculous drops would never happen for Kim Woo Jin so easily. Kim Woo Jin, an emissary of the underworld, did not see any light leak out from his catalog. Kim Woo Jin's luck with catalogs was not great in his past as well. Kim perused through the catalog slowly without giving it much thought. The catalog that Kim Woo Jin received had three pages in total. It's all skills. 
all three pages were skill pages. Energy Bolt, Energy Bomb, Skeleton Soldier. First two skills weren't even worth looking at. The Energy Bolt was a skill used to make magic arrows by consuming mana Energy Bomb was a basic skill that allowed the user to throw condensed energy bombs. These skills increase in power as the skill rank increases and more energy or mana is consumed depending on the level of its rank. These weren't skills that Kim Woo Jin even needed to consider. Skeleton Soldier However, the Skeleton Soldier skill was different. I'm getting some bad flashbacks. It was because one of Johann George, the king of the undead signature skills was Skeleton Soldier. His Skeleton Soldiers were like a physical manifestation of fear. The scene of thousands of players rushing in to fight hundreds of Johann George's skeleton soldiers, only to turn that into thousands of skeleton soldiers that was something that could not even be seen in hell. It was a nightmare. Compared to such a scene, Kim Woo Jin's actions against the goblins was nothing but child's play. Of course, there were also disadvantages to the skeleton soldier skill. We would avoid fighting him in areas where corpses remained. The Skeleton Soldier skill also only allowed the user to use corpses from entities killed by the user. Above all, skills for summoning Death Warriors, Death Knights, and Liches, which were considered to be better versions of the Skeleton Soldier and could be used at any time and anywhere however, the Skeleton Soldier skill always needed a sacrifice to cast. It was his fatal flaw. Without such a limitation, it would have been impossible to kill him. By taking advantage of these weaknesses, Kim Woo Jin fought the King of Undead alone and was ultimately able to kill him. I really was lucky. After reminiscing about the day when he fought with the King of Undead, Kim Woo Jin started to ponder. Right now for Kim Woo Jin, choosing one of the three skills was crucial, and Kim Woo Jin had to focus. There was actually no need to think about it. I would rather fire an arrow or throw a bomb than use an energy bolt or bomb. At this point of time, it was actually more useful and effective for Kim Woo Jin to throw stones than to use energy bolts and bombs. On the other hand, Skeleton Soldier is. Unlike the other two skills, the Skeleton Soldier skill could be of some use to Kim Woo Jin. At the very least, it could probably buy some time. Of course, he didn't have much expectations. The only thing Skeleton Soldiers could do for Kim Woo Jin was buying him a few seconds. However, Kim Woo Jin knew better than anyone how important a few seconds was also, he had the ability to make the use of those few seconds. Jig. So Kim Woo Jin tore up the Skeleton Soldier skill page from the catalog without hesitation. After he tore up the page, the Skeleton Soldier skill was obtained. You have learned the Skeleton Soldier skill. Skeleton Soldier. Skill Rank, F Skill Effect. Using a corpse as a sacrifice, a skeleton soldier is summoned number of skeletons that can be summoned, 1. Kim Woo Jin, who finished checking his skills, checked his left wrist. He was checking his watch. It's about time for him to come. It was at that moment. X, excuse me. Ku Sung Hoon had an apologetic expression he passed his smartphone to Kim Woo Jin then spoke. Sorry to bother you but the team leader wanted to talk to you about certain information pertaining to the report. Kim Woo Jin smiled at those words. I guess I'm done messing around. The dungeon gate is no different from a bomb. No one in the world knows when the monsters inside will appear. What was troubling was that humans, the players handling that bomb, were just as volatile as the monsters. Since the formation of the Phoenix Guild, Players often caused incidents near the dungeon gate rather than behaving properly in setting a good example to the people. The dungeon support teams were responsible for clearing up the incidents. Therefore, Young Woo Suk, the team leader of the Phoenix Guild's dungeon support team, was not flustered when he received the dungeon report from Ku Sung Hoon. Another weird crazy bastard must have joined recently. He just thought of it as having one more freak to manage. I'm on the phone. Ah, Mr. Kim Woo Jin. Of course, he didn't show his true colors. I'm calling about the report as you know, your cooperation in writing the report is very important more so since Mr. Kim Woo Jin was the player with the most remarkable and outstanding performance in this dungeon clearance, and we are in desperate need of your account on the matter. He skillfully tried to work with the freak. I know that it must be very tiring but please cooperate with us it will also help us evaluate your performance. 
I wheedled it in. Of course Yom Wusuk knew. I wouldn't have to call him in the first place if he can be persuaded with just words. He knew that the conversation would not end here. Those who recently became players tend to have shittier personalities. That was what the species known as players were like. There were players who thought they were chosen by God, as well as those who viewed ordinary people as plebeians. They were the type of people who thought that it was only natural that everyone else had show them respect. The ass kissing is complete. The reason why Yong Wusuk spoke in a persuasive manner was to show that he has already done enough to stroke his ego. If he doesn't want to cooperate, we don't have any reason to cooperate with him either. If Kim Wu Jin ignored this and did not cooperate, Yong Wusuk was also determined to be uncooperative. Just when Yong Wusuk thought Kim Wu Jin would remain being uncooperative. Ah, I'm sorry about that. Yes. Unexpectedly, Kim Wu Jin's reaction was not within Yong Wusuk's expectations. I didn't know what to do because it was my first time it seems like I have caused great trouble to the support team for no reason I will help Mr. Ku Sung Hoon with his report right away. Wah, what the heck. It wasn't just out of his expected range, it was very far removed from it. I apologize once again for the inconvenience. No, not at all. Yong Wusuk was embarrassed for a moment. Thank you for helping me with the report. No, we should help each other thanks to the support team, players like me can focus solely on clearing the dungeon. Thanks to such words, Yong Wusuk's expression eased. He's an okay guy. It's nice of you to say so if there is anything I can do to help, please let me know. He was more than willing to cooperate with those who were willing to cooperate back. Is it possible for you to introduce me to a dungeon level that I want to clear? That is if it's not too much trouble. Of course, it is our job to find the dungeon for players anyway, it's not difficult at all. So when a simple request for cooperation came out, Yong Wusung didn't really worry. If there is a one-story dungeon that appeared recently in a metropolitan area that is permitted to those below LV10, around Ibi difficulty, and related to goblins, I would like to clear it. Hearing Kim Wu Jin's request, Yong Wu Suk began to type the keywords using the keyboard in front of him. Then, one result immediately appeared. Oh, there is one in Songnam clearing the Sikh goblin tribe, below level 10, difficulty level B rank. Yong Wu Suk saw it and replied. By the way, you need to get an approval from the guild for a B grade difficulty dungeon, is that all right? At such question, Kim Wu Jin replied. I guess I'll have to work even harder on the report to get a signature of approval. Yong Wu Suk laughed at his reply. Ha, huh, I guess you're right. A player's evaluations were made in part through the reports. At this moment, Yong Wu Suk already made up his mind. Looking at the dungeon sign-up registrations, there are already three decent party applications, so getting the authorization for a run is not a problem the rest of the members will just be letting him on a bus it would not be bad for me to let the inexperienced players in and let them gain some experience. Yong Wu Suk would gladly give Kim Wu Jin special treatment using his status as the leader of the support team. If you just send me the report, I'll apply for you right away though whether you'll be accepted is not certain. Kim Wu Jin answered. Thank you if it all works out well, a meal is on me. That was the end of the call. Zhang Wu Suk, who put his smartphone down, smiled with content. I've never met such a nice, hardworking, and cooperative player before. Chapter, 9 There was a saying in online games. Relying on a level advantage is bullying. No matter how difficult the dungeon or powerful the monster, they become easy once you reach a high enough level. This logic applied to the world that turned into a game. One's level was of the utmost importance. Nevertheless, level alone could not solve everything. This was particularly applicable when trying to clear dungeons. It was impossible to clear some of the dungeons by relying on level alone due to the level restrictions placed on the dungeons. This was why infamous dungeons that devoured the lives of countless players were left uncleared. Seek Goblin Tribe Sweep Dungeon Floors, 1 Floor Dungeon Difficulty, B Rank Maximum Entry Capacity, 15 People Entry Condition, Below LV12 Clear Condition, Kill the Chief of the Sikh Goblin Tribe Clear Reward, Catalog. Sikh Goblin Tribe. 
Kim Woo Jin placed the case report for this dungeon on the passenger side of his car. It devoured 119 players. In Kim Woo Jin's past life, the Seat Goblin Tribe dungeon eliminated 119 players. Moreover, the players that the Seat Goblin Tribe dungeon devoured were not mediocre like Bang Juicy Up. Even if players of his level of talent were to die, guilds would not care much about the loss of the players and would only feel regret about losing their investments in them, however. These people were different, they were each the guild's rising stars. Dungeon clears at or above B ranks were primarily composed of experienced and powerful players. If players were chosen only based on the level requirements, they would undoubtedly end up as corpses. This becomes apparent just by analyzing Bang Juiciup. He had two dungeon clear completions, a decent item setting, and was qualified enough to be the party leader, however, he could not even fight properly in an E-ranked dungeon. Moreover, most of the players of the world were not much better than Bang Juiciup. Under these circumstances, if you were to put ordinary players into B-rank or above dungeons, the result is obvious if you take a moment to imagine it. Naturally, the guilds only allowed players who were known to have unique talents, rare skills, or were considered future stars to enter B-rank or higher dungeons. The Sikh Goblin Tribe dungeon eliminated 119 players of such quality. In the end, all the guilds gave up on clearing this dungeon. Of course, eventually, no guild would step up to the plate after suffering the loss of so many of their promising members this kind of danger was why players got such magnificent treatment and why the guilds exists but in reality, there are no players or guilds who would willingly enter a dungeon if they were almost certain it just meant throwing away their lives. The Messiah Guild cleared it in the end. There was only one exception, the Messiah Guild. They were how that dungeon got cleared. It was the Messiah Guild who cleared it. Kim Woo Jin was able to remember the information regarding the Seat Goblin Tribe dungeon very clearly and thoroughly Jae Hoon, he was the guy who wiped out the Seat Goblin Tribe and became a super rookie. Woo Jin heard the details regarding the Seat Goblin Tribe from Jang Jae Hoon himself, a super rookie of the Messiah Guild the one who rose to fame by wiping out the Seat Goblin Tribe. Wu Jin heard the details of the rising stars who failed to clear the dungeon, the special characteristics of the dungeon, and the method to clear the dungeon. I heard it so many times that it made me feel sick just by listening to it. Although he wasn't curious nor did he ever ask Jang Jae Hoon, Kim Wu Jin heard the story from Jang Jae Hoon so many times to the point that just hearing it again made him feel nauseous. At least he also heard many useful details regarding that dungeon as well. If you kill the chief of the Sikh Goblin tribe, you can receive gifts for your halo as well as an achievement. The reward granted in this dungeon if you identity and kill the chief. A catalogue with a minimum of one rare page. Kim Woo Jin had no reason to ignore a good a prey as the Sikh Goblin tribe chief to pursue other hunts. Wu Jin finally saw his destination. I have arrived. Like so, Kim Woo Jin arrived at Bundang Yongdiak Girls High School where the dungeon gate of the Sikh Goblin tribe was located. There was an unusual motor show in Pangeo, Songnam Province, where the Bundang Yongdiak Girls High School was located. The high school grounds were lined with extremely expensive foreign cars, giving off a luxurious vibe. It was a location where waves of cheers from high school girls could be expected. Unfortunately, the cheers of high school girls were nowhere to be found. I was so excited because they told me that it was an all-girls high school however, there isn't a single high school girl to be seen. Hey, do you really think that they are crazy enough to hold classes here when a dungeon gate appeared? They all evacuated a long time ago. Still isn't this is an all-girls high school? The soldier's sighs dispersed through the wind. A car appeared amidst the sighs. A light car. What? It went without saying that the light car, which appeared on the playground filled with expensive foreign cars looked even smaller and uglier than usual. Some people even felt sincere pity at the sight. However, that feeling did not last long. Ha! Huh. Ugh. That light car parked between two supercars a Yuyuri Lamborghini Huracan and a Ferrari 488 that cost as much as a house. The parking was performed very carelessly. Parking was finished almost instantaneously, and the distance between the cars was extremely narrow as well. Oh, my god. Is he fucking crazy? It was a thrilling performance for the soldiers watching. The owner of the small car appeared and opened his door wide open 
not caring the slightest whether or not the door hit the car next to him. Kim Woo Jin he just arrived. Everyone's line of sight drifted towards him. There it was in a corner of the playground a distortion in regularity. There it is. It was then. Shit, I can't talk sense with him. From a tent set on the school's playground, a woman let out a frustrated voice. Good, everyone can just fend for themselves. Themselves. At the same time, a man hurried out of the barracks. Wait please. Ms. Juhai, wait a minute. He was a member of the dungeon support team. I'm finished. Let go. What's the point of teaming up anyway? Aren't we only catching some goblins? Let's just do this as independent teams. I agree it's easier and better that way it's comical to hold hands against goblins. Then two new voices came out from the tent. That was enough information. Kim Woo Jin knew how things were going right away. Failure to negotiate. According to the dungeon's report, three parties applied for this dungeon two parties of five and one party of four fourteen people in total altogether, fifteen people were registered after throwing Kim Woo Jin in the mix. It was a privilege that Kim Woo Jin earned by using his wits. Anyhow, the three parties probably met together to share their opinions and information before heading into the dungeon of course, Kim Woo Jin's existence was ignored during those discussions most of them didn't even recognize Kim Woo Jin's name. At first, they likely talked about cooperating with one and another however, as one could see, they failed to come to an agreement. What happened is obvious. They probably bickered during the negotiations and couldn't agree on leadership and distribution. They are all praised as promising stars by their respective guilds their pride prevents them from being a subordinate, especially when they are merely facing goblins. If you were allowed an AB-ranked dungeon, it meant that you were a very talented player with special qualifications and talent. Furthermore, they are mostly level 10 players that awakened not long ago. They took pride in their ability, and believe that the exceptional treatment they receive is due their exceptional talents and skills they did not realize that they were no different from flowers in a greenhouse. In terms of soccer, having that many people with great pride was like having three A strikers. Moreover, currently, everyone considers each other as rivals. Not just three strikers but three strikers competing against each other to score. When put into practice, nobody wants to pass. They are just trying their hardest to score a goal on their own. It's the best scenario for me. Kim Woo Jin was delighted with the situation. There's no one to get in my way. With this, the three parties won't be cooperating. They will start competing over who will kill the dungeon boss first. They probably see this as an opportunity to prove their worth instead of focusing on clearing the dungeon it would not affect Kim Woo Jin even if everybody else got reckless. My hands won't have to be covered in human blood. Kim Woo Jin didn't have to worry about killing anyone who bothered him this time. Hello, are you Mr. Kim Woo Jin? Yes yes I am. I'm Lee J. E. Jun from the dungeon support team I'm sorry to say this all of a sudden, but you have to join one of the three parties now for the dungeon run. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin did not hesitate. It appears they have failed to reach an agreement if so, please tell this to the three parties. Yes. I'll be fine by myself. Kiyuk. It was the sound of a goblin's dying gasp as it fell to the ground with its neck hanging down. A translucent wire was wrapped around its neck such a weapon was what took the life of the goblin the owner of that weapon was none other than Kim Woo Jin. Quack. Kim Woo Jin did not release the force to the wire even though the goblin's body was already limp. It was the sound of a goblin dying once again. He was just pretending to be dead. If Kim Woo Jin believed the goblin was dead and loosened his grip, the goblin would have squeezed out every ounce of its remaining strength to struggle if so, the goblins nearby would have noticed it. Of course, if Kim Woo Jin wanted to, he could even fight against a few hundred goblins at his current level and skill. Then if things were to get little rough, he could also just run away. Nevertheless, the reason why Kim Woo Jin chose to act in the shadows was simple. The first thing I want to know is the capability of the skeleton soldier skill. It was all in order to measure the capability of skeleton soldier, a skill that he obtained very recently. In fact, Kim Woo Jin probably didn't even need to gather information about the surrounding terrain or the monsters. 
He was the person with more experience in clearing dungeons and hunting monsters than anyone else in the world. He had more than enough skill and confidence to utilize the surrounding area to his advantage, definitely way better than the Sikh goblin tribe who resided here. However, the skeleton soldier skill was different Kim Woo Jin never used the skeleton soldier skill in his past life although he did have a lot of experience fighting against it. Well, it should by some time at least. He really didn't expect much. It will probably have a hard time even winning against one goblin. A goblin skeleton summoned by Kim Woo Jin would have trouble defeating a living goblin. The skeleton soldier skill is only able to reveal its true value only when it is used in conjunction with other skills. Initially, Kim Woo Jin's skeleton soldier skill was only at rank F. Not only that, the combat power of a skeleton soldier was also dependent on the user's mana usage. The higher the mana used, the stronger the attack and defense of the skeleton soldier was. The skeleton soldier skill also required the support of a variety of other skills to truly become strong. Still, it was necessary to test it out first to know for sure. Let's just see how long it lasts. He needed to judge how much damage his skeleton soldier can withstand as well as its capability. Kim Woo Jin immediately used his skill. He didn't need an incantation. The flesh and muscles of the goblin's corpse melted like ice cream on the asphalt. Kim Woo Jin injected his mana into the bones of the goblin, then willed his mana to form a skeleton soldier. Tial Jarik. Tial Jarik. The goblin corpse, which now had nothing left except its skeleton, rose from the ground. War. The eyes of the goblin burned with white flames. Key. Just then, a new goblin appeared as soon as the goblin appeared, the skeleton rushed straight at the goblin. Could it survive for at least ten seconds? It would be much easier to hunt in the future if it could I wonder if I'm expecting too much? Kim Woo Jin watched the scene quietly. Oh my god. When the battle began, Kim Woo Jin decided to completely revise his plan. Why is it so strong? All of his plans, not just the attack on this dungeon. Chapter, 10 The strongest skeleton soldiers Kim Woo Jin knew of were the ones summoned by the King of the Undead. He was the second highest level player next to the Messiah, Lee Sejun he possessed a boundless dominating mana his mana was accumulated through countless achievements and the support of his Halo Johan George's skeleton soldiers were also strengthened by a countless number of powerful skills to form an overwhelming foundation his creations were monsters among monsters that made even monsters in the dungeons tremble in fear. Their combined combat power was so great that even Kim Wu Jin could not afford to ignore them. However, their combat techniques were lacking. Their moves were easy to predict. If skeleton soldiers with strong combat power were supported by advanced combat techniques, Johann George would have dominated the world long ago. Unlike Johann George, the skeleton soldiers that Kim Woo Jin summoned didn't have awful combat techniques. The skill rank is F, the summoner's level is 3, and the size of his mana pool is almost negligible. It was a combat power that could not be described as strong. Kia. However, Kim Woo Jin's skeleton soldier covered for its lack of combat power with good combat techniques when dealing with the goblin. I'm sure now. It was after the skeleton soldier killed its third goblin. It's my style. Kim Woo Jin noticed that his skeleton soldier was fighting like him. In short, the combat skills of skeleton soldiers imitated their summoner. In a way, the way it worked was obvious. Although the world has changed to be like a game, there was no artificial intelligence controlling the summons like an actual game moreover, wasn't it the summoner's mana that allowed that brainless skeleton soldier to move? It's not unexpected at all. It is no wonder that the combat techniques of skeleton soldiers also come from their summoner. I didn't think that this would be the result though. In Kim Woo Jin's mind, it was unthinkable, let alone expected. At the same time, it was a very important surprise. There were no skeleton soldiers in any of Kim Woo Jin's plans. This is going to change how I proceed. Of course the plan had to be changed. I can get rid of my obstacles a lot faster. Kim Woo Jin's plan shifted to a direction that would be more devastating for those who became his prey. There were complaints that Kim Woo Jin heard a lot back when he was a part of the Messiah Guild Woo Jin Appa, please get in sync. Seriously, please be considerate of the person behind you. Hey, Kim Woo Jin. 
we can't do things the way you do it. Be considerate of the people fighting with you. That was just how Kim Woo Jin was. He was different. If everyone else was driving down the road in a normal car, it was like he was driving an F1 race car. There was only one person in the Messiah Guild who could follow Kim Woo Jin's pace. The Messiah Lee Se Jun, he was the only one who was able to keep pace with Kim Woo Jin. No, to be more accurate, Kim Woo Jin was the one that kept pace with Lee Se Jun. Lee Se Jun was always the one who walked in front of Kim Woo Jin and led him. Therefore, he learned how to fight more efficiently, hunt faster, and optimized his hunting strategy. Naturally, he did not listen to his team's complaints. He didn't even try. He thought it was strange for them to complain when he was trying his hardest to save the world from this damn game. He thought that Lee Se Jun, the hero who will save the world, would agree with him. I understand what they were saying to me now. However, Kim inevitably had to reflect on himself after trying to assist a skeleton soldier that fought like him. It has no consideration for its ally. The skeleton soldier that Kim Woo Jin summoned never backed out despite its small size and fleshless bones. Kia. When they found a group of goblins, it rushed in without hesitation instead, they avoided attacks and fought a fierce melee amidst its enemies. This is just a mess. It resulted in an utter mess. That was Kim Woo Jin's style. Head-on engagements were a disadvantageous to him due to always being against a large number of enemies. He would initiate a brawl, killing them one by one until all his enemies were finished. In other words, it meant that those who fought along with him were also forced into a brawl. No, I'd say it's utter chaos. This kind of chaotic fight was dangerous for those who lacked individual combat skills. Kim Woo Jin's skeleton soldier verified this truth with the result on its body. Although it knew how to fight like Kim Woo Jin, there was a limit to the capability of the goblin skeleton The chaotic fighting ultimately had a dire toll on the goblin skeleton's body. Kaya. Kia. The attacks of the goblins chipped away at the body of the skeleton. The skeleton paid the price for wanting to fight a brawl without the necessary ability. It was then. Chwak. The sound of a whip cracked over a goblin's back. It formed a wound deep enough to see the spine. However, the pain was even worse than the wound. Kyuk. The goblin, slashed by the whip, fainted with its eyes rolled without even letting out a proper scream. In the meantime, Kim Woo Jin's whip tore the neck of another goblin. Again, a goblin fell where it stood it died in excruciating pain, briefly screaming before dying. One goblin left. Key. Upon confirming the sudden death of its colleagues, the goblin's eyes immediately fixed towards Kim, and then froze. P.U.K. At that moment, a sword held by the goblin skeleton penetrated into the side of the goblin. That concluded the battle. At the same time, a notification sounded to announce his level up. After the sound, Kim looked around he was on guard before raising his stats. Hmm. Then he saw the goblin skeleton staring at him. It had fiery, burning eyes as if it belonged to a hunting dog that was still hungry. Those eyes even installed fear in its owner. Lee Se Jun, I can vaguely understand how you felt when you looked at me. Kim Woo Jin felt deep satisfaction from what he felt. You fucked me over because you were afraid that I would be a hunting dog that turned on you and shred you apart. No, he wasn't just satisfied. Kim Woo Jin's eyes also began to look similar to his goblin skeleton. I'll gladly become that hunting dog. His eyes expressed violence like that of a hound. For the players, their nicknames were, in a way, an indication of their value. In that sense, the nickname hunting dog was inappropriate. Was it possible to describe Kim Woo Jin's value that defeated even the so-called king? Players with the words hunting dog. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin had many reasons to be nicknamed the hunting dog. One of them was the lack of time. Literally. Players with nicknames that gave off admiration proved their value over a long period of time to earn their nickname. Johann George, the king of the undead, was not a king from the beginning. Brain Janna, the king of deadly poisons, were not called that from the beginning either. Their nicknames were developed steadily and firmly over course of many years. 
Kim Woo Jin, on the other hand, became strong faster than anyone else. They simply didn't have enough time to give him a new nickname. Kim Woo Jin's hunting ability was that fast. Even though he became a player much later than Lee Se Jun, he caught up to Lee Se Jun before anyone else. Eventually, Lee Se Jun felt threatened enough to stab Kim Woo Jin's heart with a sword. When Kim Woo Jin began hunting in earnest, naturally, his pace was unparalleled. Kim Woo Jin's halo showed him greater favoritism than anyone else, even the emissary of the underworld admired his abilities. By his achievements, Kim Woo Jin won favor from his halo. Originally, it was only possible to increase the rank of his skeleton soldier skill by killing monsters with this skill until he reached at least level 20 however, the increase in rank was possible right away due to the halo's gift. I am better than Johann George, I guess. The fact that Kim Woo Jin's proficiency with his skeleton soldier skill was better than Johann George was the evidence. It was a great deed. Yet Kim Woo Jin was not pleased by this level of accomplishment. There was no reason to be particularly pleased. I have to at least maintain this pace to beat Johann George. His opponent was still running at a pace similar to him but at a distance too far ahead to compare. In order to catch up to his enemies, Kim Woo Jin had to do much more. He had to deal with all the players who didn't intend to end this game and he had to also finish this game. There was no reason to make a fuss over such a small gift. Kim Woo Jin quickly settled the situation. Status Window After opening his status window, he invested all the points he gained from his level-ups into Constitution. Skill Window Immediately after, Kim Woo Jin opened his skill window to see the transformation of his ranked-up skeleton soldier skill. Two Foot Now, the number of skeleton soldiers he could summon was two. It was already enough for them to be able to grasp his combat skills Kim Woo Jin immediately prepared for his next hunt. If possible, he intended to hunt until he exterminated all the goblins in the dungeon. Kim Woo Jin's piercing eyes surely suggested so. Piyik. A sharp sound reverberated in the sky, rocking everyone's eardrums. It wasn't a sound that could be produced from the body of an animal it also wasn't the sound of a monster either. A rescue signal. It was a signal used by players when requesting a rescue. With that, a party got in contact with him. As soon as he heard the sound, Kim Woo Jin's expression changed. It was a look of intrigue. Chapter, 11. Players do not get along at all. Particularly in dungeons, the players become very tense. Monsters will be monsters, but the main source of tension came from the competition among players that fiercely increased. The tension was palpable. If a dungeon is cleared, it will disappear whether or not the player's body is still inside. In other words, there is no better environment for killing someone you don't like. Even so, there were cases where a player would send out a rescue signal. Even my sworn enemy is fine, so anyone please. The state of Yang Saek Young's party was very dire. Her party situation did not look hopeful at all. Q. Kia. A group of over 50 goblins surrounded Yang Saek Young's party as they glared with killing intent. How does it look? The wound is too deep I need to stitch this properly. Meanwhile, the formation of Yang Saek Young's party was arranged in a semicircular position in the center was a man with his back leaning against a tree, vomiting blood another man in front of him was working hard to treat him. Damn it! Why did it have to be the priest? The one who was injured was the healer. It was one of the worst problems that a party could face. The value of a healer was indescribable in a dungeon where supplies were limited. Which one attacked him? What drove Yang Saek Young even crazier was the fact that she could not tell which goblin attacked their healer. No, that wasn't a goblin. Damn it I'm sure there's someone who can transform into a goblin. If it was just a goblin, it wouldn't be able to tackle one of Yang Saek Young's members and stab the priest deep in the ribs with a blunt knife. There was something wearing the mask of a goblin. I was too careless come to think of it, there wouldn't just be goblins in a beer rank dungeon. A mysterious monster far stronger than a goblin was wearing a mask that looked like a goblin moreover, it was targeting Yang Saek Young's group. They had no choice but to hastily fire a rescue signal. Anyone is fine so please. 
Despite her wish, Yang Sekyung did not think that the chances of receiving help was high. First of all, it was unlikely that those who noticed the rescue signal were nearby it was also difficult to say that those who did come to help would be much stronger than Yang Sekyung's party. It was obvious that those who could help would be aware of the risks and would move with caution. Simply put, it would take a long time for the rescue to come the priest who urgently needed emergency treatments was most likely going to die. Fuck. When Yang Seikyung's thoughts reached this point, her eyes revealed hopelessness. It was then. Wererek. Flames spread in the front of the Yang Seikyung's party. Fire. Kia. Surprised, Yang Seikyung's party and the goblins both turned toward the direction of the fire PUK. Then an object the size of a goblin's head flew toward the distracted goblins. Kyuk. A goblin was struck by something and fell to the ground after spurting out a brief scream. Puak. Then a few more objects flew in and struck the goblins' heads. Kia. The goblins were outraged by the nuisance. However, the anger did not last long. It was because they recognized the fact that they were not attacked with stones but with heads of their own family members. The murderous, bloodthirsty atmosphere of the battlefield began to cool down rapidly. I, I wonder who it is. I can't believe they cut their heads and threw it. Horrifying. Even the members of Yang Seikyung's party, who were surrounded by goblins were terrified by the scene. As a result, there were no more goblins who were not afraid remaining in the vicinity. The goblins looked around with a terrified expression. Chwak. The sound of a whip tearing at the flesh of goblins filled the air. A goblin that was hit by the whip gave off a shriek. The situation was essentially settled with that. A spreading path of fire, flying heads of their own people, an enemy attack that began and ended with screams of their companions. In such situation, could the goblins really have the ability to regain their composure and act calmly? Key. The goblins began to flee. Ah. As the tables turned, Yang Seikyung and her party breathed a sigh of relief without realizing it. They came. Thank God. The feeling of relief after surviving a near-death experience overwhelmed them however, those feelings did not last long. I don't know who you are but thank you for your help huh? It was because the person who showed up was completely unexpected. Nam what was your name again? I'm Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin appeared. Not long after the goblins left, other two parties arrived. The questions those two parties asked were the same. What? Everyone's fine. Where are the monsters? You didn't send a rescue signal because you wanted to someone to talk to, did you? They had questions regarding what happened even though everything was pretty much over. Oh, that Kakaktu came as well his name what was it again? What? Oh, did you join their party? I see that you are not a good judge of character and way, what was your name? They also did not know Kim Woo Jin's name. What did you say? This dude. This dude saved you guys. Naturally, both of the parties were quite surprised that Kim Woo Jin saved Yang Seikyung's party. Of course, surprise wasn't same as respect. I heard that you guys cleared a dungeon by yourselves before but to request for help because of a small incident like this I guess you weren't much. TSK, TSK, this wouldn't have happened if you lowered your head to us before entering the dungeon. Rather, the two parties belittled Yang Seikyung's party for being rescued by Kim Woo Jin. It was also their way of looking down on Kim Woo Jin. They did not consider Kim Woo Jin to be a significant player. Such an audit did not offend Kim Woo Jin. It didn't make him angry at all. First of all, these stuff were none of Kim Woo Jin's business. Before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past, everyone here was just one of the 119 sacrificial lambs lost to the dungeon. To Kim Woo Jin, their attitude did not matter. Right now is a good time how I can lure them into agreeing to some bets. Kim Woo Jin was working towards this. It doesn't seem like there are only goblins according to their story, there is probably a monster capable of transforming within the group of goblins perhaps a mutant goblin. Kim Woo Jin studied the leaders of the two parties while saying these words. Aren't you mistaken? Originally, you can be bitten by a chihuahua but afterwards, it can become a bulldog in the story, right? It probably was a mistake I mean, 
why would the goblins run away if they had someone so strong? Are you telling me they ran away because they were scared of just you? Of course, their attitude was apathetic. Just in case, we should work together and combine our strength. Ah, uh, I'm done that discussion already ended before we entered the dungeon let's just take care of ourselves. If you die, it's your destiny isn't this a place where everyone fights for their lives? You shouldn't have come to the dungeon if you were afraid of dying. Kim Woo Jin was repeatedly ignored. Yet, Kim Woo Jin insisted on speaking. But aren't we all from the Phoenix Guild? I think we should at least work together a little bit. Kim Woo Jin gave a long sigh and continued. It's not like we're betting on who's going to kill the boss monster, we should cooperate. It was at that moment. I like the sound of that. A man interrupted Kim Woo Jin. No wonder I was bored I guess it's because there wasn't any prize did you say you were Kim Woo Jin? You spoke well let's make a bet like giving something to the one who catches the boss of the dungeon. This was the moment when they bit Kim Woo Jin's bait. Of course, nobody could see through the ruse. How about cash? Ha! Huh. How about a hundred million each? Shall we make a prize pool of about one five billion one? Everybody's got enough to spare. Rather, the man continued to talk boldly about making a bet. If you are scared, you can just get the fuck out of here. He even threw a provocation. Only one hundred million. And in response to the provocation, Yang Seikyung responded with another provocation. She had been desperate for help from anyone a little while ago, but her personality would not allow her to tolerate such provocation. No, she was even more furious because she was helped by Kim Woo Jin. Shit, if the dungeon is cleared like this, I wouldn't be able to show my face in public. If the dungeon was cleared, she and her team were likely to be known as a group of nobodies who was saved by a nobody. Then how about 300 million instead of 100 million? The other party leader was willing to take the bet. Wait, wait a minute. Kim Woo Jin, who remained silent, said with a voice full of nervousness. I don't have that kind of money even my car is a light car cause I don't have the money. However, the people around him did not pay attention to Kim Woo Jin's worries they were more interested in Kim Woo Jin's words. A man shouted. Let's bet our car keys the one that kills the boss takes all the cars in the parking lot. Next time, don't send a rescue signal it's annoying. Let's meet outside the dungeon don't forget to have your car keys ready you'll pay for the taxi fare at least. The three parties scattered again after the farewells. Naturally, there was no interest in Kim Woo Jin during that process. Thank you. The only attention Kim Woo Jin received was from Yang Seik Young and her party as they expressed their gratitude. This kind of treatment made Kim Woo Jin feel a little miffed. I didn't expect to be overlooked this much. Although he expected that he wouldn't be treated well, and even wanted to be ignored to think he would be ignored to such an extent. They deserve to be annihilated. It was also understandable why the Phoenix Guild allowed players like these to become test subjects for this dungeon of course those bastards weren't able to deal with the slime properly they lacked the eyesight to observe their surroundings well enough. Slime. It was the boss monster that currently resided in this dungeon. It was also a very annoying monster to deal with. Although slimes in normal games and novels were even more of a fodder monster than goblins, it was different here. Slimes, which can change its form into any monster, were extremely troublesome to deal with it was far more troublesome than anyone would imagine in order to go against it, experience of dealing with various monsters was required. It was comical to expect the players to have enough experience when they were only LV10 at most. Even though the players here were promising and had excellent qualifications and talent, they lacked the necessary experience. That's why this dungeon turned into a tomb for many promising talents. The players who had enough combat experience to capture the slime hidden among a crowd of goblins could be counted on one hand. Of course, it wasn't a problem for Kim Woo Jin. In the end, the circumstances unfolded in the way Kim Woo Jin desired. Anyway, I guess I can get more benefits from this predicament. Due to their high self-esteem, a competition with prizes was created moreover, the prizes weren't small. Thank God I wouldn't have enough money to fully arm all the skeleton soldiers even if I had all the money in the world. Furthermore, after he confirmed the combat capabilities of his skeleton soldiers, there was a need to invest in their equipment in earnest right away. 
that was not the only reason Kim Woo Jin had in mind. They'll voluntarily act as bait. More importantly to Kim Woo Jin, the three parties will only aim to catch the slime, the boss monster. The three parties will actively explore and chase the slime, ignoring the rest. While they do that, all I have to do is diligently catch the small fries. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, having the slime as a dessert after having his fill on goblins that were overflowing within this dungeon was the most appropriate strategy. Two goblin skeletons expressed their will to Kim Woo Jin. Teal Juriak. Teal Juriak. They were signaling that they were eager to fight. The emissary of the underworld has taken interest in your battle. And Kim Woo Jin's halo prompted Kim Woo Jin to fight. Thump. Thump. And Kim Woo Jin's heart also urged Kim Woo Jin to fight. The hunting dog slaughter has begun. Kakak do radish cubes. Chapter 12. The most important preparation when clearing a dungeon was deciding the amount of food rations to bring. Really good players can plan precisely how much food they will consume even before entering the dungeon. Of course, players with mediocre talent can be good planners as well. That's just a fact of life. Making a plan was something even an elementary school student could do. For instance, making a schedule for their summer assignments. The hard part was following through on the plan. In this sense, it was not easy to follow the plan inside a dungeon. First of all, there were too many variables to consider in a dungeon. The biggest variables were the players. There is no way to predict what each human would do. For example, starting a competition for killing the boss monster. Of course, it is impossible to just attack it right from the beginning. In the case of goblins, there are always over 50 goblins following around their leader most of the day, they spend their time in their den, where hundreds of goblins reside. Then what should you do? You can wait. Wait for the boss monster to leave their den with its minions, which usually happen to lie in the middle of a forest. Of course, waiting was not all you had to do. It may work out if you could visually distinguish which one is the boss otherwise, targeting the boss can be tricky. You have to be certain which one is the boss if you are mistaken, that is, if you attack the wrong monster it can put your whole party in a very dire situation. Actually, targeting the boss was not a bad idea. After all, wasn't the most difficult part over if you dispose of the boss. As I mentioned before, the problem was that wasting time like this when you have a limited amount of food was no better than throwing your food in a dumpster. It is natural to be worried about these problems even though that anxiety might turn into recklessness later on. They should be moving soon. Kim Woo Jin he moved the moment when other people's anxiety turned into recklessness. On the fourth day inside the dungeon, a five-man party led by Kim Sun Jong jumped at a group of goblins that's him. That guy over there with a scar on his head. Their goal was obvious. Let's finish this quickly. Blitzkrieg. Their aim was to kill the slime disguised as a goblin in an instant. Of course, they were confident. First of all, they figured out that a slime attacked Young Saek Young's party, and they identified the slime that was disguised as a goblin. Their confidence in defeating the boss was also at its peak. It's just a slime, it's going to be so easy. Slime. What a laughable name. On the other hand, Kim Sun Jong and his group were promising players recognized by the one and only Phoenix Guild. Furthermore, Kim Sun Jong had the experience of clearing an Irank Goblin dungeon by himself, rightfully receiving his nickname, Goblin Slayer. Although only about 10 people in the world knew about his nickname, he was extremely confident in fighting against goblins regardless of the situation. His weapons were also rare items, each of them were worth as much as 800 million won. That Lamborghini is mine. I always wanted a Bentley, this is great. Kim Sun Jong and his party also had a strong motivation to empower them toward their goal they had enough determination to last for a few days even after the boss was slain. On the other hand, that was it. They only had confidence and determination, no solid plan for actually realizing their goal. Kim Sun Jong, the leader of the party, realized that when he slashed the goblin with a scar on his head with a 800 million one sword. P.U.K. His sword cleanly slashed through the body of the goblin. Huh. At that moment, 
Kim Sun Jong's goblin slayer instincts told him. It's not this guy. It told him that this one was just a real goblin. It's not the boss slime monster. The real slime was behind Kim Sun Jong. Kua. When Kim Sun Jong turned his head after realizing the situation, a punch came from a slime that transformed into an ugly orc, not a goblin the punch headed toward his face. Kim Sun Jong tightly closed his eyes. Kang. At that moment, the orc's fist rushed towards Kim Sun Jong's head, who was wearing a helmet. Puduk. The sounds of broken bones crackled from Kim Sun Jong's neck. Hey Sun Jong. Mr. Sun Jong. Immediately, cries for his name poured out as well. Kwong. Finally, Kim Sun Jong's body hit the ground. Ugh. A gasp came out of Kim Sun Jong's mouth. In other words, Kim Sun Jong was still alive. Of course, he was only alive. It was impossible for him to fight with a broken neck. He was lucky to survive however, his fellow companions weren't lucky at all. Kia. While a group of goblins and a slime with the form of an orc still remaining, Kim Sunjong's party now had to fight with a burden known as Kim Sunjong. At this moment, an alarm flashed through everyone's head. Shouldn't we abandon him? According to the instruction manuals, we should abandon him. They had to struggle with the fact that everyone might die if they continue to try to save Kim Sunjong. However, no one could outright say that they should abandon Kim Sunjong. The rescue signal. The best option they had was to ask for help. Unfortunately, even that did not happen. In their heads, they remembered how they ridiculed and laughed at the members of Yang Saekyung's party. Pride a human defect that always led people to make terrible choices, held them back. Gather around Kim Sun Jong. Heal him while we stop the monster. Yes. Finally, Kim Sun Jong's party decided to protect Kim Sun Jong. Three people surrounded Kim Sun Jong as if they were guarding him, and one healer started treating him. Meanwhile, the goblins and a slime in orc form attacked the party. The goblins in the distance threw stones. Kaya. The goblins nearby charged toward the party. The slime in orc form struck a shield that was stopping its path with hammer like fists. Fucking goblin bastards. Hang in there. Hold out till the end. Just the fact that they were not screaming or getting overwhelmed with fear was proof that Kim Sun Jong's group was more competent than most parties. By all means, they had no intention of prolonging this battle they would flee as soon as Kim Sun Jong received the minimal treatment to allow him to escape. It's finished. Finally, it was time. We are gonna fire one. The magician in the rear finished preparing his spell and fired a gigantic fireball toward the horde of goblins. Kualung. On impact, the huge ball of fire exploded like a grenade. As the goblins screamed and died, Kim Sun Jong's companions fled with Kim Sun Jong. The slime in orc form let out a horrifying shriek toward Kim Sun Jong's party. Chase after them. It commanded the goblins. Key. Inadvertently, after hearing the command of their leader, the goblins stepped back in horror. It was a goblin's instinct to be terrified by the voice of their natural predator, an orc. Facing such a dilemma, the slime immediately reverted back to the form of a goblin. The orc's body melted like a candle, and in an instant it solidified into a goblin. The slime gave out the order to pursue Kim Sun Jong's party once again. Then the goblins began to chase the party, one by one. However, many of the goblins were still hesitant. The slime screamed at the goblins once more, and the hesitant goblins finally moved their ass. Key. The slime's face was wrinkled by the sight of the pathetic goblins he wore a look of rage. It was at that moment. Something emerged from behind the slime. Kia. The moment the frustrated slime turned its head, translucent wires was already wrapped around his neck. Pong. The wire was pulled tightly as the slime turned its head and looked into the eyes of the person behind him. The slime's eyes enlarged to the point that it looked like it was about to pop out. Ki, kek. Sounds of choking and desperate gasps for air came out from the slime. Tial Jarik. Tial Jarik. Rustling from Kim Woojin's skeleton soldiers as they rushed toward the slime with knives was also heard. 
In a moment, the slime changed its form to that of an orc. He wanted to increase the thickness of his neck to that of an orc, and not something as flimsy and weak like a goblin. He intended to cut the translucent wire around his neck in one brisk motion. Kyuhak. However, the translucent wires did not break, it did not even stretch. It is made from spider web from snake spiders that only appear in three floor dungeons it isn't something that you can break out of. The astonishing strength of the spider silk suddenly became apparent, which costs about 10 million won per meter. Moreover, the advantage of the snake spider's web wasn't just the high tensile strength and low elasticity, it was an extremely strong adherent as well. It was as if the slime's neck was chained to an inseverable collar. Around that time, the skeleton soldiers began their onslaught. The skeleton soldiers did not swing their knives around like clueless goblins. They found out it was more effective to make small cuts and wounds rather than stabbing with all their strength. Swike. Swike. Like that, skeleton soldiers littered the orc shaped slime's body with cuts and wounds. Key, key. At this moment, there was only one thing that the slime could do. Smaller, it had to change its form into something that was smaller than an orc. The slime's form began to change from an orc back into a goblin. Naturally, the pressure around its neck lessened. However, when it transformed back to a goblin once again, its face became extremely pale. Pew up. Blood spurted out from the slime's mouth, which was currently in the form of a goblin. It was worth diligently drawing out its blood. When the slime became smaller, the concentration of Kim Woojin's poisonous blood inside its body became more concentrated until it became lethal. The notification that signaled the end of the battle was heard. But Kim did not stop at the announcement. Instead, Kim dug through the melted body of the slime, which was now translucent. Kim Woojin picked up a ring. At that moment, a single holographic window appeared before him. Transformed Slime's Ring it was a unique item. It possessed options befitting a unique item. It was hard to find an item that gave so much stats at level 10. Moreover, it wasn't even a weapon, it was an accessory. If he were to sell it, he could get enough money to buy all the cars in the parking lot right now. It's as Jae-hoon said. Of course, Kim Woo-jin wasn't planning on selling such a nice item. That was the opposite of his intentions. It was worth the effort. In order to raise money for nice items, Kim Woo-jin endured all the mockery and contempt. Naturally, Kim Woo-jin wore the ring without any hesitation. Status Window The status page instantly appeared before him. Kim Woo-jin allocated all the unallocated stat points that he received from the level UPS to his constitution. There's only one thing left now. Let's end it after checking out the catalog. He had to check out the catalog given to players for their respectable Halo once they reached LV10. Naturally, Kim Woojin did not expect much from it. Kim Woojin knew that his luck wasn't so great when it came to catalogs. Catalog. Then there was no brilliance coming from the thin catalog that appeared. Like I thought, there is no light. There was no silver light, or gold light. Instead, there was one page that appeared to be made of obsidian. Chapter, 13. All the items that one could get from a dungeon are divided into four ranks, normal, rare, unique, and legendary. Of these, the value of legendary rank items were priceless. To be precise, one cannot replace a legendary item no matter the cost. This is because there are no duplicates of legendary items. It was also the reason why players sometimes started wars to kill each other rather than the monsters. Legendary items became a necessity for dungeons with six or more floors. Furthermore, if players were able to enter dungeons that were higher than six floors, they were most likely the best players in their respective guilds. The more prominent the Messiah guild became, the more conflicts between players intensified. Naturally, the guilds who did not wish for the Messiah guild's success in clearing the dungeons refused to cooperate with them in the end, the Messiah guild had to resort to violence. Their favorite method of violence that they utilized in his past life was himself, the hunting dog, Kim Woojin. After the seven floor dungeons appeared, Kim Woojin spent more days working on hunting players rather than monsters. In a way, the situation for legendary item was not as bad as for legendary skills. 
You could rob the items, but in order to obtain legendary skills, you either had to make a deal with the skills owner or else the only other thing you could do was kill the owner. Of course, the existence of a legendary skill was kept a secret even among close friends. Kim Wu Jin just acquired such a skill. Eyes of Anubis. Required condition, emissary of the underworld skill level, LV1 or higher skill effect, allow the user to glimpse a dead person's memory. A legendary rank skill. Eyes of Anubis. Furthermore, Kim Wu Jin knew the owner of this skill in his previous life. It was Detective Arsen's ability. Detective Arsen. This person had an amazing detective ability he could track mysterious or unknown items. He made enormous profits from the war that began in 2025. He eventually became a member of the Messiah Guild in a branch located in China he made critical contributions to the Messiah Guild. Kim Wu Jin had a very close relationship with him. Once Detective Arsen tracked the location of an item the Messiah Guild needed, the hunting dog Kim Wu Jin went on a hunt to retrieve the item. This skill made a mediocre nobody into a monster that toyed with other people's lives. Detective Arsen's ability was mainly thanks to this skill, Eyes of Anubis. It can read the memory of the dead this was the best ability when it comes to making someone a great detective. Naturally, Kim Wu Jin did not like him. In the first place, he chose the Messiah Guild only because he determined that the Messiah Guild would provide him the greatest benefits in the later stages of the game. He did not join the Messiah Guild for its noble values or ideology. I bet it was the first name Lee Sejun crossed out on the kill list. On the other hand, Kim Wu Jin was probably the first name to be placed on the kill list. Kim Wu Jin had very good reasons to hate such a person. Who would have thought I would retire him like this? Anyway, to Kim Wu Jin, it was an unexpected harvest. The Messiah Guild no longer has their hunting dog detective duo. The detective and hunting dog who played a crucial role in securing the items for the Messiah Guild has now disappeared. And. However, the primary reason Kim Wu Jin welcomed the skill was something different. Park Shinhai once I kill that bitch, I will be able to see her memories and the plans of those bastards. What the purpose and agenda of the Messiah Guild was and how involved that person was. How the Messiah Guild reached out to the world and eventually swallowed it. The eyes of Anubis will make it possible. The potential for the eyes of Anubis was endless. The world was full of people who had illegally acquired wealth obtained through crooked plots and outrageous crimes. Kim Wu Jin smiled and pulverized the obsidian skill page in his hand. The powdered obsidian rode his arm and merged into Kim Wu Jin's two eyes. Afterwards, Kim Wu Jin's eyes turned pitch black. It was then. You have acquired Eyes of Anubis, Achievement Legendary Successor, has been acquired, Achievement Eyes of Anubis has been acquired, due to the effect of Achievement Legendary Successor, your inventory space is increased by 5, due to the effect of Achievement Eyes of Anubis, your inventory space is increased by 5, the Emissary of the Underworld is very intrigued by your choice. Kim Wu Jin kept hearing messages about his newly acquired power through the notifications. Just like how every city has its districts, there exists factions in a guild. Rather, on the contrary, no other type of organization is more likely to form factions than a guild. Basically, the players usually group in parties of four or five. On the other hand, there are usually hundreds of players in a guild, and over a thousand in the case of the large guilds such as the Phoenix Guild. Hundreds of parties have gathered in one guild, and they are treated differently depending on their abilities and performance. However, it isn't their ideology or values that bind them together. It's a situation where it's inevitable for factions to arise. As soon as a one-floor B-ranking dungeon appeared in Songnam City, three different factions or parties were dispatched within the guild. It was normal for factions to complain about misfortunes and losses. It was also natural that the blame and complaints would be directed towards the weaker members. Anyone is fine, so please come out safely. Just don't die please don't die. If you are going to die, come out and die. That's why the members of the Phoenix Guild Dungeon Support Team prayed earnestly for the player's safe return. The dungeon is cleared. They heard their long-awaited announcement. Upon hearing the news, the members of the support team left the barracks and ran hard towards the gate. Those involved in the guild were not the only ones to move. 
Ah. Uh. The dungeon is cleared. Really? This quick? The soldiers were also interested and started moving after hearing the news that they could finally return back to their base. Soon, they cheered for a man who just crossed the gate. It's over. UAA. Among the cheers, Phoenix Guild support team member Chang Young Soo approached the first returner and said, Mr. Kim Woo Jin, thank you for your efforts. Kim Woo Jin showed him a smile. Yes, thank you for your efforts as well. Please give me back my luggage. Chang Young Soo nodded, then shouted Kim Woo Jin's name toward another employee, and a support staff member immediately brought a plastic box that contained Kim Woo Jin's belongings. Kim Woo Jin took his car key and smartphone from the box, then told Chang Young Soo. Ah, could you also get me a pen and a notepad? Yes. Chang Young Soo slightly questioned the request, but soon nodded and got what Kim Woo Jin asked for. As Chang Young Soo was bringing along the requested pen and a notebook, Kim Woo Jin was taking pictures of the expensive foreign cars lined up in the parking lot with his smartphone, one by one. He wasn't taking the pictures of them normally either. It felt like he wasn't taking a picture to remember them by, but more like a used car dealer trying to take pictures in order to sell a car. He even took close pictures of the tires. What is he doing? Chang Young Soo tilted his head in confusion then handed over the things requested by Kim Woo Jin. Excuse me, I brought the things you have requested. Ah, thank you. Then Kim Woo Jin wrote something on the note he received and handed it over to the staff member. What's this? Chang Young Soo asked, and Kim Woo Jin replied with a smile. That's my bank account number. If you deliver it to the people that come out after me they will know what it is. UAA. Once again, cheering was heard near the dungeon gate, and the cheers kept coming. Players, one after the other, were coming out of the dungeon. After hearing footsteps, Chang Young Su turned to look at the players exiting the gate. At the same time, Chang Young Su looked extremely nervous. Kim Woo Jin was just a kakakdu. In this attack on the dungeon, and there were no major issues even if he were to die. On the other hand, all the players that came out one by one were all important people with significant backgrounds. It was natural that his interest in Kim Woo Jin was put on hold. One, two foot. Chang Young Soo counted the number of people coming through the gate one by one however, he noticed that Kim Woo Jin's car engine already started. Bure Young. Between the Ferrari and Lamborghini, a small car that was parked between them let out a pathetic roar, then Chang Young Soo came to his senses. Report. As a member of the support team that was tasked in writing a report, he could not let Kim Woo Jin just go. Wah, wait a minute. Chang Young Soo, who arrived near the car door said urgently. Rep, report, we still have to write a report. Kim Woo Jin answered the question. I will go to the guild headquarters and directly submit it myself. In response, the support staff's face stiffened as if they heard that it was the end of the world. In his defense, this was the first time, including his dreams, that he saw a player go to the guild headquarters to directly submit a report themselves. Towards the shocked staff, Kim Woo Jin explained with a smile. If you want, just report what I said to team leader Jong Woo Suk tell him my name and he'll understand oh, yeah. Kim Woo Jin took out his wallet that was sitting in his front passenger seat and took out some 10, 001 and 1001 bills. The total amount seemed to be about 100, 001. Kim Woo Jin handed the money over to Chang Young Soo. Distribute it to the other players in reasonable amounts. Wah, what's this? It's their taxi fee. After leaving behind those words, Kim Woo Jin left Songnam City. Year 2023, a world where casual words can become viral after traveling around the world in a mere second. The incident in Songnam City did not take a long time to spread among the players in Korea. Someone killed a transforming slime. Isn't a transforming slime very difficult to catch? Who caught it? What did you say? Someone killed it alone. What's his name? Kim Woo Jin. Phoenix Guild affiliate. It hasn't even been a month since he became a player. It was the moment when Kim Woo Jin's name was spread among the Korean players. However, it was his name that was spread around, not the truth. Instead, distorted information began to spread like wildfire. 
I heard that he stole the monster while it was almost dead thanks to another party. Apparently he snatched it from a rising star, Kim Sun Jun. In the first place, he was able to join as a kakaktu to gain experience, but he hit them in the back of their head. What a son of a bitch. Yeah, what a bastard. Instead of being known as a rising star who caught a transforming slime by himself, Kim Woo Jin began to be known as a son of a bitch. Who betrayed the people who helped him? At the same time. You're amazing. Not at all. Kim Woo Jin was talking with Zhang Woo Suk, the support team leader, at the headquarters of the Phoenix Guild. Their discussion began shortly after Kim Woo Jin wrote a report when he returned to the main headquarters. Of course, they weren't there just to chit chat. No, this is really something. It's a big deal no matter what other people say about you. You don't have to flatter me that much I was expecting bad rumors about me to spread. Zhang Wu Suk, the team leader, already realized it when he received the report regarding the dungeon clear. It was inevitable for bad rumors about Kim Wu Jin to spread. Things went awry from the start. The main show of this dungeon attack were supposed to be the three parties. One of them should have been in the spotlight. However, the player who joined the show as an extra became the main character of the story furthermore, all three parties have their own factions behind them, whereas Kim Woo Jin does not belong to any faction. From the perspective of the three factions, they had to bite Kim Woo Jin for the sake of their image and pride. No, they had to bite Kim Woo Jin in order to protect their reputations. Zhang Wu Suk, the head of the support team, arranged a meeting with Kim Wu Jin to console him in such a situation Zhang Wu Suk was blinded by his favoritism to him, Kim Wu Jin was more appealing than the players who squabbled over their self-interests it also helped that Kim Wu Jin saved the other players by intervening. But I still think it was necessary if I didn't come forward to help, it would have lead to some serious damage to the other players. Right if Mr. Kim Wu Jin didn't fight, someone would have died. Above all, according to Kim Woo Jin's report, if Kim Woo Jin did not intervene the way he did, there certainly would have been in the least a few victims. Obviously, he could not believe everything Kim Woo Jin wrote, but it was still crystal clear that it was Kim Woo Jin who caught the transforming slime. That was the end of the story. A player's only duty was to clear the dungeon and exterminate what's inside. I'm just happy that everyone survived, and am confident I can handle any insults. Kim Woo Jin knew the reality of the situation and acted accordingly. Team leader Zhang Woo Suk was truly impressed by Kim Woo Jin's demeanor and how he handled the situation he was composed no matter the issue. At the same time, some doubts arose. Why would a person like him join our guild? Whoever saw Kim Woo Jin like this would think that he was more suited for the Messiah Guild, not the Phoenix Guild. Naturally, he didn't contemplate the question for very long. There's no reason to doubt a player who was sincere, self-sacrificing, cooperative, reasonable, and moral. I'm glad you think so as you say, there will be bad rumors spreading about you right away but keep this in mind that the Phoenix Guild is on your side. Thank you. Kim Woo Jin let out a long sigh. It was a really long sigh. You are worried about something? It was such a long sigh that Zhang Woo Suk felt he had no choice but to ask. Kim Woo Jin responded as if he was waiting for that question. I think time will solve this problem, but I was wondering if there is anything I can do to improve my image. Countless options surfaced in the team leader's mind. I can't say that there isn't any but. The problem is that there's too many. In fact, there were countless ways players could help society and improve their reputations. However, most players didn't bother. Everyone cleared dungeons for their self-interests they only choose the safest way to benefit themselves, not caring a damn about the rest of the world. If players normally lived with the determination to save and help the world, the Messiah Guild would not have been so widely admired. Entering dungeons that the other's players rejected or entering a dungeon to rescue other teams is enough. However, even though players signed a contract with the Phoenix Guild, there were still dungeons that the players didn't want to enter, eating away at the nation's finances. If such dungeons were cleared, your reputation is sure to become much better. However, it's avoided because it really is dangerous. Of course, it only meant that the dungeon was dangerous enough to dominate the ordinary players. Then I will do it. Therefore, team leader Zhang Wu Suk revealed admiration upon hearing Kim Wu Jin's answer. 
Kim Woo Jin placed a wedge into team leader Jong Woo Suk's heart. I'd be happy to do it if I can. Team leader Jong Woo Suk thought. I've never seen such a nice, hardworking young man in all my life. Chapter 14 In the year 2020, when Dungeons and Monsters first appeared in the world, people thought the end of the world was near then players appeared at the time, the people viewed the players as hope, rising from the ground. By the year 2023, the world actually became even more unstable as time went by, rather than getting better. The world's economic growth rate has been negative for four consecutive years, the worst economic crisis in history is near. Crude oil prices are approaching over 150 per barrel. In the past few years, the worldwide economic growth rate has stayed negative, price of goods as well as unemployment has soared, and the property damage caused by monsters has sobbled out of control. In Somalia, the disbandment of the country is underway. There are large migrations of Eastern European refugees. In Africa, South America, and Eastern Europe, where the governments lack the capacity to function or operate, countries and governments began to disband or collapse. Even so, what was more frustrating of all was the players' greed the only way to get players to attack dungeons and solve the problem was by throwing enough money at them. As the years went on, the players' demands for money increased. The European Guild Union demands a 30% increase on their dungeon clear rewards and salary. USA Special Players Act passed. Players will receive a 10% income tax exemption. Will governments just continue to accept the demands of the players? Now, it has reached the point where players are exercising enormous leveraging power as well as lobbying to pass laws that benefit them more. In such a world, there was only one ray of light that people could trust. The Messiah Guild is the first to clear a five-floor dungeon. Lee Sejun, he saves the world again. Hansung Group stock price soars. The Messiah Guild. They put their lives on the line in order to try to save the world that's why they were the only ones praised by the world. In contrast, the rest of the players were rather quiet when it came to talking about the Messiah Guild. No player wanted to speak of the noble achievements of the Messiah Guild. It was to be expected. The Messiah Guild cleared a five-floor dungeon. Guess it's time for people to curse at us now. With the presence of the Messiah Guild making all the other players of the world look like greedy, blood-sucking leeches, for players to talk about the Messiah Guild was like rubbing their shit on their face, bringing shame to their own reputations. Fucking Messiah Guild I mean, it's not like we committed a crime, is it? They should be thankful to chosen beings like us for fighting to protect their lives. The Messiah Guild was an especially sensitive topic for the Phoenix Guild. The greater the public's affection for the Messiah Guild was, the greater the criticism of the players became, and the brunt of the criticism was directed toward the Phoenix Guild, the second-ranked Korean guild that happened to be right behind the Messiah Guild. The mood was violently crushed when the Phoenix Guild heard news that the Messiah Guild cleared a five-floor dungeon. Under such circumstances, there was nothing the players of the Phoenix Guild could do. Anyway, did you hear about that story? What story? That new recruit who kicked the others in the head. An escape from reality. They began to console themselves by chewing on their easier opponents. Ah, that bastard Kim Woo Jin. The sacrificial lamb was Kim Woo Jin. He really is an asshole. Although the Phoenix Guild has already officially stated that the dungeon clear issues involving Kim Woo Jin were false and that Kim Woo Jin was not guilty, no one paid attention to it. Kim Jin Woo, what a son of a bitch. His name is Kim Jin Woo, right? I'll have to talk to him later when I see him that you have to be mindful don't you think that bastards like him give other players bad reputations? No, never mind Kim Woo Jin's face, many people who swore at Kim Woo Jin did not even know his name. It was evident that they had no interest in the truth. The only thing that was important was that Kim Woo Jin is an easy enough target to chew on freely. Naturally, they were not interested in Kim Woo Jin's movements either. Mr. Kim Woo Jin has asked for support it's in one floor C rank dungeon after the incident where all three parties, a total of nine people, including John Yong Kyu's party wiping out was known, no one has applied for this dungeon for a month. No player was interested in the fact that Kim Woo Jin is challenging a dungeon, which all players ignored after three failed attempts. It was clear that they were just not interested. Who is John Yong Kyu? 
He was a rising star in Park Yeonwon's faction don't you remember sir? He was the one that frantically asked us to sign him up for AB rank dungeon, claiming that he was like a little brother of Park Yeonwon. Oh, that little bastard. I remember now. What should I do? Since there was no reason to doubt Kim Woo Jin, there was no problem. What do you mean what should I do? You should give full support to a person who is willing to do the right thing did he make any additional requests. Ah, that there was one particular request. What is it? He asked for some gas money. Gas money? That guy didn't he take a lot of money from a bet? The kids who got their money taken by him went crazy, right? Apparently, he spent it all on buying a skill page. Just like that, Kim Woo Jin's third dungeon was decided. Blood weapon. Skill rank, F skill effect, you can make weapons using your own blood. Skill effect, you can make weapons using your own blood. Kim Woo Jin looked at his newly acquired skill. It was a skill bought using the money he got in exchange for the cars he won in the bet. To think I got this for 1 billion won. The price was 1 billion won. It was beyond common sense and imagination. Since its effects were not impressive, it was even more difficult to understand the price. I got it for a cheap price. However, Kim Woo Jin, who looked at the skill, was satisfied with the price. I'm glad I can get it with money. On the contrary, he was satisfied with the fact that he was able to acquire a skill that was exclusively for his Halo, the Emissary of the Underworld, which is difficult to find at this time. I can use blood poisoning more effectively. Furthermore, Kim Woo Jin could not wait to see the synergy between the blood poisoning skill he already learned and the blood weapon skill that he just got. It's not a problem I can just earn it all back again, after all. Above all, Kim Woo Jin was not too concerned about money issues. If I can catch his tail properly in this time, I might be able to rip him up completely. The person Kim Woo Jin was aiming for was a big fish that he had been searching for a while. The traitor Park Yong Won. Park Yong Won, nicknamed Traitor. As his nickname indicates, he literally betrayed his country. In 2025, when the world began starting wars to secure items for their players, he was among the players that moved to Japan with the items secured by the Korean players. In addition, he was one of four people who passed the 100 items ownership mark in the Phoenix Guild. By this point, this guy must have collected a lot. He was also known to have the most funds and items collected of the four core members in the Phoenix Guild. To begin with, he was committing all sorts of illegal and corrupt activities. Kim Woo Jin found that he was not only engaged in the trafficking of monster corpses and arms trafficking, but also in the illegal dungeon clearing business as well as drug trafficking. In a way, he was a man of great capacity. It wasn't easy to do his job and perform his duties as a player while committing atrocious crimes behind the scenes. No one had even suspected it until he sold out his country. He was a man who built a flawless castle without anybody noticing. At this point in time, he may already have the legendary Sane Sword. The biggest mistake he made in the past was owning the legendary Sane Sword. Otherwise, he would have been targeted by the hunting dog a bit later in his life. It was also one of Kim Woo Jin's biggest reason for joining the Phoenix Guild. The Messiah Guild is for heroes. If you touch a guild member, there will be a severe retaliation in contrast, the Phoenix Guild is overwhelmed with trash. It was full of criminals who could not change the way they live. Kim Woo Jin, a criminal hunter, knew better than anyone how to make use of them. That's why he chose this dungeon. Once I find the body of a man named Jean Yugyu who belonged to the Park Yongwon faction and read his memory, I can get a clue. It will be a good chance to get info on the cartel that Park Yongwon has built on Korean soil. In that manner, Kim Woo Jin arrived at the location of his third dungeon, in Chuncheon City. The biggest change with the arrival of dungeon gates were the property prices. In the metropolitan area of Seoul and Gangnam in particular, House prices have soared to the point that it was almost impossible to get it with just money. On the other hand, house prices of areas other than Jiangi province and non-metropolitan cities have practically become worthless. Even with the increase of players, the emergence of mercenaries, and the deployment of the military, the areas with lower population densities were relatively susceptible to monsters. Kongwon province was not much better either. 
located in the mountains, where it was not easy to hunt monsters, cities in Kongwan province were basically ghost towns. The city of Chunchen, where Kim Woo Jin arrived, was no different. Chunchen city was once known for having the highest quality chicken breasts in the country, attracting countless tourists however, now, Chunchen city was left abandoned without any visitors. The only people who could be sighted were soldiers, policemen, and mercenaries with guns preparing for a monster breakout. Even more miserable scenes became visible as they approached the Gongjikian Sculpture Park, Kim Woo Jin's destination. The place certainly does give off a strong sense of being a graveyard of players. A dungeon where three parties have already died, a dungeon that was practically impossible for a new challenger, was currently a monster factory. To change this atmosphere, Kim Woo Jin and his colleagues had risked their lives by fighting. On the other hand, Kim Woo Jin was already used to situations like this. The pride of bringing a sense of security to the world made Kim Woo Jin feel desperate but noble. Damn those bastards! Kim Woo Jin grimaced after recalling those memories. With a twisted face, Kim Woo Jin got out of the car. Soon after, a man came towards Kim Woo Jin and asked, You're Mr. Kim Woo Jin, right? I am Cho Min Jiai, a member of the support team. Cho Min Jiai, a member of the support team, looked more like a mercenary than a member of the support team. He held an automatic rifle, wore a black vest, and a military issue hat. It was an undeniable proof of what kind of place this was. The number of players increased as more and more dungeon gates spawned however, the number of staff for managing and monitoring the dungeons was always limited due to the fact that most players only lingered in one floor dungeons they tried to live their lives selfishly and luxuriously without any danger. If there were enough resources and staff, it would be deployed to Gangnam first for sure. Even the staff of the Phoenix Guild support team had to protect themselves. By the way, did you really come alone? Kim Woo Jin's presence did not inspire hope in him. Soon enough, a rumor about Kim Woo Jin surfaced inside Cho Min Jiai's head after reconfirming Kim Woo Jin's car. I guess the rumor was true he's a trash bastard who backstabbed his team, so no one's going to party up with him. As he recalled the rumor, Cho Min Jiai showed disapproval in his face. It was rude. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin was a player who came to clear the dungeon that everyone else avoided. Fortunately, Cho Min Jiai was never questioned by Kim Woo Jin. Whying. A number of warning devices began to sound, flashing their red warning lights. Monsters. Monsters came out from the gate. Responses to the sound also came from all around him. Cho Min Jiai was also frightened by the uproar. Let's, in the meantime, let's. Cho Min Jiai had not completely forgotten his role. Lo let's move to a safer spot for now. The role of the support team was to help the players reach the dungeon safely. Of course, for the moment, Cho Min Jiai needed to take Kim Woo Jin to a safe place. In response to Cho Min Jiai, Kim Woo Jin replied briefly. Gun. Kim Woo Jin requested the automatic rifle that the staff had. Ah, uh, yes. Cho Min Jiai finally figured out Kim Woo Jin's intentions. However, it was too late to think. Kua. The monsters that made their way out of the gate were four orcs running toward Kim Woo Jin and Cho Min Jiai. Ugh. Cho Min Jiai threw the gun at Kim Woo Jin as if he was abandoning him to die, frightened by the orcs. He was about to run away immediately. Yuag. Unfortunately, his legs got tangled and he fell on the spot. Cho Min Jiai's face instantly lost all color, turning pale. Kim Woo Jin, on the other hand, was very relaxed and was checking out the state of the gun he was given. At first, it looked as if he had no intention of escaping. There was no reason to actually run away. Clang! Kim Woo Jin, who checked the condition of his gun, started to fire the powerful weapon in his hand that was incomparably better than weapons such as a whip, knife, poisons, and his skeleton soldiers. 2. It was a single shot. Kim Woo Jin fired just one shot at a time like in a shooting drill, not a quick fire. Like that, four gunshots echoed. Thud. After the sound of four gun fires, the four orcs running toward Kim Woo Jin fell to the ground as if they were narcolepsy patients. Kim Woo Jin aimed the gun across his visible field, 
scanned it once, and confirmed that there were no more orcs before handing the gun over to the original owner. Can I ask you a favor before entering the dungeon? Yes. Cho Minjiai, who received the gun, behaved as if his soul was blown in half Kim Woo Jin told him, taking the car key out of his pocket. Please fill up my car with gas all the way I'd appreciate it if you would also fill my car with some windshield washer fluid as well. Chapter, 15 Kim Woo Jin, who entered the dungeon, checked through the contents of the dungeon once more using the quest window. Then Kim Woo Jin looked up and saw a narrow wooded area in front of him. There was only one thought that came to Kim Woo Jin's mind when he saw the terrain. Using a whip will be difficult here. He thought that it would be hard to use a whip in this dungeon but such thoughts did not last long. It's useless against orcs anyway. First of all, Kim Woo Jin did not bring his whip to the dungeon. This wasn't odd at all. The whip was a powerful weapon however, it will inevitably lose most of its power against an opponent with armor or a formidable defense, and it will decrease in efficacy even more against a monster who is resistant to pain. Meaning, for orcs with massive muscular bodies, thick leather, and a strong resistance against pain, the goblin champion's whip was not very useful. Furthermore, the fear effect of the whip only worked on goblins. There was no reason to insist on using the whip under such circumstances. Item Window So, what Kim Woo Jin prepared was a sword that he took out of the item window. Kim Woo Jin immediately put his hand into the holographic window and pulled the knife out of the box. Like how a magician pulls a stick out of his hat, a scimitar appeared. The shape of the blade that appeared was not special at all. However, the price of the sword was extremely expensive, costing more than 70 million won the reason as to why the sword cost so much was that it is a rare grade sword. Most players thought that swords were the best weapons humans ever invented, so they were traded at more than twice the price of other weapons of the same grade. Of course, Kim Woo Jin did not truly think that a sword was useless. It's been a long time since I held a sword. On the contrary, Kim Woo Jin was used to the sword more than anybody, and at the same time, was unparalleled in its use. He just didn't intend to ignore the shortcomings of swords. Cool. While Kim Woo Jin was thinking about the shortcomings of swords, an orc appeared in front of him. Kim Woo Jin always explained to his teammates. The crux of a battle is about adapting to the situation, not matching the enemy. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin always made sure to be in the advantageous position when hunting his enemies. Actually, Kim Woo Jin's favorite moments were when just the two of them, he and his enemy, met each other in a remote place. The enemy that the orc was approaching all by himself was that kind of an enemy. A hunting dog who was stronger and more thorough than anyone else in a one-to-one -one situation. Of course the battle was one-sided. Poo what? In a little more than 30 seconds, Kim Woo Jin's sword cut the orc's body ten times. The surprising thing, however, was that there were only three places where the orc had a visible wound. The left side, left thigh, and the left side of his neck. The wounds were so deep that it almost made the thick skin and the massive body of the orc look shameful. However, they did not appear to be fatal wounds that threatened his life. Kuyu. Thus, the orc attacked Kim Woo Jin without backing down, then Kim Woo Jin attacked him for the eleventh time while avoiding to the left of the orc. The sword went through a wound that Kim Woo Jin already made before, once again, deepening the wound. That was why there were only three wounds. The orc's left leg began to shake uncontrollably. Kim Woo Jin's sword began to go through the orc's thick and large muscles in the left thigh starting from his fourth attack. It's cut. Of course, that was Kim Woo Jin's plan. The scary thing about orcs was their terrifying mobility that stemmed from their thick muscles. It was even possible to die instantly if you were to get run over by them. Nevertheless, it takes a really long time to kill an orc with just a single sword. For this kind of opponent, eliminating their mobility was the most practical way to kick things off. Since if you take out its mobility, you will have plenty of options afterwards. Even throwing a stone was effective now. It was even better to use objects like spears to skewer them from a distance. It was even more effective to use spear-like objects to hinder its movements further. Wig. Throwing daggers to seal its vision was a great idea, too. 
daggers smeared with poison would be even more effective. Faced with such a situation, the orc screeched in a slightly different tone than before. It was a cry of fear because his life was in danger. Sweek. Kim Woojin's scimitar slashed and created a line through Orc's neck, who was distracted while screaming frantically in fear of losing his life. Blood flowed from the wound this time as well. At this point, the Orc was no longer able to fight. His eyes were blind, his sense of smell was overwhelmed by the strong stench of blood, and, and he couldn't even properly hear his own screams. The leg won't move and he will bleed to death after losing enough blood. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin's blood poisoning made the orc feel dizzy and faint. Thud. The orc finally collapsed. That was the end of the battle. A notification popped out signaling the orc's death. Pleasing news. But the most pleasing news for Kim Woo Jin was not the news of his achievement. A sacrifice arrived. Kim Woo Jin was more pleased to be able to summon another monster that fights just like him under his command now. Summon Skeleton Soldier. With the chant, the flesh of the dead orc melted away soon, nothing but the skeleton was left. The darkness that entered its skull began to form white fiery eyes. Kim Woo Jin gave it a present. Go crazy till you are satisfied. Unexpectedly, Kim Woo Jin handed his own sword to his orc skeleton. As a result, the skeleton soldier deliberately stared at Kim Woo Jin. It was expressing its gratitude for such an unexpected gift. Inventory In front of the surprised skeleton soldier, Kim Woo Jin took out a new weapon. The weapon he brought out, however, was not a sword but a bow. Orcs are very troublesome monsters. Goblins may appear in great numbers, but a properly armed player won't be killed instantly by a group of goblins however, orcs were different there have been many cases of players being hit by an orc and killed instantly due to having their necks snapped. Of course, an orc was nothing special in the real world. With a gun, even ordinary people could kill an orc, and even if they didn't have a gun, they could still kill the orc without serious danger if they had a long-range weapon that could penetrate their thick skin. For instance, weapons such as bows. A bow powerful enough to pierce an orc's skin was a nightmare for orcs. Against Kim Woo Jin, this was the situation that the orcs were facing at this very moment. Kua. The body of the orc, who was frantically screaming, was deeply pierced by arrows. All the arrows penetrated through the parts where the orc had the least muscle all the way to its guts. Of course, the weakest parts of its body, his two eyes, already had arrows sticking out like flowers. It was a horrible sight. Tiao Zhuliag. Tiao Zhuliag. What made the scene even more miserable were the two orc skeletons, Kim Wu Jin's skeleton soldiers. The two skeleton soldiers kept alternating, with one after the other repeatedly, and leaving wounds on the orc's body with their scimitars. It was almost as if Kim Wu Jin was fighting in person. Meanwhile, Kim Wu Jin was nowhere to be seen. They are doing well. With the trunk of the tree behind his back and carefully hiding his breath, Kim Wu Jin silently pulled his bow, completely hiding his identity in location. Such a scene was really too much to bear. Seeing Kim Wu Jin do such a thing, despite being able to hunt an orc all by himself, was really unpleasant to look at, it made him look like the villain. The pace is good. Of course, Kim Wu Jin did not mind being watched. He wasn't playing a game and it certainly wasn't being broadcasted. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin's targets were the people that the world deemed as heroes. Whether the process was cool or not, it did not matter to him. He was willing to do whatever it took to improve his chances of success. Finally found the body. Even if that meant he had to dig a grave. It was a trace of food. Like eating a passing pigeon alive and leaving its bone and feathers, the orc took off the player's items and ate the flesh inside, leaving only the bone. However, Kim Woo Jin reacted indifferently at the gruesome scene and even extended his hand toward it he picked up the broken skull. Then he made eye contact with the empty sockets of the skull. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin's eyes turned completely black. A notification was heard. At the same time, the memories belonging to the skull's owner entered into Kim Woo Jin's head. It was like looking at a folder full of pictures and videos. Fortunately, the order was in chronological order. Kim Woo Jin started with finding the name of the skull's owner. 
My luck is good. The owner of the skull was the one he was looking for, John Yongkyu. As expected, he was killed by orcs. He was eaten alive after he was knocked unconscious by a punch from an orc. It wasn't a special sign or evidence. Kim Woo Jin rewinded his memory back a bit. Like that, some stuff John Yongkyu blurted out quickly passed by Kim Woo Jin's ears. They were horrible remarks. However, Kim Woo Jin did not become angry. The stimulus was dry for him who had experienced a far more miserable reality than just despicable words. Instead, Kim Woo Jin focused on the words hunting humans. I wonder who he heard human hunting from. Human hunting, it was literally hunting humans. It was not only happening in Korea but also in many parts of the world. There was nothing that could be done to prevent it in rural or remote islands where the governments are not able to control them. Moreover, they use monsters to do it it wasn't hard to clean up after either. Of course, it was not something one could be openly proud of. Thus, in South Korea, human hunting was done in a very discreet way, and it was only after some time that the identity of the perpetrators was revealed. It was quite later before Park Yongwon's hunting of humans was publicly known. It was revealed when Park Yongwon was about to sell his country to Japan. He used human hunting to capture the powerful figures and at the same time, held their weak points against them. Countless ordinary people were sacrificed to produce items for Park Yongwon's business. In other words, he managed his human hunting business quite well. How does this insignificant bastard know about this already? There was no way such a trivial character like him could have known about human hunting. In other words, Zhang Yongkyu had direct contact or a connection with Park Yongwon. Kim Woo Jin once again moved his memory to further in the past. Then he found it. Park J. E. Soon. His Next Prey. Chapter 16. In a forest that was so densely packed with trees that one couldn't even see a single ray of light pass through. Kururu. In such a forest, there was a single orc. It was a head taller than a normal orc, and it was also a lot bigger as well. It was a terrifying monster that seemed as if only the face was that of an orc. Most of all, unlike orcs, the scaras in his eyes were completely blood red. That monster right now had saliva all over his mouth, drooling. It was a sign of hunger so strong that it would even be happy to devour rotten meat. Kururu. In fact, the orc was looking for rotten meat. He was wandering around the forest looking for bones and bits of a mysterious animal that he threw away after he finished a meal in the past. Kuru. When he arrived at the location, he saw a creature holding the bones of the animal he ate in the past. Kua. The orc viewed it as an opportunity sent from heaven. At that moment, the orc only had a single goal. To kill the surprised beast, tear the skin off his belly, and then savoring its fresh guts first. In the midst of such fantasies, the orc charged toward the prey that had its back to him, igniting his strength to the fullest. It wanted to instantly crush its prey's spine, preventing it from running away he wanted to eat the helpless prey while it was still alive. Obviously, the orc didn't notice the two skeleton soldiers that were waiting stealthily. Sweek. He also didn't see one of the two skeleton soldiers swing its sword to slash the left side of his neck while the other one was going for the right. By the time the orc realized something was wrong and stopped in its track, the orc's neck already had a deep gash. The wound was very deep due to the tremendous force of the orc's charge. Puwat. Blood began to gush out from both sides of the orc's nape. Kuru. Kururu. Surprised by the outcome, the orc hurriedly covered both sides of his neck with his hands. Puk. Naturally, there was no way for the orc to block an arrow that was flying toward his back while both of his hands were blocking the wounds on his neck. The orc is poisoned by blood poisoning. Moreover, he couldn't do anything to stop Kim Woo Jin's blood poison, which was smeared all over the arrowhead, from penetrating the orc's body in an instant. Massive blood loss and poisoning suffering from these two disasters, the orc's body wavered like a candlelight brushing against the wind. Tialjuliak Tialjuliak Seeing an opening lit up the skeleton soldier's eyes and they slowly narrowed the distance between themselves and the orc. Instead of being reckless after seeing the weakened prey, they began to show more elaborate, cautious movements. Kim Woo Jin laughed in his heart. 
to think that they would use their owner as bait. He laughed at the skeleton soldiers, who used him as a bait and waited for the orc to be caught, and then giving it a fatal blow. In his heart, Kim Woo Jin did not blame the skeleton soldiers. They are so much like me. Kim Woo Jin didn't have the right to blame the skeleton soldiers that acted so selfishly. Ha! Huh. Then, Kim Woo Jin saw the orc's eyes. Red? As soon as Kim Woo Jin saw the orc's red eyes, he noticed that it was unlike other orcs. He has eaten his own kind. Some orcs can't overcome and handle their hunger and eat their own people. As you may expect, orcs that eat their own kind won't survive too long. Orcs that eat their own kin would be alienated and kicked out from their tribe, and would be hunted by them. However, those who were stronger than the average orcs would hunt those who chased after them instead. Orc hunter. They would become an orc hunter. In other words, the monster in front of him was the boss monster of the dungeon. Stop. Kim Woo Jin yelled toward his skeleton soldiers. Hearing the shout, the skeleton soldiers who were repeatedly slashing their scimitars widened the distance between themselves and the orc. Ah. However, the orc hunter was already in a critical state. The skeleton soldiers' scimitars had already utterly destroyed the orc hunter's body. When Kim Woo Jin saw the resulting scene, he clicked his tongue. Kim Woo Jin still had work he wanted to do in the dungeon. He wanted to pick up more items and gather more information from the dead players. I was going to catch the boss monster when the time was right. That's why he planned to keep the boss monster alive as long as possible. I never thought catching monsters too well could become a problem. Unfortunately, it was all over. You have leveled up, you have hunted the orc hunter, you have cleared the dungeon. At this time, he heard the level up notification, followed by a notification saying that the dungeon was cleared. It was just as Kim Woo Jin predicted. There is nothing else I can do. After thinking it over, Kim Woo Jin was no longer worried. The deed was already done and he already achieved the minimum requirements for his desired goal. There was no reason to tremble in anger or irritation. The emissary of the underworld admires your ability. Hmm. Moreover, there was a gift. The emissary of the underworld delivers a part of its power, the rank of the skeleton soldier skill increases by one level. Kim Woo Jin's halo sent Kim Woo Jin a gift. Uh oh oh. Inside a camping trailer with a small bed built inside, Cho Min Jiai, a member of the Phoenix Guild dungeon support team, stood up and stretched. The first thing he looked for when he woke up was his smartphone. When he turned on his smartphone, he saw a pile of negative news announcing the appearance of a monster. However, Cho Min Jiai did not really care. I haven't had a good night's sleep in a long time. On the contrary, he smacked his lips over the lingering feeling of restfulness that he had not experienced in a long while. It's thanks to Kim Woo Jin. The reason for his good night's sleep was none other than Kim Woo Jin. While players are clearing the dungeon, monsters will not come out from the dungeon gate. This meant that until Kim Woo Jin died after entering the dungeon, Cho Min Jiai was freed from the fear of a monster jumping out of his dungeon gate. That was a good reason to sleep well. Of course, that did not mean that Cho Min Jiai would improve his assessment of Kim Woo Jin. What a strange bastard he is. There were still bad rumors concerning Kim Woo Jin spreading in the Phoenix Guild. No, the rumors about Kim Woo Jin were now spreading to other guilds as well that's it. Already, his career as a player was virtually over. One can only solo dungeons up to LV10 and that's it. The limit for one floor dungeons below level 10 were 10 people, but the case for dungeon below level 20 was as many as 20 people as for dungeons with two floors, a 20 people limit was the standard. Despite that, there were times when dungeons wouldn't be cleared. This meant that there were monsters far stronger than what 20 players could handle. There was definitely a limit to holding out by oneself in such a place. No, never mind the limits, the players might even try to kill him. Players should be careful of the other players on top of the monsters inside a dungeon. Especially, if a player with a bad reputation had a good item, it would be a nightmare. Well, he'll survive somehow. In the end, it wasn't something Cho Minji I needed to worry about. Anyway I have to check out the dungeon gate I wonder if he already died. 
all he had to do was to request for help until the dungeon was cleared. Like that, Cho Minjiai came out of the camping trailer to do his job. Only then could he see. Huck. A man was sitting on the plastic chair in front of his camping trailer and oiling his scimitars. Ki, Mr. Kim Woo Jin. The identity of the man was none other than Kim Woo Jin. Ah, did you sleep well? Ho, how did you? When questioned by the surprised Cho Min Jiai, Kim Woo Jin replied while putting away his scimitar inside of his item window like magic. I returned from the dungeon a little while ago I didn't want to wake you up when you looked like you were having such a nice sleep. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Cho Min Jiai, who received an unexpected answer to his question, did not ask further. He just kept blinking. Eventually, Kim Woo Jin continued the conversation. My luck was good since the preceding parties left a fatal wound on the orc hunter, it was fairly easy to kill I have recorded the details on the notepad please refer to it when you write up your report. After speaking, Kim Woo Jin handed over a note. Cho Min Jiai nodded silently. And this. Then Kim Woo Jin handed over a plastic bag containing a piece of cloth and a longsword to Cho Min Jiai. What is this? Cho Min Jiai asked with a look. Kim Woo Jin answered the question with a sad expression. I don't know whose it is, but I think it is the item left behind by the player who had died inside I think it's a will it looks like he used his own blood to write on the cloth please send it to his or her family or acquaintances. Ah, uh, I understand. Finally, Cho Min Jiai replied. Kim Woo Jin emphasized once again. I want you to find out who it is and then deliver it to them. That repeated emphasis got Cho Min Jiai to change his mind about Kim Woo Jin for the first time maybe he's actually a really good person unlike the rumors. That Kim Woo Jin may be a totally different person from what people say about him. Oh, but I got this long sword from the dungeon, so I can keep it according to the rules, right? Please send it to me after you've checked the owner. Of course, the idea didn't last long. Also, did you fill up my car with gas? As expected, he is a freak, this was the conclusion Cho Min Jiai made about Kim Woo Jin. If a player dies in a dungeon, all the items previously owned by the player are handed over to the players that cleared the dungeon. Therefore, other players were sometimes interested when a player brought something out of the dungeon although, it was usually only when items of at least a unique grade were brought out. Damn it. It was such a case for Park Jae Soon. When he heard that the dungeon in Chuncheon was cleared, the words that came out of his mouth were, Why the fuck did you tell me something like that? John Yong Kyu, that son of a bitch. Nevertheless, when an item belonging to a man named John Yong Kyu came out of the dungeon, as well as his will, things changed. Then after checking the contents of the will, Park J. E. Soon's mind melted away. If you are going to die, just die cleanly why the fuck are you leaving that stuff behind? As a matter of fact, it was impossible to check the contents of the will properly because it was already damaged. Only five letters were legible. Park, Wan, In, Sa, and Niang. It was an indeterminable will one had to be a cryptologist decipher its meaning. However, Park J. E. soon was able to interpret it as soon as he saw it. Park Yong Wan, Human Hunt. Before he died, John Yong Kyu left a note in his will about a very ugly project called Human Hunting. He was not interested as to why he left it at the moment of his death. It was not important either. If Park Yong Wan hears about this, I'm finished. The important detail was that if Park J. E. Soon didn't handle this properly and things got out of control, he was likely to meet John Yong Kyu in hell. I have already taken care of the will. Fortunately, the will came to Park J. E. Soon. It wasn't unexpected. Park J. E. Soon was the one who introduced and recruited John Yong Kyu to the Phoenix Guild. Considering that John Yong Kyu had no family, it was only natural for the Phoenix Guild to deliver the will to Park J. E. Soon, an acquaintance of John Yong Kyu. Naturally, Park J. E. Soon decided to incinerate the will. Now the only thing that's left is. That was only one thing left. I just have to take care of that person Kim Woo Jin. He had to deal with Kim Woo Jin, who brought out the will. It's better this way. At this point, Park J. E. Soon could feel his heart feeling a little relieved. It's nothing much to deal with someone like him. 
If the player involved in the incident was too strong or was a part of a big faction, it would have been troublesome however, Kim Woo Jin was a player who had nothing to do with any of that. No one would complain if a stray dog dies. To Park Jae Soon, Kim Woo Jin was a stray dog with no talent, no background, and no faction he already thought of a scenario to deal with a stray dog like him. My level is 19 if I invite him to my party as a token of appreciation for bringing John Yong Q's will, he will wag his tail like a dog. Park Jae Soon wanted to take care of him inside a dungeon by inviting him to his party as if he were showing favor to Kim Woo Jin. I need to choose a dungeon okay, let's do this thoroughly I will take care of him inside an illegal dungeon that the guild does not bid on. Park Jae Soon once again examined his scenario and stole a look at John Yong Q's longsword on the table. Knock, knock. At that moment, someone knocked on his door. I'm here to pick up an item may I come in? Park Jae Soon spoke with rejoice. Come in, come in. A man put his head forward after opening a door. My name is Kim Woo Jin. I'm Park Jae Soon. It was the moment the beggar bit the bait. Chapter, 17 In Samseong Dong, an untimely drama unfolded in an office within the 25-story building of the Phoenix Guild headquarters. Yong Q, he was like my little brother. There were two actors. Park Jae Soon and Kim Woo Jin. I have told him time and time again that he needs to be careful. As one of the actors, Park Jae Soon, stroked John Yong Q's longsword with red teary eyes, Kim Woo Jin tried to console him. You must be heartbroken. The atmosphere of the conversation felt very awkward. I wonder if that's the reason why. I'm sorry, I'm just having weird thoughts in my head and thank you for bringing me his will. Park Jae Soon made an effort to change the mood. No, not at all. Kim Woo Jin shook his head as if he did not deserve such gratitude. It was then that the mood became somewhat relaxed. Anyway, by any chance, have you seen the details of the will? Then, as if he was waiting for the right moment, Park Jae Soon asked this question. Kim Woo Jin answered the question while maintaining a stiff expression on his face. I took a peek at it to see what it was I'm sorry I wouldn't have looked at it if I had known it was a will. For a brief moment, Park Jae Soon revealed he felt annoyed and bit his lip. Of course, it was only for a moment. No, no I'm thankful that you found the will. Park Jae Soon, who had already loosened his face, handed Kim Woo Jin a long sword that was a relic of John Yong Kyu. Then please use his sword well. Yes. Kim Woo Jin received the sword right away. Now, at the moment, the two no longer had a reason to talk. So Park Jae Soon brought up a new topic. Do you want to join a party by any chance? Upon hearing the question, Kim Woo Jin replied with his head down while revealing shame. Ah, about that I don't know if you know about this, but I don't have a party right now because of some incident to be honest, I've never actually been offered to join a party. What kind of incident? Well. Kim Woo Jin, who seemed hesitant to continue the conversation, looked extremely miserable. Park Jae Soon immediately gave an offer to Kim Woo Jin without any hesitation. Would you like to join my party? Really? Kim Woo Jin looked startled, almost as if he had been hit by a surprise punch in the pit of his stomach. Park Jae Soon smiled lightly at the amusing reaction. There's an open spot in the party it was a spot that Yong Kyu was supposed to fill after he cleared the dungeon perhaps, this is also fate. But my skills are not that good. I don't care if your skills are good or not who would need to join a party if everybody was good. It's your answer that counts. I'm offering you to join my party, and all that matters is your answer. Faced such a choice, Kim Woo Jin said with determination. If you allow me to join the party, I'll do my best even if it means putting my life on the line. Congratulations on joining our party. Park Jae Soon reached out his hand toward Kim Woo Jin, and Kim Woo Jin grasped it with both hands. It was a scene reminiscent of a boss and his new employee. That's it. Finally, Park Jae Soon knew that his scenario was complete. It's been handled cleanly. He also gained some room to breathe in his heart. Feel free to ask me if you need anything I'll do whatever I can to help you. Park Jae Soon, who has never helped anyone in his life, said such a thing due to his mind and heart becoming at ease. 
Is anything all right? Yes, of course I can even give my life to a party member if necessary. Kim Woo Jin, with a trace of admiration, requested from Park Jae Soon. Then, can you lend me some money? Ha! Huh. It was handled swiftly. It only took three days for Kim Woo Jin to officially join Park Jae Soon's party and have everything settled. A 100 million won deposit. The amount of money that Kim Woo Jin borrowed from Park Jae Soon was 100 million won. The dungeon is one floor. Then Wu Jin received the dungeon report. Troll hunt. Dungeon floors, one floor dungeon difficulty, C rank dungeon capacity, six people entry condition, must be LV20 or below clear condition, hunt four trolls. Troll hunt. As soon as Kim Wu Jin saw this, he smiled. It's an illegal dungeon. The bodies of the monsters hunted in a dungeon were usually useless. The skin or flesh of an orc or goblin was no different from garbage. However, the bodies of certain monsters were worth a lot of money. Trolls were a good example. Trolls' blood was useful in many fields due to its healing properties. As for the LV20 trolls that appear on the first floor the price is about 10 million won per liter I think. Therefore, even the lowest level of trolls' blood cost around 10 million won per liter. Also, the amount of blood that one could harvest from a troll was more or less 15 liters. Which meant that each troll could be traded for 150 million one per troll. The bodies of four trolls alone was worth more than half a billion one. That was not a paltry amount. Furthermore, the trolls were not the only source of money if a decent item drops as well, you can expect tens of millions of one. In other words, it meant that one could expect at least 500 million one from the dungeon. That's why Kim Woo Jin was convinced that the dungeon was illegal and was traded for illegally outside the guild. There's no way this dungeon was left to the guild. In the case of lucrative dungeons, they would disappear as soon as the government published an announcement. Isn't it a dungeon that doesn't need compensation in the first place? Therefore, dungeons like this were never reported to the government. As mentioned earlier, there was a trade between players and brokers. There was nothing better than this for creating slush funds. In reality, clearing a dungeon then receiving a successful payment from the guild does not give much benefit to the players. If you clear a dungeon under the control of a guild, the number of monsters the player captured and the items the player retrieve are recorded it wasn't without reason that the support teams were so desperate to write a report. Also, under the contract, anything that comes out of a dungeon can only be traded through the guild. This meant that the income of the player is recorded as well. No one likes paying taxes no matter how much the government lowers the rate of the player's income tax. It was a situation where a black market would be created no matter what. Also, the government doesn't intervene. The government tolerated the black market. Nevertheless, the government's profit from clearing the dungeons was enough, and it would be a shame to give up all the bribes to close each other's eyes. But to see that they are attempting to clear this kind of dungeon right after I joined. In this sense, Kim Woo Jin was impressed by Park Jae Soon's ability to secure the dungeon. It looks like there's a strong line behind him. To be exact, Kim Woo Jin was impressed by Park Jae Soon's connections that allowed him to acquire such a dungeon. Caught a decent prey by the tail. Kim Woo Jin, who put down the dungeon report, thought about what's going to happen momentarily. The situation was clear. All that's left is. The only thing that was left was for Park Jae Soon to contact Kim Woo Jin Soon, explaining the dungeon, and advising him not to tell the guild of the dungeon because it is illegal and to not leave any traces. He will also add how he acquired the particularly lucrative dungeon just for a urgent need. Then was only one thing Kim Woo Jin had to do. Nodding and looking at him as if he were his savior. The last act. To Kim Woo Jin, it was the type of skit that he was best at. Chong Won Gu, Chung Chong Buk Du. This place used to be a driving academy a long time ago, but only a scrap heap and broken used cars were left around. A Damas appeared in a place where no one would notice even if a man died while screaming. Tur Tur Tur, the appearance of the cars and their breathtaking noise reminded one of beasts unknowingly entering their graves. Soon, people started getting out of the car one by one. The people who appeared were specially equipped. There wasn't anyone in a normal attire. 
Everyone wore armor made of leather or metal and wore medieval weapons such as knives or sticks, axes, and bows on their backs and sides. What was even more unusual was that the weapons they were holding were automatic rifles or guns. Clear. Soon, wary men holding their guns scanned the area with their eyes and all focused on one place. They noticed a distorted space between the parking spaces. It was a dungeon gate. Hyung Nim, there it is. Yeah. The last one to get out of the car, Park Jae Soon, also checked the gate and nodded. Then a man with his head down asked Park Jae Soon a question in a careful manner. Excuse me, but isn't it more beneficial to just hang around here and catch a troll? Hearing the question, Park Jae Soon chuckled lightly. Don't be so greedy we would lose a lot if even one troll escapes outside. Ah. Oh, and trolls are hard to catch with a gun there's nothing we can do if we miss it even once so be sure to handle it when you can also you know what to do, right? Of course. Park Jae Soon, who was speaking, secretly turned his head. The man, who was speaking with him, looked as well. They looked at the nervous young man like hyenas who found a wounded deer by all means, I have to make sure everything goes accordingly. Park Jae Soon, who was looking at Kim Woo Jin, clenched his teeth. My fucking 100 million one. It was none other than the 100 million one he lent Kim Woo Jin. He couldn't help but lend him the money. To resolve Kim Woo Jin's suspicions and to take him to the next world with certainty, an irresistible bait was needed. However, no matter how well a player makes money, 100 million won was not a small amount even if he were to hunt trolls. Although trolls were a good source of money, it was also a monster that was too strong for a gun to handle. Physical damage was ineffective, but they could be killed with close-range flame magic from a mage. In other words, the danger for those who had to distract, fight, and lure them would increase substantially if Park Jae Soon was not a mage and didn't have to draw the troll's attention while fighting, he would have never come to this dungeon. Damn it! At the fact that he lent 100 million won to someone he was going to kill agonized Park Jae Soon. Let's just say it's the price for his life. Park Jae Soon tried hard to console himself. Kim Woo Jin came before him. Kim Woo Jin first bowed. Thank you to think that you would go this far just for me. At the sight, Park Jae Soon pounded Kim Woo Jin's shoulder. A party member is the same as family don't bow over a small matter like this. Still, you got an illegal dungeon just for me furthermore, you lent me a lot of money as well. Once again, when the money was mentioned, Park Jae Soon could barely keep his face calm. Do a good job this time and pay it back if this dungeon is cleared properly, at least 50 million won will fall to every member. Thank you I will work hard and pay you back. The way Kim Woo Jin looked at Park Jae Soon was like a believer looking at a savior from heaven. That level of respect made Park Jae Soon want to ridicule him. I will be able to collect about 100 million won from all the items he will drop after killing him anyway. Kim Woo Jin asked Park Jae Soon a question. By the way, did anyone have any complaints? For going this far for my sake. In response, Park Jae Soon shook his head. No such thing would ever happen on the contrary, everyone listened to your story and readily agreed wasn't that what happened, Ilsu. In response, a big man who called Park Jae Soon Hyung Nim. A little while ago, nodded his head by all means it's just helping a new member of the family, we can at least do this much everyone feels the same way. Immediately, there were words of agreement. I'd have to agree with you as soon as I heard the story, I knew I had to help. Just buy me a drink later. Yes, the youngest will buy our celebration drink if he comes out alive. All the people who spoke glared at Kim Woo Jin. It was the glare of a snake looking at a mouse in a corner. So everyone agreed, Ite. Despite noticing the glares, Kim Woo Jin replied with a smile. Please take good care of me, I look forward to working with you all. Kim Woo Jin's fourth dungeon hunt just got started. Chapter, 18 As soon as the lights went out, tall trees emerged. The grey trees, which rose straight up like a telephone pole, gave the forest an urban atmosphere rather feeling the richness of a forest, the asphalt-like world gave them an unpleasant premonition. I've never been in a place like this before. What kind of trees are they? Park Jae Soon's party members made a grim face upon seeing the sight. 
These grey forests could not help but appear unpleasant to them, who had only seen green forests up till now. Come on, let's get our act together. It was Park J. E. Soon who settled the uneasy mood. Don't be frightened, it's not like the trees will kill us the only thing we need to watch out for are the monsters height, then let's search around first. Park J. E. Soon skillfully directed the party. Then the party members came to their senses one by one and started to perform their duties. With the exception of Kim Woo Jin, everyone else looked like players who were level 17 or above. To reach level 17, it took experience clearing at least 10 dungeons. Therefore, even if they were slightly disturbed at first, they were definitely different from those cocky newbies who were below level 10 when it came to encountering unexpected situations. Um, I'll handle the role of a scout. At that time, Kim Woo Jin asked to be in charge of scouting the perimeter. Scout. Yes. Your ability has nothing to do with scouting, right? Will you be okay? Kim Woo Jin's halo was the emissary of the underworld. Most of the players with the emissary of the underworld as their halo usually played the role between magicians and swordsmen they were often called magic swordsmen by other players. It was an inappropriate halo for taking the role of a scout. Furthermore, Kim Woo Jin said his ability was based around the poison from his blood poisoning. I should be a help to everyone like this. After Kim Woo Jin's remark, there was no more opposition to his request. There was no reason to refuse to him when he volunteered to assume such a dangerous role it's better if he dies. If there was an unfortunate incident, then it would be like everyone blowing their noses without using their hands. Kim Woo Jin left the area to assume his role as a scout. The rest immediately started chatting. What a foolish fellow, he's the type of person who would end up killing himself even when left alone. That's right Hyung Nim, it seems like all that time and energy we spent were in vain I think he would have died even if we left him alone. Park J. E. Soon, who tapped himself on the head with his staff, thought so as well. Damn it, and here I thought he was something. At first, he was very wary of Kim Woo Jin. It was because of the rumor. Although the rumors that he stole a boss monster on the verge of death were bad rumors, it still required certain degree of skill and ability to steal a boss monster from a group of players. Even though it was a boss monster on the verge of death, didn't it also mean he had the experience of clearing a dungeon by himself? Looking at his result and accomplishments alone, everyone would, at the very least, think that he had the basics down. To think that he was just lucky. However, Kim Woo Jin's actions showed that he did not even understand the word basic. Anywhere. He was a case in which he got this far due to his good luck. He was also of a common breed. There were plenty of cases in which players were lucky enough to go on a roll then as soon as their luck ran out, it was game over. For them. I can't believe he uses poison as well. Furthermore, Kim Woo Jin's ability was poison. It was the best ability to produce results beyond one's ability when luck went the person's way. The kids are right he would have died even if I left him alone. In other words, even if Park J. E. Soon didn't go out of his way to eliminate him, he would have died in a dungeon. Shit. When he came to such a conclusion, Park J. E. Soon's heart began to ache with bitterness. My 100 million won. The amount of money and effort he put in to deal with Kim Woo Jin was not low. Anything's fine it just has to be certain he dies. Thus, Park J. E. soon emphasized to his party members that it had to be definite. We have to somehow check his dead body we also have to take care of everything in here. Everyone nodded at those statements. Absolutely. You can count on us. None of those who answered had any hesitation. It wasn't because they were determined or because they had a strong resolve. I mean it's not like this is our first or second time doing it. They were just used to doing this. So, what are we going to do? Should we just remove him when he comes? Or should we use a monster? Park J. E. Soon smiled at that question. Use him as much as we can until we can't use him anymore let's use him as a bait until he can't be used for now. Thirty minutes later, Kim Woo Jin appeared. Hey, hey. We're in trouble. He ran in a rush while having trouble breathing. Hey, hey. Kim Woo Jin, who went on a search, rushed toward Park J. E. Soon and his party.
Park Jae Soon and his party members were now fully alert and started preparing for battle. There was only one case in which the scout came back in a such an urgent way. Damn it, that bastard. To hell with you if you are going to fucking die, die alone. It was a case when the scout draws a monster back to their party. Of course, Park Jae Soon and his party were appalled. It was not easy for them to manage their facial expressions. Soon after joining the party, Kim Woo Jin approached Park Jae Soon and said urgently. There's a troll coming from over there. Everyone's faces became twisted upon his remark. Fucking really? Why would you scout like that? Angry shouts sprang up everywhere. They couldn't help it when they thought of a fearsome monster like a troll. Trolls were not easy to damage with physical attacks. That is why it was important to create an environment where magicians can use their magic safely after setting up a sufficient amount of traps. They had to take the initiative it was a monster that they couldn't allow to dictate the pace of the battle. You want to die, son of a bitch. That's why they couldn't help but feel angry toward Kim Woo Jin. Everyone hold it together. It was Park Jae Soon who calmed their anger. Warriors in the front healer be on standby first, two of us will prepare our magic don't forget to prepare the oil. After receiving the commands, everyone took out their oils from their inventories. It was to use fireball magics after pouring oils on the troll's body. It was the most methodical tactic for the situation. Get in battle formation. Everyone got in their battle position for the upcoming battle as well. Two soldiers wearing iron armor stood in the front to face the troll, while the healer stood by to deploy heal and move at any time, and behind them were two magicians including Park Jae Soon. I will go first. One of them started casting. Standing straight, he put his hands together then the flames started to coil around his palms. The coiled fire began to grow. After he saw it, Park Jae Soon looked away. There's only one left. Kim Woo Jin, you. Naturally, Park Jae Soon was thinking of send Kim Woo Jin at the front to attract the troll's attention. He intended to call out Kim Woo Jin's name to send him to the front line right now. But Park Jae Soon wasn't able to spit out those words. Sug. A small but an extremely sharp dagger cut through Park Jae Soon's windpipe in an instant. Ugh. With the sound of Park Jae Soon's breath escaping his body, he dropped to the floor. The fallen Park Jae Soon could not even let out a scream. He could only look at what was happening. It was the scene of Kim Woo Jin running away with the healer after slicing through the healer's neck so that he could not be treated by his colleague. What was most important in a battle was the timing of the ambush. No one would deny the importance of knowing the right time for initiation. It was as important as knowing the right time for retreat. You don't have to force yourself to do it all at once. It was good to bite your opponent's neck to make them bleed, but it was also not bad for you to keep your opponent in a corner and bleed out his blood. Kim Woo Jin wanted to hunt Park Jae Soon in the latter way. He did not intend to engage in bloody battles against people who weren't new to murdering, especially since they had six levels or greater advantages, unless absolutely necessary. This was why Kim Woo Jin did not bite more than he could chew in the first battle he left Park Jae Soon in a state where he was unable to battle and also took the healer with him after. He wanted to break the opponent's core strength first and then take care of the rest. Fuck, without Young Wook, we'll all die. What do we do? We gotta catch him. The decision that Park Jae Soon's party opted for was to chase Kim Woo Jin. The two warriors from the Undying Fighter Halo simultaneously began to chase after Kim Woo Jin. It was a rather reasonable judgment. It will be troublesome if we let him escape right now. That bastard's level is below ours there is no reason for us to be unable to catch him. Kim Woo Jin's level was lower than theirs. Which meant no matter how much points Kim Woo Jin invested in his constitution, there was almost no way he had a higher constitution than them. In other words, there was no reason for them to lose against Kim Woo Jin when it came to speed and close-range fights. Kim Woo Jin was also well aware of that fact. So, they decided to chase. Of course, Kim Woo Jin also planned for things to go this way. 30 minutes there was no way he spent 30 minutes fooling around smoking his cigarette or something, was there? The translucent wire hidden between the trees finally caught on a person's ankles. 
Wah! A cry came out from a man who fell. But the cry did not last long. In the place where he fell, a sharp piles of stone that had been prepared penetrated into the man's face. Fortunately, his helmet prevented his face from being smashed into a pulp. Puduk. But it could not prevent his neck from being twisted backward. Pudruru. Not too long after, the body of the man with a broken neck started to convulse as if it had been electrocuted. Jun Wook. The remaining one screamed in surprise upon seeing how his colleague had just been excluded from the fight. Hey, you fucking son of a bitch. Soon after, he vented his anger against the main culprit of the whole affair. That was all. Come out. Come out, you son of a bitch. The man who could only vent his anger, Yong Ayel Su, did not move from his position. He knew that if he recklessly moved out of anger, he would end up just like his colleague. Fucking bastard, I told you to get out. In response to Yong Ayel Su's repeated shouts, figures that were hiding behind the tree came out. Let's go, you son of a bitch huh? However, the figures that appeared were goblin skeletons. Uh. Uh. Not one but three. Three goblin skeleton soldiers slowly narrowed the distance between Yong Ayel Su, each holding a dagger in its hand. Wah, what? With the arrival of the goblin skeletons, Yong Ayel Su started to shrink back in fear. His entire body showcased how he was overwhelmed with fear rather than reason. Teal Juliag Teal Juliag. This fact prompted the skeletons to rush at the man without any hesitation. A few minutes later, a scream echoed in the woods. Eu Eu, what happened? Park Jae Soon, who managed to heal his neck wounds with the help of a healing potion, carefully opened his mouth while lying down. I don't know Kook. But what followed the question was the moan of his last companion. What, what is it? He looked at his colleague who was treating him. Arg, bow. A colleague knelt to the floor after answering he wasn't dead. P.U.K. But at the mercy of another arrow, the companion fell forward. Shit, what the hell is happening? Park J.E. soon rose reflexively from his seat. However, the moment he got up, a terrible dizziness struck Park J.E. soon. Ugh. Park J.E. soon stumbled and fell to the floor. The wound was treated, but he was still anemic from the severe blood loss. It was also the most frightening symptom. It was a sign that Park J. E. Soon didn't have much blood left at this point. Nevertheless, Park J. E. Soon tried to rise however, he couldn't get up, forcing him to move his upper body instead. Then he turned his head in the direction of where the arrows came from. A man with three goblins, who was knocking a new arrow in his bow could be seen. Park J. E. Soon knew the person's face. Ki, Kim Woo Jin. But the image of Kim Woo Jin in Park J. E. Soon's eyes was not something he had ever seen from a player. It was an image of a beast whose eyes shone brightly upon seeing its prey. Facing such a horror, Park J. E. Soon had no doubt in his mind that Kim Woo Jin had already killed his healer and his two warrior companions. Moreover, Park J. E. Soon did not question Kim Woo Jin. I, I'm going to die. Park J. E. Soon was more aware than anyone as to why Kim Woo Jin would want to kill Park J. E. Soon and his companions. PLE, please spare me. Therefore, Park J. E. Soon begged for his life instead of asking why. I, I'll do anything for you money, they'll get you as much money as I can. He began to negotiate for his life. But Kim Woo Jin pulled his bow without any hesitation. I have secretly hidden items. There's something I snuck out from behind. I have things I have accumulated secretly. Then Park J. E. Soon screamed. Despite the anemia caused by his severe blood loss making him dizzy, Park J. E. Soon did not stop when I die, you won't be able to get all the items I secretly hid away. I'm the only one who knows where it is. Ah, uh, no, I also know other players' secrets besides that. There's a lot of things that can be turned into money. He repeatedly stressed the benefits of keeping him alive. However, Kim Woo Jin did not respond and remained indifferent to Park Jae Soon's pleading. In the first place, the situation was neither a revenge against one's sworn enemy nor a duel with one's honor at stake. It was nothing more than a hunter hunting his game. 
Of course, there was no need for a sympathy or room for negotiation. Above all, Kim did Wu Jin not have to try to listen to the story from the living. Soon, Kim Wu Jin let go of the bowstring with a calm face. Pong. After a brief shriek, an arrowhead made of his own blood pierced Park J. E. Soon's chest. Park J. E. Soon had taken off his leather armor during the process of treating the wound on his neck, making it possible for Kim Wu Jin's arrow to strike at his open chest. Heart, it pierced exactly at the location of his heart. At that moment, Park J. E. Soon uttered his final will. Lu, legendary item. Kim Wu Jin looked surprised for the first time. Chapter, 19. The value of a legendary item was indescribable. It is very expensive not only for ordinary people but it was unbelievably expensive even to people who had a lot money and assets. What was even more surprising was that most of the time, a legendary item could not be bought no matter how much money was offered. Indeed, one could count in their hands the number of times legendary items were traded in the market. Also, the transaction details itself was vaguely listed in a way similar to how a company revealed its MA, just stating that there was such a trade. The value of a legendary item was immense to such a degree. It was enough to completely change one's life. However, there was no guarantee that such a transformation would unconditionally be positive rather, it was often negative. When it became known that a player had a legendary item, from then on, they were virtually seen as monsters that dropped a legendary item. As I mentioned before, legendary items were not things that could simply be put on the market to find buyers or subject to such transactions. Items or skill pages of the legendary rank were not something ordinary markets could handle. In the end, there was only one way to sell it. To become a seller after you have enough power or influence to not be robbed by others. Until then, he had to hide the fact that he had items of the legendary class rating and keep them safely locked up in his arms. Park J. E. Soon, he lived with a legendary class ring on his finger and hid that fact behind him. A plus ring. That was the reason why Kim Woo Jin was surprised. I never thought I'd get this. Plus Ultra. The item was familiar to Kim Woo Jin. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin also knew how great the item actually was. The option itself may not seem that spectacular and amazing for a legendary item. The legendary skill. Eyes of Anubis. Allowed Kim Woo Jin to read the memories of the dead very quickly its option was like giving Kim Woo Jin a supernatural power. Compared to that, the option to increase all skill ranks by one didn't look so great. In fact, the power of the ring will not do much for the current Kim Woo Jin. However, once one skill rank reached the Master S rank, the ring would show unbelievable power beyond one's imagination. I got way more than I thought I would. The power of this ring allows one to use one's master rank skill as an EX rank or a transcendence rank. It was a big deal. Raising a skill to a master rank required a lot of time, effort, and talent achieving transcendence rank required insane luck similar to acquiring a legendary item however, all this could be solved with just one item. In fact, the man who used this item in the past bought something that could not normally be bought with money Hayashi Kansuk, now I know why the broker had this. Hayashi Kansuk. A former broker of a black market in Asia, who offered the plus ring to a man which allowed him to dominate the black market industry in Asia by gaining that man's protection. I understand how Johann George got his hands on this now. The King of the Undead. He was the one who Hayashi Kansuk gave up the plus ring to in exchange for protection. He ripped it off from Park J. E. Soon and offered it to him. Naturally, it was none other than Hayashi Kansuk who provided Park J. E. Soon and his party with this dungeon. It was not unreasonable. Of course, he was also the one who helped Park Yongwan through the whole process when he sold items and players to Japan as well I thought it was Park Yongwan who had secured the plus ring and gave it to Johan George, but to think it actually went like this. Considering the relationship between Park Yongwan and Hayashi Kansuk, it was certain. Kim Woo Jin did not think there were any doubts about their connection. What's important now was that Kim Woo Jin found the entrance to the market that Hayashi Kansuk created in Korea. Kim Woo Jin acquired another Fong once again. Without hesitation, Kim Woo Jin put on his new Fong into his left pinky. When he put on the ring that was big enough to fit his thumb on his left pinky, it coiled around Kim Woo Jin's pinky like a snake. 
Ah. At the same time, an immensely hot energy that Kim Woo Jin himself could feel was coursing from his little finger into his heart. To think I would get a spec up like this. After completing equipping the item, Kim Woo Jin once again checked his strength. Five skeleton soldiers. What was most noticeable was that the number of skeleton soldiers that he could now summon amounted to five. My mana can't keep up anymore. Three skeleton soldiers alone pushed his mana to its limit. Summoning all five was not possible at this time. However, Kim did not worry for long. If it's not enough, I can do it myself. He still had his most powerful card, Kim Woo Jin, he himself. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin did not hesitate. I guess I should decide what to put in my inventory after I finish hunting the troll. Kim Woo Jin started the troll hunt. Troll. A monster with a height between 3 and 4 meters, short legs and long arms, and a body that resembles a gourd. The most frightening aspect of this monster was its regeneration. A monster that wouldn't step back easily despite a serious injury was a nightmare for warrior class users. There were two ways to kill a troll. One must either put oil on its body and set it on fire, or continue to cut up his flesh as if it you were slicing sashimi. Of course, the former was the standard method. Wasn't it much easier and simpler to dump oil on a troll's body and set it on fire? You know, you just had to wait for the troll to go crazy and die furthermore, there was almost no room for mistake with this method. Kim Woo Jin naturally planned to use fire. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin had his skeleton soldiers. While the skeleton soldiers attracted the troll's attention, all he had to do was throw a wooden bottle containing oil and lubricate the troll's body. He could also use the skeleton soldiers as suicide soldiers. There was no reason to consider the method. Koyo. He certainly thought so until he saw his three goblin soldiers start to synchronize their breath and repeatedly slice the troll's legs. In other words, when Kim Woo Jin saw the scene, he had to delay the plan he had prepared for a while. It's not even funny. He started to chuckle as if he had nothing to say about the situation. It was then. Berk. URG. The troll screamed and collapsed onto the floor. Kugung. The massive body hit the ground and gave off a violent sound. However, no sound escaped from the skeleton soldiers. Taljalag Taljalag. Only the sounds of bones could be heard as they persistently slashed at the already ragged legs of the troll. Kim Woo Jin shook his head at this scene. I didn't expect this to happen. The troll was a monster with a weak defense. When looking at defense alone, trolls were indeed inferior to the orcs. That's why the second way to kill them was to repeatedly cut up their body. Therefore, players with sufficient skills did not necessarily use the first method, but the second there definitely were players who persistently cut its body to rapidly reduce its regeneration. A troll's regeneration was not absolute. However, even then, the fact that skeleton soldiers with the small frame of a goblin consistently avoided the troll's enormous club and concentrated their attacks only on his legs couldn't be explained with mere talent and abilities. URG. URG. The troll pitifully struggled to escape from the goblin skeleton soldiers, who were only half his size. The giant troll began to crawl in fear. It was also the first time Kim Woo Jin saw such a thing. On the other hand, it was a common sight for those who either watched Kim Woo Jin from behind or had to face him. Now I know why they looked at me that way. It was because Kim Woo Jin was just like them. When dealing with the giant troll, a monster with a low resistance to fire, Kim Woo Jin defeated it in such a way. They have the right to call me a son of a bitch. It was Kim Woo Jin who was now being critical of himself. Kim Woo Jin, of course, did not just watch. Kim Woo Jin threw the oil bottle in his hand at the escaping troll. Jiing. The oil bottle flew in a parabolic arc and broke over the troll's body, covering its body with oil and wood chips. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin lit a fire on his arrow by using a flint. The arrow holding an oil-soaked cloth was blazing with fire, and then it too drew a parabola and pierced the troll's body. Wololulu. The troll's body was set on fire. Berg. The flames started to burn away the troll's rationality. The scene brought the skeleton soldiers' attacks to a halt. 
Instead of recklessly charging at the agonizing troll who was frantically thrashing around, they decided to watch the situation. One of them looked at Kim Woo Jin. Like a puppy that just had his toy taken away when he was playing with it. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin also looked at the skeleton soldier and thought. I wonder if they can use a bow as well. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin heard his twelfth level up. There is no reason to waste time here. Immediately after hearing the notification, Kim Woo Jin proceeded to find his next prey skeleton soldiers, each holding a weapon in their hand, followed Kim Woo Jin like baby ducks chasing after the mother duck. Also, one of them carried a bow in its hand. Chapter 20 Players conducted a lot of research on monsters. The information on the characteristics of monsters, their habits, and their behaviors could be traded for money. Of course, a lot of research performed didn't mean a lot of players performed it. When a small group of players develops a method through extensive research and experimentation, most players just copy it. There were no patent rights for how to handle and hunt monsters even if there was such right, it was impossible to enter the dungeon and watch over all the players. Kim Woo Jin naturally belonged to the researcher type. In a way, he was forced to study. The Messiah Guild had to walk on a noble path, bearing a noble yet heavy responsibility that no one else had to bear all in order to achieve more than what their one life could currently offer, they fanatically researched. Berk. Arg. The current scene where a troll was being severely abused by his five goblin skeletons was a fruit of Kim Woo Jin's research. Teal Juliag Teal Juliag. For skeleton soldiers were ruthlessly cutting up the troll's legs without a hint of mercy. This was only possible because Kim Woo Jin was their owner. Ting. One of the goblin skeletons joyously and frantically shot arrows like crazy, this was also possible because it was Kim Woo Jin's skeleton soldier. After running out of arrows to shoot, it casually approached Kim Woo Jin and blatantly asked for more arrows. Kim Woo Jin gave a wry smile at the gesture. To think I would be rewarded this way for all my suffering so far. Kim Woo thought with a bitter smile. But if I'm satisfied here, that will be it. Of course, Kim Woo Jin wasn't satisfied just because his skeleton soldiers fought well. He certainly didn't intend to leave his fate to his skeleton soldiers. Above all, Kim Woo Jin still hasn't forgotten. No matter how strong the skeleton soldier becomes, it can't reach Lee Sejun by itself. He hasn't forgotten who his last prey was. In his ears, Kim Woo Jin heard his level up notification followed by a notification of the dungeon clearance. As soon as Kim Woo Jin heard the sound, he remembered a plan he had imagined in his head. It will be April 5th when I go out, it looks like I will be right on time for the big event. On April 5th, there will be a huge event, big enough to shake the entire Korean peninsula. Kim Woo Jin, who left the dungeon gate, was greeted by a warm temperature as well the strong scent of spring, completely differently from the early spring cold which made his skin shrink before he entered the dungeon. A damas, which now didn't look much different from a scrapped car, was waiting together for Kim Woo Jin with the spring tide. Kim Woo Jin approached the damas. Dururuk. Then he opened the car door. This time, a shovel welcomed Kim Woo Jin. With the shovel, Kim Woo Jin began digging up the ground that was a few steps away from the car. Song. Soon there was the sound of a metallic crash. A small safe emerged from the pit. It was a safe that contained the player's main belongings, their smartphones, their car keys, and their wallets. Takag. Kim Woo Jin skillfully unlocked the safe with a password. Soon after, he turned on a black smartphone. He saw several text messages. Kim Woo Jin then looked at one of the texts. There were texts received from a particular number in a 12 hours interval. There were no caller ID. Kim Woo Jin sent a text message directly to the number. It was a code. Cautious bastard. Hayashi Kansuk it was the code needed to talk to him. It was only logical. A man who is involved in illegal activities in another country cannot work in a straightforward manner despite this, however, Hayashi Kansuk created a fence between himself and his customers. It was a fence to protect himself if the customer's smartphone was turned over or stolen by someone, the code existed to identify the person on the other side. The date in reverse. In addition, the password was the date backwards. 
It meant that the password changed every day, it was simple yet effective. Ang. Um. Immediately, he got a call from a new number. Kim Woojin answered the phone. I got the call. Who is this? This is Kim Woojin. What about Park Jae Soon? He died in the dungeon. Rapid answers. I was his partner. The conversation paused for a while at the unexpected reply. The question came after a minute or so. I have secured about 15 liters or so. I have heard everything from Mr. Park Jae Soon. That was the end of the call. Tuck. The other party went off the phone cold. Kim Woo Jin frowned. It's more annoying when you hear his voice after a long time. In fact, Kim Woo Jin pondered about it until the end. Whether to use Hayashi Kansuk or kill him. Now that Kim Woo Jin has secured the plus ring, the relationship between Hayashi Kansuk and Johan George virtually disappeared, and the value Hayashi Kansuk had also dropped significantly. With such decrease in his value, it would not be bad for him to remove Kansuk Hayashi, who does more harm than good to the world, and to eat the items and funds he has acquired so far but in the end, Kim Woo Jin chose to use him. If it were not for this event, I would have removed him without hesitation. The decisive factor that shifted his decision was none other than the big event that was about to begin. To check out the big event, Kim Woo Jin searched the portal site after taking out his smartphone immediately, an article came up. This was the big event Kim Woo Jin was waiting for. A rank dungeon appears. Such news shook the entire population of Korea. They couldn't help but be shaken. A rank isn't this the second time for Korea? It has only happened 20 times in the entire continent of Asia also, if you think about the size of Korea, it's same as Korea hitting the lottery back to back. Anyway if it's an A-rank dungeon. A rank dungeons have dropped a legendary item 7 out of 20 times furthermore, unique items just poured out like crazy. A rank dungeons had a high chance of producing items of a high grade, including legendary items. People call it a dungeon, but it was more like a treasure island than a dungeon. Moreover the entry limit is 150 people. Isn't that a lot? I think it's the first time since the Tokyo dungeon that appeared in Japan a year ago isn't it too much? Not enough it's impossible for a guild to bid exclusively for a rank or higher dungeons and since it's a a rank dungeon I'm sure that even all the Tom, Dick, and Harry guilds are going to go for it. At least 10 of the guilds will bid, and each guild will probably be given about 15 seats. Hopefully, that will be the case there could be 150 guild bidding. Naturally, they had to be extremely restrictive in their access to the island. The bidding is going to be very competitive. Money alone probably can't solve it. I mean, isn't this the only time when the government can take advantage of the players? Maybe they will bind the players with a contract. Plus, in order to secure the seats, they had to pay more than anyone else. There was only one guild that could gain the seats without any bribes. However, the Messiah Guild will surely be given at least 10 seats even without any bribe. Of course, if they don't give seats to the Messiah Guild, won't they will begin protesting right in front of the Blue House? The protesters are already on the move they are demanding the government to just give the Messiah Guild full rights. If you consider what the Messiah Guild has done, they should at least be awarded this way. Messiah Guild, only their place was guaranteed. In any case, the competition within any guild for the spots is going to be insane. The competition won't just be insane the factions within the guild will do anything to put their people in. Guild officials are going to go crazy. The rest of the guild started a silent battle to get the seats and then fought again internally to fill it. Damn it. That's how the war that dungeon support team leader Jong Woosuk was carrying out looked like. I thought 20 seats would be more than enough, but nobody is willing to compromise and let someone else take the seat damn, we're the ones who fucking got the seats in the first place. Just a moment ago when the Phoenix Guild secured as many as 20 seats, Jong Woosuk thought to himself that his job would be a lot easier. Since there would be only two seats left in the Phoenix Guild after dividing among the three factions. He thought that the three major factions should easily be able to reach a conclusion through their own agreement. To think that they would rather have only one team. It would still be alright even if not all three factions were allowed to participate in the expedition, but they were currently refusing to let multiple teams in. 
this meant that there would be more competitors fighting for the seats. It was understandable when one thought about it. If the players were from different guilds, they may engage in a bloody fight for many possible reasons. In contrast, it was difficult for the same guild members to have a bloody fight for any reason at all. In other words, no one intended to cooperate. Because everyone was overflowing with confidence. Well, they have basically piled and piled countless level 10 items since the beginning. And rightly so. Once they choose their members, it isn't hard to lure them with unique items. It has been around 4 years since the world turned into a game and like most games, there were now plenty of good items for the lower levels. Zhang Wusuk thought that it truly wasn't difficult for them to equip their recruited members with all unique or higher items and turn them into a walking fortress. No matter how much you invest, one legendary item will make everything worth it. Also, this dungeon had more than enough merits to justify investing in. Their pride is on the line as well. At the same time, there were things more important than merit on the line. Under these circumstances, the story of selecting members for the 20 seats that the Phoenix Guild has secured would not end easily. What a pain. Nobody could foresee how the story would unfold. There will be leftovers in the end. The only thing that Zhang Wusuk could say with confidence was that it was virtually impossible to organize all 20 positions, leaving one or two seats vacant. And once that situation arrived, those one or two seats had to be somehow filled by someone who wouldn't fill all 20 seats that they barely won. Whoever that's going to fill the spot will have a pretty strong line backing them or it could be someone with absolutely nothing. At that moment, the thought of a man popped up in his head. Players like Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin. The team leader Jong Woo Suk, who thought of him, nodded. Yeah, a person like Kim Woo Jin who's sincere, hardworking, and talented at least there won't be more trouble if he comes in it would be better than putting someone with some money in there and then causing a ruckus. However, Jong Woo Suk had a wry smile. It was virtually impossible for Kim Woo Jin to get the spot. But there's no way a player like Kim Woo Jin who has nothing will get the spot unless someone with a voice equivalent to Park Yong Wan mentions his name. Unless a miracle happens. Chapter 21 It did not take long for the class dungeon to become a big event that created a sensation in the Korean peninsula. Rank Dungeon Expedition, 12 guilds confirmed to participate, government, given out as fairly as possible. Messiah Guild 20 seats secured. Phoenix Guild 20 seats secured. The government worked incredibly fast, and accordingly, the press fanned the news. Waiting for the best prospects in Korea. Special. Super Rookie 7 Interview. A feature article plastered the portal site and a special broadcast dominated the channel. Popular singer Young Lee Sung and Lee Young Hyap, a member of the Phoenix Guild, shows off their friendship. Top model Han Yeo Jin, spending sweet time with lover promising star Young Joo Hyuk from the Hai Tai Guild. The celebrities made the event even hotter, as if they had been waiting for it. The guilds who had secured spots also took advantage of this opportunity to spread their names. Skull Guild, we will prove our guild's potential. Hai Tai Guild we will show results that exceed everyone's imagination. Naturally, citizens and netizens also threw themselves into the blaze. I wonder who's going to clear this dungeon. Of course, it will be the Messiah Guild Yep, Messiah if you're Korean, let's please cheer for Messiah. As expected, most of the internet activity that the public created were fired at the Messiah Guild. Anyway, the Republic of Korea was crowded with stories regarding the rank dungeon. However, there was a separate area that was alienated from such a world. Foreign Casino, the Oasis City, located in Yangjong Island, Incheon, did not see a single bit of heat created by the class dungeon. The private room with a table where Kim Woo Jin entered was the same. We have arrived. There were no signs of anxiety or crises in the room that Kim Woo Jin just entered under the surveillance of countless bodyguards. Everyone looked at their cards with a serene expression on their faces, and the chips moved mechanically. Among them, a big guy wearing a white suit and biting a cigar looked at Kim Woo Jin. A short sports haircut, tough look, and ugly looks reminded him of gangsters who were the main characters of this kind of stage. It's been a long time. Then, the man wearing a white suit moved his jaw and a man with a highly contrasting look approached Kim Woo Jin. 
It was a man with a small frame, torn eyes, prominent proboscis, and really unruly teeth like a rat in a ditch. He, hello. The man's mouth awkwardly gave out a Korean word. It was typical of Japanese people who barely learn Korean. Have you prepared the goods? Yes. Kim Woo Jin had to act desperately in front of him. Still an unbelievable guy that I can't laugh at. The actors were Kansu Kayashi and Kim Woo Jin who was barely holding back his laughter in front of his face. It was just as he said. Kansu Kayashi, the man who Kim Woo Jin wanted to meet, was the sloppy man in front of him. The man who offered the plus ring to the king of the undead and ruled the black market, encompassing all of Asia with his support, trading illegal weapons, drugs, humans, and even countries. Perhaps. He was also a man with a very cruel spirit. Even if it wasn't profitable, he would be more than happy to kill a woman when he was in the mood to do so. He had many talents and methods to turn human bodies into money. Of course, he also had many enemies. Nevertheless, he survived he survived even longer than Kim Woo Jin. Maybe the Messiah Guild is behind him. That was the only thing that made Kim Woo Jin hesitant. Before he died, Park Shin Hai had told him. That she was going to make a deal with the King of the Undead. It was highly likely that the Messiah Guild put in a lot of effort to find out where Hayashi Kansuk, who was supporting the King of the Undead resided. Otherwise, there was a high possibility that they already had a contact from the start. Of course, that wasn't important right now. Here are the goods. Kim Woo Jin handed over the travel carrier that he had brought. Ah! Kansu Kayashi received the bag. After handing over the bag, Kim Woo Jin asked. If there was a dungeon you were planning to give to Brother Park Jae soon, would you introduce it to me? These words made Kansu Kayashi narrow his eyes to an extent. His already small eyes made it hard to see it. However, the look in his tapered eyes was certainly different. Boss, I will in, inform the boss. After speaking, Kansu Kayashi approached the man playing poker, and the man glanced at Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin smiled back at his glare. He took the bait. From now on, Kansu Kayashi will conduct a more aggressive investigation of Kim Woo Jin naturally, he will see how fucked up Kim Woo Jin was before the world turned into a game based on that, he will conclude that Kim Woo Jin is not an ordinary guy, and that he is a man with a hidden skill set. Now he'll deliver the bait to Park Yong Wan. All that information will go to Park Yong Wan. And to Park Yong Wan, there's no better candidate than me to be his eyes. Then Kim Woo Jin will achieve what he wanted. Kansu Kayashi approached him and handed him a chip. Here's the chip take the chip and go outside and the dealer will exchange it is there anything else I can help you with? Kim Woo Jin replied to the question. I actually didn't bring a car could you call me a taxi? You only have to give me some taxi fee. Hanam Dong, Yongsan District, Seoul. In one of Korea's most famous courtyards was a stage where even most wealthy people couldn't get close to. There was a place where the heads of Korean conglomerates lived. It was a castle. A place where one had to be granted permission from the nobles of the castle to even be allowed to be their neighbors. There was a man whom the owners of the castle had invited. Kim Woo Jin. I think I heard of this name before. The protagonist was a handsome 29 year old man with a model like body, who received a report from a beautiful secretary in a private mansion once owned by the head of the nation's number two conglomerate. You've probably heard of it during the transforming slime incident. Park Yong Wan. Affiliated with the Phoenix Guild, he was the eighth player in Korea to reach level 100. That was enough to make him their neighbor, as one of the absolute authorities in the Republic of Korea. More than anything else, was there a better neighbor than someone who can tear a monster's body with his bare hands in a world full of monsters? The guy that got the boss monster by stabbing his helpers in the back. Oh, him the guy who's commonly referred to as a son of a bitch. He was now talking about Kim Woo Jin. At that time, I was told he was definitely not normal. Moreover, Park Yong Wan knew that Kim Woo Jin was not a son of a bitch who, as everyone claimed, lacked actual abilities. It was natural for him to know. Yes, that's how Baek Woo Suk testified. Park Yong Wan was one of the people who initially spread the bad rumors about Kim Woo Jin after that, we worked on it so that there wouldn't be any noise. 
To be precise, Park Yongwan's faction did the job. But now, Hayashi sent you a profile of him. Now the name of Kim Woo Jin has been mentioned once again. He went into a dungeon with Park Jae Soon's party, but he was the only one who came back alive. Following his name came the news of death of Park Jae Soon's death, a subordinate that Park Yongwan cared a bit about. Well, Park Jae Soon was too greedy considering his level of ability, so it wouldn't be strange for him to go to hell at any time. Of course, he didn't feel even a drop of sadness about Park Jae Soon's death. To Park Yongwan, he was nothing more than a useful horse. It's a shame though I was going to use him as much as I could and get rid of him at the end. Instead, Park Yongwan was planning to eliminate him quietly after he had fulfilled his use. So, what do you think? It's possible that Park Jae Soon knew Kim Woo Jin in the past as you know, Park Se Joon was acquainted with gangsters that were active in Gangnam before becoming a player it's not unusual for him to know Kim Woo Jin he might have hired him after Kim Woo Jin become a player actually, it was Park Jae Soon who first contacted Kim Woo Jin I heard that Park Jae Soon called Kim Woo Jin to his office. What is the possibility that Kim Woo Jin handled Park Jae Soon? Even if Park Jae Soon's abilities fall short when it comes to killing monsters, he's not the type of person to get stabbed in the back by a player above all, Kim Woo Jin's contact with Kansu Kayashi via Park Jae Soon's communication network indicates that they at least had a partner-level relationship. Park Yong Wan nodded. So, Kim Woo Jin is someone who hid his abilities, and now he's a free agent after Park Jae Soon's death, right? Your opinion? He certainly has something in mind I'm sure there is room for negotiations above all, his background is clean there are no signs of it being touched his ability to survive has already been confirmed, so he doesn't seem to lack the skill to be a watchdog. Watchdog. That was why Park Yongwan and his secretary took an interest in the little guy named Kim Woo Jin. I always knew, but there isn't a single player that I can trust even after I bought them items, paid them, and gave them all the support they needed. Park Yongwon formed a six-member party to attack the rank dungeon he also equipped them with the best unique items he could find. The amount of money he spent was considerable. Instead of counting, it was easier to calculate how much he spent by the unit of commercial buildings in Garosu Road. Naturally, the only reason for such an investment was the possibility of securing a legendary item. But here I am trying to recruit a watchdog because I'm afraid of them betraying me what the fuck. Right? But the problem was that there was no guarantee that the invested would be willing to hand over the legendary item once they had secured it. Actually, there was nothing he could do if they tried to hide it. It's better to trust a congressman than a player. First of all, Park Yongwon knew better than anyone that the most treacherous people in the world were players. There's probably only one player in the world, Lee Sejun, that could be trusted. Yeah, I can probably only trust that little bastard. If one had to choose, one could only trust Messiah's Lee Sejun. Anyway, Park Yongwon needed to send a watchdog to monitor his investment. Kim Woo Jin now was being referred to as a possible to candidate. Well, then let's put him up as a possible candidate as well. Of course, it didn't mean that he would be all in on Kim Woo Jin. From the beginning, even if he wanted to add Kim Woo Jin, it did not mean that he would be selected. All Park Yongwon could do was throw several balls. Throw the candidates, and the rest is up to the guild since the support team has a great influence in the selection, send a gift to team leader Zhang. Now, all that was left was to wait to see which balls to be selected. Busan. Although it was still a chilly spring, things were beginning to heat up. April 15th, Dungeon Clear begins. Stars are gathering in Busan. Will a legendary item make an appearance? It was the heat created by an ranked dungeon, the second one to appear in Korea. The parking lot of Bugyang University, where the ranked dungeon was constructed by remodeling the university playground. Oh my god is there a motor show going on here? It looks like all the best cars in the world have gathered here. It was built for players and was packed with expensive cars that could be, most of the time, only seen through the use of a search engine. Boo, Bugatti. It's a Bugatti. He, here is a Koenigsegg. There were even multi-billion one hypercars, which were hard to see on the Korean soil. They could hardly look at it due to how much they shined. Players are really well off. The players this time are on different levels they are the most popular players, right? 
Hell, some people even struggle to get a part-time job to pay off their college tuition. What's more, this group was the prospects of top guilds, who showed the brightest talents and skills they were like stars in the eyes of the public. Royal order in order words, they simply only accepted the best. If someone were to tell them to ride a light car, they were type of people to flatten the car right there at that moment. Hmm. Ah. Uh. A worn-out light car appeared where the only the best of the best were gathered. Hey, what's that? What is it? Is that person crazy? No how did that person get in there with that car in the first place? I thought only players could park there, right? Ha, huh, you're right. Everyone, with a look of dismay on their faces, stared vacantly at the car looking for a parking space. As if he had found a parking space, he entered between two cars that took up two parking spaces oh, my fucking god. Hook. Koenigsegg Adjura and a Bugatti. It was the moment when a light car stood proudly among the vehicles whose price exceeded two billion won per unit. Soon, the door of the light car abruptly opened as if it was going to hit the Bugatti, and within, a man came out. Kim Woo Jin he appeared. Upon arrival, he immediately looked at the car next to him. A car that costed more than 3 billion won, and even more when options were added. A type of car that people, who love cars, would deeply admire. It left a deep impression even on Kim Woo Jin as he stood in front of the car and looked at its side parked correctly at least. That was all the appreciation he had for the car. Kim Woo Jin did not have any more impressions of the car. He didn't think about how to take the car key off the owner or how much he could make if he sold it secondhand. I'm glad things went as planned, though and I didn't even have to reveal my ability. At this moment, there was only one thing Kim Woo Jin was after in his mind. I'm the one who will get the Orc Lord's Fawn. The item that this dungeon's boss monster, the Orc Champion had in his possession, Orc Lord's Fawn. That was Kim Woo Jin's target this hunt. Chapter, 22 As you can see from the dungeon report, this dungeon is believed to contain at least one zero zero orcs. The briefing for the single-floor dungeon, which was held in a university classroom, was clearly different from any other one-floor dungeon briefing meeting. Its quality was similar to a PPT made by a large company after spending hundreds of billions of one. As for the Orc Champion. Vibrant data including video clips filled the screen. Some of them even contained the experience and advice of high-level players, which couldn't be purchased with money alone. However, none of the players here were interested in these preparations. Among the 20 players from the Phoenix Guild, four were just sleeping with their sleeping mask on, and 15 had their eyes on their smartphones, their watches, or were dozing off in plain sight. The one remaining person was interested in preparing for the dungeon but he wasn't interested in the explanations given by the dungeon support team. Finally, I see some names I know. Kim Woo Jin, the only one who seemed to be burning with an academic passion, was only interested in the name tags that the players were wearing. Though there is only one name I'm happy to see. He was looking at the profiles of those who participated in the dungeon attack, including the ones from the Phoenix Guild. Of course, he wasn't looking at them with good intentions. At the very least, Kim Woo Jin didn't view any of those people as a rescue target. Instead, Kim Woo Jin was picking his targets. At that time, the number of survivors when the dungeon was completed was I'm not sure however, there were only around 70 people. According to Kim Woo Jin's memory, the survival rate of this dungeon was less than 50% in other words, the death rate was higher than 50%. It wasn't a good figure. The best of the best players, armed with the best items, shouldn't have had much trouble handling the orcs. Taking that into consideration, nearly everyone should have survived. This meant there had to be other variables excluding orcs that was responsible for such a high death rate. Though it was announced that nothing happened. However, even though they had investigated what happened inside the dungeon after it was cleared, the perpetrators were neither discovered nor published. Dead people can't talk. Furthermore, there was no evidence to back it up. To put it differently, there was only doubt. Someone must have gotten rid of their competition. Doubts that a guild or multiple guilds took the opportunity to remove other guilds' prospects. It wasn't outside of expectations. When explained in terms of the major league, 
if given a chance to eliminate an opponent's promising player who won 10 times in a row or hit 30 home runs each year and get away with it, they would not give up on that opportunity players weren't kind enough to let go of such an opportunity when it's in their grasp. Above all, the world not mourn over a player's death. The fact that the Messiah Guild wasn't harmed was critical it would be hard to touch the Messiah Guild. It only applied to those who weren't from the Messiah Guild. As a matter of fact, players from the Messiah Guild were not involved and had hunted like usual within the dungeon. Rather, the Messiah Guild obtaining a legendary item had put everyone in a festive mood. The Messiah Guild was the biggest beneficiary of this dungeon. The Messiah Guild had gotten the Orc Lord's Fong, the best item in this dungeon, a legendary item. Also, the fact that the Fong was in Lee Sejun's hands was broadcasted live. The fact that the Messiah Guild's players offered the legendary item to their savior, Lee Sejun was broadcasted, resulting in celebrations from all across the world. In a nutshell, it was the Messiah Guild and Lee Sejun who were the ones that had benefited the most from the case. However, the Messiah Guild that benefited the most from the dungeon was in the past it was before Kim Woo Jin managed to return to the past. They had injured their competitors, secured a legendary item, and proved to the world that the Messiah Guild was the best. There's something. That was the reason why Kim Woo Jin looked over the profiles of the players participating in the dungeon once again. There is a high possibility that the Messiah Guild used another guild to do something. He was also considering the possibility of the Messiah Guild doing something without acting themselves and soiling their reputation. This concludes the dungeon preparations. See you all tomorrow in front of the dungeon gate. The dungeon preparations finally concluded. The one that is the most suspicious is the Skull Guild. Kim Woo Jin also finished his preparations. Moments before entering the dungeon gate. Bugyangdi, where the dungeon gate had spawned, was in a festive mood. With Skull Guild player Kim Taejun as the guest today. From news to entertainment, various TV programs were filming all over the university, and some people were even throwing a party near the location. Let's party without regret. Let's go. For players who could die despite being skilled, and could not even have a grave, it was natural for them to be excited and have fun before entering a dungeon. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was different. He was not excited. He checked and calculated it calmly again and again. What's the chance he'll die? He was calculating while thinking about the likelihood for him to die in the dungeon. Kim Woo Jin was that kind of guy. He was willing to die if necessary, but that did not mean to he would act like a mad dog that couldn't wait to die. That was true now as well. If this dungeon was risky to the point of being fatal, he was going to give up on clearing the dungeon. If he did not have confidence, he intended to reconsider. After careful calculations, he arrived at an answer. Of course, the answer was obvious. There isn't any. Kim Woo Jin was confident in clearing the dungeon. Players are now entering the dungeon gate. The atmosphere at the dungeon gate was similar to that of a national soccer team's match. Commentators explained how players were heading toward the dungeon gate more seriously than ever before, and drones took shots of the scene and broadcasted the videos live. The Messiah Guild's heroes have just entered the dungeon gate. Moreover, the atmosphere was heated like a match between Korea and Japan rather than a simple match between between two national soccer teams. The home team was definitely the Messiah Guild. That was why the players from Messiah Guild were the first ones to enter. If the Messiah Guild entered late and they were attacked by other player due to that reason, wasn't it clear where Koreans will shoot their arrows? They got 20 seats without having to bid, and to think they get to enter first as well there is no better special treatment than this. I'd rather have them go in first rather than hear everyone complaining. For other guilds, it was better to let the Messiah Guild enter first. Nothing is going to change even if they go in there first anyway. I guess so since we have to catch at least a thousand orcs this time. Furthermore, rather than being safer, it was likely to be more dangerous for them to enter the dungeon that was home to over 100 orcs. Well, at least there is no reason for the Messiah Guild to wait for us at the spawning point and kill us off one by one. That's true. Above all, they were confident that the Messiah Guild had no reason to attack them. Therefore, there was no commotion. Players began to cross the dungeon gate, turning their backs on the crowd of cheers. 
Kim Woo Jin crossed the dungeon gate. The game has started. One of the most important characteristics for a player was their adaptability. The ability to adapt to the conditions of a dungeon was essential since nobody knew if there would be forests, mountains, or deserts until they have entered the dungeon. At the same time, adapting to one's own capabilities was also important. A player's abilities transcended common sense and acquiring abilities could be surprisingly quick. Just by changing items, a tremendous amount of bonus stats could be obtained immediately. Adaptability to oneself and knowing one's strength was indeed very important. By the time someone approached the level of 20, they would know if they had such adaptability or not. They would be able to vaguely measure their own strength. They would be able to gauge whether they were just decent or if they could face roll and run wild in the dungeon. The players who entered the Orc Champion Colony dungeon was, of course, the latter. They had the necessary capabilities and skills to run it down without a care in the world. Let's catch them before the others hunt them all. Of course, they're going to give the right to challenge the Orc Champion in the order of who got most slots, right? So they did not hesitate a bit when they entered the dungeon. Come on. They threw themselves into the great forest before them. Then they began fighting in the forest full of orcs. Kyo. Kill it. Soon after, the cries of orcs and players started to emerge from all over the forest, and the fresh smell of blood filled the forest. There is an orc. We are the one who found this orc. Don't touch our catch. Everyone tried to catch as much they could, revealing their fangs to each other. Only one person was shying away from all the action. It's as I expected. Kim Woo Jin. He was the only one missing out on all the action. No, he wasn't exactly shying away from the battle, but even so, he was standing motionlessly near the starting point. He spent half of the day standing still at the starting point to assess the situation around him. He wasn't doing any research, spying, or monitoring either. If Park Yong Wan, who substantially paid Kim Woo Jin to be his watchdog, knew that Kim Woo Jin was wasting his time in a such a way, he would be baffled. They don't look back and are competitively hunting the orcs, with ease as expected too. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had no intention of acting as a watchdog for Park Yong Wan from the start. They hunt well enough to cause the orcs to be nervous. Kim Woo Jin was also not interested in hunting orcs. It's about time for the orcs to come out from their colony then the front line will reach a deadlock. Kim Woo Jin's objectives remained the same. The orc champion will move to the front to break the deadlock. Orc champion, the orc lord's fawn was in his possession. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin planned to go after the orc champion. Now is a good time. Finally, Kim Woo Jin moved. Chapter 23 Orc Colony the place where hundreds of orcs lived was unbelievably desolate. High rising trees were broken, cut, or crushed holes and bones of both animals and monsters were littered all over the place. But most of all, what made the area feel so desolate was the terrifying killing intent of hundreds of orcs. Kyo. Kua. Cries of orcs, which saturated the colony with a dense killing intent, made it so that no other organism would want to settle in their vicinity. At the center of a group of orcs, there was a lifeless corpse of an orc. The eyes of orcs looking at the decapitated body were filled with murderous, bloody intent. Of course, they weren't giving off such a bloody pressure due to their bonds and feelings of companionship with the dead orc. What made the orcs react so fiercely was the threat materialized before their eyes. It was the fact that they also could become a lump of meat that stimulated their killing intent. Among this group of orcs, the one that gave off the strongest bloodthirsty intent was their leader, the orc champion. Finding the boss was not difficult. Orc champions were usually two heads taller than the average orc, and wore a black tooth necklace unless the person in question was blind, anyone would be able to distinguish between the two. Even a blind man could distinguish the orc champion from the rest of the colony. Kara. The orc champion's killing intent was so great that even other orcs would not dare to approach it. The orc champion expressed his anger. His scream tore through the entire orc colony, staggering all the orcs in the vicinity. Kua. All the orcs started coming out of the colony with their weapons in perfect order. It wasn't because they were ordered to. Ku. 
Everyone hurriedly left the colony because they didn't want to die like a dog by being near the angered orc champion. The orc champion also joined the scene. K.R. As soon as the orc champion let out a horrible grunt at a nearby soldier, the subordinate immediately handed over the sword he had on him. It was a scimitar that befit the size of an orc champion. Cool. The orc champion left the camp right after receiving the sword. He intended to relieve his anger with blood. Three subordinate orcs attended the orc champion side to side as they advanced. At the same time, a man went into action. Orc champion. A monster among monsters. He was terrifying to the extent that even orcs, who were of the same race, were afraid to stand near him. Enemies appeared in front of this very monster whose roar would scare off any beast. Tiao Juliak. Tiao Juliak. It was none other than the skeleton soldiers. The skeleton soldiers, which were summoned by using the bodies of orcs as sacrifices, carried blunt swords and shields that appeared to have been used before they died. That was enough explanation. Rather, there was no time for further explanation. It was because the battle began as soon as the skeleton soldiers appeared. It was only natural. There were battles throughout the forest, and his people were dying. Under such circumstances, there was no reason to negotiate with something that was blocking its way. Although it was in his instincts to leave everything in his sights half dead, the skeleton soldiers in front of them were made out of orcs. Orcs, however, would have never been labeled as monsters if they were capable making such a rational judgment when facing foes made out of their own kind. With the orc champion standing in front of them, skeleton soldiers also prepared for battle. The appearance of skeleton soldiers was unusual. The skeleton soldiers were waiting for the orc champion to come. It is a necessary quality for a hunting dog to fearlessly pounce at a prey like a wolf, but only the crazy ones would blindly rush at a tiger. It was a form of proof that the skeleton soldier's owner was an excellent hunting dog. In other words, the orc champion was a terrifying, terrifying monster. Its size wasn't much different from a troll, but it was a horrifying monster that one would not dare to compare with a troll. To be honest, the outcome of the battle was already set. Quajig. As evidence, the orc champion quickly finished a skeleton soldier in an instant with its first blow. It was due to the inability of the skeleton soldier to avoid such a swift and powerful blow furthermore, the orc champion's sword was not an ordinary sword. The sword did not suit its large body, it was a scimitar that was more appropriate for a human to use it wasn't something one could handle by simply blocking. In fact, although the scimitar the skeleton soldier was carrying was crude, even the shield was cut down along with the skeleton soldier's body. The skeleton soldiers knew they were clearly outmatched. They proceeded further while taking advantage of that fact. They, who even used their owner as a bait, and were willing to stall for time and create a gap by sacrificing one of their colleagues. Afterwards, they all slashed their swords during the opening. The moment one of the skeleton soldiers was hit, the remaining four skeleton soldiers left scars on the orc champion's body at the same time. The orc champion vented his anger over the result. Of course, the wounds were not deep. It was as if someone was trying to leave a mark on a tree to leave directions. The wounds were visible, but such scratches had little to no effect on a big tree. Nevertheless, the skeleton soldiers did not give up. Afterwards, they spread out and surrounded the orc champion they went into formation and prepared for the next attack. They intended to sacrifice one of them once again to create an opening and attack with the remaining three. Kua. The orc's champion vented his anger after realizing their intentions. He was angry at the skeleton soldiers who dared to reveal their teeth even after seeing his might. It was an overwhelming, intense rage. Kara. Even the orcs who were with him were so terrified that they could not help but step back from the battlefield. However, such a roar did not work on the skeleton soldiers. Naturally, a second skirmish took place. It was the same as before. The orc champion charged toward a skeleton soldier, narrowing the distance between the two and swung his weapon then the remaining three skeleton soldiers attempted to attack the orc champion. After that, the orc champion went berserk. He stopped wasting time venting his anger and immediately went after the next skeleton soldier. He was literally on a rampage. 
the skeleton soldiers were barely managing to stand against the orc champion. The remaining three skeletons quickly launched their own attacks after avoiding the orc champion's attacks. A minute or so passed. The orc champion's body was covered in countless cuts. And the skeleton soldiers' bodies were crushed. Only one skeleton soldier remained. Of course, the skeleton soldier had no intention of escaping. It still showed a will to fight with its fierce gaze. The orc's champion also used everything at his disposal to ensure that the last skeleton soldier was finished. Soon the orc's champion's scimitar hit the last remaining skeleton. Quag. At the same time, a hand axe flew out of nowhere and struck the orc champion's neck. Tuck. The string that held together the orc champion's necklace was cut. Sururu. Naturally, the necklace on the orc champion's neck fell to the floor. Kook. But at that moment, rather than worrying about the fallen necklace, the orc champion touched his throat in agony. It was due to the poison. From the orc champion's perspective, he could only think about taking out the hand axe from his throat as soon as possible. That's how the gap was formed. As expected. Kim Woojin found a chance to snatch the necklace from the orc champion. Kim Woojin started to dash during the opening. The fact that he was a monster among monsters was verifiable by the difficulty given for the A-rank dungeon. Furthermore, a dungeon capacity of 150 people indicated that 150 people were needed to kill the orc champion. It was nigh near impossible to catch such a monster alone. Unless, Kim Woojin suddenly had a 100-point increase in his constitution. That was the reason. That was why Kim Woojin decided to go for the Orc Lord's Fong, not the Orc Champion. And he prepared to catch his prey. He waited for the disarray to come. The 149 players searched up and down by hunting the Orcs eventually, the Orc Champion would come out in response. He waited and prepared. Waiting for the moment the orcs would change their behavior and reveal the location of the orc champion as a result. Waiting for the moment when the orc lord's fawn would fall on the floor, when the hand axe severed the necklace as well as cutting the orc champion's throat. When all that was done, Kim Woojin did not hesitate. Kim Woojin appeared at the right moment he sprinted with all his might towards the orc champion. Kua. With Kim Woojin's appearance, the orc champion prepared for battle right away. The scimitar repeatedly smashed the skeleton soldiers then swung downward toward Kim Woojin's head. Kim Woojin avoided the attack easily as if he had expected it. He brushed past the orc champion as he avoided the attack. At the same time, Kim Woojin grabbed a black fawn about the same size as his forearm when it fell on the floor. An exciting announcement was heard. Pleasant announcements continued. Okay. Immediately, Kim Woojin left the battlefield without looking back. It was the end of the hunt. Berg. The battlefield was filled with cries of people and orcs, a pungent aroma of blood, and soaring flames. Somewhere in this battlefield was a man reveling over his beautiful hunt. Orc Lord's Fawn. Its options are even better than I thought. The options on this item surpassed what Kim Woojin had imagined. Among them, the power to allow the user to gain all the effects of the item just by possessing it went beyond his expectations. Meaning this indicated that the effects would be applied even if he kept the item in his inventory this meant that once the ownership was decided, there was virtually no way to take it away by force. Moreover, the effects of the Orc Lord's Fawn wasn't over yet. The total amount of stats that one would be granted in addition to the stats from the achievement by having this item exceeded common sense. Kim Woojin gained more stats in his constitution from Orc Lord's Fawn alone than all the points he invested in from his level ups. The explosive spec up that suddenly occurred was obvious, even to his eyes. It was worth it to enter this dungeon at the cost of gaining attention from Park Yongwan. He felt power coursing through his body. Through this, Kim Woojin was now sure. This is enough to kill the Orc Champion. Now he had the ability to hunt the Orc Champion. If I only had a decent weapon that could slash through his body. Chapter 24 After the battle between the orcs and the players persisted for over half a day. Let's get out. Let's just end it here for today. Players left the front lines one by one and started to rest. Then the players who took a break started to gather. 
Hey, there you guys look terrible maybe you guys overestimated your abilities. As if you guys are any different. Why don't you just stay behind and watch our belongings instead? Uh. What? You want me to bury your bodies after you guys get fucked? Quiet down over there. Let's just rest while we have the time for it. Even though they were competitors, there wasn't any reason to stay alone and leave openings for a gang of orcs to attack. It was just much smarter to group up when taking a rest. Naturally, those gathered talked and exchanged information. Orcs are beginning to move in an organized manner. At first, only one or two of them moved at a time but now, three or four of them are moving around as groups. Our party saw more than ten in a group. Players exchanged bits of information, which were like puzzle pieces, steadily forming their own pictures of their current situation. Did you see anybody from the Lion Guild? I saw them enter the colony but I haven't seen them since. Me neither. Then, do you think they were wiped out? It's highly probable. Pictures like that weren't always pleasant, especially the deaths of their collaborators. On the other hand, no one was phased by this fact. Does this mean there are fewer competitors now? The Lion Guild's items weren't ordinary I guess it will belong to whoever who picks them up now. This is why I can't get enough of a ranked dungeons. Rather, most of them felt joy in their hearts they saw the deaths of other people as opportunities. However, those emotions of joy did not last long. Did you guys see the orc champion? Why are you bringing that up all of a sudden? It may just be a rumor, but it looks like a party already engaged with the orc champion. What? I heard some people saw the orc champion return to the colony while being full of wounds. The mood turned cold when they heard that a party already attacked and injured the orc champion. I expected people to attack it, but to think that they would move so quickly. Should we have moved earlier than we had planned? In a situation where the achievements and rewards for hunting the orc champion were most likely to be of the legendary grade, everyone had their own plans for how to kill the orc champion. Should we form a contact? But if we form a contact here, there will be people who would try to keep us in check. Some of the guilds already agreed to work together to deal with the orc champion under these circumstances, no player would simply let others take the orc champion away from them. However, Kim Woo Jin, the source of the rumor, remained quiet. He did not pay attention to the changing atmosphere. It's going as expected. This was why Kim Woo Jin spread the rumor. Indeed, Kim Woo Jin started the rumors. He started rumors that there were groups who already tried to kill the orc champion. The battles will be even fiercer tomorrow. By spreading such rumors, he intended to make the other players fight more aggressively. Then they will create another opening. He wanted to create another chance to hunt the orc champion. This is the only chance. He wasn't anxious. There was no reason to doubt or worry. More players died than I thought. Rather, what troubled Kim Woo Jin for the moment was that a considerable number of people died on the first day. He was uncertain but Kim Woo Jin estimated that at least three parties were wiped out today even considering the fact that this was an A-ranked dungeon, such an outcome was unexpected. All of the players came in with plenty of first aid supplies including potions, but the death toll is still usually high this can't just be due to the orcs. Indeed in all likelihood, monsters were not main cause of the high death rate as expected, someone is hunting the players. Kim Woo Jin was certain that there were human hunters who were hunting the players here. I guessed correctly. While pondering upon these ideas, Kim Woo Jin closed his eyes. He wasn't disappointed or disgusted by the fact that players were killing each other for benefits. He no longer cared because he felt there wasn't even a shred of hope left for those players in his heart there was no reason for him to be disappointed. I guess I should take care of it before it becomes more bothersome. Kim Woo Jin closed his eyes only because it was little irritating. Like that, the second day of the dungeon attack began. Second day of the dungeon attack. A fiercer battle broke out around the orc colony compared to the day before. Damn it, there are so many. If I knew this would happen, I would have fought in the back. The fierce battle was caused by the player's launch into the inner area of the orc colony, which resulted in a huge battle. As the players gathered together to attack the orcs they were dealing with gathered together as well naturally, the situation became very chaotic and tense. Kua. 
everybody shut up and focus on the battle. In many places, there were bloodbaths that could not be avoided. Due to unrelenting pressure, the orc champion, who was resting in the innermost part of the orc colony, wasn't able to remain calm. KKR. The orc champion prepared to go to the battlefield once more. This time, however, he was not accompanied by his men. To be more accurate, his men weren't willing to follow him. It was due to the orc champion's failure to control his anger and slaughtering his subordinates the day before. The orc champion didn't really care about that. To him, his subordinates were only a hindrance who would urinate if he pressured them. It was better if the enraged orc champion didn't see such an occurrence. It appeared as if there was nothing in this dungeon that could stop the enraged orc champion. KRR. Until Kim Woo Jin appeared. When Kim Woo Jin appeared, the orc champion's reaction was a mix of both embarrassment and befuddlement. Who could believe that a rabbit who stole a lion's prey would once again appear in front of the lion? Kim Woo Jin's hand axe woke the orc champion from his bewilderment. Wyrick. A hand axe flew toward the orc champion and the orc champion reflexively raised his arm to block the axe. P.U.K. The hatchet cut through the orc champion's arm and remained stuck. The depth of the wound was considerable. Because the wound was deep enough, it allowed the poisonous blood on the axe's blade to seep into the orc champion's body. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin's attack proved to be effective enough to make the orc champion nervous. Suddenly, the orc champion rushed toward Kim Woo Jin to kill him without any hesitation. Hugh. Kim Woo Jin, rather than avoiding a direct conflict, rushed toward the orc champion as well. Kim Woo Jin held a scimitar in his hand just like the orc champion and was about to cross blades with one and another. However, the moment before the swords crossed, Kim Woo Jin lowered the swing of his sword, avoiding the orc champion's scimitar, and instead created a gash the orc champion's right thigh. Sieg. This time, though not fatal, the wound was fairly deep. Kua. He released his fury with all his might. That was when. Unexpectedly, arrows flew and pierced the orc champion's body. The surprised orc champion looked around while perplexed. In the orc champion's eyes, the skeleton soldiers who launched the arrows were faintly visible. The orc champion turned his head toward the skeleton soldiers after erupting in anger. Right now, he was planning to pulverize the skeleton soldiers into dust. Then then a stone tapped its body. The orc champion turned his head in the direction of the stone. Kim Woo Jin was there. Staring at the orc champion like a hunting dog ready to take a bite off his neck. You aren't supposed to look away. The orc champion should not have shown his back against such an opponent. Finally, the orc champion fixed his eyes only at Kim Woo Jin. I'll bite you till I'm tired of it. This was the beginning of the fun part of the hunting dog's hunt. All humans were physically weak. Despite being weak, humans had an advantageous trait as well. Endurance was their strength. For a long time, mankind had been successful hunters due to their superior endurance in comparison to other animals. It wasn't just physical endurance that allowed them to run for two hours. A human's mental endurance was also far superior when comparison to other animals. Despite how annoying or frustrating the situation became, humans were capable of patiently waiting for the right moment. This characteristic was a great virtue in a hunt. Kim Woo Jin demonstrated that patience really was a virtue in his fight against the orc champion. Roughly ten minutes have elapsed. It was roughly ten minutes since the battle started, and Kim Woo Jin relentlessly attacked the orc champion for those ten minutes without a single break. As a result, the orc champion's body was riddled with wounds. In accordance to his plan, there was not a single fatal wound. Ku, Yue, Kua. Instead, the orc champion seemed to have trouble breathing, looking as if he was close to passing out this situation was what Kim Woo Jin was actually after. The nature of the orc champion is obvious. In a situation where he couldn't land a fatal injury, Kim Woo Jin would rather bite and drag around his opponent rather than fight him directly. Pyeong. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin had a group of skeletons that accurately launched arrows made using his blood. It was worth diligently saving up blood. 
the repeated attacks of his skeleton soldier's arrows as well as blood poison accumulating in the orc champion's body were clearly inflicting a considerate amount of damage. Kua, Kua. Nevertheless, the orc champion did not lose any momentum. Die fighting and never retreating, that was the way of an orc champion. One who would run away in battle wouldn't hold the title of champion. In its name. Here it comes. That was how Kim Woo Jin was able to predict that the orc champion would try to squeeze every ounce of its remaining strength to make a final blow. Kua. As he had predicted, the orc champion rose once again and rushed toward his prey, holding in his unstable breathing. He trampled the ground forcefully, instantly narrowing the distance between his target, then swung his scimitar downward. Quack. The scimitar fell straight into the ground. Kara. At the same time, the orc champion's face convulsed. Because he had forcefully put most of his strength into that attack despite his awful condition, it had affected his wrist. Then Kim Woo Jin stabbed the orc champion's right wrist with his knife. Ka. The orc's champion walked backward in agony. It was the first time that the orc champion let go of the weapon in his hand. Srong. Finally, the moment when Kim Woo Jin would get a weapon that could deal a fatal blow to the orc champion had arrived. Chapter 25 The options on the orc champion's scimitar were simply brilliant. The price of such an item was enough to buy an entire building next to a downtown mall in Korea it was also enough to get players to enter the dungeon at a risk to their lives. But those details were of no importance to Kim Woo Jin. Poo Wat all he cared about was whether or not the sword could cut the orc champion's body kook. Before his helpless situation, the orc champion could only scream in his appalling state. Kua, Kua. However, he didn't even have enough strength left to scream. Effects such as these were conveyed to the other party every minute of the battle. Nevertheless, the orc champion did not run away. Because he was a champion. The orc champion fought despite knowing there was a high probability of imminent death. Kua. The bloody orc champion rushed toward Kim Woo Jin he tried to fight this last battle till the end. Kim Woo Jin's strategy against the orc champion's action was simple. This is it. Not fighting directly. That was all it was. Against the charging orc champion, Kim Woo Jin just kept dodging and dodging with quick steps he didn't play along with the orc champion's final attempt. He didn't need to take risks for a better, more monumental victory. Die like this. Kim Woo Jin was that kind of player. Just like that, the orc champion hunt came to an end. Ho Wu. Upon receiving the notification signaling the end of the battle, Kim Woo Jin let out a long sigh for the first time in a while. His tension slightly loosened. My goal has been achieved. Meanwhile, skeleton soldiers with bows in their hands began to gather around Kim Woo Jin. It was bigger than I expected. If there was another harvest this time, it was that the skeleton soldiers performed way better than had he had expected, even with a bow. That was why there was also regret. If only their specs were little higher. It was regrettable that they did not have the hardware to match their excellent software. There was one more regret. Using blood poisoning is also way too restrictive. To capture the orc champion, Kim Woo Jin consumed most of the blood that he had steadily accumulated. I really need blood sucking. Blood was something that he could not simply take out any time he wanted, which naturally left something to be desired in this area due to its high degree of limitation. My other option is to raise the skill rank of blood poisoning so that it is more potent. At that moment, a new notification was heard. It was an alert informing Kim Woo Jin, who demonstrated that his halo was the best amidst countless players the halo decided to reward him with a gift. The other players will hear bitter words. It was also a reminder that other players were being scolded by their halo. Upon receiving the news, Kim Woo Jin searched around. Hmm. Instead of leaving the battlefield after his thoughts, Kim Woo Jin decided to unravel his new gifts. He checked his new achievement and skill. Catalog. Then he summoned the catalog he received as his reward. A thin booklet appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin, and Kim Woo Jin took possession of the book. At that moment, golden light began to shoot around Kim Woo Jin's hand. Ah! 
It was the appearance of a unique. To think such a day would come. After encountering such unexpected luck, Kim Wu Jin quickly looked at the shining page. Ruler of the battlefield. A skill that's worth a hundred billion won appeared in my hand. Before returning to the past, it was a skill famous for its worth. It was worth one hundred billion won, or to be exact, one hundred million dollars. On January 1, 2025, when Sotheby held an item auction for the first time in its history, the skill page appeared, and the bid started at $1 million. Then one young man, who had bid all the way up to $100 million, finally won the skill page after a grueling competition. It was the first time that Johann George's face was seen. That was the first time that Johann George showed up at an official event. Actually, his identity as King of the Undead was revealed much later, long after the auction. Anyway, since then, the ruler of the battlefield skill was nicknamed the 100 million lotto it was terrifying. Of course, in the past, it was a 100 million nightmare for Kim Woo Jin. This skill, just like the skill effect had said, strengthened the summoner's summons based on the number of enemies they killed. Kim Woo Jin, who investigated Johann George, concluded that the it could increase the strength of a summon by at least three times. Nobody could fight him in a high floor dungeon. Skills like this became extremely powerful when it came to dungeons with a higher number of floors. Since the higher the dungeon was, the more monsters there would be for people to hunt. The skeleton soldiers were manageable. Skeleton soldiers were, however, treated like a consumable. On the other hand, monsters like the Death Knights were. The problem came from powerful summons, such as Death Knights, Skeletal Dragons, and Golems. When monsters like Death Knights could repeatedly strengthen themselves by killing their enemies, their strength transcended common sense. This was one of the reasons why he did not hesitate to choose to fight against the King of Undead all by himself. That kind of skill was in his hand. Now, there was an opportunity for Kim Wu Jin to give his enemies the same nightmare that had to suffer through. Jig. Naturally, Kim Wu Jin tore the skill without hesitation. A delightful notice was heard. The announcement lead to a change in the burning eyes of the skeleton soldiers. Their burning eyes which used to give off a white light began to glow with redness. Now, the eyes will turn even redder as the effects of their kills are accumulated on the battlefield, and the skeleton soldiers will give Kim Wu Jin more confidence in them. Kim Wu Jin was satisfied with the development. This should have given them enough time. Satisfied, he moved on to the next step. Now it's time to hunt the observers. Kim Wu Jin began tracking the eyes that were watching him. Corner them. Kua. Do not back down. While the fierce battle between the orcs and the players were taking place. An alert was issued to all players at the same time, announcing the death of the orc champion what? What the fuck? Something that should not happen, and could not happen, happened this fact made everyone freak out or so some thought. What is it? Is it a hidden camera? I heard an apparition. They thought they heard it wrong. However, when they were reprimanded with complaints from their respective halos, no one dismissed what they heard as nonsense. Shit. Who the fuck was it? Which bastard killed it? Everyone's attention naturally began to focus on the identity of the party that hunted the orc champion. But at this point, they couldn't just wander around searching for the party that hunted the orc champion and chase them down. We need to know who killed the orc champion to make a trade, or threaten them. Damn, I hope the scouts didn't miss this. Their last hope laid on the separate search party that were tracking the movements of the orc champion and his group of orcs. That's outrageous. That was Lee Young Wook's role. His halo, Silent Hunter, was far more suited for gathering information in the shadows rather than being out in the battlefield. Fuck, how is that possible? He was lucky enough to see the player who hunted the orc champion. Of course, he was not pleased with what he knew. Damn it, will they believe me? Rather than being happy, he was concerned with whether or not his colleagues would believe what he said. How could he expect his colleagues to believe what he said when even he couldn't believe what he saw? This is going to be troublesome how will I explain this to the guild? However, Lee Young Wook, who got this information, immediately went to return to his teammates. Let's return first. 
He moved slowly and silently to escape from the surrounding groups of orcs. Kook. A sound suddenly burst forth from his mouth. It was due to an arrow that came out of nowhere. An arrow stuck to Lee Yumwook's butt. Ugh. Ugh. Faced with such a dilemma, Lee Yumwook bit his lips to hold back his screams. Unfortunately, he couldn't help but walk like a duck. Who was it? Lee Yumwook looked around with tears of pain. Once again, an arrow came and impaled Lee Yumwook's shoulder. P.U.K. Ugh. Fortunately, this time he was able to avoid a fatal injury thanks to his pauldron. Shit. However, Lee Youngwook was not reassured by this fact. Rather, he couldn't be relieved. Sui. He realized that the arrow on his shoulder began to move like a snake and tighten around his neck. Snake arrow. Snake arrow, a stealthy hunting skill only given to those who have the silent hunter as their halos, choked Lee Youngwook's neck in an instant. Li Youngwook moved his hand to tear it off. However, the assassin did not spare such an opening for Li Youngwook. Arrows flew repeatedly, forcing Li Youngwook to finally kneel before the ninth arrow. Some time after that, the assassin revealed himself. The assassin, who was wearing a mask to cover his face, appeared silently and immediately approached Li Youngwook who collapsed not long ago. He's dead. As soon as he verified that he was dead, he took out his arrows one by one. All I have to do now is to throw the body at the orcs and it will be done. The only thing left to do was to throw the body at the orcs in order to completely eliminate the evidence. It was a relatively easy job for him since he had been doing this for a while now. Anyway I wonder how they're going to take care of him. That's why the man had a different thought in his mind. One arrow flew out of nowhere and stuck in the man's spine. The man screamed and fell forward. He heard a notice in his ear. It was an alert notifying him that the hunting dog was here. Chapter 26 Year 2020, when players arrived from around the world, people hoped that living conditions would finally improve they once dreamed that the players would save the world. As time went by, however, the living conditions of the people became even more miserable rather than get better. Especially when monsters that couldn't be killed with firearms emerged in 2025 the last hope ordinary people had of protecting themselves by using powerful modern weapons was shattered. Some people who had lost hope began to riot and the frequency of looting and arson increased. Amidst this calamity, countries started to compete fiercely in order to secure stronger items and more talented players. Laws were meaningless in such a process. The players could do and did do just about everything inside the dungeons, where literally anything could take place. At some point, it became common for an ally to betray them and fight over items. It was the start of an age where people cared more about the distribution of loot rather than completing the actual hunt. Kim Woo Jin, who had survived through a such fierce and cruel period before, was well aware of the importance of taking care of the dangers that laid hidden behind him. As expected. When fighting with the orc champion, Kim Woo Jin already knew there was an observer around him. As I speculated, there was a person taking care of the scouts from each party. It was also expected that surveillance was not their only objective. It was based on the fact that there were no rumors spreading regarding Kim Woo Jin taking the orc lord's fong from the orc champion. It was impossible that there were no witnesses. Even if it was the first day, there would have been more than one party that sent observers to check on the situation of the orc champion. Meaning, it was highly likely that there was someone silencing the witnesses. Of course, it wasn't Kim Woo Jin. If you want to hunt half of the players in the dungeon, removing their eyes first is the right answer. It was just a scheme planned by a group of people in order to hunt the players here. Anyway, it was nothing unusual for Kim Woo Jin. In fact, it was routine for him. He had experienced many similar situations, to the point that he was sick of it he knew the perfect way to respond against it. The reason why Kim Woo Jin purposely relaxed after hunting for the orc champion was also to give the observers time to act. You you bastard how. It was frankly impossible for his prey to realize what actually happened. Wah, wait a minute. There must be some kind of misunderstanding. The prey was so flustered that he didn't even realize that he was acting out of order. Th, this, what happened here was. 
Even though he knew he was already caught in Kim Woo Jin's trap, and that there was a dead player who he had killed him right next to him, he was trying his hardest to think of an excuse. He was clearly in a state of panic. Kim Woo Jin did not bother talking to him he didn't even meet his eyes. He certainly wasn't going to explain how he had set up his trap and what his intentions were. There were already enough bad guys who explained everything to their enemies before executing their plans in the movies. He also had no intention of obtaining information through useless torture. Sug. The orc champion's scimitar in Kim Woo Jin's hand cut his opponent's throat in one fell swoop cut. His prey let out a dying gasp. Huck, hook. At that time, life in his opponent's eyes began to fade. As soon as the light disappeared from his prey's eyes, Kim Woo Jin finally met his eyes. The notification sounded in his ear. The second day of the battle ended abruptly. Back off. Get out. Just get out of here. All of the players resigned from the field at the same time. We need to understand what happened first. We don't know what's going to happen, so let's retreat for now. Of course, the death of the orc champion was what forced the players to leave. Who defeated the orc champion? They weren't retreating because they were curious. Everyone's concentration is broken. If we fight like this, the rate of casualties would be high. The first reason was that a player's concentration could collapse due to the unexpected death of the orc champion. We don't know how the orcs will react to losing their leader either. It would be fine if they just retreated, but there is also the chance that the orcs would lose their mind and charge at us in anger due to the loss of their leader. The second reason was that they didn't know how the orcs would react over the loss of their leader. We have to make a new plan as well. I'm sure they feel the same way we have to meet and talk to each other in order to avoid suspicion. The third reason was that they had to throw away their plans of catching the orc champion. However, not everyone stepped down from the battlefield for that reason. Where are the rest? The reason why the groups wearing skull masks resigned from the battlefield was different. I believe they are cleaning up. Skull Guild Although it's been a bit over a year since it was established, it became relatively well known due to their solid financial powers and connections, which allowed them to use popular celebrities to boost their public image. The guild was well known for making all of their players wear a skull mask as well. In the end, they also were able to participate in the A-ranked dungeon, which was at the center of interest of the whole world. Anyway, he really took on the orc champion by himself. Yes, I'm glad the Phoenix Guild isn't on the list. But the Skull Guild's goal did not involve hunting the orcs. Yeah, we don't have kill that monster. Their prey were none other than the players. The reason was simple. Still, he may have gotten a legendary item why don't we try to go after him at least once. If that really is the case, we're going to hit it big when we catch him. It was much better for business to catch players rather than monsters. In actuality, the comparison was pointless. While the orcs usually only dropped normal and perhaps rare items if they got lucky, most of the players here were plastered with unique items. In other words, it meant that killing players would net them billions of one at a time. Don't be too greedy didn't we decide to go for the players because we weren't confident in getting the legendary item? Yeah, you're right. Items like that are for the Messiah Guild or the Phoenix Guild to take. It was far more reasonable than trying to overcome the Messiah Guild or the Phoenix Guild in order to secure the legendary item. All we have to do is to let everyone know who he is then someone else will take care of it all we have to do is to stay low, make enough profit, and then shut our mouths if we shut our mouths, no one will know what happened here. Right in a dungeon, even if you die to an user, it's just an accident. As for the items, all we have to do is to sell them overseas. When considering the special aspects of a dungeon's environment, there was no better business than this. Uh, someone's coming. At that moment, their colleague appeared. Huh? What? Why is he running? A fellow guild member in his skull mask was running toward them in a hurry. Everyone wearing a skull mask was immediately alert. Soon after the arrival of their guildmate, the man who was leading the conversation till now said. What is it? He is here. He. The guy who killed the orc champion he's coming here with his skeletons after figuring out our identity. Over there. That skeleton right there. 
At the end of the report, three orc skeletons appeared before them. The sight of skeleton soldiers equipped with swords, shields and helmets was frightening already. Damn it! Facing such a perilous situation, the Skull Guild's members also drew their weapons they didn't relax when they took out their weapons. They couldn't relax. That monster came. Shit, why is this happening? While most of the players in the dungeon didn't know that the person attacking them was a monster who killed the orc champion alone, they knew. It would be strange if they did not panic. The pressure and anxiety felt by Lim Sun Jun, the leader of the party, was even greater were our identities discovered. Yes. In particular, Lim Sun Jun was shocked to learn that their identities and intentions may have been revealed. How? Secrecy was critically important. Wasn't it obvious that once the truth leaked outside, their lives and as well as the Skull Guild itself would be over? How much does he know? Don't tell me that the Phoenix Guild knows who we are. Did the information leak? A surreal reality complicated Lim Sun Jun's mind. We need to get a grasp on the actual situation is he the only one who knows who we are, or does the Phoenix Guild know too? They could flee if the opponent only wanted to attack them. They didn't really want to fight. But if the other person knew who they were, it was not something that could be solved by running away. Therefore, Lim Sun Jun could not choose to flee. If the Phoenix Guild knows, we will be tracked by all the players as soon as we run away. No, they actually had nowhere to run. It's better to die than getting caught than tortured for information we can't afford to damage the corporation. Above all, there was something more important for Lim Sun Jun. By the time he arrived at a decision, Lim Sun Jun was already prepared to fight. Get ready to hunt. He grabbed the bow on his shoulder and gave out orders. The order hardened the faces of the Skull Guild's members. Fight that monster. Instead of running. The order they were waiting for was not an order to battle, but an order to split up. Damn it should I just run. They were thinking of running away if they had to. If our identity is revealed, we will be finished as soon as we leave if you want to live, we have to kill him here. However, Lim Sun Jun's words forced them to abandon their thoughts of running away. Fuck. They realized that there was nowhere to run even if they fled upon realizing this, everyone clenched their teeth. Tiao Zhuliag. Tiao Zhuliag. Meanwhile, skeletons charged towards them. In order to fight against the skeleton soldiers, everyone focused all their senses and attention on the skeleton soldiers. Lim Sun Jun was about to shout. Initiate the battle. He was going to give out such order. Kek. But at that moment, what came out of his mouth was the sound of a sharp object penetrating his throat. W.H. Who? Lim Sun Jun tried to scream for help, but he couldn't even do that. Yup. Even Lim Sun Jun's mouth was blocked so that he wouldn't even be able to scream only then did Lim Sun Jun realize. No, no way. Who approached him? And what he wanted. Lim Sun Jun, who had learned the truth, swallowed his last words. Shit. Chapter, 27. One of the most annoying cases you could encounter while hunting was when the prey ran away. Even the strongest predator rarely had success when chasing prey that immediately ran away. And when one was chasing multiple prey, then there was no need to explain. In that sense, the Skull Guild was a difficult prey. They were several members, and their faces were concealed with masks. They were also clever enough to throw away their colleagues and run away at a moment's notice. Ultimately, they were aware that Kim Woo Jin was a scary predator. If Kim Woo Jin were to try to hunt them, they would undoubtedly run away rather than fight back. Moreover, if they were to successfully escape, it was likely that they would hide themselves until the dungeon was cleared. If they were to come out of the dungeon in a such way, Kim Woo Jin would certainly find himself in a lot of trouble. So Kim Woo Jin played a trick. He disguised his identity and hid among them. Then he put a shackle around them, leaving them only one option face him and kill him. I know your identity. For them, there was now an absolute need to kill Kim Woo Jin even if they didn't want to. Kim Woo Jin used the skeleton soldiers to distract the members of the Skull Guild and swiftly removed himself from their focus. From that moment, the battle was virtually over. 
Stats from just the Orc Lords Fong made a comparison between himself and players under level 20 pointless the fate of praise that could not run away was already decided they had to face the hunting dog equipped with the strongest weapon for his level range, the Orc Champion Scimitar, along with his five skeleton soldiers that behaved like him in every way. Ag. Hook, Huck. All seven members of the Skull Guild laid on the floor while covered in blood. Not all of them were dead. Kuyu. Rather, only two of the seven died, and five were still alive. Of course, Kim Woojin didn't save them because he was full of mercy. I got all the guys in his memories. When hunting praised that knew how to run, the crux of it was not killing them rather, it was making sure that they couldn't get away. Moreover, Kim Woojin didn't have a reason to keep them alive. Finally, the cleanup began. Tiao Juliak. Tiao Juliak. Hey, go away. Get away from me. As if understanding their owner's wishes, the skeleton soldiers gladly finished the job in his place. Kook. Then, a man came into Kim Woojin's attention. Lim Sun Jun, the leader of the group who was dealt with by him. Though he could not even breathe properly due to the deep wound on his throat, he was barely able to stand and glare at Kim Woojin. His eyes were filled with determination. I'll never give you any information. He was determined to seal his secret with his own death. Lim Sun Jun acted his resolution right away. Kyu Hub. With an arrow in his hand, he squeezed out the last of his strength, and stabbed himself through the neck. Lim Sun Jun died in a such a manner. Indescribable resolve could still been flowing out of him. The Skull Guild's members who were still alive gaped at the scene. Wait, what? Sway, suicide. They didn't think their leader would make such a decision. They just couldn't imagine that a player who didn't give a shit about the world or their own well-being would commit suicide. Kim Woojin showed little to no emotion despite the turn of events. It was always good to see such a strong determination. He has something. What mattered to Kim Woojin was that he had something precious enough to claim his own life. That was all. Then he read Lim Sung Jun's memory. This little bastard. At that moment, Kim Woojin's face crumpled. He belonged to the Yamato Federation. When the world turned into a game, many things changed. A government structure and its authority changed as well. The constitutions that mankind developed for over a century had to adapt in the face of players, monsters, and items. It was none other than Japan that attempted the biggest changes. After the right-wing government took office, the Japanese, who wanted to build an army that could invade other countries rather than maintaining just the JSDF, built an army that no longer the surrounding counties into consideration in the process, or criminals who were hiding in society due to public opinions and pressure from surrounding counties began laying the groundwork for another war. At the center of it was a household called the Yamato clan. With the ultimate goal of establishing Japan's primeval nation, the Yamato Federation, they seized power within the Japanese government and planned to escape the boundaries of the Japanese islands. The occupation of the Korean peninsula was their foremost objective. It was not a simple invasion. Due to their defeat in the previous war, the leaders of the Yamato Federation realized that the war for territorial expansion would once again result in a defeat most of all, they thought that having a large territory would only hinder them in the end by obligating them to take care of all the monsters and dungeon gates that would spawn over a large area. It was far more wise to capture only the Korean peninsula, which would allow them to have an impact on the continent yet also have a favorable geographical advantage. To achieve that end, the Yamato Federation plotted systematically and covertly. Lim Sun Jun was a member of the Yamato Federation sent to South Korea to carry out the conspiracy Kim Woo Jin was able to see Lim Sun Jun's experiences through the eyes of Anubis. In addition, Kim Woo Jin experienced the results of the conspiracy they had planned. I've seen firsthand that Korea's flagship players sell valuable items and players to Japan, which were like national assets. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had personally responded to it. Those who carried out such ambitions were punished by none other than Kim Woo Jin. From that point onward, the Messiah Guild's influence was solidified. Under the name of Messiah, Lee Se Jun became a true savior. And in front of the name of Messiah Lee Se Jun, this event caused a great stir in the world's order. 
Japan, a powerful nation, initiated an invasionary war to occupy Korea however, it was not only blocked but also prevented by the members of the Messiah Guild. It was a proof that Messiah Guild's power outweighed the government itself cheers for the Messiah Guild spread all over the world, and the influence of the Messiah Guild across the world reached a point that could not be stopped even by the government. The popularity in Korea was even more evident. The Messiah Guild, which prevented Japan that couldn't bear even losing at rock-paper-scissors, was revered like a deity by Koreans. Only those who spoke in favor of the Messiah Guild were elected in the general election and even the presidential election was decided based on who was the candidate backed by the Messiah Guild it was pretty good back then. Kim Woo Jin was happy recalling those events. If the Messiah Guild could shine so brilliantly, he was more than willing to give up his life for it. But it was different now. Maybe even this was planned by the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin had no choice but to hypothesize that even that might have been planned by the Messiah Guild. I'll have to confirm it first. It was necessary to confirm the hypothesis. Anyway, I've got a lot more useful information than I thought I would. At the same time, in Lim Sun Jun's memory, Kim Woo Jin was able to obtain valuable information. A list of spies from the Yamato Federation who were in Korea their plans and the routes they used for smuggling items. To think they made such a detailed assassination list. He even got the the list of people they wanted to assassinate. It was a situation where Kim Woo Jin had gained far more from one person than he could get from just the dungeon. I guess there's no reason to stay in this dungeon anymore. In other words, he didn't have anything else he wanted in the dungeon. Now, I will clear the dungeon. On the second day of the battle, players who gave up on their primary goal of killing the orc champion were forced to set a new goal. The only thing that's left for us now is to hunt the thousandth one. Kill everything no matter what kill every one of them you see. People put everything on the line to fulfill the second reward condition, being the thousandth orc hunter. Since there is no orc champion, there is no need to worry about the orc champion. Let's just kill them all. They poured all their anger and frustration from not being able to hunt the orc champion onto the other orcs. The third day of the battle was extremely bloody from the moment it started. Push. Just go in. There's no orc champion anyway. Sweep away. Players who no longer had a reason to fear facing the orc champion pushed forward without looking back. Everyone stepped on the acceleration with full force. Likewise, the difference that was not seen until they were driving at 150 kmh was starting to become apparent. Those guys from the Phoenix Guild are certainly not normal. Items are items, but their skills are undeniably on another level. Of course, the members of Phoenix Guild were among the leading runners in the race. Korea's number two guild in front of Korea's most promising talents who were equipped with the best equipments, orcs were nothing more than sacrificial lambs. Of course, there were others who were even faster than them. Did you see the Messiah Guild? Their monsters every one of them is killing an orc by themselves. I saw them hunting 30 orcs without any injuries. The Messiah Guild's hunting speed was even faster than the Phoenix Guild. It was only natural that they were faster. The scarier difference is that they don't seem to care whether they get injured or not. I saw their warriors just throw themselves against the orcs. I'd rather just drive into a wall at least an airbag comes out when that happens, right? The top priority for the players of the Phoenix Guild was taking care of their bodies. On the other hand, the Messiah Guild's members, armed with a sense of purpose, threw themselves aggressively without caring about their well-being. Fucking Messiah bastards. In front of such stupidity, even the Phoenix Guild players could not be helped but to stick out their tongues. Those crazy bastards just can't wait to die, huh? Break time a player from the Phoenix Guild thought of how fast the Messiah Guild hunted and stuck out his tongue. Soon after, a colleague next to him chipped in. It's better this way they're fanatics who just can't wait to die. Fanatics. Everyone lost their words after thinking of that expression. When they thought of what kind of god the Messiah Guild believed in and what that god's goal was, they couldn't help but feel that they really were selfish trash. Finally, one person came up with another subject to avert the truth. Anyway how do you think he's doing? He. Yeah, you know, that guy that bastard who's renowned for backstabbing others. Kim Woo Jin. Yeah, him. 
To the Phoenix Guild, Kim Woo Jin was like a chewing gum meant to be chewed when bored immediately afterwards, everyone chipped in one by one. Why the hell did that bastard come as our cockatoo? What if he stabs us in the back? Isn't that why they put him in? We, of course, and guys from the other parties won't work with him. Well, by that standard, there's no one more reliable than him I wonder what he's doing. Soon, the conversation went to the part about what Wu Jin was doing. Well, maybe he's dead. From what I've seen, I think he will hold on and hide till the dungeon is cleared. Why would the guild accept such a scumbag? Of course, none of them could really predict what Kim Wu Jin was doing. Who what? Kim Wu Jin was catching orcs as if he were catching rabbits the truth was that he was just casually leaving the orcs he captured behind for the skeletons behind him to kill. The startling reality was that he was also using 120% of his newly acquired skills. That'll do. Furthermore. Since they couldn't have killed a lot of orcs on the second day, the number of orcs they caught so far should be around 700 to 800 if I assume that only about 200 are left then 2 hours will be enough. No one expected the dungeon would last only about 2 more hours. Chapter 28 In boxing, a weight range consisted of around 2 to 3 kilograms, which made up 17 weight classes. It wasn't just because they wanted to create many titles. 17 weight classes were created because in a direct fight, 2 kilograms made a big difference. In a battlefield, such a small difference could decide the outcome. That was why. Kua. The skeleton soldiers, who had their stats increased thanks to Kim Woo Jin's supervision, were able to slaughter the orcs. Ruler of the battlefield. Skeleton soldiers, who could already overwhelm the orcs without these effects, had their abilities increased by 45% this made their confrontation against orcs look like a fight between a child and an adult moreover, all the items that the skeleton soldiers equipped right now were unique items. Sug. They wielded frightening weapons that most players couldn't buy due to the expensive price tags. Kua. In front of a skeleton soldier wielding such a weapon, the only thing the orcs equipped with just normal items could do was to scream despite oozing with blood. Furthermore, the skeleton soldiers, who found out that they were strong enough to demolish the orcs, became more reckless and started slaughtering them. It was ridiculous to the point that he couldn't help but admire. I have no words to say. Kim Woo Jin's currently felt as if he were attuned with nature. There was hope he expected a slight strengthening of the skeleton soldiers, but the outcome exceeded expectations it was, of course, the newly acquired skill that was responsible for the result beyond expectations. To think the effect of ruler of the battlefield would be so great. He was able to understand why the king of undead was willing to pay 100 million US dollars, which was 100 billion won in Korean currency. On the other hand, it gave him goosebumps. As long as they can acquire proper defense stats now. If he could cover for the skeleton soldiers obvious weakness, their defenses, they would become monstrous. In fact, there were several skills that could strengthen skeletal soldiers. The normal rank skill, white bone and the rare rank skill, red bone there even was a top grade unique rank skill, black bone. Among them, the combat power of black skeleton soldiers strengthened by the black bone skill was unbelievable. In addition to the skill, powerful rare or unique items that boasted formidable offensive power made fighting them a nightmare itself. Every time I look back at my battle with him, the back of my neck feels creepy. Just imagining the experience of dealing with such a despairingly powerful individual made his blood run cold. Such a power could now belong to Kim Woo Jin. However, he didn't plan on feeling satisfied with just that. But it's not enough. Kim Woo Jin knew better than anyone that although the skeleton soldiers were way stronger than he initially expected, his skeleton soldiers could not hunt who he really wanted. In any case, I'm the only one who can kill him. In order to take a bite at the prey he longed for, he had to do it himself. No point in dragging this any longer. So Kim Woo Jin pulled out his scimitar. In a dungeon that had nothing left to obtain, he didn't wish to waste time admiring the battles of his skeleton soldiers. He intended to finish everything himself quickly. Hugh. Kim Woo Jin, who was determined to fight, took a deep breath. It was at that moment. He heard a notification. It was a notification that informed Kim Woo Jin that he had hunted the thousandth orc. 
Kim Woo Jin lightly chuckled after hearing that. My luck is good. Frankly, he didn't expect to hunt the 100th orc. The battlefield was full of people who were intentionally grouping the orcs and killing them in a single swoop with area of effect spells to become the 100th orc hunter. Under such circumstances, expecting Kim Woo Jin, who was just killing them one by one, to become the 100th orc hunter was like expecting to win the lotto after buying a hundred lotto tickets. Kim Woo Jin was never the type to wish for such luck. There's no harm in getting it I guess. Of course, he wasn't the kind to refuse such good luck either. Kim Woo Jin immediately checked over his good fortune. He checked over his dungeon reward and then the reward he got from his halo. Catalog. He immediately checked his last reward. Then, a gold light welcomed Kim Woo Jin. My luck is too good. Pyongdi. The place where a rank dungeon appeared for the second time in Korea was silent broadcasting stations and newspaper office cars that had gathered around the dungeon gate were empty, and the number of soldiers who were guarding the gate was negligible as well. Rather, the temporary parking lot where the players' cars were parked was hotter than ever before. Wow. Koenigsegg. Whoa. Next to it is a Bugatti. Then what's the car between them? Is it an amazing car? Like a car that transforms like a transformer. No, that's just a crappy car. The place was packed with expensive cars such a view was rarely seen, even at an international motor show the collection was so dazzling that even those who weren't interested in cars were surrounding the parking lot. A lot more soldiers were guarding the parking lot rather than the dungeon gate itself. It wasn't unusual. It's quiet around the gate. Experts said that the dungeon clear would take at least five days so there's no reason to be interested about the gate when it's been only three days so far. Although best of the best were equipped with powerful items, it was common sense that it would take at least five days to clear an A-rank dungeon. Which was why the only people around the gate were those who were just going for a walk. That was true of the two men who passed the temporary parking lot and headed near dungeon gate. Anyway, the Chinese restaurant was really delicious. Yeah, it was pretty good I should remember the number. The two journalists headed to the dungeon gate more or less just to digest the Jajang Mayan they had recently eaten. Soon the two reached the spot where the dungeon gate could be seen. Anyway, a good rest today the neighborhood will be in chaos starting tomorrow. The junior reporter nodded at his senior reporter's words. It must be a hot topic to cover, right? Since the reporters and the broadcasters will rush in to interview the players. At his junior's reply, the senior reporter smiled, causing the junior reporter to tilt his head questioningly. Is there something else? When the dungeon is cleared we can't even get near the players. Ha! Huh? A junior reporter queried. Is it that hard to talk to the players? Senior reporter shook his head. No, it's because if you get wrapped up in a fight with the players, you might get killed. You think that the players are going to fight? The junior reporter looked even more surprised. Try putting the most arrogant, talented guys in one place it would be considered alright if they just hit and bit each other moreover, there's only one gate imagine two dogs that fought against each other coming out of the same door what do you think will happen? Do you think they will just laugh it off and come out smiling while shaking their hands? By the time they arrived at the gate, the senior reporter continued with a wry smile. Above all, they think they are chosen beings they view average citizens like us as nothing but a slave or a commoner there's no way they will care about their surroundings. Gulp. The senior reporter's explanation was met only with a swallow. Hook. As if that wasn't enough, the junior reporter who swallowed his saliva let out a surprised sound at the sound, the senior reporter grinned. How can you call yourself a reporter without any courage? Ha. Huh. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What's wrong? Ah, uh, hook. However, as soon as he looked in the direction his junior reporters pointed at, he let out the same noise. Done, dungeon is cleared. Players they started coming out of the gate. Big event when the A-ranked dungeon attack started, it was literally like a festival everyone thought the end would as colorful and hot as the beginning. However, the atmosphere that came with clearing the dungeon was too cold to even speak. 31 dead. 31 talented stars who were each respected by their guilds were now in a position where even their bodies could not be recovered. 
it was a result that no one even dared to think of. A dungeon clear was achieved after many sacrifices however, the dungeon reward was nowhere to be seen. Furthermore, all the guilds that would normally have boasted about their heroic acts remained silent. A commotion was inevitable. The fact that the Messiah Guild was safe prevented the commotion from exploding. I'm going to go crazy. However, the commotion among the players and the guilds couldn't help but explode. Damn it, how does it make sense that nobody knows what happened when a monster like the Orc Champion was killed? What about the Messiah Guild? Maybe the Messiah Guild caught it. Did a legendary appear, or did it not? Maybe they hit it cause a legendary appeared. An extremely sudden situation and unreasonably limited information did not even allow a hypothesis to be formed. All the guilds that participated in the dungeon clear panicked. I better get going now. Yes. I finished writing the report, so we'll start heading back now. During such a commotion, there was no one who cared about a player like Kim Woo Jin. Was it even possible for someone in the world to guess that Kim Woo Jin captured the Orc Champion by himself and was hiding a legendary item? Thank you for your efforts. Of course, the dungeon support staff did not stop Kim Woo Jin. Ah, uh, wait. All that left was for Kim Woo Jin to get enough gas money from dungeon support staff to travel from Seoul to Busan. It was at that moment. Hey. Hey. There's an announcement. What's going on? Something that could stop Kim Woo Jin from leaving by grabbing his ankle appeared. Park Shin Hai. Park Shin Hai from Messiah Guild is coming here. Park Shin Hai. Successor of Hansung Group that was the largest supporter of Messiah Guild, and the second highest level player in Korea. Park Shin Hai is coming here in person. The appearance of the woman who was kind enough to tell Lee Se Jun to let him out of his misery when Kim Woo Jin was on the brink of death, was unexpected. Park Shin Hai has never came here before I returned to the past she was with Lee Se Jun in Seoul, and when the Orc Lord's Fong was obtained by Messiah Guild, it was handed over to Lee Se Jun and she was beside him. Even for Kim Woo Jin, who returned to the past, such situation was unexpected. This means. It made Kim Woo Jin smile. Skull Guild and Yamato Federation, it proved that they were one of the many tales Park Shin Hai spread out in the world. It was a smile a hunting dog would make after seeing the tail of its prey. Chapter, 29 The first day Kim Woo Jin met Park Shin Hai was the day he received an offer from Lee Se Jun. Hunting dog Kim Woo Jin, I need your strength. Naturally, the memory of his first meeting with Park Shin Hai was hazy, for it was the same day when the light that will save the world reached out to him. After that, he had no particular memory of Park Shin Hai. Their roles were different in the first place. Kim Woo Jin was the hunting dog that cleaned up Lee Se Jun's surroundings while Park Shin Hai was the flower that decorated Lee Se Jun. Kim Woo Jin had no reason to be interested in Park Shin Hai. To be completely honest, he was too busy too caught up fighting to save the world. In other words, that day was the first time that he felt any interest or emotion toward Park Shin Hai. It was the day when he was betrayed by the hero he trusted more than anyone he saw the true side of Park Shin Hai and developed feelings of anger and hatred towards her. Whoa! It's Park Shin Hai. Messiah's goddess. Goddess. Please look at me just once. Please save the world. That Park Shin Hai was now in front of Kim Woo Jin. The woman who is carrying out a plan to swallow up the world was walking through a thunderous shout of cheers. When he saw her, Kim Woo Jin admitted it honestly. How terrifying. Kim Woo Jin admitted that she's the most terrifying prey he's ever chased after. Already, Messiah Guild has become irreplaceable and the Yamato Federation, which conspired to invade the Korean Peninsula, was nothing but a puppet. To think she would fool the world so perfectly. Everything she planned was progressing covertly. No matter how uninterested he was in her movements, Kim Woo Jin only realized her conspiracy just before he died. If Kim Woo Jin hadn't been so lucky this time around, finding her tale would have come about much later. Now I know how the other players felt about the Messiah Guild. She was a prey that Kim Woo Jin had to catch. No, come to think of it, many in the world has tried to hunt the Messiah Guild, but no one has succeeded. However, Kim Woo Jin had no intention of giving up the chase. 
It was the first time he discovered her carefully hidden tail. Under such circumstances, if he intended to give up the hunt just because it leads to a monster when you chase after the tail, he would not have talked about hunting in the first place. I can't win using force alone. Rather, this situation in which he finally found the tail was a golden opportunity. History began to shift away from the past. It was the perfect time to make the crack even bigger. And I don't even have to be the one causing the trouble. At that moment, Kim Woo-jin held his smartphone and called someone. There was a short tone and a straight voice. Yes, I am Kim Woo-jin. As soon as Kim Woo-jin finished introducing himself to the voice, he started to talk. I called you cause I have something to report about Dungeon it's information I didn't report, but I thought I should tell you I believe this isn't something I should report by phone or text may I meet and talk to Mr. Park yong -won. Park yong -won, his mood wasn't so great. It was due to the news he received from Busan. Even though the A-rank dungeon was cleared in three days, the report given to him was full of confusion and uncertainty. Despite losing 31 players, and the orc champion being hunted on the second day, no one could give a clear answer to how the process went. Therefore, Park yong -won accepted Kim's personal interview with pleasure. From Busan to Gimpo, he gave Kim Woo-jin the earliest plane ticket and even provided a taxi for him at the airport. The entire process was paid for by Park yong wons personal card as well. Park yong wan has never treated anyone with favor since becoming a player. Skull Guild was weird. Yes, I didn't write it in the report because I wasn't too sure, but the actions of the Skull Guild were certainly strange. Tell me more in details. Fortunately, it was worth the favor. I've never seen them hunt an orc before. As you know, Skull Guild wears a skull mask if I saw them hunt, I wouldn't have been mistaken. Maybe you just didn't see them hunt. Yes, but it is easy to tell if someone had fought the orcs or not, the appearances of Skull Guild members who were resting did not look like they had engaged in a fight with the orcs even once and. And. Sometimes, Skull Guild members seem to be observing the movement of our guild and other guilds. Spy. A Skull Guild member stole a glance at our guild and left. If I hadn't been in the role of an observer, I wouldn't have realized that there were also instances where I've even seen him use his silent hunter skills. The information Kim Woo-jin told him were not pleasant news. In summary, the Skull Guild didn't intend to hunt orcs from the beginning however, they still entered the dungeon in other words, there's a good chance they were only after the orc champion or the players if they were after the orc champion, it's very likely that Skull Guild joined hands with another guild they were probably wiped out because a legendary item dropped after killing the orc champion in order to gain the ownership. It's likely that the Skull Guild was thrown away. In conclusion, it turns out the Skull Guild played a trick, and during the process, there was an unknown problem unfortunately, the evidence related to it seems to have disappeared within the dungeon. There was nothing about it that made Park yong -won feel better. Damn it, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have cared so much about this. To be honest, Park yong -won just wanted to deal with this as if nothing had happened. Anyway I wonder why Park Shin-hai from the Messiah Guild came do you know why? However, Park Shin-hai, her name, made Park yong -won reluctant to give up. For all the well-known players in Korea, not just Park yong -won, Park shin -hai's presence was an undeniable one. That's what I want to ask. It was the decisive reason why Park yong -won couldn't help but be interested in the dungeon Do you have any information on the movement of the Messiah Guild in the dungeon? Nothing special but if I had to add my personal opinion, I felt that they were too conservative, too safe. You felt that they were too conservative? I thought that the Messiah Guild would go after Orc Champion from the beginning they are not the type to avoid water and fire, are they? Certainly. But this time they moved too calmly they just slowly dwindled down the number of Orcs as if they didn't care about the Orc Champion. Therefore, Park yong -won was more inclined to listen to Kim Woo-jin's words more deeply. Of course, Park yong -won did not believe 100% of Kim Woo-jin's words. So the evidence lies within the Skull Guild, huh? Maybe it would be good to dig around and take a look. It wasn't a bad idea to look into the Skull Guild when he had no other leads. If you think about it, the Skull Guild is really fishy even though they don't have any sponsors near the top 10 within the financial circles, their mobilization of funds and connections are better than most decent guilds. Moreover, 
Park Yongwon already suspected the Skull Guild to have a slightly different secret than the other guilds. Kim Woo Jin's words had enough basis for him to keep his ears open. Kim Woo Jin. Park Yong Wan moved on to the next question. What do you want? Now, he tried to ask for the price for the important information that Kim Woo Jin kept even from the guild. What do I want? I hope you don't act all innocent and nice in front of me it's not very pleasant when you know it's an act. Kim Woo Jin nodded at such remark. Then he loosened his gentle face and said with a smile around his mouth. I'd like to be introduced to a broker. Broker? Aren't you already acquainted with Hayashi Kansuk? It's true that we know each other. Then wouldn't it be better to trade with him? At Park Yong Wan's question, Kim Woo Jin said while shrugging his shoulders. After my first deal with Hayashi Kansuk, a phone call came from Mr. Park Yong Wan, and I was immediately offered a role as an observer in the A-ranked dungeon to watch over my colleagues I don't want to make a deal with him when it's pretty obvious as to what happened. Such an answer made Park Yong Wan chuckle. He's much smarter than I thought. Kim Woo Jin was right. It would be crazy to trust a broker who handed over his trade partner's information to someone else due to suspicion. I'll let you get into contact with any broker you want. Above all, Park Yong Wan thought it was worth giving a player like Kim Woo Jin some preferential treatment. He's usable. He was well worth fattening up for future uses. Hearing what he wanted, Kim Woo Jin opened his mouth. Oh Se Chan, I heard that name is the most reliable on this floor I heard he's the best when it comes to money laundering, is that right? Park Yong Wan smiled back at Kim Woo Jin's reply. Even if you get a call from a number you don't know, it would be good to answer your phone for a while. That was a memory. Lim Sun Jun, a memory of a person who was sent from the Yamato Federation to take over the Korean Peninsula. It was an opportunity for Kim Woo Jin. Oh Se Chan. The opportunity to have a broker dedicated to his trade. Though he isn't someone I can trust. Of course, Kim Woo Jin did not have much faith in Oh Se Chan. However, I do like the fact that the Yamato Federation hates him to death. The important detail was that he wasn't won over by the Yamato Federation and was listed on their assassination list. And if he was a member associated with the Messiah Guild, he wouldn't have been on the Yamato Federation's assassination list. Looking at the situation as a whole, there also existed a possibility that the Messiah Guild wasn't associated with Oh Se Chan either. Since I didn't know his name, it would mean that they had succeeded in the assassination. More importantly, their assassination would have been successful. If such famous person was still alive two to three years later, Kim Woo Jin definitely would have heard something about him. Hayashi Kansuk must have taken his spot after he died. Kim Woo Jin knew the history after that. After the disappearance of the black market tycoon Oh Se Chan, his clients became clients of Hayashi Kansuk, who gave the plus ring to Johan George and Park Yong Wan who was one of them, moved over to Japan with his players and considerable number of items through Hayashi Kansuk. In other words, the Yamato Federation's plans had to be changed more depending on how much longer Oh Se Chan lived, which would affect the Messiah Guild's plans as well. Value of a card like Oh Se Chan is certainly worth the effort. That, however, wasn't the only reason Kim Woo Jin wanted to make contact with Oh Se Chan. Even if that wasn't the case, I will be able to get in contract with those associated with the Yamato Federation just by staying near Oh Se Chan. As long as Oh Se Chan's name was on the Yamato Federation's assassination list, players from the Yamato Federation would continue to rush toward him. Like a moth flying toward the flames. From Kim Woo Jin's point of view, it was an opportunity to gather a clearer picture of the Yamato Federation. In the process, if I catch a new tale of the Messiah Guild, Making most of the opportunity was the best Kim Woo Jin could do right now. Ang. Um. At such a moment, Kim Woo Jin received a call. The caller ID was unknown, but Kim Woo Jin answered the call without hesitation. This is Kim Woo Jin. Then a surprised voice came out. There was an apology. Kim Woo Jin replied to him. No, I'm sorry you called the wrong number. That was the end of the call. It was one of those experiences that happens sometimes when someone calls the wrong number however, Kim Woo Jin did not brush off such accident as an accident rather, he dialed the number he just got the call from. 
It was the same voice that made the call not too long ago. But the way he spoke was completely different. Unlike a while ago, there was no sign of weakness, but rather it was filled with very heavy, cold tone. Kim Woo Jin replied to the question. Yes. I need money I'd like you to introduce me to a dungeon that's worth a lot of money and I also need some money laundered as well. You only have to give me the dungeon report and enough gas money to get to the dungeon gate. The moment the call was over, he received a text message. Cobalt. As soon as he saw the details, Kim Woo Jin was sure. He doesn't planning on getting a new client. He was sure that Oh Se Chan didn't want to increase the number of his customers anymore. The evidence was that kobolds were used as a test. Kobold was a monster that walked on two feet with a dog like head, and their physical abilities were located halfway between a goblin and an orc. Their individual strength was far behind the orcs. Their strength as a herd, however, was too much to compare to the likes of orcs and goblins, making them a difficult monster to deal with. They definitely weren't the right type of monster to test a new customer's skills. In other words, he did not intend to increase the number of his clients as Kim Woo Jin previously thought. Maybe he already knows there are people who are after him. Moreover, such a way of selecting his customer often indicated the broker felt threatened by the idea of accepting new clients. This won't be easy. It was obvious that Oh Se Chan was not an easy bait. Then, Kim Woo Jin received a second text. Ilsen. It was a text that contained the location of the dungeon gate. In addition, the text also included the answer to Kim Woo Jin's demand for his transportation expenses. It was the moment when Kim Woo Jin truly met someone who wasn't easy to deal with. Chapter 30. Current stop is Pungsan Pungsan Station. Hearing the announcement, Kim Woo Jin looked out the window of the Jiangui Central Line train heading to Ilsen. As the train left the station, a clear view of everyday life in Goyang City, Ilsendong could be seen. This place will be in ruins within two years as well. The scenery of Ilsen going through Kim Woo Jin's head was the image of a city devastated by monsters and surrounded by tanks and artilleries to remove those monsters. It wasn't just an imagination. Was it a twin head ogre? In 2025, Ilsen essentially lost its ability to function as a city due a twin head ogre which had escaped from a six-floor dungeon. And such occurrences were happening all over the world. Not for much longer. Monsters coming out of the dungeon gate in the present were still threatening, but even the general public with firearms were more than able to mitigate and deal with the damage caused by those threats. The same held true in 2025 there was no monster mankind could not kill. The only problem was that firearms alone were no longer enough, they needed the firepower of several artillery or fighter units in order to kill them. It was then that the world realized the importance of strong, talented players, and powerful items leaving a dungeon with five or more floors unattended was virtually like losing the territory itself. Of course, there were those who knew that much earlier. All the players who are currently over level 100 knew the truth. It was impossible for them to not understand. If you have faced a monster from a three-floor dungeon, it wasn't hard to imagine what would happen if such a monster were to run outside it was just something one could naturally tell, even without a thought. If you know what's going to happen, you won't be able to stand still. This was the reason why high-level players including Park Yongwan, who were reluctant to work for the public good, risked their lives and enter the dungeons they had no other option they had to frantically raise their levels and secure items in order to survive. Because they knew a hellish period was coming when one cannot survive in the world without getting stronger. They couldn't just brush it off and think about it later. At the same time, it was also the reason they did not look back and acted as they pleased. Why wouldn't they when they know that it will be a lawless world in two or three years? Why would they worry about tax investigations or hearings that will take place in ten or twenty years? Likewise, there was nothing wrong with selling out one's country when the order of the world was about to collapse. It was such an era of lawlessness and darkness that helped the Messiah Guild to shine even brighter. Due to being in that Messiah Guild, Kim Woo Jin did not have to worry or think about difficult things. He liked how things were back then however, that did not mean that he wanted to experience the same story. It was just that Kim Woo Jin saw the truth. I need to prepare enough power before the world becomes like that the power to withstand the threat of the Messiah Guild. 
If he still remains weak when the rules of the world start to change, then the Messiah Guild will eat Kim Woo Jin alive. Current stop is Ilsen, Ilsen Station. With that reality in mind, Kim Woo Jin arrived at his destination. After getting off at Ilsen Station and walking a little further away from the station, he saw a large area of farmland filled with greenhouses. Kim Woo Jin's destination, the dungeon gate, was inside the most desolate greenhouse. With its ripped up plastic covers and collapsed interior, a greenhouse welcomed Kim Woo Jin. That was all. It was just there without a single person waiting in sight, only the dungeon gate lay there imposingly. He said that it devoured three parties already, right? It was an unfitting treatment for a dungeon gate, which has already eaten three parties. After devouring as many as three parties, the dungeon was very likely to be shunned by players. Moreover, because the dungeon was infested with difficult monsters like kobolds, players with common sense would be even more unwilling to choose this dungeon. In other words, it would remain untouched and spit out monsters without rest until players similar to those from the Messiah Guild, who don't care about the risks, came to clear it. Since that's the case, there was a need to prevent monsters from suddenly escaping out of the dungeon and inflicting casualties to the surrounding population. Of course, no matter how many people died, a small problem like that was of no importance to people who were busy thinking of more ways to make money. Hayashi Kansuk, he's better than a bastard like him. In other words, Oh Seichan was not such a wretched person. It wasn't a misunderstanding. He's doing a good job keeping it clean. A dungeon with a kill count of three parties should have traces left by the party in the vicinity. Otherwise, there should have been traces of the monsters coming out and escaping. Unexpectedly, the surroundings were clean. Not to mention monster footprints, there weren't even tire marks from cars. This meant that this place was strictly monitored and cleaned. Kim Woo Jin smiled. What a funny fellow. Kim Woo Jin never saw a broker that cared about managing a dungeon in a such way. To the point of wanting to meet him. For the first time, Kim Woo Jin wanted to meet the man named Oh Se Chan. Other than that, there wasn't much to consider. No matter how many people died in this dungeon, how difficult it was, or what kind of monster the kobolds were, it didn't matter to Kim Woo Jin. As mentioned before, clearing shunned dungeons like this was what Kim Woo Jin did before returning to the past. To do that, I'll have to clear this dungeon first. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin entered the dungeon without hesitation. Kim Woo Jin entered the dungeon he went in alone it looks like he's going to try to clear it alone. Is that so? Then contact me when he comes out. Yes. The man who put down the smartphone as the call ended was a young man. He appeared to be in his mid-twenties, but his shaved head, thick horn-rimmed glasses, muscular body, and nervous temperament made his age a mystery. What happened? A middle-aged man with blonde hair and blue eyes asked the question. In addition, the middle-aged man's question was in Russian. Obviously, the reply was in Russian as well. A strange lunatic wants to trade with me I'm testing him. The middle-aged man tilted his head back when he heard about a new client. Lunatic? Can you believe that he asked me to pay for his transportation? The old man smiled bitterly in response. Trying to extort money from you? He must be someone who doesn't not know you. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't know me but such person told me that he wanted to do business with me through Park Yongwan. In front of the name Park Yongwan, the middle-aged man immediately erased his smile. Do you mean Park Yongwan from the Phoenix Guild? Was there any other son of a bitch named Park Yongwan that I know of? If he's someone from Park Yongwan's side, wouldn't it be better for you to not take it? Unlike the playful young man, the middle-aged man inquired seriously. Only then did the young man speak in a serious tone as well. He's not on Park Yongwan's side. Are you sure? If he was someone from Park Yongwan's side, there wouldn't be a need for him to become a customer like this when he could just trade with me through Park Yongwan well, I can look into it more after he passes the test. What are his chances of survival? Well it's a C-ranked dungeon with a level limit of 20, entry up to 4 people, and a clear condition of killing 100 kobolds I would say since he entered it alone, his odds are not too high. Hearing this reply, the middle-aged man spoke in a surprised tone. He went in alone. Into a dungeon with kobolds? 
the middle-aged man knew what kind of monsters kobolds were very well. It's dangerous. Yep, it's very dangerous. The young man, Oh se chan knew it as well. They are very dangerous monsters with a sense of smell on par with dogs they have systematic movements like wolf packs, a sense of companionship, and the ability to use complicated tools like bows if he faces them like he's going against a group of orcs or goblins, he's going to be in a worse off than being in hell. He knew how dangerous kobolds were and that one needed to approach hunting them differently than hunting a group of orcs or goblins. He also knew that watching an unprofessional player enter a dungeon with kobolds without proper preparations was no different than watching a suicide unfold. He must be very skilled. The middle-aged man knew that Oh se chan would never assist a suicide. I don't know. You don't you know? Yep, at the very least, he hasn't even reached level 20 he has no experience clearing two-floor dungeons and he has been a player for only about a month now but someone who doesn't even know me contacted me through Park Yongwon he even asked me to help him pay for the transportation costs considering everything he's done, he is not the type of person who is looking for an easy way out either. There's a good chance he's an assassin who's after your life. Assassin? An unknown expert approaching someone while mustering public attention, one can often see that in movies with assassin protagonists. Oh Seichan laughed mockingly at the middle-aged man's remarks. I don't care about that most of us will die in ten years anyway I'm sure it would be more of headache to be alive in ten years and if I die, Gorbachev, you want it a loss, will you? Since everything in my name will be yours. Hearing Oh Seichan's words, Gorbachev smiled bitterly. One skill is the only thing that matters even if he is a man who is trying to kill me, it's okay as long as he is skilled all I need is a monster who can come back smiling even if he's put inside a hellish dungeon that's why I set the deadline at five days. Gorbachev shook his head when he heard that the deadline was only five days. It looks like you really need a monster. Yeah, unless you're a monster, it's impossible to kill 100 kobolds in five days. Oh Seichan's eyes glistened as he spoke. With that kind of monster in my hands, it's more than enough to end this game. Gorbachev got up from his seat when he saw Oh Seichan's hopeful eyes. All right then I'm going to do my job now. Oh Seichan waved when he heard Gorbachev's farewell. I'm sorry I couldn't see you off to the airport you know how my situation is. If you're sorry, why don't you upgrade my flight seat to business? I'll see you off at the airport you don't mind if we take the subway, right? I'm good. At the foot of a mountain with endless rocks and trees. Kung. Kung. A kobold was patrolling the mountainside alone. The appearance of a kobold did not fall short of the expression monster. Head of a dog walking on two legs instead of four, and holding a sword and shield in its two hands it looked even more eerie than an orc or a goblin. However, a kobold's physique, which neared at most 14 meters tall compared to an orc's 2 meters tall muscular body, did not seem threatening. It looked weak enough that a warrior-type player might think they could easily fight it one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, hunting a kobold one-on-one -on -one was quite feasible for a player with levels higher than 10 and enough hunting experience. Because of this, most of the players would try and hunt the kobold if they saw a lone patrol without hesitation when hunting kobolds for the first time. However, not many of such stories were told. For only few of the people who hunted kobolds in that way ever came back alive. That was certainly the case. Kobolds never missed the scent of blood of its kind and to take revenge for their kindred they would pass through fire and water in a way, blood of kobolds were like a curse that resulted in inevitable death. Sug. That's why Kim Woo Jin, who appeared behind the kobold, wrapped its neck with a wire in his hand. Kek. The kobold let out a silent scream with his mouth wide open. Then Kim Woo Jin slowly waited until the kobold's heart stopped beating. Soon, the kobold died with his long tongue hanging out. The sacrifice is secured. It was the moment when he got a sacrifice without shedding a drop of blood. In fact, Kim Woo Jin didn't have to approach this in a such way. With his current combat power, it was possible to kill 100 kobolds even if he was engaged in a brawl to exaggerate a little, he could even pour the blood of kobolds on his body and kill the kobolds that came after him. All I have to do now is to dig a trap. But Kim Woo Jin did not do that. If necessary, he would happily have a slaughter fest. 
However, it was not Kim Woo Jin's style to engage in an exhausting battle when he didn't have to. While having overwhelming strength, producing even more overwhelming results was Kim Woo Jin's hunting style. Summon Skeleton Soldier In order to do that, Kim Woo Jin summoned a skeleton soldier. Black Bone The power of the underworld flows within the skeleton soldier. A skeleton soldier with black bones rose up. Chapter 31 When dealing with kobolds, one should be most wary of their sense of smell. As soon as one's body was smeared with a kobold's blood, it was practically impossible to hide from the rest of the kobolds. At the same time, the kinship between kobolds was very strong. When one of their kin is killed, they do not stop attacking until they kill the perpetrator and get their revenge. Kyohung, Kyohung. That was why twenty kobolds were running around the rugged mountains until they were out of breath. The moment they detected the thick smell of the blood of their people, there was no other choice. Kung. Kung. They sniffed and ran towards the smell of the blood, taking the shortest path possible. Soon, the kobolds were able to reach a spot full of their kin's bodies, which had been squashed. Their sense of smell was paralyzed by the thick scent of blood around them. Some kobolds even sank their noses into the ground in order to avoid smelling the odious scent of blood. Kyohung. At that moment, a kobold found something strange. There were bones of his kind between the bodies. Of course it wasn't unusual for there to be bones. The strange thing was that the color of the bones were pitch black. Kiong, Kiong. The kobold felt uncomfortable upon seeing the abnormality so it sniffed the bone after approaching it. Sug. Then, something rose from the pile of dead bodies and instantly sliced the kobold's neck seek. Eerie sounds of edged tools cutting the wind could be heard all around him. The kobolds were surprised and their hair pointed outwards. Then skeleton soldiers with black bones rose up from the gaps between the corpses. Tiao Juliak. Tiao Juliak. The skeleton soldiers immediately spread out and hunted the kobolds. Sieg. The skeleton soldiers' movements were surprisingly nimble, and the swords they wielded were incredibly sharp. Siajog. Even amongst them, the attacks from skeleton soldiers holding scimitars were cutting the kobolds' bodies like hollow bamboo. Of course, the kobolds fought back. Kyohung. Kara. They swung their weapons, clubs, crude swords, or maces, and some of their attacks hit the body of the skeleton soldiers. Their power was considerable. The evidence was that the kobold sword, which hit the skeleton soldier, gave off a spark and sounded like it was hitting coarse iron. Wasn't it obvious that their attack would sound like it's striking iron since their strength is so weak? It was ridiculous from a kobold's perspective. P.U.K. Then there was a noise from behind the kobold. It was the sound of an arrow coming from a distance. Surprised, kobold began sniffing with his nose toward the direction of the arrow. However, it was impossible for the kobold to smell Kim Woo Jin, who was covered in dirt to hide his scent. Kim Woo Jin, who confirmed this clearly, began to actively fire his arrows. Endless swarms of arrows struck the kobolds' backs. In fact, that was the end of the hunt. After less than ten minutes of fighting, there were no kobold left standing on the floor. Kim Woo Jin did not enter battlefield that ended in a such a way he looked at it from a long distance in order to avoid being tainted by the scent of blood. He looked at his skeleton soldiers who were confirmed to be shooting the kobolds instead of Kim Woo Jin. Black Bone Skill, It's Good as Expected. Black Bone. It was a skill that Kim Woo Jin acquired through the catalog he received when he hunted the 100th orc. The effect was simple. It strengthened the defense of skeleton soldiers. Though I did not expect the ruler of the battlefield to work with the black bone skill as well. What was surprising was that the ruler of the battlefield also applied to the black bone skill. It was due to the fact that constitution and strength affected the black bone's defense. The ruler of the battlefield was a skill that increased all of its stats. This level of defense is similar to wearing a rare rank armor. The resulting defense was visible even to the naked eye. Splendid. The skeleton soldiers were also aware of the change and were using it to their advantage. Now, they not only avoided attacks, 
but they have began to withstand awkward attacks with their own bodies and counterattack. In battle, they looked more advantageous. There was only one problem. It consumed more mana than he thought to maintain the black bones. The news did not make Kim Woo Jin dispirited. I need a way to increase the mana capacity. If it wasn't enough, he just needed to think a way to fill it up. Then, a notification was heard in Kim Woo Jin's ear. It was actually a notification signaling the hunt was nearly over. He could kill five kobolds by himself even without his skeleton soldiers. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin did not get blood on his body he did not hurry let's have a party since it's the last time, he wasn't planning on doing something silly like that. He just waited quietly from a distance. For his praise to come on their own accord. In Kim Woo Jin's ears, the cries of kobolds could be heard. After the world turned into a game in 2020, Oh se -chan was confident that nothing could surprise him. Even if there was a news report of nuclear missile being fired one morning, he would be more curious about nuclear missile-related stock prices rather than being surprised like usual, he would take a look at the stock charts from around the world. What? But Oh se -chan couldn't help but be surprised upon hearing the news. The dungeon gate disappeared. The dungeon gate disappeared. So, you're saying that after only 18 hours since entering the dungeon, Kim Woo Jin cleared it? Only 18 hours since the player entered the dungeon. How the hell? In face of such nonsense, Oh Se Chan could not remain calm. Maybe he didn't go in alone. Rather than accepting the facts, he painstakingly tried to think of a way to deny it. No, the surveillance was secure, I'm sure he came alone, even if he didn't. There's no reason for him to be appearing to go in alone above all, even if a four-man party were to go in, it's not normal to clear it in 18 hours even if it was a four-man party, to finish this dungeon in 18 hours they would need skills of world-class rankers or he's covered with legendary rank items but how could that be possible? By what means? But the more he contemplated in his head, the more tangled the thread became. No, that's not it. In the end, Oh se -chan realized. So where is Kim Woo Jin now? He's gone, isn't he? He realized that it wasn't the time for him to be denying the situation or thinking about how Kim Woo Jin got stronger. There's no way he doesn't know how capable he is but he has been hiding his skills until now. The most important thing right now was that Kim Woo Jin wasn't just proving his ability. Under such circumstances, he showed his skills without hesitation after contacting me he's giving me a signal. Kim Woo Jin sent a signal to Oh Se Chan. A signal of great intensity. Now, Oh Se Chan had to interpret the signal's meaning and respond to it. Does he know who I am? An assassin who's after me. But does it make sense to use a man of this magnitude as an assassin? No, where the hell did he come from? It isn't the Phoenix Guild for sure who's behind it. Is it the Hansung group? His contemplation grew longer. Oh Se Chan's underling asked him. I'm a broker. Only then did Oh Se Chan make a decision. We should start a service that befits our new customer's performance. Prepare locker number 19. Kim Woo Jin, who finished the dungeon in 18 hours, headed toward Ilsen Station. When he returned to Ilsen Station, he hid his figure in the crowd and waited. It's about time he contacts me. He was waiting for Oh Se Chan's call. I hope I proved the value of trading with me. To be exact, he was waiting for Oh Se Chan to respond. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin did not trust Oh Se Chan. Kim Woo Jin made contact with him because he was an enemy of the Yamato Federation and likely not associated with the Messiah Guild. Other than that, he didn't know anything else about him. What mattered most to Kim Woo Jin was his ability. So Kim Woo Jin was willing to show him his skills. It was rather explosive. Normally, Kim Woo Jin would have held back his skills accordingly. It was not difficult for him to do such a thing in a dungeon with no eyes. However, he did it at the cost of revealing his skills. He threw the ball to Oh Se Chan with all his strength. Naturally, now Oh Se Chan would respond. A clumsy hand approaches, and it is used as bait. If his reaction was to absorb Kim Woo Jin to his side, Kim Woo Jin would not deal with him. Even if he did it, it would be in moderation. As Kim Woo Jin said earlier, 
Kim Woo Jin only liked the background of a man named Oh Se Chan, he did not trust him. But if he said something along the lines of let's join forces and surprise the world with our combined IQs of over 300. Or how about investing, I know a good investment. It wasn't even worth talking. He would simply be used as a bait. On the other hand, if Oh Se Chan proved his ability, Kim Woo Jin was willing to make a close connection with him. Show me your worth. Then, a text message arrived on Kim Woo Jin's phone. The text contained a number and told him to use a payphone. Kim Woo Jin went straight to a nearby payphone. Talang. With the coin he prepared beforehand, he inserted the coin and dialed the number. From the beginning of the call, Oh Se Chan spoke like a true broker. Other than that he had nothing else to say. He sent him the information he needed to do business with, and when he finished speaking, he ended the call. He acted like a broker, and met Kim Woo Jin's expectations. But Kim did not smile knowing this. Oh Se Chan's disposition showed that he wasn't exactly what Kim Woo Jin wanted. It was no laughing matter. I'm glad I stayed at the station. Kim Woo Jin went straight to where Oh Se Chan told him to go and immediately opened the locker there were two envelopes inside the locker. A paper envelope and a letter envelope. A letter? Kim Woo Jin opened the envelope that looked like a letter and checked the contents when he checked over the contents inside the letter, he couldn't help but break into a laughter. Inside the letter were 4301 in cash. Is 101 for the payphone fee? The cash included 4201 for transportation he mentioned earlier and 101 for the payphone not too long AO. What a funny guy. It was a situation where he couldn't help but laugh. However, Kim Woo Jin's smile disappeared as soon as he checked the information in the other envelope. I'm sure now that the Messiah Guild killed Oh Se Chan. Oh Se Chan, in his hands were treasures that would make even the Messiah Guild covet them. Chapter 32 There were three main types of services that brokers offered. They introduced illegal dungeons, traded stolen goods, or helped with money laundering. Among these, the most common transaction was fencing goods from illegal dungeons. Trading stolen goods and money laundering weren't easy to do for an average person but it was possible for anybody to find a dungeon. Furthermore, finding a dungeon wasn't difficult to do unlike searching for pine mushrooms or truffles, you did not need skilled professionals to identify them finding a dungeon that could be traded for money like the ones with trolls all depended on luck. The problem laid in defending the dungeon after it was found. Let's just say that a newbie broker who entered the dungeon business managed to find a good dungeon. Then, in order to sell that dungeon, let's say the broker disclosed the existence of the dungeon to potential buyers. Would they fiercely compete with one and another to get the dungeon? Or would they go to the broker who doesn't have much of a background and use an inexpensive tool like a punch to rob them? Nevertheless, dungeons were never a simple treasure chest. It was more like a bomb that monsters could break out from at any time. He is not an ordinary broker. The moment Kim Woo Jin checked the types of dungeon Oh Se Chan possessed, Kim Woo Jin realized Oh Se Chan was not a normal person. It was Oh Se Chan's two floor A rank dungeon that caught Kim Woo Jin's attention more than the others. Kim Woo Jin already had knowledge and information about the dungeon. I'm positive that this dungeon was cleared in the year 2025. It was none other than the Messiah Guild who cleared this dungeon. Year 2025, it was when the world was in turmoil and Kim Woo Jin was now a renowned member of the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild was lucky enough to acquire this dungeon after securing this dungeon, it took them four tries to obtain the albino lizard's egg. Since it was so difficult to clear it back then, Kim Woo Jin helped come up with strategies and personally trained the players involved in order to clear the dungeon. Albino lizard's egg it was a legendary item that the Messiah Guild kept strictly confidential. Furthermore, not even the guild members were told the attributes of the albino lizard's egg all they knew was that it was an amazing item that needed to be kept confidential. Even Kim Woo Jin only knew that it was a legendary rank item, he did not know the item descriptions. This wasn't bizarre. Because a countermeasure to the item could be developed if an item's attributes were exposed, it was usually better to hide it. Moreover, the year 2025 was a time rife with betrayal it had become very difficult to maintain security. Ultimately, it wasn't safe to share the item information, even to someone who was greatly trusted. 
It was because such a secret couldn't be kept in front of skills like the eyes of Anubis. To think this dungeon appeared at this time. Anyway, a dungeon that the Messiah Guild cleared after a huge sacrifice was in Oh Se Chan's hands. It's possible that Oh Se Chan sold this dungeon to the Messiah Guild, but if that were so, I would have known Oh Se Chan's name. In other words, before Kim Wu Jin returned to the past, there was a process in which Oh Se Chan's belongings were moved to the hands of the Messiah Guild. They must have stolen it after killing him. It was very likely that the Messiah Guild killed Oh Se Chan and claimed the dungeon. Assumptions are a taboo. Needless to say, it was dangerous to be certain about that. It was dangerous to assume a prey's whereabouts with confidence during a hunt and that wasn't what Kim Woo Jin needed to worry about right now. I have to find a way to clear this dungeon. He knew that he couldn't miss this golden opportunity. But I can't go in recklessly. In order to do this, Kim Woo Jin needed to be more secretive and meticulous. This is a dungeon that even the Messiah Guild failed to clear four times I have to be confident before proceeding. Above all, he needed enough strength to be sure he could clear this dungeon. Before that, I have to get to level 20 foot. Year 2023, April 22nd. Beginning of warm weather, a perfect time for going out. Wake up Phoenix Guild. Wake up. Wake up. As expected, because it was such an amazing day to go out, there were far more protesters than usual in front of the Phoenix Guild's headquarters. Kim Woo Jin walked into the building with the shouting behind him. He was headed to the office of Zhang Woo Suk, the team leader of the dungeon support staff. Oh, you are here. When Kim Woo Jin appeared, Zhang Woo Suk stood up and welcomed him with a smile. Good to see you. He said, pointing at the guest table where the coffee and cake were already prepared. Let's sit down. The coffee looked to be bought from the specialty coffee shop outside, and the cake looked quite expensive as well. It was an unusually excessive treatment. It looks like someone must have schemed something. It was evident that Zhang Wusuk had a problem he wanted solved. Yes. As soon as Kim Wu Jin sat down, the head of the support team Zhang Wusuk let out a long sigh. I have to say I'm sorry before we begin. Yes. Kim Wu Jin had a slightly surprised look on his face. The head of the support team Zhang Wusuk said with a frown on his face. The dungeon you requested, the application didn't go through. Why? Zhang Wusuk continued to explain before the question was asked. They say it's too dangerous it's nothing else, it's dangerous for you to enter the dungeon alone, which people have already failed once. The reason itself was appropriate. No matter how much people say that guilds do not care about their players, we can't just watch them walk into the jaws of death, can we? Guilds were not stupid. Although they couldn't prevent players from dying in the dungeons due to their lack of skill, they would prevent players from entering a dungeon if they thought there was a very high likelihood of resulting in their deaths. In that sense, Kim Woo Jin's behavior was very dangerous, as Zhang Woo Suk said. And you aren't a regular player now, right? Most of all, Kim Woo Jin was no longer an ordinary player in the Phoenix Guild. Foremost, Kim Woo Jin showed impressive results several times. His level now reached two digits, and soon neared level 20. In the world of players, reaching level 20 gave the person right to clear a two-floor dungeon you're a player who came back alive from that a rank dungeon where as many as 31 people died. Ultimately, he had an experience of clearing an A-rank dungeon as well. From the perspective of the Phoenix Guild, it was natural to be worried about Kim Woo Jin's well-being. They couldn't just allow him to enter the jaws of death alone. Establish a party. In other words, he needed more people to join the dungeon with him. Or you need to find someone to go in with you. It didn't even have to be a party, he needed someone who would at least prevent him from carrying all the risks alone. But aren't you aware of my circumstances? The problem was that Kim Woo Jin's reputation was not very good within the Phoenix Guild who would go into the dungeon with me. If Kim Woo Jin were to look for parties, most of the players would refuse. Not everyone would refuse. However, not many players would gather and it would be hard to find talented players whom Kim Woo Jin would be pleased with. So therefore, Zhang Woo Suk, the head of the support team, told him his alternative plan. Do you mind hunting with people from other guilds? 
At such a suggestion, Kim Woo-jin couldn't help but ridicule within. He bit the bait. When attempting to clear a dungeon, most players would attempt to do so with players in their guild. However, that wasn't always the case. Under certain circumstances, there were cases where a player would try to clear it with players from other guilds. The problem was that most instances of it had pretty bad results. It was because talented players with good character did not have trouble finding colleagues in a guild to clear dungeons with. In other words, most of the players who looked for teammates from other guilds were either below average in skill, had personality issues, or repeatedly had abysmal results. That was the case with this dungeon. Hobgoblin Cave Dungeon After failing to clear the same dungeon twice in a row, the Phoenix Guild opened up the dungeon to players from the other guilds. And now, 19 people were gathered. Players who have never met each other were gathered at one spot. Of course, self-introductions began. I will warn you guys beforehand, if you interfere with our hunt, I'll just kill you so crawl around on your own. Spouting bullshit. What? What's your level, you son of a bitch? Why? Are you going to look away like nothing happened if I'm higher level than you? Huh? Both of you shut up my fucking head already hurts cause I drank too much. Self-introduction that couldn't be more perfect. Hey. Let's have a fight once we are in the dungeon. Instead, why don't we turn on the private broadcast here and fight right now? How about it? They even looked impatient to show off each other's skills. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't pay much attention to this scene. His eyes were focused on the profiles of each player he received from the dungeon support team frankly, none of their profiles were great. No special dungeons cleared, no experience clearing dungeons alone, nor experience clearing high rank dungeons. They're a bunch of nuisances. Instead, they often had criminal records. Drunk driving was a norm, speeding was an everyday occurrence, and there were even players who were suspended for attempted rape. If not for the fact that they were players, they wouldn't even be here they would have been in prison. They are the types of people that guilds won't really care about even if they died. Needless to say, if these players died in the middle of a dungeon, their guilds wouldn't put much effort into investigating the reason for their deaths. When he came to such a conclusion, Kim Woo Jin's eyes turned to three players in a corner. Skull Guild There were three players from the Skull Guild. They also had no special record. They've often done this kind of dungeon. If the fact that they usually cleared the dungeons that were opened in this way was special, their record would be very special. That was all. After all, the really important information, such as the legendary items owned by a player or the fact that a player returned to the past from the future with a vast amount of experience and knowledge intact, would never be recorded. They're player hunters. The number of players who died to player hunters in a cleared dungeon would never be recorded. Still, Kim Woo Jin was certain. I'm sure their target is me. That those three players were after him. There was no need to think into it too deeply. The Skull Guild must have been overturned by the Orc Champion Dungeon. After that, they would have felt the need to investigate what happened and deal with the unknown variables. During that time, if they had a chance to take part in a dungeon with Kim Woo Jin, who had participated in the dungeon, it was only natural for them to take the opportunity. It must have been Park Yong Wan who handed out the rice cake. Furthermore, he was certain Park Yong Wan was the one who had set this up. Jong Woo Sik, the head of the support team, must have been pressured by Park Yong Wan to put Kim Woo Jin in such a dungeon. To lure the Skull Guild, he used Kim Woo Jin as bait to create the stage. That traitor must have gotten some evidence. In other words, Park Yong Wan has begun to question the Skull Guild in earnest. That was why Kim Woo Jin was here. We will be entering the dungeon. And it was also why Kim Woo Jin went into the dungeon without any hesitation. Chapter 33 As soon as 19 players entered the dungeon, a dry, barren stage welcomed them. As if they'd been brought to a corner of the Grand Canyon, cliffs made of dried soil surrounded them like a stadium. It was an awesome sight that was worth mentioning. However, none of the 19 players who saw this scene were interested. Over there. What is it? Over there, there's a cave. What they were interested in were not the cliffs surrounding them, 
but rather the caves on its walls that looked like mouse holes. There are eleven caves. Each entrance was large enough to fit a SUV. Look at that. There's a mark next to the entrance of that cave. There was an artificial mark next to the entrance of the cave. There was an X drawn using a sharp object some caves had two X marks in front them. They were marks left by the players who visited the dungeon before them. X means don't go in, right? I think they just checked it off indicating that they already went in. There was a brief discussion on those traces. Well, does it really matter? It doesn't change the fact that all we need to do is kill those goblin bastards inside am I wrong? It was essentially a very short discussion. At the end of the day, all we have to do is kill some goblins it's not even a job when we just gotta go in the caves and kill them. You're right, the only thing annoying about hunting goblins is if they run away, but this is like catching a rat in a jar. Having just one tanker at the front would be enough to end the game. How stupid were the group of guys that came before us that they died before clearing this kind of dungeon. The players came here to hunt, not to comfort the dead and clean up their bones. Two X's mean that two parties were wiped out, right? That means there are two parties worth of items. Rather, they were much more interested in taking the items left behind by the dead players. Actually, it was obvious that they came here that reason in the first place. We're going in here. If you come in here without our permission, we'll kill you without a warning so don't follow us. Here, here, here don't touch these three because we'll be clearing them just know that we'll cut at least one of your wrist if you try. We'll enter this one. The evidence was that the three parties started fighting for the caves with two X marks without any hesitation. If they knew the characteristics of the hobgoblins and the caves, they would never have hastily chosen the caves that probably wiped out two parties. You four, you don't have any complaints, right? Do you? If they were smart, they would never have tried to aggressively protect those caves from their competitors as if it was their food supply. No, I don't. Kim Wu Jin, who gave his response, was able to confirm his notions. No one here came prepared for the hobgoblin hunt. Kim Wu Jin's eyes slowly turned to the three Skull Guild members in their skull masks. These guys didn't come to hunt hobgoblin in the first place. Based on the information, Kim Wu Jin went through a new simulation in his head. The Skull Guild should know that they cannot hunt 44 hobgoblins on their own unless they are stupid they will probably wait until the other players dwindle down the number of hobgoblins. As soon as he came to this conclusion, Kim Wu Jin stopped hesitating and approached a cave without an X mark. Sug. If you're going to give me time, he'll gladly use it. Then he marked the first X next to the cave and entered it without hesitation. Thus, the Hobgoblin cave hunt began. Hobgoblin. Their appearance usually didn't differ much from the usual goblin. The only difference between them were that a Hobgoblin's physique was smaller yet a tad bit more muscular than a goblin's, and they also had a single horn about the length of a finger on their head. But their personalities differed drastically in comparison to normal goblins. Ordinary goblins were very timid if their colleagues were to die, they would not look back and run away, using their colleagues as a sacrifice subsequently, they would even run away at the smell of his or her partner's blood as well. But hobgoblins were different they were fearless rather, when just looking at their fighting spirit alone, they were not any less belligerent than orcs, and their fighting spirit rose even higher the more they were clumped. If this was the case, how would you deal with hobgoblins in a dark cave with enough space for a car to drive through? Most people would think like this. Let's put the warrior armed with armor and shield in the front and fight in an orderly fashion after blocking the road. Yang Il Su's thoughts were the same. He, who had undying fighter as his halo, prepared for the fact that he had to hunt goblins in a cave. He got a bigger armor and a bigger shield to make sure his body could block the passage of the cave. In fact, Yang Il Su, who was just covered in armor and shields, was blocking much of the cave in other words, he couldn't block the entire passage of the cave. Kaya. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. That was why a hobgoblin could slip through the small gap left by Yang Il Su. Oh fuck, be careful. Yang Il Su was taken aback by the situation. However, he wasn't that flustered as there were two magicians, a healer, and one archer who believed in Yang Il Su and were preparing to attack from behind. 
However, the movements of hobgoblins seemed even more ominous when only the torchlight was lighting the cave. Berg. Ru, run. The two magicians took a step back upon seeing the incoming hobgoblins. Ah, I can't see. The archer, who had to engage in the fight, also failed to respond properly to the sudden turn of events. Ting. He shot an arrow, but it just stuck the ground. Ah. A hobgoblin was already attached to the healer when the archer held an arrow for the second time Ka. A hobgoblin, who clung to the healer, let out a shriek and bit him on the shoulder with its teeth. Of course, there was no blood since the healer was wearing his protective gear. Goo, get away from me. Ah. Save me. I said help me. Ah. However, it was impossible to prevent the healer's screams from demoralizing Yan Aelsu's party. What's happening behind me? It was also impossible to prevent Yan Aelsu's mind from being distracted by the situation he couldn't see. B, be, be careful. While Yang Yel Su was distracted by the situation behind him, the hobgoblins once again tried to storm out through the little gaps between his armor. This time there were two. Kaya. A total of three hobgoblins began to wreak havoc inside the party. It was not just Yang Yel Su's party. No, it slipped through. Ah. The same thing was happening inside three caves. Moreover, this was the third time for the hobgoblins there there were three X marks next to those caves. That was why the hobgoblins were able to move more aggressive and systematically. Of course, there were places that weren't like that. The place where Kim Woo Jin was in. Ka. The hunting method Kim Woo Jin selected and what the others chose were essentially identical. He also blocked the passage to stop multiple hobgoblins from advancing. However, he did not block the passage by wearing armor or using shields. Kong. Instead of himself, there were metal bars placed in front of him. He literally placed bars. The metal bars, which looked like they must have been taken from a prison cell, blocked the passage between Kim Woo Jin and the hobgoblins. In addition, the metal bars were placed in a slant, supported by a pole underneath them this prevented the iron bars from falling to the floor. It looked like a right triangle from the side. Tiao Zhuliak. Tiao Zhuliak. And behind the bars were skeleton soldiers holding long spears. Puk. The skeleton soldiers were stabbing the hobgoblins, who were clinging to the iron bars and shrieking, one by one. This was Kim Wu Jin's method of hunting. It was worth preparing. Preparation was not difficult either. He could easily melt the cheap items found in the dungeon as easily as assembling a tent besides, in a dungeon, there were lots of materials that were harder yet lighter than steel. The cost of it was also negligible it cost about as much as expensive drinks and cocktails players would gulp down at a bar in Gangnam. But the value of the metal bars was awesome. Hobgoblins, who were blinded by anger from the repeated deaths of their comrades, rushed toward the metal bars without rest, but not even a single hobgoblin managed to change the situation. They couldn't break the metal bars and they didn't have any weapons that were effective against the enemy beyond the metal bars. Although throwing stones was the one thing they could do, most of them were blocked by the metal bars. On the other hand, skeleton soldiers skillfully thrusted their spears through the gap between the bars. Furthermore, skeleton soldiers weren't just thrusting their spears. They targeted areas such as the eye, where the wound would be as grievous as possible, and where they would bleed the most. They also remembered to use their spears to stab those who were hanging over the fence. Of course, metal bars were not perfect. Depending on the shape of the passages in the cave, there were sometimes gaps that could be used to slip through. Key. A hobgoblin just slipped through such a gap. That was all. With a clear understanding of where the gap lay, all Kim Woo Jin had to do was watch over the gap. Kick. As soon as the hobgoblin came out of the gap, Kim Wu Jin's arrow flew and pierced right through the hobgoblin's forehead. They are falling into the trap. In fact, for the hobgoblins, the gap left by the metal bars was nothing but a death trap. That hope was what made it a trap. In the first place, blocking the passage couldn't really be considered a trap. Though it seemed safe, there would no going back once one's feet were in a real trap. Like that, Kim Woo Jin and his skeleton soldiers hunted the hobgoblins one after another. 
Soon came a silence, not even a hobgoblin's scream or breath could be heard. Then there was a notification inside Kim Woo Jin's ears. It was a reminder that the hunt was over. However, Kim Woo Jin's eyes wasn't that of a dog who finished hunting. They were the eyes of a hunting dog that found its prey. Skull Mask Remember A beautiful voice came through the eerie mask. We're trying to get him to throw up as much information as possible so you can't kill him no matter what happens there would have been no point in coming to this ditch if we accidentally kill him. But the words she spoke were far from beautiful. If you think it's risky, save his life even if you have to use a potion since we'll probably have to torture him for at least two days before he begins to talk. Park Yi Yun, a member of the Skull Guild, continued to make horrifying remarks. The other two men beside her did not seem to care. They did not question the gruesome order of getting information by torture. It was the same as not questioning a fisherman for wanting to catching a fish. Since this was her job before becoming a player. As a former member of a secret self-defense force, she was already proficient in drawing information from people thanks to the experience of countless operations even before becoming a player. Let's go in. It was not a matter going into the cave and dealing with the player who is fighting with the monsters. From now on, all conversations will be in sign language keep your senses sharp and be as silent as possible when you move. Just keep one thing in mind. Do not forget the teachings of the God Archer. God Archer Hijiro Noda, the owner of the legendary great item, Achilles Bow. Not forgetting the teachings of the hunter, whose name was better known as one of the heroes of the Messiah Guild rather than by his title. We're going in now. When Park Yi Yun, who bore such teachings sent out a signal, the remaining two responded with signs of their own. In such a manner, three people went into the cave. Chapter, 34 Their movements were as stealthy as lions stalking their prey. Sug. They did not even touch the corpses of hobgoblins that were scattered along puddles of blood. What made this possible was a skill called night vision. It was a skill only available to those with the silent hunter as their halo. This skill, which had similar effects as night goggles, granted vision to Park Yi Yun and her men in the dark. It didn't mean that it was as easy to see as during the day. Their vision was tinted in green and their perception wasn't as sharp as usual. It was similar to the difference between someone with glasses walking without their glasses. Stop. That was why Park Yi Yun stopped her men in front of a hobgoblin's corpse. Park Yi Yun lowered her posture near the hobgoblin's corpse and began her inspection. After looking around briefly, she saw a few spears that were rising up like bamboo shoots. It was a trap. A trap meant for someone who decided not to avoid the hobgoblin corpses. Park Yi Yun was not surprised to see this. He's rather careful. She smiled instead. This guy has something to hide. They already knew that Kim Woo Jin was not an ordinary person. The evidence was that Park Yi Yun and her men were sent here. They weren't ordinary player hunters. They were the type of professionals who cleaned up after the mistakes of player hunters associated with the Skull Guild. Of course, their level of skill was incomparable to mediocre player hunters. I will definitely obtain the information from him. There was a large skill gap between them and normal hunters, and an even greater gap in their resolution. After finding the traps hiding between the hobgoblin corpses, she sent a signal to the men behind her. There's a trap, so be more careful. Yes. The men replied with signals of their own. Then they proceeded even more stealthily. They moved, searching for small traps hidden between the clumps of hobgoblin corpses, one at a time. It was a boring and tedious task, but no one complained. Eventually, they found what they were looking for. A torchlight appeared in the dim green world. Park Yi Yun stopped her men at the same time, everyone carefully reached for their arrows. Then they grabbed and held their arrows. All their actions were carried out slowly. The movement of knocking their arrows on their bowstrings and pulling their bows were carried out as if it were a slow motion video. In this aspect, that was an advantage of using a bow. There was no point in swinging a sword slowly but on the other hand, however slow a bow is drawn, had no difference in power once the bowstring is released. Silent Hunter that was why he imposed the use of bows to people who believe and follow him he's moving. Then the light moved further away. 
This change did not cause Park Yi yun and her men to be flustered. There was no need to share a signal. They slowly moved with their bows pulled gradually narrowing the distance from the light compared to what they've endured so far, being a little bit more patient wasn't too difficult. Even at this moment, Park Yi yun was not easily distracted. Get in battle formation. One by one, she placed her men ahead of her. It was a measure to keep everyone out of trouble even if something were to happen. Three people slowly moved in such a way. Puhu. Then, the men in front of Park Yi yun started to lose their footing followed by the sound of wind escaping. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two of her men, who had been holding back their breath up to this point, were frightened out of their wits and could not help but yell. Ah. Uh. Ugh. Their sounds instantly turned into a scream. It was the sound signifying that their bodies were pierced by spears that rose from five meters below the ground like a bamboo tree. Wah, what the hell? Park Yi Yun's eyes opened remarkably wide open in surprise. Because she never imagined something like that could happen to her and her subordinates. Wouldn't it be less surprising to see a trap from an Indiana Jones movie? Ha <laughs> ha. However, Park Yi Yun did not have the opportunity to ask such questions. P.U.K. Ugh. An arrow pierced Park Yi Yun's shoulder. In the year 2020, when the world turned into a game, the common sense used to make sense of the world crumbled. The laws of society, which kept the world functioning, also collapsed around that time. Kim Woo Ji knew that better than anyone else. While it was unusual for someone to dig five meters under the ground to build a trap, that was not so for Kim Woo Jin. There was no reason for him not to do it. All it needed was time. Park Yi Yun and her men gave Kim Woo Jin all the time he need. Of course, besides that, Kim Woo Jin had a lot of bait scattered around. Using multiple small traps, Kim Woo Jin slowed Park Yi Yun and her men's movements, gradually chipping away at their concentration and stamina, and gave them a false impression of their situation. It made them believe that they were flawlessly moving through the traps he placed he made them think they were hunting perfectly. In the end, the hunters were caught in a trap. All that was left to do was to hunt down his prey. Kim Woo Jin drew his bow at the prey who didn't fall into his trap. Ting. The arrow left Kim Woo Jin's bow precisely and rammed deep inside Park Yi Yun's left shoulder. He didn't think that he would miss. Although Kim Woo Jin did not have the ability to see in the darkness like night vision, he had his ears. Kim Woo Jin learned how to determine the location of the target by sound from the second best archer he knew, and he sharpened his skill through countless life and death hunts. Naturally, it could only be used once. Unless his enemies were fools, they would move as soon as they were hit by an arrow, making it almost impossible to track down the target relying on sound alone. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin stuck a very expensive spider web at the end of the arrow. The same spider web he used to catch the transforming slime in the past. Quag. Kim Woo Jin immediately pulled the spider web. The spider web grew taut, and Park Yi Yun's body was pulled toward Kim Woo Jin Kook. The unexpected situation made Park Yi Yun disconcerted. Moreover, there was a hole in front of her that already devoured two of her men. There was only one thing in her mind at this moment. There's no way out. There is no way to live. I would rather die together. The determined woman ran forward and jumped over the hole where her men had died instead of being dragged around by Kim Woo Jin's thread, she ran toward him. I will kill him. All of a sudden, there was a cookery knife in her hand. It was impossible to shoot her bow properly while her shoulder was injured it was also meaningless to fire an arrow at close range. Kim Woo Jin, who predicted her actions through the slackened thread, let go of the thread. I don't see any arrows did he switch to a knife. She must have studied under a true expert. Throwing away one's life and switching to a knife instead of engaging in a tug of war was something one could not do without proper training and education. Although I prepared for that as well. In other words, it was within his predictions. Park Yi Yun's feet suddenly stuck to the ground. Kook. He prepared for situations where the other side decided to jump over the trap. Park Yi Yun's ankles were caught in one of the holes that Kim Woo Jin had dug up with such a scenario in mind. At the same time, the trap accurately conveyed Park Yi Yun's position to Kim Woo Jin. 
Kim Woo Jin narrowed the distance between himself and Park Yi Yun in an instant. Soon, Kim Woo Jin's scimitar pierced deeply into Park Yi Yun's chest. Then, Kim Woo Jin's eyes turned black. There was a man in Park Yi Yun's memory. With appearance of someone in his late thirties, he was a man with a slender figure and a handsome, bearded face. In front of the man, ten men wearing Japanese self-defense force uniforms stood upright like mannequins and listened to the man. The man taught Park Yi Yun like so. Is not being hunted yourself. And he was also the one who taught Kim Woo Jin. Noda. God Archer Hijiro Noda. He was a man who had all the qualification to be called Kim Woo Jin's master. It was the reason why Kim Woo Jin willingly showed his back to him. He believed in his teacher's determination to end the game with him in order to save the world, believed in his beliefs, and believed in his skills. So you were with him all along. But now, Kim Woo Jin finally realized that it was all a lie. Since he joined the Messiah Guild a year after it was founded I guess it's not too unexpected. Kim Woo Jin actually had some inkling of how it happened. Hijiro Noda awakened as a player in 2020 and soon became the best player in Japan, charging ahead with his legendary item, Achilles Bow he always ranked in the top 5 in terms of levels in Japan. When he joined the Messiah Guild in 2021, the world applauded his choice, but some also questioned it. Why did he wait to join the Messiah Guild until 2021? If he really agreed with the values of the Messiah Guild, why didn't he join when he became a player? Why did he join after waiting for a whole year? It wasn't surprising. Kim Woo Jin was also suspicious of him for that reason. But I can't help but feel dirty. The moment he saw it with my own eyes, he couldn't prevent his emotions from escaping furthermore, Hijiro Noda and Park Shin Hai were different. Frankly speaking, he didn't have much of a connection with her he hardly ever fought with her while putting his life on the line. However, he had cleared countless dungeons with the God Archer. In the Messiah Guild, the combination of the Hunting Dog and the God Archer was considered the strongest combination. He received a lot of help. Kim Woo Jin was especially impressed with his determination when he decided to fight on the side of the Messiah Guild, even when Japan expressed their ambition toward the Korean Peninsula. When Kim Woo Jin saw that, he could assure himself that the God Archer would be willing to lay down his life with him. Damn it! But that was only Kim Woo Jin's delusion to the God Archer, Kim Woo Jin was just a hunting dog that he would dine on after all the hunting was finally over. What did he think of when he saw a hunting dog that he could eat at any time risking its life to hunt for him? Just imagining it made Kim Woo Jin want to go shoot him with a gun right away. But Kim Woo Jin restrained himself. The most important thing in hunt is not to be hunted. For he directly learned how stupid it was to have attachments to his prey by being angry charging into his prey without a plan was something he learned not to do, from the one who was currently making him feel abjectly sick. Because of this, Kim Woo Jin's personal feelings cooled down. He quenched the anger inside his heart. Instead of getting angry, he thought about what he just learned. At least I gained some information. The value of the information he earned this time outweighed his anger. The God Archer himself confirmed that there was a link between the Skull Guild and the Yamato Federation. Park Yi Yun was quite the big catch. A big enough fish to make not only the Skull Guild move but also the Yamato Federation as well. If she had this kind of career, they wouldn't be able to just cover it up. There was no chance that the Skull Guild or the Yamato Federation would remain silent when such a giant fish lost her life. Park Yongwan will also be interested in this big fish as well. And Park Yongwan, who secured such evidence, would not stay still either. Likewise, Kim Woo Jin didn't plan on remaining quiet. Then I'll just have to set them up on a blind date. The happiest moment for a member of the dungeon support staff was when players came out of the dungeon gates they were assigned to. The support staff members were given time off as well as bonuses for their performance when players came out after clearing the dungeon. That's why Park Hyun Moo, a dungeon support team employee, was not feeling too happy damn it, there's no sign of clearing the dungeon today either. It was four days after players entered the dungeon. Staring at the still atmosphere around the dungeon gate, Park Hyunmu felt a sense of deja vu. The same feeling as when the previous players failed to clear the dungeon. I knew this would happen. To be honest, he wasn't expecting much. 
I was stupid to expect a group of rejects from multiple guilds to succeed when people from the same guild with decent character already failed to clear it. It would be strange to have high expectations when the ones trying to clear the dungeon, which people failed twice already, were a group of nuisances from their respective guilds. Fucking degenerates, don't attempt it in the first place. He was even annoyed they even attempted it. Who would try to clear a dungeon that players failed to clear three times? It was too obvious how a dungeon, which players failed three times, would be treated. Kahak. Park Hyunmu looked at the dungeon, then gathered his phlegm as if he were about to spit it out. It was then. Ha. Huh. A man came out of the dungeon gate. Gulp. Park Hyunmu swallowed the phlegm without even realizing it and ran toward the player who came out of the dungeon gate. Oh, congratulations on clearing the dungeon. First of all, he congratulated him. The player told him. Please inform the guild. Ha. Huh. What do you ah? Uh? Only then, Park Hyunmu could see that the player's thighs, shoulders, and belly were pierced with arrows. Tree, you have to receive treatment. Surprised, Park Hyunmu demanded the player to get treated. Please send my words to the guild rather than worrying about the treatment that the Skull Guild hunted the players. Kim Woo Jin came out alone. The secretary nodded and answered yes to Park Yongwan's question. And he said that the Skull Guild attacked him. The secretary responded the same way this time as well. So what's the reaction of the Skull Guild? We haven't informed the Skull Guild yet the Guild Master will convene an emergency meeting soon however, no matter what the Phoenix Guild does, there's no possibility that the Skull Guild will confirm this. After the fake excuses, they'll be very cautious since there's no reason to act and everyone's attention is focused on them. Park Yongwan thought with his eyes closed after hearing her opinion. How many people know of this? The head of the support team Zhang Wusuk who received the report from the dungeon support team staff, as well as the guild master, and Kim Wu Jin. Park Yongwan said while opening one of his eyes. Can you cover it up? The secretary nodded at Park Yongwan's reply. Though it can't be covered up forever, it could be done for about three or four months but what's the point of covering it up? If you keep it covered, the Skull Guild kids will send out even bigger fish to kill Kim Wu Jin and the bigger the fish that moves, the bigger the trails they leave behind. Park Yong Wan, who was saying that, closed his eye again. How many skills do I have on my storage list of skills that are dedicated to Emissary of the Underworld? The secretary immediately searched using the iPad in her hand. There are 54 of them. How many of them are of the unique rank? 3. What are the skill names? They are Fire Golem, Skeleton Wizard, and Blood Sucking. What are the skill level requirements? Higher than level 60 for Fire Golem, higher than level 80 for Skeleton Wizard, and higher than level 20 for Blood Sucking. Then Blood Sucking would be good wrap it nicely and get it ready. Wrap it? Park Yongwan told the surprised secretary with a wry smile. It's a hospital gift wouldn't it look nicer to wrap it up than just handing it to him? Chapter, 35 One of the best privileges given to players was the medical benefits they received. In an era where players were the backbone of a nation's strength, all governments provided their players with the best medical care they could, and this was also the case in Korea. Players with Korean nationality could receive all medical services in Korea at no cost. The benefits covered the charges for the use of private rooms, which would normally only be used by VIPs everything in a hospital were free for players, as it was covered by federal taxes. It was quite generous. I'm glad the treatment is free. If Kim Woo Jin had to pay for his own medical bills, he would have hesitated and contemplated other plans that did not include injuring himself the benefits were so good that Kim Woo Jin would rethink his plan if these benefits did not exist. It was just as implied. Kim Woo Jin's injuries were self-inflicted. As soon as the dungeon was cleared, the moment he killed 44 hobgoblins, he stabbed and cut himself with arrows and knives. Sharks in the distance would rush towards him only when the smell of blood is dispersed, that's why he hurt himself. Tog Tog. It's Park Yongwan may I come in. And now, a shark appeared after smelling blood. Yes, come in. Kiig. Park Yongwan, who appeared after he opened the door, smiled bitterly as he checked the warning sign, 
caution when approaching blood poisoning. Posted on the bed where Kim Woo Jin was lying down. The operation must have been difficult because of blood poisoning. Yes if my wounds were any deeper, I really would have died. It wasn't even half the story. If Kim Woo Jin's wounds were deeper, his life would have been in danger due to the immense blood loss. The treatment itself was not the problem since Kim Woo Jin's blood was not a corrosive poison the problem was that blood transfusions were impossible. That's why I adjusted it properly but. Kim Woo Jin, of course, adjusted even the degree of his injuries. For someone who had dealt with countless lives before, it wasn't hard to do. It was really dangerous. Park Yong Wan, who didn't know the truth, did not doubt the cause of Kim Woo Jin's injuries and began to act out his skit. I have heard some rumors regarding the Skull Guild. Skull Guild, the moment those words came out, Kim Woo Jin's face grew cold. Park Yong Wan, who brought a chair and sat near Kim Woo Jin, also had a stiff expression on his face. You were right they were hunting players they must have hunted players in the ranked dungeon as well that's probably why so many people died but in the dungeon, some kind of problem occurred with the Skull Guild, and in order to investigate it. So they targeted me, who looked easy to deal with if I were caught, I probably would have been tortured until I spilled something. Listening to the icy, cold voice coming out of Kim Woo Jin's mouth, Park Woo Jin thought to himself while nodding lightly. This is going to be easier than I thought. Park Yong Wan was planning to persuade Kim Woo Jin today. He intended to make attacking the Skull Guild more attractive by using this fact a bait. Rather than disclosing the truth and making the Skull Guild cower back, he intended to turn Kim Woo Jin into an excellent bait for the Skull Guild to bite on. He also came prepared in case Kim Woo Jin wanted to blow this incident out of proportion he planned to threaten him if such a scenario were to arise. But looking at Kim Woo Jin's current reaction, it looked like he did not have to use such a messy scenario. Well, since he's a smart guy, he probably knows that there's nothing he can do about the Skull Guild. In fact, if looking at it logically, there was nothing Kim Woo Jin could do against the Skull Guild first of all, there was no way to prove that the injuries Kim Woo Jin suffered were caused by members of the Skull Guild. Furthermore, the course of such a lawsuit would last more than a year there was no guarantee that Kim Woo Jin would even be alive when the ruling came out. Meaning whatever Kim Woo Jin did was meaningless. Damn it. Kim Woo Jin expressed his frustration in front of Park Yong Wan. Park Yong Wan's eyes gleamed with light. You must be frustrated. Well, there are people who want to kill me how could I not be angry? Yes, you're right if I were you, I wouldn't be able to sit still in fact, I've never spared anyone who has messed with me like that. After revealing his thoughts, Park Yong Wan nodded and asked a question. So do you want to give them a punch? Kim Woo Jin looked at Park Yong Wan and asked. Is there a way? I wouldn't have come here if there wasn't one it's simple first of all, cover it up. When asked to cover up this situation, Kim Woo Jin spoke with a suspicious expression. But if we cover it up, then the Skull Guild will come to take care of you and there will be a trap set up waiting for them. Kim Woo Jin's face stiffened at the word trap. You want me to be used as bait? I won't say no but in this world, you have to pay a price in order to get what you want don't you think? When Park Yong Wan answered, Kim Woo Jin let out a long sigh and he began to think. Park Yong Wan was willing to wait, and Kim Woo Jin, who soon finished contemplating, asked Park Yong Wan. Why are you willing to go this far, Mr. Park Yong Wan? When I'm the one who got injured. The question was answered and Park Yong Wan was prepared with a response. There's a line in the world that should not be crossed, and the world needs someone to protect such a line. Along with his statement, Park Yong Wan handed over the luxurious envelope in his hand to Kim Woo Jin. It's a hospital visit gift you can think about it a little longer it'll help you out when you come to a decision. Leaving such words behind, Park Yong Wan left the hospital. Kim Woo Jin, who was now left alone, recalled Park Yong Wan's departing words. There's a line that shouldn't be crossed, and someone must keep it. As soon as he thought of those words, the sides of his mouth formed a smirk. That's funny. It wasn't the words befitting someone who sold out his country for his own benefit when the country was facing its most dire crisis. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was not angry. The Park Yong Wan he knew was that kind of person no matter what he said, there was no need to take it seriously. It was his gift that really mattered. 
What's this? When Kim Woo Jin removed the wrapping paper a sheet of paper emitting a ray of golden light could be seen. Blood sucking, acquisition requirement, emissary of the underworld acquisition level, must be higher than level 20 skill effect, heals by absorbing the target's blood the higher the skill level, the greater the amount of blood and health that will be absorbed from the target. Blood sucking skill. Kim Woo Jin's eyes cooled the moment he saw it. To think it would be this. Kim Woo Jin expected that Park Yong Wan would give him a gift in order to use him more effectively. But if the bait was unappetizing, it could not be used to fish. But he didn't expect it to be a blood sucking. Skill page. With this coming into my hands, I have no choice but to change the plan. Of course, at this moment, Kim Woo Jin was forced to revise his plan once again. Securing the albino lizard's egg right away. Kim Woo Jin immediately prepared to hunt the albino lizard's egg. On his fourth day of hospitalization, another gift was delivered to Kim Woo Jin, who was still hospitalized. It was none other than a box of Bacchus drink. Kim Woo Jin felt a hunch when he saw a gift that belonged to a very cheap category. It's here. This gift must have been sent by Oh Se Chan. As expected, it was something sent by Oh Se Chan. Transmission radio. There was a bottle of Bacchus and a transmitter in the box. Kim immediately turned on the radio. This is Kim Woo Jin. I'm Oh Se Chan. Let me express my deepest sympathy for your injuries. Kim Woo Jin, who heard such words, scoffed while taking out the only bottle of Bacchus in the box. Is this all you've sent me when I've been hospitalized? Sorry I'm not used to sending that kind of stuff what did you expect? When you hear that a player went to the hospital, they usually end up in a morgue, not a hospital room. But still a single bottle of Bacchus is a little bit. Now, shall we talk about the deal? I'm afraid we won't be able to talk long because we don't have a lot of battery life to work with oh, don't throw away the radio we can use it again. All right. Kim Woo Jin didn't bother to push him anymore. So, you want to buy the two-floor rank dungeon? Yes I will buy it for five billion won. What's your level? It was a sudden question, but Kim Woo Jin immediately realized his intentions and responded accordingly. Didn't you already test my skills back then? I did but that was the test for one-floor dungeons but now you're asking for a two-floor dungeon it's like asking to drive a bus with a motorcycle license huh? You know how ridiculous this is, don't you? Whether I'm dead or not, that's not the broker's business isn't that why you get 5 billion won in advance and a separate fee afterwards? Kim Woo Jin's voice was fierce. However, a light smile hung on Kim Woo Jin's mouth. The smile was proof he had a good impression towards Oh Se Chan. It was only natural. A broker who's concerned about a player's well-being. Most brokers did not care whether the player could clear the dungeon. Since brokers made enough money just by introducing the dungeons to the players, it did not matter to them whether they lived or died. Although the dungeon's difficulty increased each time players failed to clear them, there was no way for the players to know if the broker was resolved to hide those facts. On the contrary, some dungeons became more expensive due to that. Dungeons where players have failed multiple times were dangerous, but it also meant that there were more inheritances left behind by the players. Moreover, Oh Se Chan was able to receive 5 billion won just by accepting Kim Woo Jin's request whether he lived or died. There was no reason for him to stop Kim Woo Jin in this way. Yep, it doesn't matter much to me whether you die or not, but you can't just watch people die, right? There's a line in the world that shouldn't be crossed, and the world needs someone to protect such a line. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin snickered. It was because he remembered the incident that happened few days ago. So are you going to sell the dungeon to me or not? Please tell me clearly. In spite of his laughter, intimidating words came out of his mouth. Then, Oh Se Chan said in a firm tone. Are you really confident? I don't have a hobby of trying to get myself killed if I had such a hobby, I would be in a morgue, not a hospital room. All right, then I'll sell it. Thank you. I'll add a suggestion instead. A suggestion? Do you want to buy any items? The sudden remark that came out of nowhere made Kim Woo Jin frown rather than feeling unpleasant, it was an expression of doubt regarding the unexpected proposal. 
As if not caring what Kim Woo Jin's reaction would be, Oh Se Chan continued. There are amazing set items in my hands for hunting lizard men, the so called lizard men killer set. With this set of items, you would be able to trample on lizard men like how Super Mario would trample on a Koopa. If you buy it as a set, I'll give you a discount, it's not easy to find such an opportunity. Oh Se Chan, who suddenly became a subway street vendor, advertised his products hearing his promotion, Kim Woo Jin seriously considered it. It won't be bad to have it. Currently, Kim Woo Jin had no items that were intended for hunting lizard men in his hands. So Kim Woo Jin was planning on buying items exclusively for hunting lizard men. In such a situation, Oh Se Chan's proposal was very attractive. But he was prepared to this level. At the same time, Kim Woo Jin was surprised by Oh Se Chan's preparations. Business was business in Oh Se Chan's eyes, but there was no other broker who did their business this way. The first reason was that most brokers only looked at immediate profit, and the second reason was that not many brokers possessed many items to match their dungeons. In fact, item brokers were busy trying to dispose of and circulate items as fast as possible. It was because the price of the items could change at any minute if the value of the item was already high in this business, it was common sense to sell the items the moment you came into possession of them. In such a situation, keeping a set of items according to your dungeons? Is he saying he has a proper system for clearing dungeons? This means that he had an effective system for clearing dungeons. It wouldn't be strange for a guild to have a system like this. But Oh Se Chan was not a guild. He's not an ordinary person. Kim Wu Jin once again re-evaluated Oh Se Chan's existence. He answered. There's no reason for me to refuse. It's a splendid choice I will personally present it to you at a very specially discounted price it'll give you lots of mileage as well. But I have a favor to ask of you. Anything for my outstanding customer feel free to ask. Can I borrow some money? There was a sudden silence at Kim Woo Jin's request. Huh? What? After a short period of silence, Oh Se Chan asked again, and Kim Woo Jin calmly asked a similar question once more. I don't have enough money right now so I was wondering if I could get a loan. Chi Jig, Chi Jig. I, I can't hear you very well Chi Jig, Chi Jig this fucking tra, trash radio this fuck, fucking dog, dog like bastard Chi Jig, Chi Jig. Kim Woo Jin burst out laughing at the reaction. If not, is it possible to trade for them with items? Ah, uh, I can hear you again sure. It's our job to deal with stolen goods after all. I'm not talking about selling but trading if I sell them as stolen goods, they'll have to pay a commission and when I buy new items from you, won't you have me pay the commission again? You're good at calculating you would do well as an accountant alright, let's exchange the list of items first oh, just put the radio in a box and put it in the trash then we'll take care of it enjoy your bacchus I won't charge you any extra fees. That's how the deal ended. Extra fee. HEW intended to charge me for this? Kim Woo Jin looked at the bottle of Bacchus and genuinely smiled. At that moment, Oh Se Chan told Kim Woo Jin. Watch out for the Skull Guild, I just hope this advice becomes nothing but nonsense. The moment Oh Se Chan finished speaking, Kim Woo Jin's eyes began to shine fiercely. Watch out for the Skull Guild, I just hope this advice becomes nothing but nonsense. After turning off the radio and ending the conversation, Oh Se Chan bitterly smiled. He was feeling regretful at this moment. Why did you say that? That he might have said something unnecessary to Kim Woo Jin. When all he wants is a broker. However, Oh Se Chan could not help but warn him. But I can't lose a real player that I've found after searching for so long because of them. Oh Se Chan believed that Kim Woo Jin was a player who cleared dungeons in order to end the game and it's only the second time I found a psycho this skilled. The evidence was that he was trying to clear a difficult dungeon that might be beyond his level of strength. If he was a player that only cared about himself, would he try to clear a dungeon like that? So I advised him to be careful even at the risk of hurting our relationship. Oh Se Chan knew. The moment he killed the cleaner of the Skull Guild, the Yamato Federation as well as the Skull Guild marked Kim Woo Jin as a key figure and as long as Park Yong Wan tries to use Kim Woo Jin as bait, Kim Woo Jin won't be able to stay safe. As for what kind of guild the Skull Guild was, who was behind them, 
and who was trying to use Kim Woo Jin. Though, based on my intuition, I think it's all planned by him. He also speculated that all of this was a plan being carried out by Kim Woo Jin. In fact, that was why Oh Se Chan could not reach out to Kim Woo Jin. Damn, I'd meet him in person if I could be certain he had no contacts with the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin's actions had a cause, but there weren't enough benefits to outweigh the risk. That prevented Oh Se Chan from reaching out to Kim Woo Jin. He's not associated with the Messiah Guild, is he? Damn it, I can't trust anyone. Facing the reality, Oh Se Chan let out a long sigh. Wu Wung. At that moment, Oh Se Chan's phone began to vibrate. Oh Se Chan checked the number and answered right away. Uh, yeah, what happened? You got the Reaper's mask. Oh Se Chan clenched his fist after hearing the answer that came shortly afterwards. Yes, the only way to end this damn game is by being overgeared. Chapter 36 Lizard Warrior's Cookery and the Black Hyena Leather Armor said it's a pretty good combination. Kim Woo Jin checked the options of Lizard Warrior's Cookery, an item he bought from Oh Se Chan, then immediately put the blade into his inventory. To ordinary people, it appeared as if the item disappeared in midair. The action was seen by Oh Se Chan's subordinate, Jin Su Young, who nodded. If you've confirmed the items, please write on this receipt confirming that you've received it and sign it. Kim Woo Jin smiled as he saw Oh Se Chan's subordinate hand him a confirmation receipt. Does this mean anything? It was essentially illegal for players to trade items without going through the guild it was a violation of the contracts that players had with their guild. Therefore, brokers and players usually tried to hide traces of the transactions as much as possible. But, he had to write a receipt. Is something like this effective? Writing a receipt that obviously has no use? Oh Seichan's subordinate laughed while answering his question. The boss wants me to get it I have to get it if he tells me to, what else can I do? This answer, which was mixed with a hint of a smile, showed that this was not the first time she was asked such a question. He gets a signature for every trade. Upon noticing this detail, Kim Woo Jin looked at the receipt agreement in front of him. Like a bank document, the confirmation receipt told him to sign next to a faint statement. Is he trying to get the player's handwriting? If the contract did not have a use, it was likely that he was after the player's handwriting from this document. That may be useful in some ways but frankly, Kim Woo Jin wondered just how useful it could be perhaps it was just that Oh Se Chan's personality was a bit unusual perhaps everyone who have made several deals with him thought so as well. Normally, Kim Woo Jin would think so, too. Who exactly are you? However, he, who realized that Oh Se Chan was not a normal person, knew that he could not simply approach this from his own perspective Kim Woo Jin felt that Oh Se Chan was able to see something in a perspective of the world he could not see. I have to be careful. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin intentionally changed his handwriting in his signature. The contemplation of this act stopped there. It was because there were more important deals left to do. Here's the balance. Kim Woo Jin handed over a shopping bag to Oh Se Chan's subordinate. The bag was full of 50,001 bills. It was the cost for getting access to the A rank dungeon. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that it was all of Kim Woo Jin's current funds. 5 billion won. Kim Woo Jin, who still had loans to pay off, would actually be in the negative once he gave the money. It was cheap. But Kim Woo Jin did not regret it. In reality, A rank dungeons were not popular the situation was totally different from the A rank dungeon. A rank dungeons guaranteed a minimum of a unique item if lucky, a legendary rank item would drop as well basically, it was assured that they would at least go even. On the other hand, the probability of that happening dropped drastically in an A rank dungeon there were many cases where not even a unique rank item came out. However, the difficulty of an A rank dungeon was incomparable to the difficulty of a B rank dungeon. The risk was high yet the payout was low 5 billion won for such a dungeon was honestly not cheap. Time to find out what they were hiding. Only one person, the person who knew some of the dungeon secrets, Kim Woo Jin, would find it cheap. I have confirmed the amount I'll give you the dungeon's details first. Oh Se Chan's subordinate handed Kim Woo Jin a file. On the first page of the file, there was information regarding the dungeon. 
Below it was the number of times the players failed to clear the dungeon and on the back was detailed information about the players who died after failing to clear the dungeon. Even players of this level failed to clear the dungeon, that kind of warning. It was an unnecessary warning for Kim Woo Jin. Many people died in this dungeon. He knew how difficult clearing this dungeon would be Kim Woo Jin it knew better than anyone else. The transportation will be carried out in three stages. In the meantime, the employee gave him the following instructions. Which date would you like? Upon hearing that question, Kim Woo Jin answered. I'll be going right now. The subordinate looked at him with surprise. What? Despite her reaction, Kim Woo Jin spoke calmly. I will attempt to clear it right now. Kim Woo Jin is going to Taegu where the dungeon is located. Going. It seems like he's going to attempt to clear it right away. Ignoring his subordinate's answer, Oh Se Chan did not look away from the documents in his hands. His subordinate threw him a question. Are you not surprised? I expected it. You expected it? If you've already resolved to do it, there's no need to waste time as for the items, he will use what he bought from us the food is not hard to prepare, and he doesn't need to worry about filling up his car with gas and dragging it all the way up there no need to waste time, right? It was just as Oh Seichan said. Spending more time in real life did not increase the probability of clearing the dungeon significantly. If he were the type of person to give up, he wouldn't have requested it in the first place. Alternatively, if one were to feel hesitant or unconfident, the answer was to give up the dungeon from the start. Is it really possible for him to clear it? On the other hand, the subordinate still seemed to be unable to accept the current situation in fact, this reaction was normal. Did you know that Kim Woo Jin is at most only around level 20? Kim Woo Jin cleared a one-floor dungeon a few days ago, and since the condition of the dungeon was to be less than level 20, Kim Woo Jin's level had to be 20 or 21 at the highest. Does it make sense for him to clear a two-floor dungeon alone? Such a person was attempting to clear a two-floor dungeon for the first time, and he was attempting to clear an A-rank dungeon by himself. Oh se Chan responded calmly to her question. Nothing's impossible there have been precedents. There are players like that. Players like Dragon Hunter, Tyrant, Master Swordsman, Trinity, and Lee Se Jun went into two-floor dungeon as soon as they reached the twentieth level they also made it out alive now they are walking around smashing five and six-floor dungeons. The subordinate retorted as if she was flabbergasted. Of course they did. But they are monsters. The founder of Messiah Guild Lee Se Jun, Dragon Hunter, Tyrant, Master Swordsman, and Trinity whom Oh Se Chan talked about were a part of the first seven players that awakened on January 1, 2020. And now, every one of them were viewed as the strongest players that could even move a nation true monsters that exceeded the definition of a monster. Yeah, all of them are monsters and if Kim Woo Jin manages to come back alive from the dungeon, he would be a monster as well. Ah. As soon as she heard that, the subordinate realized. Oh Se Chan continued to speak to his subordinate while reading the documents. Whether Kim Woo Jin can break through the dungeon or not is a pointless question if he dies in the dungeon, so be it it's something we can't change, and we don't need to mind it. Oh Se Chan got up from his seat after organizing the documents. Anyway, Kim Woo Jin should know how dangerous a two-floor dungeon is better than us. After getting up, Oh Se Chan handed the documents over to his subordinate. So the only thing we have to worry about is figuring out what to do when he clears the dungeon. The subordinate who received the documents took the stamp out of his desk drawer as if it was the obvious thing to do. It was a stamp with reusable paper, written on it. As soon as Kim Woo Jin entered the dungeon, he heard an announcement that couldn't be heard if he were in a one-floor dungeon. It's definitely a two-floor dungeon. The announcement made Kim Woo Jin realize that this really was a two-floor dungeon. At the same time, he reminisced about when he entered a two-floor dungeon for the first time. When he was level 20, Kim Woo Jin's skills were acknowledged and was given a chance to clear a two-floor C-rank dungeon with level 30 players. Kim Woo Jin showed great performance in the dungeon, clearly solidifying his name and worth. Everyone was impressed by Kim Woo Jin's skill and talent. It was then that I realized how difficult this game was. But at that time, Kim Woo Jin felt that two-floor dungeons, or rather, dungeons in general, were much more dangerous than he initially thought. 
Ironically, his great performance was what led to this realization. In the beginning, Kim Woo Jin's idea of the best way to clear a dungeon was when nobody deviated from the plan. Just like a watch, everyone performing their part to the point of boredom and having little to no impression of the dungeon until leaving the dungeon that was Kim Woo Jin's thoughts on the best way to clear a dungeon. However, the two floor dungeon did not allow for such a thing. It wasn't that the monsters were so much stronger than the monsters from the first floor. Food is the most important thing. The only problem they faced was none other than a shortage of food. Till then, one floor dungeons only lasted for five days at the longest a shortage of food was not a real concern. However, from two floor dungeons and onwards, they had to keep starvation in mind. In fact, many players who were considered promising stars thanks their excellent skill when clearing one floor dungeons, died of starvation in two floor dungeons and from three floor dungeons and onwards, players spent more time deciding whether to bring more water or food than deciding which items to bring. Since, no matter how much strong you are mentally, it's useless if you're starving. If players who were killed by monsters because they couldn't think straight due to hunger were counted as dying from starvation, then more than half of players who died in two floor dungeons died due to starvation. In other words, the most important requirement was correctly consuming one's food supply. And Kim Woo Jin chose one of the ways to do so. I will clear the first floor in two days. Sweeping down the first floor monsters as soon as possible before his food supply is exhausted. Black smoke rose from one of many tunnels. Key. And frantic screams of goblins could be faintly heard within the smoke. A scene that could only be described as hell. Kim Woo Jin's eyes were cold, staring at the hell he created with his own hands. At this moment, there was only one thought in his mind. Not here either. That there was no lizard man in this cave. Kim Woo Jin didn't get angry, didn't express regret, nor did he feel nervous. Even the level 20 reward notifications could not change Kim Woo Jin's expression. It only changed his behavior. He checked his surroundings, and moved away only after making sure there was nothing near his vicinity. Inventory Only after getting to a safe location did Kim Woo Jin open his inventory he took out what he had prepared, and tore it up. It was the moment when he could finally use the gift he received from Park Yongwon. A notification was immediately sent to let him know that the effects of the plus ring had been applied. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't show much of a reaction after hearing the news. It was a waste of energy for Kim Woo Jin to show joy for he expected. Like that, Kim Woo Jin opened the gift that his halo gave to commemorate his level 20 advancement. Catalog A catalog emitting a silver glow appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin's eyes. It's rare. Kim Woo Jin reacted slightly to the silver glow. However, he did not react any more than that. Kim Woo Jin rarely had luck before returning to the past, but that was the case when it came to items or skills that were unique or of a higher rank as for those rare rank items and skills, it was too painful to count how often he was disappointed. It would be strange for him to be interested. Kim Woo Jin went to the page in the catalog emitting a silver light with an indifferent look huh? At that moment, Kim Woo Jin's face unexpectedly revealed emotion. My luck is good. It was the worst scenario that monsters facing Kim Woo Jin could encounter. Chapter, 37 A goblin's life in such an environment was undeniably boring. Not only did they lack a proper entertainment culture, the only activities available to them in a dark narrow cave where only a single goblin could pass through at a time was to either pass time absent-mindedly or sleeping. Key Burrows housing those monotonous goblins were beginning to see signs of change. The cause of the change was none other than the arrival of an uninvited guest. Tiao Zhuliak. Tiao Zhuliak. The identity of the uninvited guest was a dark skeleton goblin. Key. Key. Of course, the goblins attacked the uninvited visitor, who entered the cave without their permission. The fight that ensued was so one sided that it was awkward to label it as a fight. Puwat. The scene of a black skeleton soldier killing the goblins one after another in a cave that made it difficult to utilize their numerical superiority was like watching chickens jumping into a slaughtering machine with their own two feet. In other words, the goblins, who had nowhere to run, did not back down. Rather, they couldn't. 
The goblins rushed desperately at the skeleton soldier like a cornered mouse biting a cat, and the their repeated attacks eventually caused the skeleton soldier to collapse. Tiao Zhuliak As soon as the skeleton soldier collapsed, the goblins crushed the skeleton soldiers without mercy and eventually destroyed it. The situation was immediately conveyed to Kim Wu Jin, who was measuring the time outside the tunnel. About ten minutes I think. After hearing the notification, Kim Wu Jin looked at the skill in front of him. Skeleton Warrior Mastery What Kim Wu Jin did just now was him trying to check the power of the new skill that he got not long ago. He put a skeleton soldier alone in a goblin den as a test. Pretty good. The result was obviously satisfactory. It was a huge ordeal for a skeleton soldier to go into a goblin cave alone and last for nearly ten minutes. If it had went in with a full stack of ruler of the battlefield in effect, it would have survived even longer. Above all, it was not even fully strengthened by ruler of the battlefield before it had went in. If Kim Wu Jin had caught a few monsters for the skeleton soldier, strengthened it with ruler of the battlefield to the maximum, and put it in the goblin den, it would have been an even more surprising outcome. However, Kim Wu Jin did not get excited. There was no reason to be excited, for getting excited would not affect the result. Time for the next test. Above all, there was another skill he wanted to test. Sug. Kim Wu Jin injured his arm with a kukri. The blood from the wound began to flow down and drip from an unsightly dagger in Kim Wu Jin's hands. Soon, Kim Wu Jin's blood coated the dagger. It was a technique that covered the dagger with poison using toxic blood. Afterwards, Kim Wu Jin put his hand inside the wound in a goblin corpse that was prepared under his feet. Then, the blood within the corpse GTO sucked into Kim Wu Jin's body through his hand. Wu Jin's bleeding wound slowly began to heal. Next the blood he had lost from bleeding also began to replenish. Soon after the notification, Kim Wu Jin stopped sucking its blood and watched the wound on his arm. There was a faint scar on the wound. It's to this extent. He that confirmed the effects of the new blood sucking skill. Now there was only one more test left. Summon Skeleton Soldier. Kim Wu Jin summoned a skeleton soldier using the bloodless goblin corpse as a sacrifice. Flesh on the goblin corpse melted away, and soon rose in its place with only its bones remaining. Then its bones turned black. Wig. Kim Wu Jin handed a rough dagger coated with his blood to the skeleton soldier. Then the skeleton soldier quickly snatched the dagger and headed for the goblin cave with a look of joy as if it were a puppy getting a new toy to play with. About thirty minutes later, the skeleton soldier came back to Kim Wu Jin, all tattered. Perfect. He finished testing his new skills. When attempting to clear a two-floor dungeon, clearing the first floor as soon as possible was a good idea since if the first floor was cleared quickly, more strength and food could be saved for the second floor. But that didn't mean that you should carelessly clear the first dungeon as fast as possible. In the first place, such a method could not be considered as clearing the first floor. When crossing to the next floor, it was important to avoid jumping over recklessly. What mattered was one's condition after clearing the first floor. In particular, never get stained by the smell of blood. It was obvious what the consequences would be if one were to cross over to the second floor while they were already tired and covered with the smell of sweat and blood. Especially if it is the smell of a monster's blood it wouldn't matter if the monsters on next floor are stupid, but if one were to meet a monster like me, it would never ignore the scent of blood. Kim Wu Jin always emphasized these points to his colleagues. And every time he did, they would say. A monster like Hyung Nim? Would it be a dog-like bastard? That's right it would be dog-like bastard definitely a dog-like bastard. I'll just give up if I see a monster like Wu Jin Appa how would you catch a monster like that? Instead of responding to his colleagues who would play around, Kim Wu Jin would just smile it was one of the few moments when Kim Wu Jin, who was always serious and desperate in a dungeon, showed a smile and relaxed. It was also a moment he would never experience again. Since Kim Wu Jin no longer had such colleagues. The only thing he had now were four skeletons with black bones and a lizard man hanging on a tree like a blanket. It wasn't dead. Kaya. The lizard man was still breathing. However, it looked like Kim Wu Jin wasn't planning to kill the lizard man until he finished eating. 
Chiab. Chiab. In other words, the lifeline of the lizard man was the energy bar that Kim Wu Jin was slowly chewing on. As soon as the energy bar disappeared, the lizardman's lifeline would also disappear. Gulp. Soon, Kim Wu Jin swallowed all of the energy bar. Then slowly got up. The eyes of the skeleton soldiers who were staring at the tree began to look lively again. It's time to head to the second floor. The first thing that welcomed Kim Wu Jin when he crossed the new dungeon gate that appeared with the death of Lizard Man was a notification. Then a series of notices was given. Among them was a notification that would shock any player's ears. It was a notification announcing the Halo's high expectations for their challenge, a great opportunity to receive a gift from their Halo. However, Kim Wu Jin did not pay attention to the announcement. He only looked at the stage before his eyes with a cold look. A swamp, it's as I've heard of back then. The environment of the second floor dungeon was a swamp. Dark and dense swamps were all over the dungeon like traps. It was one of the worst environment to face in a dungeon. It was crazy for anyone to fight monsters in a swamp where they might die because their ankles were caught. Furthermore, lizard men were monsters who used these swamps as their home. Even if a lizard man was dragged out of the swamp, it was virtually impossible to track down a monster that would flee back to the swamp when the situation went awry. Being chased was even worse. This was not a world where there were roads made for players like in games. It wouldn't be strange to run away and be stopped in a swamp that extended as far as a sea. I have heard stories but now that I have seen it in person I understand why so many elites have died it's much worse than I thought. In such a world, it was crazy to hunt the lizard men without being prepared. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin had no intention of doing such a crazy thing. He wasn't going to sneak up behind them and hunt them one by one either. Inventory Kim Woo Jin opened his inventory and took out another hunting tool. An axe Kim Woo Jin pulled it out and headed straight toward a nearby tree. Puck. He chopped away with his axe. Within the dark viridescent swamp, a giant lizard head appeared on the surface of the water Kaya. What appeared was a lizard man. Similar to a lizard in appearance, a dark green monster with two hands instead of front legs looked around with its flickering eyes while flapping its long tongue like a whip. Its eyes stopped for a moment. Ka. The lizard man walked toward where his eyes had stopped then its long tongue began to flutter toward the red thing that was stuck to the ground. The red thing that was stuck to the ground was blood. Kaya. It was welcoming news for the lizard man, who had came out of the swamp after a long time. The lizard man immediately got down on its four limbs and followed the trail of blood. Churl. It did not forget to whet its appetite by sipping on the blood from time to time. Soon, the lizardman's body left the swamp and began to move on solid ground. The lizardman's instinct was to avoid any place that was not a swamp, but it did not bother the lizardman whose appetite thirsted for a goblin's blood. The lizardman continued to follow the trail of blood. The lizardman, who was bent on continuing, suddenly stopped by a wall that appeared unexpectedly. To be exact, it was a log cabin. A log cabin that appeared to be made from cutting down the trees and filling the gaps with mud. Moreover, instead of a roof, the log cabin was covered with a sheet of leather much like a tent. It was too bizarre for someone to approach it without hesitating. But such a thing wasn't important for the lizard man. It couldn't even see it well. Only thing that mattered to the lizard man, whose eyesight was poor much like a snake, was the fact that it could sense the heat of the goblin blood inside a hole within the log cabin. It was sure that an injured goblin went through that hole. The only thing left for him to do was to chew the injured goblin into small pieces with his sharp teeth, then putting it in his stomach, and spending a long time in the swamp until it was all digested. Kaya. The thought of spending a long period of time in the swamp while feeling full, prompted Lizard Man to squeeze himself through the hole. The hole was a bit narrow compared to the size of its body but as if its body had been oiled, the body of the Lizard Man slipped through it easily. Then a deep darkness greeted him. And the goblin that the Lizard Man was waiting for appeared. Goblins with only its bones remaining. But the Lizard Man was not aware of this development. It was impossible for it to detect the heat of goblin skeletons in the dark, whose bodies had only their bones remaining. That's how. 
P.U.K. How the Lizard Man Met Its Demise The news was conveyed to Kim Woo Jin, who was waiting outside the log cabin. Status Window Kim Woo Jin immediately opened his status window. It's certainly amazing in many ways. Such stats was not something a level 21 should have. Before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin only had around half of his current constitution when he was level 21. It is incomparable to the past. If the item set bonuses were included as well, the current Kim Woo Jin could not be stopped even by 10 LV21 Kim Woo Ji from the past. It was definitely possible for him to hunt the boss monster of this dungeon, the albino lizard. Kim Woo Jin could even hunt the albino lizard this very instant as long as he and his skeleton soldiers, which could now summon nine of, performed properly. However, Kim Woo Jin did not intend to do so. He wasn't planning on putting up a performance. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin did not pay attention to his status window he was not impressed by his ability, nor was he moved by how much stronger he was compared to the past. After investing the points he obtained into constitution, he immediately continued his work. Using the blood dripping from the wound on his arm, he made a spear tip using his blood weapon skill, and attached the tip onto a pole. P.U.K. Like that, he stuck the spear he just made into the ground. Fifty spears that were already stuck into the ground welcomed their new friend. After checking, Kim Woo Jin got up again. One spear for every lizard man catching another 49 will do. Kim Woo Jin was preparing to attack the albino lizard. Chapter 38 In reality, mutants were often weak they usually didn't live long and many would die in their natural habitats. But in a dungeon, things were different. Most monsters with mutations or variations in dungeons possessed either overwhelming power or a special ability. Sug. The albino lizard that came out of the vast wetlands then appeared on the ground was such a case first of all, compared to an average lizard man, its size was on a completely different scale while standing upright on both legs, its height reached 3 meters it was huge enough for even orcs to shrug their shoulders and walk away after seeing them, and its tail was nearly 2 meters in length. It meant that the albino lizard would become a 5 meter long monster when it lowered its posture and walked on four legs. Most importantly, its white skin and red eyes was proof it was a unique presence within the dark swamp. Such a presence also served as clear proof that the albino lizard was the king of this place. Churl. Walking in a bold and dignified manner was impossible without the confidence to deal with any predator that could threaten its life. Tiao Juliak. Tiao Juliak. That's why the albino lizard was not alarmed and a skeleton lizard man blocked its path with a blunt knife in its hand. Churl. Instead, it looked at the skeleton lizard man with eyes that questioned its purpose. On the other hand, skeleton lizard man executed its duty faithfully. It rushed at the albino lizard in hostility. Its resolve was quite strong. But as soon as the albino lizard stood up on its hind legs, the mood quickly changed. An unspeakable feeling of grandeur flowed from its three-meter-tall body. That was when the albino lizard quickly swung its body. Hyuwoom. Its heavy tail ruthlessly swept the floor. The albino lizard didn't have even a hint of doubt that this attack would destroy that insignificant skeleton. But the skeleton soldier paused just outside the range of its tail. The tail naturally swung through the air the albino lizard swung its body around once more and faced the skeleton soldier. At that moment, the skeleton soldier began to loiter in front of the albino lizard. It began to calculate how to fight against the albino lizard, who possessed a formidable attack power and range. But from the albino lizard's perspective, it seemed like the insignificant skeleton was looking down on him. Ka! Such impudence caused the lizard to focus all of its anger toward the skeleton soldier. Its desire to crush the skeleton soldier into powder was apparent all over its body. Now was the moment Kim Woo Jin decided to step in. Kim Woo Jin quickly approached the albino lizard from the behind. Then, with a kukri in his right hand, he swung down on the albino lizard's white leathery skin like an axe. Puwak. A rough sloppy sound of the albino lizard's back being cut open could be heard, as if chopping up a log with an axe, and revealing its inner flesh. P.U.K. Kim Woo Jin inserted a spear he was holding in his left hand into the wound. Tuck. 
Then Kim Woo Jin broke off the pole from the spear. That was it for now. Ka. By the time the albino lizard turned around after the surprise attack from behind, Kim Woo Jin was already running away. The albino lizard paused for a bit while analyzing on the situation. In its ear, the albino lizard could hear the sound of the skeleton soldier slowly approaching it Huwong. Albino lizard swung its tail at the skeleton soldier once again. However, the skeleton soldier stepped back and closely observed its movements once more. It looked like a beast wetting its appetite before hunting a delicious prey. Kaya. Albino lizard stared intensely at the skeleton soldier with killing intent, spewing out with anger. And Kim Woo Jin moved once more. Everything was the same as before. While the albino lizard was distracted by the skeleton soldier, Kim Woo Jin approached the albino lizard's back and wounded it with his kukri, then stabbed it with the spear, and broke off the pole of the spear again. Afterwards, Kim Woo Jin disappeared into the bushes and observed the albino lizard. What will it do now? This was the attack strategy that Kim Woo Jin prepared for the albino lizard. The albino lizard and the orc champion were, in general, similar types of monsters. They were both arrogant, aggressive, and had a keen fighting sense, but not very intelligent. But there was a very distinct difference between the orc champion and the albino lizard. Is it thinking about running away? Unlike the orc champion, the albino lizard knew how to run away when the situation wasn't looking good. And furthermore, this dungeon was filled with great hiding spots like the swamp that the albino lizard could retreat to. It was one of the main reasons why this dungeon became a hell that devoured countless talented players. Since there was nothing they could be done if the albino lizard escaped into the swamp after getting heavily injured. Setting its body on fire like when hunting a troll was also useless due to the presence of the swamps. For it would go into the swamp and extinguish it the moment its body caught on fire. Of course, there were skills to create an inextinguishable fire but it wasn't something that players under 30 levels could use. Anyway, when the fight became an unexpected battle of attrition, the plan's players had went out the window, and were eventually resulted in the deaths of those said players. Kim Woo Jin was prepared to engage in a battle of attrition against the albino lizard. It wouldn't matter much even if it ran away. The two spears that he pierced into its body were the groundwork for a battle of attrition. Albino lizard is under the effect of blood poisoning. From now on, the spear tips in its body will eat away its health until it is melted and decomposed. Even if it ran away, there was no reason for Kim Woo Jin to hurry. The reason he was using a regular skeleton soldier instead of a black bone skeleton soldier was also for the long term battle. Kim Woo Jin saw the albino lizard expressing anger at the skeleton soldier once again. I guess it's still thinking about fighting for now. With such a view, Kim Woo looked around at the spears that were placed all around him. There were bodies of lizard men that were ready to be sacrificed at any time to summon skeleton soldiers. Finally, he took out the last energy bar in his arm. I'll kill you even if I have to fight you all day. 78. That was the number of spears within the albino lizard's once smooth white back. Obviously, the albino lizard was not in a good condition. Besidai. The speed of its tongue was slow enough to be laughed at even by a turtle its red eyes, which was once shining with vitality, was as dull as a rotten frozen pollock. Nevertheless, the albino lizard stood upright on its two legs and kept up its guard as it looked around. It squeezed out its last remaining strength to show it wasn't weak. Blood poisoning has spread throughout the body of the albino lizard. Albino lizard's health is greatly reduced. But within the ear of the hunter who was after its life, the fact that the albino lizard was just putting up a futile struggle was repeatedly heard. In actuality, the outcome of the hunt was set in stone. It was impossible for the albino lizard to tell where the hunter was even if he appeared nonetheless, Kim Woo Jin did not reveal himself. He approached one of the lizard man corpses he had prepared and summoned a skeleton soldier by sacrificing it. The skeleton soldier immediately rushed toward the albino lizard. Ka. The albino lizard unwillingly closed its red eyes after realizing there was yet another nightmare it had to face. It was prepared to meet its end. Even at that moment, Kim Woo Jin did not show up in front of the albino lizard. If someone were to ask which of them was more cold-blooded, between Kim Woo Jin and the albino lizard, 
everyone would say that Kim Woo Jin was way more cold-blooded after witnessing such a scene. Time passed by in a such a manner. Albino Lizard has been eliminated, Achievement Albino Lizard Hunter has been achieved, a catalog will be given as a reward. A notification that finally confirmed the end of the Albino Lizard to Kim Woo Jin. You have leveled up, Emissary of the Underworld marvels at your challenge, Emissary of the Underworld sends some of his power, Rank of the Skill Blood Poison increases by one rank, Rank of the Skill Blood Weapon increases by one rank. At the end of the cruel stage, the spectator sent its congratulations and gifts to Kim Woo Jin however, there were no notifications that confirmed the end of the dungeon. It was because Kim Woo Jin had yet to secure the albino lizard's egg, which was the clear condition of the dungeon. Now it's time to move. Only then did Kim Woo Jin appear in front of the albino lizard for the first time. There was, of course, no sentiment. Kim Woo Jin flipped the albino lizard like a machine the first thing he did after that was skinning the albino lizard. The situation was different than when he had hunted the orc champion. There was no audience here and he had plenty of time. That meant he was free to loot everything he could get his hands onto. The albino lizard's leather is enough to make a set of LV-30 rare grade armor. This was the normal process in a dungeon clear. It was perfectly normal to take as much as possible from a dungeon it was just that Kim Woo Jin wasn't able to carry out such a common practice in previous dungeons due to various circumstances. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin's harvesting skills were excellent. For someone who had skinned a dragon that was almost 100 meters, an albino lizard that was 5 meters long was nothing. His only regret was that the albino lizard's most useful leather, which was located in its back, was in a terrible condition due to Kim Woo Jin's gruesome attacks. Afterwards, Kim Woo Jin immediately cut open the albino lizard's belly. Then a single egg appeared. You have found the albino lizard's egg. You have cleared the dungeon. Only then did he get a notification that confirmed the end of the dungeon. Finally, it is in my hands. The albino lizard's egg that appeared in such a manner was about the same size as an ostrich egg. The color was unique. The shell was white, but there were purple stripes of energy enveloping the shell, making it look both puerile and gruesome. While looking at it, Kim Woo Jin recalled memories of the past. Now I can see what the Messiah Guild was hiding. In 2025, the Messiah Guild secured the albino lizard's egg after considerable sacrifices but information about the egg was kept a secret. There was not even information confirming whether or not it was a legendary item or skill. People just speculated that it was a legendary item or skill because the Messiah Guild assessed its value to be enough to hide its information. Puck. In order to reveal such a secret, Kim Woo Jin cracked the top of the egg's shell open with his cookery. Pajig. But within the broken shell, a new shell appeared. Kim Woo Jin repeatedly struck the albino lizard's egg with his cookery again and again each time, one layer of the shell was peeled off one by one. Like an onion, the number of layers of shell he peeled were numerous. And each time a layer of the shell was broken, the violet energy surrounding the shell grew stronger. Soon after, the white colors disappeared from the shell, leaving only the violet coloration behind once Kim Woo Jin hit the shell again one last time the shell split into two and a skill page made up of obsidian finally appeared. Kim Woo Jin picked up the skill page. Apophis Power, Acquisition Requirement, Emissary of the Underworld Acquisition Level, must be higher than level 1 skill effect, gain immunity to all poisons. Apophis's Power. Damn it. It was a divinity only the Deadly Poison King possessed in Kim Woo Jin's memory. Deadly Poison King. Kim Woo Jin first met him in the year 2026 at Beijing. Kim Woo Jin, who headed for Beijing with a team to clear the sixth floor dungeon, faced the deadly poison king in front of the dungeon gate. And on the spot, Kim Woo Jin lost seven of his colleagues. After seeing his colleagues die without being able to leave a will due to the threat posed by the deadly poison king's poison, Kim Woo Jin ran away. Since then, the deadly poison king and Kim Woo Jin continued to have a hostile relationship. Even now, Kim Woo Jin was able to name all of his colleagues who lost their lives to the the deadly poison king he could even draw their faces if he were asked to do so but now, the skill that helped such a monster to exist was in the hands of Kim Woo Jin something which should have belonged to the Messiah Guild. The meaning behind such a development was simple. 
the Messiah Guild gave it to the Deadly Poison King. Or the Deadly Poison King stole it from the Messiah Guild. Those were the two possibilities. And the answer was obvious. Did the Messiah Guild create the Deadly Poison King? The chances of him stealing it from the Messiah Guild and not even Kim Woo Jin was aware of the existence of such skill page was similar to the probability of Kim Woo Jin returning to the past. In the end, it was proof that the Deadly Poison King was the work of the Messiah Guild. There are plenty of reasons to do so. It was well worth doing so. Deadly Poison King was a villain. He took whatever he needed and he destroyed everything he found annoying in the process moreover, the year 2026, when he was active, was a time when chaos erupted like wildfire. A year when countless cities were left in ruins by the monsters that came out of the dungeons and countries around the world began losing their ability to function no one wanted to antagonize a monster like the deadly poison king around a time when everyone was busy trying to save themselves. It was a period in need of righteous players who could bring judgment on the outbreak of evil players. The existence of the Deadly Poison King made the Messiah Guild shine even brighter. Naturally, the Messiah Guild played such a role. The Messiah Guild, who fought with monsters to save the world, now had a reason to punish players for the sake of the world. After that, the Messiah Guild asked for legendary items in exchange for punishing the Deadly Poison King and the world was forced to comply. Legendary items were collected in order to deal with the Deadly Poison King. They also recruited volunteers to destroy the Deadly Poison King. To be honest, there was no need to recruit anyone for help. It is because there was the strongest hunting dog in the Messiah Guild, someone who lost his comrades and was fuming with anger. In the end, after killing the Deadly Poison King, the Messiah Guild became the judicator of the world. Kim Woo Jin killed the Deadly Poison King. He succeeded in avenging his dead comrades. But now he realized that it was all a part of the Messiah Guild's ambitions. The noble sacrifice of those who were willing to die to save the world was actually a dog's death Kim Woo Jin, however, was now fuming with new anger over such a reason. You have learned the skill Apophis power, you have gained immunity to all toxins. Lee Se-Joon, I will be the one who's going to kill you. It only made him brood over in anger once again. Chapter, 39 There were two main reasons why players would buy dungeons from brokers. The first reason was that a player may get shot if they tried to enter a broker-owned dungeon without permission the second reason was that it was extremely important to clean up the evidence after the dungeon was cleared. Of course, what most dungeon brokers cared about was the first reason. There were plenty of brokers who laid landmines to protect their dungeons however, there were only few brokers who actually cared about cleaning up afterwards. However, Oh Sechan was different. He was especially diligent cleaning up afterwards. This was evident when looking at the scene of an abandoned field unfolded before Kim Woo Jin he came out of the gate after six days. Clean. The field looked like normal. There were no sign of man or monster to be seen. It was to the point that nobody would be able to prove that there used to be a dungeon gate here if Kim Woo Jin left with the shopping bag on the floor. Kim Woo Jin grabbed the last piece of evidence, which was his shopping bag. Inside were Kim Woo Jin's personal belongings, a radio, and 500 milliliters of bottled water. It's really reusable. The radio was the same one used by Kim Woo Jin at the hospital. Kim Woo Jin turned on the radio right away. Momentarily, he heard a voice. It was Oh Se Chan's voice. Kim Woo Jin answered the question with a calm voice. There were no issues. That was a lie, of course. He learned the truth that turned the noble sacrifice of his comrades into a dog's death naturally, he wouldn't feel good. However, Kim Woo Jin chose not to disclose such information and advertise it around with murderous intent. Did anything special happen while I was away? He continued the conversation in a calm voice. All of them were front page news. The cooperation of the Great One Guild who rose to fifth place in the world after being supported by the US government and the Frontier Guild was a huge incident the Golden Dragon that Dragon Hunter hunted was also a monster that Kim Woo Jin wanted to learn more about the Baomong that stabbed his heart and the Chinese government's decision to solely support the Kunlun Guild was also very impactful. Now the movements that were occurring underwater are beginning to surface. It was a sign that the movements that were hidden so far were now coming out into the open. 
However, the political world was not the only area where special events occurred. Other than stories about the guilds, did anything special happen to the economy? The economy was also full of significant incidents. In fact, the economy was the area undergoing with the biggest changes due to the advent of dungeons The advent of dungeons and monsters was like an inexplicable rise of risk to all companies in the world in the process, countless companies went bankrupt or were sold away. On the other hand, there were cases where companies used new resources from dungeons and monsters to quickly build up their power and influence. It's about the time when Pandora Technologies' stock price will go up like an explosion. Pandora Technologies was a prime example. A monster that used the vast amount of virtual money to eat up businesses. Pandora Technology was a company that earned immense amount of money by investing in virtual currency during the virtual currency boom. After acquiring companies that failed to adapt to the world that has turned into a game based on their technological prowess and infrastructure, the company started marking items based on resources from dungeons, and became one of the leading companies in the field. Of course, if it were just that, Kim Woo Jin never would have remembered the existence of Pandora technology. And then they sided with Johan Georges. The fact that at some point, they sided with the King of Undead. I think the president's name was Gorbachev. That was why the company's name and chairman were remembered by Kim Woo Jin. I don't care much about that part. Oh Se Chan responded to Kim Woo Jin's question with a transparent reaction. Like a broker, he started to talk about the commission. Before that, let me ask you a question. Can you trust me? The contract requires an additional 25% of the dungeon revenue. However, the income could be hidden as long as Kim Woo Jin wanted to hide it. From the broker's perspective, it was a pain in the neck. However, Oh Se-chan's reaction was surprisingly calm. Oh Se-chan added some unnecessary words at the end, but he didn't seem to doubt Kim Woo Jin's words at least. It's time for a shootout. At Oh Se-chan's response, Kim Woo Jin threw what he had prepared. Can I ask you another question? Oh Se-chan's voice began to grow louder. Why did you tell me to watch out for the Skull Guild? However, Oh Se-chan's voice grew silent when Kim Woo Jin asked his question. There's no reason why I wouldn't believe you. There was a pause in the answer, and Oh Se-chan slowly spoke. At the explanation that began, Kim Woo Jin answered. It's probably Japan. Kim Woo Jin calmly accepted Oh Se-chan's challenge. He knows my behavioral pattern to a certain extent. Oh Se-chan knew Kim Woo Jin was a very unique individual, and he indirectly told Kim Woo Jin that he had such information. How dangerous are they? At the remark, Kim Woo Jin held back his chuckle. Everyone is dangerous. Thank you for your advice. At Oh Se Chan's remark, Kim Woo Jin took out a 500 milliliters water bottle from the shopping back. For presentation. Then there was a sign indicating that it was for presentation only. He heard sound of Oh Se Chan clearing his throat. I'll call you back if you have one. Chig. Soon the radio went out. Momentarily, the radio turned on again. Kim Woo Jin kept his mouth shut while smiling at such a ridiculous instruction he put the radio back in the shopping bag and left with only his stuff. Then he took out his smartphone and turned it on. He saw a single text. A smile turned over Kim Woo Jin's lips when he checked the text. They are running at me on their own. Soon after, Kim Woo Jin called the number he received the text from. It took some time for the person to pick up. Kim Woo Jin made use of the intermission and yelled. Catalog. He opened up the catalog he earned from clearing the dungeon. Immediately, a catalog appeared in his hands. Rare. A catalog beamed with silver light as soon as he opened it. Kim Woo Jin's hand stopped at one page. Hello. I'm Kim Woo Jin what did you want with me? He talked to him while he checked the skill. Park Yong Wan was on the other end of the call. Park Yong Wan's mansion in Hanam Dong. The luxurious interior was filled with expensive objects that made the mansion seem even more ridiculously luxurious. In addition to works of art worth billions, there were also an unusual number of grand objects however, Kim Woo Jin who visited there, did not have eyes that could appreciate fine art and priceless objects. Instead, he slowly read the document he received. 
Soon after reading the document to the last page, Kim Woo Jin put down the document on the table and spoke. To summarize, you want me to go into this two-floor dungeon with the Skull Guild and kill the people they sent after me? Park Yong Wan nodded at Kim Woo Jin's words. To make it even shorter, we are just fishing. What do we get from that? You shouldn't try to catch a big fish from the beginning slowly throw some rice cake, take some time, and wait for big ones to bite moreover, you're not trying to make the Skull Guild a target of social criticism right? Hmm. It's about giving them a blow, isn't it? Kim Woo Jin did not answer. Instead, he looked at the report while looking very stern. What's that look for? It's because I'm not happy about having my first two-floor dungeon be so dangerous. Kim Woo Jin spoke while looking at the first page of the report once again. While looking at the report, Kim Woo Jin's expression grew more and more solemn. You have never fought against a lizard man before. Yes, never since I was born however, I know that they are extremely annoying to hunt furthermore, it's from a two-floor dungeon, isn't it? To be completely honest, I'm afraid to even enter a two-floor dungeon. I sense great fear in you. Although he said so, Park yong wans face was calm. Kim Woo Jin was right. Even if his talent and ability were extraordinary, one needed an unusual amount of resolve and determination to enter a two-floor dungeon without prior experience. In fact, didn't countless promising players fail to get over the wall that was the two-floor dungeons and perish? Asking me to put a monster I've never hunted before in the front while having players who wants to kill me behind is. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin wasn't just going in the dungeon to clear it. Park Yong Wan would not have used him as bait to lure the Skull Guild if he was insistent on entering the two-floor dungeon. In other words, Park Yong Wan had expected such a reaction from Kim Woo Jin. So, you're saying that if I plant you with the confidence to kill a lizard man, you would accept my proposal? Of course, he had prepared countermeasures against Kim Woo Jin's reaction. Possibly. Kim Woo Jin looked surprised. Park Yong Wan told Kim Woo Jin. If you name the items you need, I will provide it to you. When you said items I need. Any item that's in my storage, you can even take a full set if you need it. It was a mind-blowing offer. Storage. Park Yong Wan Storage, who was one of the best players in Korea, was like a treasure trove. Frankly, at this point, I've earned enough money already so instead of selling, I keep all of my items it'll give you anything you want from them a set of level 20 unique items will be prepared even the accessories will be included. He can get anything from there. An offer he could not object to. Now there wouldn't be any problem when clearing a mere two-floor dungeon, would there? Kim Woo Jin's expression changed after hearing the proposal. He also raised a question with a determined expression on his face. So what's the plan? Park Yong Wan smiled and said. It's similar to last time I'm going to spill the news that you're going into this dungeon instead, the only difference this time is that we're going to put you in with some bodyguards. What will be the number of bodyguards? Five people. Since it's a ten-man dungeon, it will be four to six including me what will our chance of winning be? They are going to put pros on their side as well. Pros? Yeah, the pros that hunt players namely the PK experts. With that statement, Park Yong Wan tossed a document like a boomerang to Kim Woo Jin. It contained the profiles of Kim Woo Jin's bodyguards. It was filled with people who had a respectable amount of experience and skills. However, Kim Woo Jin did not have to read the document carefully. I know them. All the faces in the profiles were those that Kim Woo Jin had seen at least once. It looks like the Skull Guild really wants to kill me. From none other than Park Yi Yun's memory, that is. Kim Woo Jin had to fight alone against everything in the dungeon. Good. It was not too difficult. Okay, I'll try. All right. Jag. Jag. Park Yong Wan lightly clapped. Then Kim Woo Jin asked. So, how much will I get paid? The question stopped Park Yong Wan's applause. Pay. Reward for being the bait and risking my life don't tell me you're not going to have me play as bait for nothing. Park Yong Wan looked at Kim Woo Jin for a moment with a blank expression on his face. It was the first time for Park Yong Wan to be asked for money in a such an open manner. What an interesting friend, really interesting. Then he said with a wry smile. 
Okay, I'll give you a billion one if you return alive from this job I will give it to you in cash on the spot as well. Kim Woo Jin bowed after getting up from his seat. I'll try my best to survive. Park Yong Wan had a wryer smile on his face than before. Then let's move on to the storage. With that blow, Park Yong Wan no longer smiled. Chapter 40 We are here. Park Yong Wan's item storage was located under his mansion. A nuclear bomb shelter previously built by a chabel was renovated into a warehouse by Park Yong Wan. Countless items were displayed in the warehouse. It's just a storage. There were no legendary rank items. He didn't expect it in the first place. The fact that the premises were sound was the clearest proof that there were no legendary items in the warehouse. I can probably only pick something I can wear. Kim Woo Jin was limited to choosing items that he could wear. Park Yong Wan was only giving Kim Woo Jin items so that he could survive in the dungeon he definitely wasn't intending to give him free items for to take away like snacks. I guess I'll just pick the most expensive ones I can find. Of course, Kim Woo Jin planned to use the items like snacks, so he chose the most expensive items he could equip. Weapon, armor, helmet, gloves, and boots he chose them carefully. It looks like you really like expensive stuff. At the sight of such a thing, Park Yong Wan spoke in a slightly prickly voice. Kim Woo Jin replied to the remark. They are expensive because they're good. I guess you have a point. Park Yong Wan, who replied back, was faintly frowning. TSK. From Park Yong Wan's perspective, this kind of situation was extremely unpleasant. I mean, wasn't it his money that Kim Woo Jin was spending? Nevertheless, there was one reason why he put up with it. In order to exploit the Skull Guild's weakness, there was no bait as effective as Kim Woo Jin. In order to make the Skull Guild give in, this much of an investment is only natural. Park Yong Wan, of course, did not intend to wage a war with the Skull Guild. Who's behind them? From the beginning, Park Yong Wan was not even sure who was sponsoring the Skull Guild on the contrary, that was also the reason why Park Yong Wan was investing in Kim Woo Jin currently, Park Yong Wan had a very close relationship with the powerful people in Korea. However, Park Yong Wan could not find who the sponsors of the Skull Guild were. They must backed by foreign powers. This meant it was likely that powers outside of Korea has invaded the country. In order to negotiate with them, he needed to establish a connection. Well, if I keep stabbing them, they'll eventually come see me with their heads down. Naturally, Park Yong Wan did not intend to negotiate on an equal footing. Park Yong Wan used Kim Woo Jin to provoke the Skull Guild, ultimately leading to the Skull Guild's surrender and their cooperation. In other words, the more difficult of a situation of the Skull Guild was put in, the better it was for Park Yong Wan. That was why he opened his storage to Kim Woo Jin. This is. And that was also why Kim Woo Jin was given a chance that he would never receive again in his lifetime. Kim Woo Jin's footsteps stopped at the corner where the accessories were collected. His eyes laid on an ugly necklace inlaid with a black stone that was the size of a newborn's fist. Kim Woo Jin grabbed the item in his hands. Item option window appeared right away. However, Kim Woo Jin did not put such options in his eyes. Is it a sealed item? The important thing for Kim Woo Jin was that the stone necklace may contain a sealed power of some kind. It was as stated. This rugged black stone contained the sealed power of some sort. Kim Woo Jin had no idea as to what sort it was. And it's even a unique rank sealed item. The most important fact was that the item was a unique grade sealed item this meant one would be able to obtain an item that was more valuable than a unique grade item. Since the lowest rank one could obtain was that of a unique rating, it mean that one could expect something higher than that as well. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin took the necklace. That one has a bad option. Looking at Kim Woo Jin's choice, Park Yong Wan gave a word of advice. Kim Woo Jin replied to the advice. It's because I don't have enough mana especially, the blood-sucking skill you gave me uses up way more mana than I expected. It was a flawless answer. Well, it's good if you like it. At least I saved some money. Most of all, from Park Yong Wan's perspective, he was glad that Kim Woo Jin chose the cheapest accessory. Like I thought, Park Yong Wan doesn't know it's sealed. 
Park Yongwan didn't know it was sealed. There was no way he could know. Not only were there no signs that it was a sealed item, one had to find a suitable method to remove the seal. Well, it's impossible to melt a unique ranked seal unless it's something like the fluids of a golden dragon. Something like the gastric juice of a golden dragon. It was after 2025 that Kim Woo Jin discovered the concept of sealed items. Are you done picking? Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't have much to complain about. Yes, thank you very much. He just had to smile and express his sincere gratitude. After the appearance of monsters, the businesses that collapsed the quickest was none other than golf courses. With the possibility of monsters appearing at any time, there was no fool who would leisurely go outside to play golf the further one was from the city, the worse the situation became. The golf course in Guangzhou, Jiangi province faced the same situation. A golf course whose membership cost was once over 100 million won and was filled with luxurious foreign cars whether it was on a weekend or a weekday, was now unmanaged and overgrown with weeds. Visitors came to the golf course once again. The parking lot was once again crowded with expensive foreign cars. If you paid attention to the surroundings, you would have noticed that this place became a stage for players then a car appeared among the group of expensive foreign cars. It was a light car with a dented bumper. The owner of the car was obviously Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin appeared, charged in, and ignored the expensive foreign cars that surrounded the area. But then Kim Woo Jin stopped in front of a car he remembered. Of course, it wasn't because the car he stopped next to was more expensive or rare than the cars he saw before. Lexus. Five cars, which were parked in a row, were Lexus brands. Even if all five of them were combined, it couldn't be compared to the Bugatti that Kim Woo Jin almost smacked with his car door. There was some other reason for him to stop. Really amazing patriots have showed up. He only stopped due to the fact that he had a very good idea of who the owners of those vehicles were. His steps quickened right away. As soon as he entered the clubhouse, the guests who already arrived were gathered in a few places. A new member. Then one person raised his voice and approached Kim Woo Jin Soon. He was a friendly looking man in his early forties. Nice to meet you, I am Yung Hoon Young, let's finish the dungeon well. Kim Woo Jin smiled and shook his hand as Yung Hoon Young extended his hand. Yes, I look forward to working with you. It was not unusual. It was rather common for guild members to greet each other ahead of the dungeon. Such was the case preparing for a two-floor dungeon was vastly different from preparing for a one-floor dungeon. Those with groundless confidence were already filtered out at this point the people who survived such a filtering process were the only ones eligible to attack a two-floor dungeon. Those who were targeting a two-floor dungeon had to have some common sense. Just running around with one's pride wouldn't help extend one's life. Of course, the atmosphere was calm. There were no instances of open hostility or aggression. Rather, players gathered together to chat and familiarize themselves with one another. Have we met before? No, I think this is our first time meeting each other. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no I hear that often. For the first time, everyone started to familiarize themselves with one another and learn each other's faces. Kim Woo Jin held back while observing their interactions. They must be dying inside trying to act like they don't know each other. Kim Woo Jin barely managed to hold back his laughter in front of such a ridiculous performance. There was no one here that they did not know. Everyone was in leagues with one another, and what they were after was simple. Eliminating Kim Woo Jin. The Skull Guild drew their best cards for dealing with him. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew the reason why. That's the price of touching a pupil of the God Archer. Park Yi Yun in her death, a student of the God Archer, had definitely shaken not only the Skull Guild but also the Yamato Federation. Furthermore, the Skull Guild must have deduced that there's a strong individual behind Kim Woo Jin. It was not just an issue of just killing Kim Woo Jin. The reason they want to take me into a dungeon is so that they can torture me and get information. It was more important for the Skull Guild to find out the details through Kim Woo Jin's mouth that was why this stage was set up. This was the reason why the Skull Guild was willing to show their cards in order to hunt Kim Woo Jin. When this is over, it will practically be a war against the Skull Guild then I guess I should try to make this as heated as possible. 
Which way is the restroom? At that moment, Kim Woo Jin asked Young Hoon Young where the restroom was. That way. Thank you. As soon as he heard the directions, Kim Woo Jin left his seat and headed for the restroom. Although the water was already cut off, it was better to urinate in there than on the street. Behind him was Young Hoon Young, he was following him. Let's go together. Kim Woo Jin nodded and the two of them went into the restroom together. However, neither of them took care of their business. Kim Woo Jin, right? Yes, you're my escort, aren't you? We should be called assassins rather than escorts. Young Hoon Young's eyes were indescribably sharp. We will speak in detail once we are in the dungeon, so let's keep it brief your role is being the bait move by yourself then we'll take care of everything and watch over you if something really urgent happens, blow this whistle. With those words, Young Hoon Young handed Kim Woo Jin a whistle that seemed to be made of some creature's bones. Unless they are stupid, it is likely that the attack will take place on the second floor or so on the first floor, let's just focus on clearing the dungeon you should avoid contacting with us as much as possible if they find out that we're on the same team, they'll confront us directly in an all-out fight. Kim Woo Jin was handed a whistle he tapped on his glabella while tightly holding on to the whistle. Young Hoon Young spoke with a stiff expression on his face. Are you worried? Um can I give up on this operation now? Kim Woo Jin spoke pitifully. In surprise, Young Hoon Young asked. You want to give up? Young Hoon Young asked loudly, reflexively moving his hands to block his mouth who. Instead of answering him, Kim Woo Jin let out a long sigh. It was not difficult to guess what that meant. It would be weird for someone to be calm when asked to play the role of a bait in their first two-floor dungeon with those who wanted to kill them. I'm screwed if this happens, huh? On the contrary, it was a headache for Young Hoon Young. He had to get Kim Woo Jin into the dungeon gate no matter what. Damn, I already spent all the money I got from the Skull Guild on a building. Otherwise, he would have to cough up the money he had already spent. You said your name was Kim Woo Jin? Yes. It's not as difficult as you think it's a two-floor dungeon but it's only a D rank dungeon honestly, although it's a two-floor dungeon, it's laughable compared to the A dungeon you have cleared so there's no reason to be scared. That's why Young Hoon Young persuaded Kim Woo Jin. Most importantly, what about the next time if you give up now? We have to take the first step at some point anyway. But. Are there any other problems? I can't die like this at least not until I pay back my debts to those who have helped me. Debt. The word flashed in Young Hoon Young's mind. I see that you are a very responsible friend. Young Hoon Young continued. Then let's do this he'll pay off your debts for you. What? Kim Woo Jin acted surprised. Young Hoon Young spoke while smiling at him. Instead, you will owe me a debt. Then. You will be going in the dungeon for my sake of course I will not force you so how much is the debt? Kim Woo Jin carefully stretched out three fingers. Thirty million one. No, it's three hundred million one. Three hundred million. It was an amount that was bigger than he had expected. It was an extravagant amount. Gathering that much amount together right now is. A normal person wouldn't be able to collect such an amount of money right away, but for a player whose level was over 20, it was not too difficult to do if necessary. It's not an unaffordable amount compared to the pay we've received for this no, if we handle his items as stolen goods there won't be a loss. That's why Young Hoon Young was able to make a decision right away. Good, I can help out if it's that much. The, thank you. Now then, is your problem gone? After being asked again, Kim Woo Jin replied while looking impressed. Excuse me, it looks like 300 million won was deposited into Kim Woo Jin's private account. Oh Seichan frowned after hearing his subordinate. 300 million won. Damn, we shouldn't have bought him that beef short rib soup next time he asks you to buy him a meal, buy him only udon just the basic one as well. Not even a single yubu or fish cakes. Also tell him to chug cold water if he's thirsty. Um but. But what? But the deposit was from someone else's account. Oh Seichan tilted his head. Someone else? It's from Young Hoon Young's credit account. Young Hoon Young. The PK specialist. Are you sure? 
Yes, it's the account we made for him. What the heck is Yong Hoon Young doing putting money from his credit account into Kim Woo Jin's private account? Oh Se Chan asked as if he had something in mind. Yong Hoon Young recently did money laundering through us, right? Where was that money coming from? I was only from the Skull Guild it's been laundered multiple times, so I'm not sure about the details. So you're saying that the person who got the money from the Skull Guild to kill Kim Woo Jin spent that money for Kim Woo Jin's sake, right? Only then did his subordinate seem to have realized something. Kim Woo Jin is in a trap. There was no specific context, but it was clear that he was not Kim Woo Jin's ally. Kim Woo Jin is in danger. Oh Se Chan frowned after hearing his subordinate's warning. What are you talking about? Isn't it dangerous? Kim Woo Jin is trapped right now, isn't he? How many people like Young Hoon Young will it take to clear the two floor A rank dungeon that Kim Woo Jin cleared in a week? I don't know around 30 I suppose. The side who's in danger is Young Hoon Young's side. Oh Se Chan closed his eyes. Kim Woo Jin has been attacked twice by the Skull Guild and has blocked both attempts. He figured out the relationship between Kim Woo Jin and the Skull Guild to a certain extent. In such a situation, if the third attack is completely blocked as well, then it will be like declaring war against the Skull Guild. He knew what would happen if Kim Woo Jin was able to stop the Skull Guild's plans once again and now, Oh Se Chan could also see what kind of signal Kim Woo Jin was sending him. The enemy of my enemy can be a friend. Oh Se Chan smiled. After checking Kim Woo Jin's location, send someone there send a bottle of champagne. Chapter 41 in order to move to the next floor, eliminate the goblin that's hiding from a group of orcs. As soon as they entered the dungeon, a new notification rang in the player's ears simultaneously. A light silence permeated the area. The clear condition is revealed. It was Yong Hoon Young who broke the silence. Wearing armor made of black leather and carrying a huge shield on his back like a backpack, he spoke to the crowd. Since the condition for this floor is not difficult, Let's move separately on the first floor but if you find the goblin, don't fight it by yourselves and be sure to alert everyone. There was no response. It was because the plan was already agreed upon in advance. Young Hoon Young continued speaking to his party members without waiting for an answer alright, let's get to work. Woa. Yeap. Following Young Hoon Young, his colleagues threw themselves through the thick forest with eager cries. Without saying a word, the other party left toward the direction was opposite to where Young Hoon Young's party decided to explore. The only one left standing now was Kim Woo Jin. He was sitting down alone, unmoving. He was recalling the conversation he had with Young Hoon Young in the bathroom. The battle on the second floor. Young Hoon Young told him his plan in the bathroom. We will behave normally on the first floor and get rid of the Skull Guild members who are hiding their identities as soon as we arrive on the second floor. The reason for his plan was not explained. However, that wasn't unusual does a bodyguard ever explain why they are guarding a person in a certain way? Moreover, there was no need to explain why. Tight on time. Kim Woo Jin knew the reason. Even if it's a D rank dungeon, two floors are still two floors. Park Yi Yun's memory enabled him to find out how many times he had already made deals with the Skull Guild he knew Hoon Young was a major customer of the Skull Guild and how to gauge their levels of competence. At the same time, he could also figure out how skilled the assassins from the Skull Guild were. They can definitely clear this dungeon as nine people without me. Unless Park Yi Yun remembered their abilities incorrectly, it was no problem for the nine of them to clear this dungeon. Especially person named Matsumoto, his skill is not normal. One of the assassins sent by the Skull Guild named Matsumoto was very skilled. A holy guardian of light. For he was carrying the same halo that made Lee Sejun a hero. Skilled people like them had no problems clearing a mere two-floor dungeon. But it would be troublesome for them if I ran around. However, if Kim Woo Jin acted as a variable, the situation would certainly change. For example, if Kim Woo Jin ran away on the first floor. Or if there were problems while hunting Kim Woo Jin, resulting in more than two casualties. In that case, even if the floor was cleared, they would have to face greater danger on the next floor. Above all, 
Kim Woo Jin had the experience of surviving an assassination sent by the Skull Guild. They most likely don't have something like the Anubis eyes, so they would probably want to keep me alive if possible. From the Skull Guild side, Kim Woo Jin could not be underestimated even if they wanted to look down on him and most importantly, they needed him alive in order to extract information from him. After taking such restrictions into account, it made it much harder for them to hunt Kim Woo Jin. In such a situation, the best strategy for them is to clear the first floor quietly then move on to the second floor, avoiding as many issues as possible on the first floor. In other words, on the first floor, they will act as hunters who are watching over their game. They won't care if their prey eats grass, drinks water, or whatever. They'll just watch over me on the first floor no matter what I do. Of course, they wouldn't mind Kim Woo Jin accumulating bodies of orcs that will become Kim Woo Jin's blood, weapons, and soldiers. Kim Woo Jin got up from his seat when he arrived at this conclusion. Young Hoon Young, who was a level 29 player, was undeniably a strong expert. With Undying Fighter as his halo, his fighting skills, judgment skills, and even his leadership skills were outstanding. And he was also an excellent planner. So how is he? He's constantly hunting the orcs he's very skilled a meticulous guy, good at kiting after poisoning them with his blood poisoning and setting up traps. Anything unusual? Not really he's just hunting the only thing special about him is how he's treating the corpses separately well, it's a sensible thing to do. But keep an eye on him just in case get a clear picture of his behavioral patterns and abilities that's how we can catch him without complications. That was why Young Hoon Young was not escorting Kim Woo Jin but hunting him. Aren't you too worried? Yeah, honestly, isn't it as easy as lying down and eating rice cake? The assassins and the guards are on the same side realistically, it's already game over for him although we can't do anything about getting a mission failure on our record. As mentioned earlier, Young Hoon Young's skills were real. He was a real skilled expert who wouldn't be affected by a little scratch on his record. Easy work and we earn 1 billion won per person it feels like we're making money too easily. From his perspective, there was no reason for him to refuse a huge amount of money in return for his failure. As his subordinate said earlier, this was a game that was virtually over when his group betrayed Kim Woo Jin. The Skull Guild is always generous with their money. I don't understand where all of their money comes from. Furthermore, it was not the first time that he made a deal with the Skull Guild. However, he never figured it out that's how professional they were. There was no problem with letting go of their focus by just a little bit. Don't release your concentration. However, Young Hoon Young tightened the rope around his concentration. The Skull Guild isn't stupid, they wouldn't have spent so much money on an easy job I'm sure that guy named Kim Woo Jin has something up his sleeves. That was why Young Hoon Young was a real expert. So first of all, we need to figure out all we can about him. Young Hoon Young spoke while looking at the male subordinate who was right next to him. I always emphasize it but don't hunt when the prey is on high alert go for the kill when it's unaware and has its guard down. With these instructions, Young Hoon Young slowly looked around. Isn't it time to switch? A woman wearing a lightweight leather armor and a bird feather cap nodded. Yeah it is it's about time to switch but he's not here yet. Everyone temporarily became silent due to the fact that the observer they sent to monitor Kim Woo Jin did not come back. There was tension in the air. It was evident how everyone here knew the importance of punctuality during surveillance. Shall I go? The female player raised her hand. Seeing that, Young Hoon Young said. No, we'll all move together. Kururu. Inside the thick forest, an orc was moving around. Kua. The orc's movements became very rough and alert. It was evident that the orc noticed the scent of blood, a very freshly spilled blood. Simultaneously, there were signs that the orc was hungrier than ever before. K.R. A piece of food that was constantly emitting the scent of blood appeared in front of its eyes. A player was shaking on the floor, bleeding. Kua. Orc started running towards the food that was literally prepared on a table for them to eat. It was at that moment. A player appeared out of nowhere hit the orc's head with the huge hammer in his hands. Puk. Along with the sound of something hard breaking, the orc fell to the ground. It was an attack that was sufficient to kill a normal person. 
Cook. However, the fallen orc moved its body while trying to get up rather than dying. Unfortunately, its skull was broken and the damage had reached its brain, severely damaging its senses, in particular its sense of balance. Quack. Once again, the orc fell while trying to rise from the ground. The player with the hammer swung at the orc's head once more. The sound of its skull breaking repeatedly rang. At that moment, Yung Hoon Young, who was holding a hammer, shouted. Check the condition of Jean Wook. An ironclad man immediately approached the fallen player. The man had a wooden bottle on his left and a white light shined on his right hand, which meant he had activated his healing skill. It signified that he was a healer and that was why he wore an ironclad armor. Wasn't it common sense to give the physically weak healer stronger defensive equipment when mobility was not important? 2. Meanwhile, Yung Hoon Young called the remaining two subordinates. Two quickly showed up. Yung Hoon Young shouted at the two as he struck his hammer at the orc's head once again look over the perimeter. Hearing this order, two subordinates went to observe the area while holding their weapons. Yung Hoon Young also stopped paying attention the orc and began to surveil the area. What could it be? At this moment, Yung Hoon Young's eyes were sharp enough to remind one of a beast. It was understandable. Having his search party attacked was same as having his eyes gouged. Furthermore, aiming for one's eyes required competence. It was evidence that the enemy had both intelligence and ability. Who? Then who exactly was the enemy? Here, Yung Hoon Young did not jump to conclusions on who the enemy was. But then Yung Hoon Young heard a voice behind him. Ah! It was a scream from the healer who ran to heal his fallen ally. When Yung Hoon Young turned his head in response to the sound, he could see two skeletal orcs with terrifying bone swords in their hands they stabbed Lee Il Sung along with Kim Jin Wook, whose neck had been cut off. Trap! It was a situation where their enemies used their colleague to lay a trap for the healer. Enemies! Skeletons! Then two subordinates who were surveilling the area announced the arrival of the enemy. Yung Hoon Young turned around once again. Then he saw a group of skeletons already surrounding him. There were seven skeletons with completely black bones and every one of them held a sword made of bones coated with crimson blood in their hands. At such a scene, Yung Hoon Young shouted. Gru. Group up. He tried to shout that order. Pu Wat. If Kim Woo Jin, who was hiding in the ground had not approached him from the behind and cut his neck with the dagger in his hand, he could surely have shouted so. Hyul Hup. Yung Hoon Young let out a sound while trying to gasp for air. You are under the effect of blood poisoning. Yung Hoon Young's ears received a frightening notification. However, Yung Hoon Young had no time to consider that notification. P.U.K. It was because Kim Woo Jin brutally thrusted his sword into Yung Hoon Young's neck. Tuck. Yung Hoon Young collapsed just like that. The healer Lee Il Sung, who was attacked by the two skeleton soldiers, then collapsed due to the accumulation of wounds that could no longer be treated. One of the skeleton soldiers turned its body toward another prey as if it were no longer interested in Lee Il Sung. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Hyung. The remaining two people were appalled and gazed at the scene. Uh, what do we do? Wah, what's happening? When their eyes turned toward Kim Woo Jin, their hearts were filled with dread. The first thing that players who joined the Messiah Guild learned was a word of warning. Don't trust anyone except our guild members from now on especially inside a dungeon. An advice not to trust anyone other than their fellow Messiah Guild players was due to Messiah Guild's position in the world as the enemy of most players. Even in the Messiah Guild, Kim Woo Jin only handled the most difficult tasks. He encountered many people who approached him with good intentions but later changed their faces and showed hostility once inside the dungeon. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin was an expert on dealing with such people. It was important to stab him in the back before being betrayed. That's why he dealt with Yung Hoon Young's party first. Since they had to forcefully be kind and loosen their vigilance in order to strike Kim Woo Jin in the back and now it was over. The last survivor of Yung Hoon Young's party was killed by a skeleton soldier's sword. Skeleton soldier has achieved 3 kills all of its stats increase by 9% due to the effect of ruler of the battlefield. 
Their end was clearly notified through Kim Wu Jin's ears. As soon as Kim Wu Jin heard the notification, he approached the dead and met their eyes. Eyes of Anubis are opening. The black eyes began to read their memories. He started searching for what they were intending to do to him, what kind of relationship they had with the Skull Guild, and if they had connections to the Messiah Guild. He figured out how they handled the money they saved from committing illegal acts. That was all. Kim Wu Jin was unemotional during this process. We have to catch him alive. It looks like they are going to torture him coup. He's going to die after a hard time what an unlucky guy. After being betrayed and then killed, he won't be able to close his eyes properly anyway, I was thinking about buying a watch when the money arrives, what kind of watch should I buy? Even at the moment, when Kim Woo Jin saw how they talked about betraying him as if he were a snack one might have with a drink, he didn't show any particular emotions. It was the same even when his eyes met with the dead Yung Hoon Young. Kim Woo Jin didn't pay attention to the plans they had for him. So you're saying that if we betray the person we're supposed to guard for Park Yong Wan, you're going to give us 5 billion won? That's right fee billion won for just stabbing a player in the back is the amount too low. No, not at all I will take this kind of job with pleasure thank you as always Mr. Kim Jae Hoon. One thing in particular attracted Kim Woo Jin's attention. Kim Jae Hoon. The name of a colleague he recognized from the Messiah Guild appeared. I finally found a tale that I could catch. Kim Woo Jin raised his head. Now, Kim Woo Jin, whose eyes returned to normal, headed somewhere. Momentarily, where Kim Woo Jin stopped walking, a goblin was hanging from a tree like a corpse. Kim Woo Jin threw one of his throwing knives at the goblin. The flying knife cut off the lifeline of the hanging goblin. You have eliminated the hidden goblin. The first floor dungeon has been cleared you will now move on to to the second floor. Kim Woo Jin had no intention of stopping his hunt here. Chapter, 42 Most lizard men are unarmed. They do not wear armor, helmets, nor weapons. This reason for this was twofold. For lizard men who live in swamps or water, armor or weapons were obstacles in their daily lives. Even an unarmed lizard man was strong enough to kill an orc equipped with armor and weapons. Of course, it wasn't because they couldn't wear them. If they wanted to wear armor, they could wear it if they wanted to wield a sword, they could wield that as well. Naturally, the combat ability of an armed lizard man couldn't be compared to an unarmed one. Ka. That's how a lizard warrior became the boss monster of this two-floor dungeon. Arg. At this moment, that lizard warrior was in battle with none other than the players sent from the Skull Guild to kill Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin was watching from a distance while pulling on a bow, unsurprised. As expected. Rather, the scene was as Kim Woo Jin expected to see. It was also something he intended. They have no choice but to take out Plan B when they get sent to the second floor unexpectedly. Kim Woo Jin swiftly completed the condition for clearing the first floor dungeon after taking care of Yung Hoon Young's team. He killed the hidden goblin he had captured and unexpectedly switched the stage to the second floor there were two benefits that came from this. They won't know how skilled I am until they find me. One of them was that he could hide his skills. If he remained on the first floor, there was a high probability that his abilities would have been revealed, even if he tried his best to hide them. And I'm sure they will imagine the worst case scenario. The second benefit was that the Skull Guild would try to imagine the worst possible situation in their minds. Since it's not unusual for a traitor to betray again. For example, a situation where Yong Hoon Young did not betray Kim Woo Jin but betrayed them instead. In other words, from the Skull Guild standpoint, they couldn't help but think about the possibility of Yong Hoon Young and Kim Woo Jin being on the same side. A lack of information, a sudden change in circumstances, and the possibility of the worst case scenario due to such disadvantageous factors, their top priority could only be to leave this place alive. And to do that, they had to kill the lizard warrior. Three people. Three people from their Skull Guild were now fighting with the lizard warrior. The other ones probably in the back. And that was why Kim Woo Jin quickly turned around. SSS. Something sharp flew toward Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin lowered his posture in order to dodge it and immediately fired his bow toward that direction. Ting. 
The arrow that flowing toward Kim Woo Jin created a sound as if it were blocked by a hard object. That was it. There were no notifications indicating that the target had been affected by his blood poisoning. It was not difficult to ascertain why it didn't work. Since the man in front of him, who looked like he was in his early thirties, used the thick gloves he wore to protect himself from the arrow. Naoki Matsumoto, the assassin who flew from Japan to make sure Kim Woo Jin dies. Such a man appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin. In other words, the Skull Guild also predicted how Kim Woo Jin would behave. They knew that Kim Woo Jin would try to go for them once he knew they switched to Plan B and tried to kill the Lizard Warrior. They tried to capture both of them at the same time. I've got you now, you fucking rat. Their targets were in front of them. Of course, Naoki Matsumoto did not hesitate to rush toward Kim Woo Jin. Sieg. Naoki Matsumoto, who was running toward him, swung his sword while still in the distance. Slashing from below to above, a crescent-shaped sword energy was released from a Japanese sword. It's Crescent Sword. Crescent Sword. At the sudden attack created by the skill only available to a holy guardian of light, Kim Woo Jin threw his body sideways. Suguk. Then a thick tree behind Kim Woo Jin was cut in half instead of him. But there was no time for him to be surprised. After narrowing the distance while Kim Woo Jin wasted his time trying to avoid the crescent sword skill, Naoki Matsumoto swung downward with his sword. Even if Kim Woo Jin dodged backwards, he would use his crescent sword once again. Damage would be unavoidable. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin ran toward Naoki Matsumoto. Before the sword hit his body, he tackled him. Kwang. Kim Woo Jin and Naoki Matsumoto collided and began rolling on the ground. Then they pushed each other away as if they had a previous agreement, and the two faced each other again after separating. Suruk. Kim Woo Jin pulled out the scimitar hanging on his back. The confrontation resumed. They gazed at each other. Damn you fucking Korean bastard. Then Naoki Matsumoto vented his anger at Kim Woo Jin in Japanese without hesitation. I will dig out your eyes while you're still alive, cut off your ears, and suit the souls of my dead comrades then after getting you to spill everything you know, it'll cut off your tongue. It was a terrifying statement. However, it wasn't meant to be a provocation for Kim Woo Jin. For it wouldn't be much of a provocation since he didn't think Kim Woo Jin knew Japanese. It was more accurate to say that he was merely venting out the anger in his chest. However, Kim Woo Jin knew Japanese. Not only Japanese but Kim Woo Jin was also proficient in languages of various countries when it came to listening. Of course, Kim Woo Jin did not want to talk to the other person just because he knew Japanese he's a bastard with a shitty personality unlike in Park Yi yuns memories did he act like a gentleman in front of Park Yi yun Instead, he hunted. Such a man was more vulnerable to provocation. The usual procedure to distract the prey was to provoke them. He didn't need words. Kim Woo Jin held his middle left finger firmly toward Naoki Matsumoto and beckoned him to come. The provocation made Matsumoto Naoki's face under the helmet extremely ugly. Seeing his provocation, he immediately rushed toward Kim Woo Jin. I will kill you. Inside Naoki Matsumoto's head, who was charging towards Kim Woo Jin, defeat did not exist. The Holy Guardian of Light, a halo that was better than all other halos as someone who carried such a halo, he couldn't imagine himself losing a one-on-one -on -one battle against Kim Woo Jin. The fact that people who have the Holy Guardian of Light as their halo are overflowing with pride is the same even if they are low level or high level. Kim Woo Jin did not back down either. He also charged forward. The distance between the two narrowed in an instant and their swords clashed for a moment. The scimitar and the Japanese sword clanked, reverberating with sounds of vibrating steel. Poo hoo. Kim Woo Jin vomited what was in his mouth. What he vomited was none other than his blood. Kim Woo Jin's blood, which was released by biting off flesh in his mouth, soaked Naoki Matsumoto's face. Cook. Matsumoto Naoki groaned. But he did not close his eyes. With bloodshot eyes flared up due to Kim Woo Jin's blood, he put more strength in his sword to break the deadlock with Kim Woo Jin. He intended to beat Kim Woo Jin by force. Kigijik. 
the swords in their hands screeched due to the contest of power. But the power struggle didn't last long. Immediately one side began to lose ground. Th, this is. Naoki Matsumoto, he was pushed back by Kim Woojin. This was why Kim Woojin invested all of his stats into constitution so far. No matter how much a rat tries, it can't catch a lion. At that moment, the confrontation was virtually over. Ku. Cool. The only thing Naoki Matsumoto could do now was to struggle. No, he was not even allowed to struggle. First I have to escape the deadlock. As soon as Naoki Matsumoto stepped back to escape from the deadlock with Kim Woojin, Kim Woojin noticed his movements and matched his direction. When Naoki Matsumoto moved his legs to take a step backward, Kim Woojin kicked his stomach. Kung. Matsumoto Naoki fell right back. And he swung down his scimitar between Naoki Matsumoto's eyes. Pajik. With a gruesome sound, Naoki Matsumoto's body went limp. Kim Woojin received a round of applause from his halo. However, Kim Woojin never basked in glory or appreciated a fight. Since it was just hunting in the first place. No predator will feel appreciation for the fate of its prey after a hard hunt. Such was the case for Kim Woojin. Like all hunting dogs, the only thing he had in mind was to get what he wanted from his prey. At that moment, Kim Woojin's eyes turned black. In a moment, he read the memories of Naoki Matsumoto. There were many familiar faces. Within his memories, Naoki Matsumoto had many faces that Kim Woojin recognized. Most of them were memorable faces because they belonged to his prey. Kim Woojin's memory was not good enough to remember someone that wasn't his prey. It was also evidence telling Kim Woojin, who was pulling their tails, that he arrived at the body. In other words, he no longer had to search for their tails and did not need to get a sense of them. Now I have to change my methodology. He changed his hunting method. Kim Woojin, who read the necessary memories, took his eyes off of Naoki Matsumoto. Kim Woojin's eyes immediately turned to Naoki Matsumoto's sword. As soon as he grabbed the sword, he could see the attributes of the sword. Iron Turtle As a boss monster that only appeared on three-floor dungeons and above, Items made from melting its shell became a unique item higher than level 20 without exception. Its existence literally was a mass of unique items. Its value was enormous and the biggest advantage was not the quality items themselves but the fact the attributes of the items stayed the same even if the shapes were changed. A favorite item among brokers who handled stolen goods therefore, the market price for such items were much higher. However, what intrigued Kim Woo Jeans was not the price of the item. What came to mind was a player's nickname Master Swordsman that was mentioned in Naoki Matsumoto's memory. Master Swordsman. Master Swordsman. The strongest player born in Japan, who had the same halo, Holy Guardian of Light, as Messiah Lee Seijun. At this time, he was an internationally recognized player that was shaking the world. An unforgettable face. He was also the person that made hunting dog Kim Woojin famous. If it is Master Swordsman's weapon, it's more than enough to scratch the nerves of the Yamato Federation. After a few moments, Kim Woojin took the rest of the items. He stowed away the ring, necklace, helmet, and armor he put all of them in his inventory. The only thing he did not store away was his sword. After walking for a while, he heard a sound. Kaya. Damn it. And when he arrived at the source of the sound, players, and the lizard warrior, who were fighting against each other until a short while ago, were now facing against a black-boned orc skeleton and four lizardman skeletons. P.U.K. And one other skeleton soldier was shooting the two fallen players to ensure their deaths. You, you are. At that moment, the person who discovered Kim Woojin's presence shouted in amazement. Ha, how? He couldn't help but be startled. Ma, Mr. Matsumoto was beaten. No, it can't be. To think that a mere person like him defeated Mr. Matsumoto who is an heir to Master Swordsman. It was because it was Naoki Matsumoto who went to capture Kim Woojin, an expert capable of killing anyone below level 30. Instead of answering him, Kim Woojin drew his bow. Like how an archery athlete would aim his bow at a target, he aimed his bow at the player. 
The player's face, which had been tarnished with terror due to Kim Woo Jin's appearance, turned completely white. No, no. As soon as the cry ended, Kim Woo Jin let go of the bowstring and the arrow flew straight toward the player's face. As expected, the player lifted his arm to block the attack. The problem was what came afterwards. Tiao Zhuliak. Tiao Zhuliak. The skeleton soldiers, who saw an opening, threw themselves at him without hesitation. They thrust their swords into a crevice in the broken armor that was created by the repeated skirmishes from earlier. Blood spilled. Faced with such a situation, the lizard warrior also let out a terrified shriek. And Kim Woo Jin aimed his bow at the lizard warrior. A man appeared in the midst of an abandoned golf courses. The dungeon, which had made the golf course even more desolate after it was abandoned, was cleared. It's cleared. Dungeon clear. And it was also time for people to return to their homes from this pitiful place. Woa. Everyone cheered. An employee of the dungeon management team was waiting, and approached the player with a welcoming smile. Thank you, Mr. Kim Woo Jin please tell me if you need anything. The employee of the management team treated the player very respectfully. A player who cleared a one-floor dungeon and a player who cleared a two-floor dungeon were as far apart from each other as amateur and professional baseball players, this was why he was being so respectful. Kim Woo Jin told the courteous employee. Let me tell you something important first everyone except me are dead. What? Everyone got wiped out except me I'll tell you more about it after I take a break. Wah, what do you mean? Hearing this unexpected news, the management team employee made a surprised expression. And as soon as he began to understand the situation, his face turned white. Oh my god. Only one out of ten players survived nine players who had the skill to clear two floor dungeons died such a result overshadowed the dungeon clear itself. The dungeon management team employee turned deathly pale. Putting the management team behind him, Kim Woo Jin immediately moved to the clubhouse Kim Woo Jin's steps were more deliberate than usual. Before long, Kim Woo Jin arrived at the clubhouse and headed to the VIP room, which had been prepared for the players after clearing the dungeon. Unlike the abandoned ruins, food, drinks and even champagne were prepared Kim Woo Jin stood in front of the safe and opened the one on the far right. Kim Woo Jin took out a flip phone from the safe filled with Kim Woo Jin's personal belongings. Kim Woo Jin took out the phone and dialed a number. Pike. Pike. Unlike a smartphone, the sound of a button being pressed reverberated around the quiet interior of the room. Chio Biak Chia Biak. Kim Woo Jin's footsteps followed the sound, filling the interior. Kim Woo Jin's footsteps stopped in front of a TV set he thought was there as a decoration. Kim Woo Jin looked at the TV. It's me. At that moment, the call started. Yes, it's all been taken care of yes, that's right. Kim Woo Jin continued speaking as he lightly leaned against the TV. It was as expected of Mr. Park Yong when the Yamato Federation seemed to be borrowing the Skull Guild's name since the assassins who were after me had an item belonging to Master Swordsman we couldn't find anything else however, if we keep knocking on the Skull Guild, I'm sure that we will get results. Kim Woo Jin remembered something from the Skull Guild as he was speaking. Matsumoto Kim Woo Jin, who recalled his memory, had a sardonic smile. Park Yong Wan, I will make it so that you'll become the person who saved the country from Japan. Kim Woo Jin, he finally set up a big match. A big match where neither side can finish without one of them dying. Of course, Kim Woo Jin did not forget. I think we can do it if Mr. J. E. Hoon tries hard one more time. While the big match is going on, he will make his prey come out to the hunting field. Chapter, 43 Messiah Guild has always focused on one purpose. That they will finish the game and save the world. The nobility in their purpose was undeniable, at least for humans. Naturally, cheering and applause poured out toward the Messiah Guild who wanted to achieve such a goal. But the Messiah Guild is not a kind guild. However, it wasn't enough for them to just be a role model and to get parents to teach their child to be like them. Since if it really was a nice guild, they wouldn't have had someone like me. The existence of a hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, was enough evidence. He could be the more brutal, violent, and cruel than any other player if it meant achieving his goal. 
So Messiah Guild accepted him and saw him as the most reliable ally, a person that they could learn from. That was the real Messiah Guild. People who would do anything to achieve the noble purposes they sought. Nevertheless, there should be more people like me in there the only thing is that I don't know who it is. Of course, there were many people in the Messiah Guild like Kim Woo Jin. Munch. There were plenty of hunting dogs that charged straight in when an order was given without looking back, without asking questions. Kim Woo Jin brought Park Yong Wan before these people. The person who played the role of a bridge in helping Park Yong Wan sell his country to Japan was Hayashi Kansuk the time when Hayashi Kansuk ruled the Asian black market with the help of Johann George in other words, there was no contact between Park Yong Wan and the Yamato Federation at this point in time where Hayashi Kansuk was not well known as evidence, Park Yong Wan is investing in me to be used as bait. In a situation where Park Yong Wan is believed to be an enemy. How will the Messiah Guild react in front of such an enemy? The answer was obvious. Park Yong Wan is their target from now on. They will never let go of someone who's perceived as an enemy. But no matter how massive the Messiah Guild is, I think it will be hard to catch Park Yong Wan, of course, that won't be able to remove Park Yong Wan easily even if they go beyond my expectations. Unlike Kim Woo Jin, Park Yong Wan was not a fish that could be caught whenever they wanted to. Everything would still remain the same even if a lot of time passes. Park Yong Wan had enough skills to fend off other players. Since they kept failing until I caught him. Before Kim Woo Jin stepped up to catch him, they failed every time it proved that Park Yong Wan was not an easy person to catch. Above all, Park Yong Wan was a big enough player who could even sell his country for his own interests. He couldn't be beaten easily by just anyone. Furthermore, if the Messiah Guild moves forward in this situation, it reveals that he is already in contact with the Skull Guild. Whatever happens would be a good opportunity for Kim Woo Jin to shake the Messiah Guild. Let's wait and see. Even if it takes a little time, waves will traverse and eventually crash. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had to prepare for the situation. He had to acquire enough strength to withstand the storm. I need to start interacting Oh Se Chan seriously. Kim Woo Jin was going to try and narrow the gap between him and Oh Se Chan. That intent was the same for Oh Se Chan. Ha! Huh. When Kim Woo Jin got in his car, he saw a present from Oh Se Chan. A bottle of champagne and a flip phone. When he dialed the number saved on the flip phone, the first thing that Oh Se Chan brought up was the champagne he sent to Kim Woo Jin as a gift. Kim Woo Jin smiled and held back a chuckle. He wasn't holding back his laughter because Oh Se Chan's praise for his champagne gift. Thank you for responding to my sudden call this time. It was because of the previous call Kim Woo Jin had with Oh Se Chan. The person who Kim Woo Jin called in front of the bug in order to wave Park Yong Wan was none other than Oh Se Chan. To be exact, the flip phone he used before was in fact given to Kim Woo Jin for communication by Oh Se Chan. For Kim Woo Jin, it was an obvious choice. Since nothing was better than using the flip phone that Oh Se Chan gave him to avoid being traced. Of course, Oh Se Chan immediately understood Kim Woo Jin's intentions. I'd like to get a loan, I have some items I need to buy. Kim Woo Jin immediately gave away the main purpose for calling him. Oh Se Chan also took it seriously. Surprisingly, Oh Se Chan started to consider loaning. Didn't I prove my skills? That was a valid statement. Since the process of clearing a dungeon was far more important than the result. Above all, Kim Woo Jin's performance was only in a two-floor dungeons. Of course, his clearing process was unrivaled. However, in a world where there are players who are clearing the dungeon that have five or six floors, it wasn't anything impressive. He does have a point. Kim Woo Jin acknowledged it. He was late in becoming a player, even though was more talented than they were. Such excuses were useless. What mattered in a race was how far ahead one was. Nonetheless, if he wanted to be treated the way he wanted, he had to show an overwhelming difference that would make Oh Se Chan think that he could change the state of the game. But I can't show him what I can do for nothing. Kim Woo Jin, however, had no intention of showing his true ability without any benefits for himself. No, until now, Kim Woo Jin has never shown his true ability to anyone. 
for he understood how important it was to conceal one's ability. And Oh Se Chan understood that as well. If I show you what I can do, what will you offer me in exchange? So Kim Woo Jin suggested a give and take situation. And Oh Se Chan accepted his offer. Oh Se Chan was overflowing with confidence. Anything. I need the gastric juice of a golden dragon. Golden dragon. Upon hearing the name of such a monster, Oh Se Chan did not even show a hint of hesitation. It was very unexpected. Is he saying that he has a connection with the dragon hunter? The fact that it was so easy for him to get something from the golden dragon that the dragon hunter had hunted recently was proof that Oh Se Chan's connections were not ordinary. No wonder the Messiah Guild killed him. A person that they absolutely had to kill if they couldn't make him their ally. And to assassinate someone like Oh Se Chan, the Messiah Guild must have more power than I expected. On the other hand, he was appalled by the hidden power of the Messiah Guild that was hidden away from him and the world. All right. Anyway, that was the end of the deal. However, Oh Se Chan did not stop talking. Of course. Kim Woo Jin replied while hiding his nervousness. Oh Se Chan said to him. The day after his return from the dungeon, Kim Woo Jin immediately faced Park Yong Wan. Meeting him, Kim Woo Jin told him everything he had experienced in the dungeon. So you're saying they fought each other and died? Of course, it wasn't the truth. There was an amazing expert on the other side if it wasn't for the blood-sucking and blood-poisoning skills, it would have been our side that was completely wiped out. There was only one plausible scenario. In Park yong wans position, it was a case where he couldn't find the truth through the means available to him Park yong wan also knew this fact. Yong hoon Young's party was the real thing. To get rid of strong targets, the Skull Guild must have sent skilled experts of their own in the end, they have failed to catch the bait once again. Therefore, instead of wondering what had happened, Park yong wan thought of what he should do next. The agony did not last long. The Skull Guild's gonna be quiet for a while I should take a break while they are calm I have to go to a dungeon soon anyway the next time to fish should be in a month or so at the earliest. Kim Woo Jin was a great bait and Park yong wan only had to take good care of him and throw him over and over again when the time was right. Good work. Following this comment, Park yong wan budged his finger towards the secretary behind him. The deposit is complete. You hear that? It's the promised reward. Kim Woo Jin bowed his head. Thank you. Okay, then get out. Like that the conversation was over. Park Yong Wan made a gesture telling Kim Woo Jin to get out of his office and he left the office without speaking. After leaving his office he didn't look back. The dice was already thrown, and the fights from now on were out of Kim Woo Jin's league. Of course, the Skull Guild will target Park Yong Wan, not Kim Woo Jin, and launch aggressive attacks on him from this point on. The number of people who will want to bite off Park Yong Wan's arms and legs will only increase. Of course, Park Yong Wan will be bitten without even knowing why. I can't wait to see Park Yong Wan's face the next time we meet. When Kim Woo Jin is called again after such a storm, he won't be able to see any peace in Park Yong Wan's expression. I bet he will greet Kim Woo Jin with a face that's about to tear the Skull Guild into pieces. Then, a text message arrived on Kim Woo Jin's smartphone. It was a text message from Oh Se Chan Kim Woo Jin, who checked the text, left the guild headquarters immediately. Phoenix Guild wake up. Wake up, wake up. Kim Woo Jin went to Samsung Station, leaving behind the cries of protesters who were always criticizing the Phoenix Guild. Kim Woo Jin's neared the area where the safes were kept at the station. But Kim Woo Jin ignored it and headed straight to the bathroom. Then he went into the second compartment in the bathroom. Chol Keek. Kim Woo Jin closed the door after going in and pushed his hand into the bathroom case. And when Kim Woo Jin took out his hand from the case, there was a finely folded piece of paper between Kim Woo Jin's index finger and his thumb. Kim Woo Jin opened the piece of paper in his hand. Kim Woo Jin's eyes narrowed. Difficulty is B- dash, but if the maximum number of people that can enter is 30. Although the difficulty rating of the dungeon mattered a lot, the difficulty of a dungeon also heavily depended on the maximum number of people that could enter. Compared to the albino lizard dungeon that Kim Woo Jin cleared before, 
it was a dungeon that was more than twice as dangerous when attacking alone. That's about right. Obviously, Kim Woo Jin wasn't scared. Furthermore, Kim Woo Jin was not alone in this dungeon. An examiner would come as well to observe his skills. The examiner's name was also written below the note. Li Jin Ah. Kim Woo Jin's face hardened as soon as he saw the name. Don't tell me it's the king of undead. Li Jin Ah. Chapter, 44. In June 2023, the Phoenix Guild made a public announcement. Park Yong Wan of the Phoenix Guild will challenge a six-floor dungeon. Park Yong Wan, I will come back bringing hope. Park Yong Wan challenged a six-floor dungeon and the Phoenix Guild immediately grabbed the spotlight it was an incredible moment. Will Phoenix Guild gain the 19th team of 6th tier players? Phoenix Guild is playing with their lives. Currently, the number of guilds that completed a six-floor dungeon worldwide hasn't exceeded 20 although it was the second largest guild in Korea, it would not be easy for the Firebird Guild to accomplish this task with their current power and resources, a six-floor dungeon would be very dangerous. A six-floor dungeon. Isn't that super dangerous? Isn't that suicide? Even the Messiah Guild recently failed to complete one. As shown by the Messiah Guild who failed the challenge, failure to complete a six-floor dungeon meant only one thing death. Unsurprisingly, Park Yongwon used this opportunity to increase his fame by broadcasting his challenge. I support Park Yongwon's noble effort. Park Yongwon meets the president. By taking up this task, Park Yongwon is already a hero. The media was completely focused on the Phoenix Guild and Park Yongwon, some were even comparing him to Lee Sejun. How dare they compare this baby Park Yongwon to Lee Sejun? No way. Though you have to admit that he is still challenging a six-floor dungeon. There was no way to deny that Park Yongwon was becoming a hero in the public's eyes as it was a good thing for mankind if he managed to defeat the dungeon. This was a chance for Kim Woo Jin. He'll come back alive. Woo Jin knew that Park Yongwon would beat the six-floor dungeon. Probably will take a month. He even knew how long it would take. I can't wait to see the face he makes when he returns. This was the best time to avoid Park Yongwon's notice, but it wasn't the only plan Kim Woo Jin had. Hey, Woo Jin. Are you ready? Oh Se Chan called out to him Kim Woo Jin set the test date to be the same day that Park Yongwon entered the sixth floor dungeon. When the dungeons appeared, the places where the land prices dropped the quickest, were the places with many hills sometimes it took a long while for the dungeon gates to be discovered after they appeared and the monsters who managed to escape had many places to hide, making them difficult to hunt therefore these places were not good places to live. This was why a hospital was built at the foot of M. Kameyang, located in Anrim Dong, Chengju in an operating room in the hospital, Kim Woo Jin stood, checking his equipment with a sharp glint in his eyes he cleaned his knives, checked his armor and tested the strength of his bow. A sense of dissatisfaction flashed through him. I need to make a workshop. The reason for his dissatisfaction was simple Kim Woo Jin was proficient in many weapons, so that he would know what to use to best hunt his prey now, he felt that he was currently limited by what he currently had. His ability to properly utilize the blood weapon skill is due to his ability to make weapons by hand if an ordinary person had gotten their hands on the skill they would have made lumps or bricks instead of weapons. I didn't even realize. In the past, the Messiah Guild had built a personal workshop for him of course, the Phoenix Guild had a facility for those who wanted to modify their weapons or order custom ones. In the first place, it was usually difficult to use the items obtained from dungeons and most of them had to be modified to suit the player Kim Woo Jin in particular, found it especially hard to find weapons that fit his hand for weapons, even one centimeter was a huge difference. However Woo Jin didn't intend to use that workshop if he made weapons there, that would expose his skills and the guild might become suspicious the Phoenix Guild would find it hard to believe. I need money. His current funds weren't enough to set up a personal workshop as the price wouldn't be cheap. If I get another loan after this, I'll set up a workshop. In addition to that, there were many things he had to do that needed money. I also need funds for auctions. As he was lost in his thoughts, Wu Jin heard footsteps approaching him he stopped inspecting his equipment and looked up, but he didn't put up his guard. Finally here. It was because he already knew who was coming. Li Jin Ah. 
As Kim Woo Jin recalled the name, a beautiful woman appeared in front of him even in the special forces equipment, her beauty was evident her short hair and great figure, made her a beauty that would grab the attention of men no matter where she went. The beautiful woman looked at Kim Woo Jin and said. Li Jin Ah has arrived. Ah, really? Don't stand on ceremony. A man appeared behind the woman with a height of 190 centimeters, forearms the size of a woman's waist, a full beard and eerie eyes that seemed to pierce straight to the soul the aura of the man immediately dispersed the imposing presence of the woman. Li Jina, but don't feel pressured, just call me brother. He was Li Jina. Immortal Li Jina. In Wu Jin's memories that was how Li Jina was referred to, literally a player who couldn't die and it wasn't an analogy. You must have already obtained River Styx's blessing. Blessing of River Styx, a legendary skill that could only be obtained by those with the halo of the undying fighter. The ability to not die even if your throat was slit or your heart removed, almost like true immortality. In fact, Li Jina was initially given the nickname Zombie, and it was only due to Kim Wu Jin that his nickname changed to the incredible name of Immortal. I failed twice back then. After being targeted by the hunting dog Kim Wu Jin, Li Jina managed to survive twice, giving him the nickname Immortal. In other words, he was the enemy of the Messiah Guild. I failed. It was evidence of his ability when none other than Kim Wu Jin who hunted him and still failed to kill him twice and there wasn't a third time. After that, I was betrayed and killed by Johann George in the 8th floor dungeon. He'd started the dungeon but was betrayed by his team and killed. And now he got to meet him again, in a completely different situation than in the past it would be a lie to say he wasn't curious as to how things would turn out this time. Li Jina Wu Jin hummed the name this caused Li Jina to be a bit uncomfortable. Hey, the fuck. Kim Wu Jin realized what he'd done and apologized. Sorry. After he apologized, he continued. You asked me to call you big brother. Not mister. It was a blatant provocation Li Jina's face was fierce, with no sign of backing down or apologizing he shrugged his shoulders then pointed his finger to Wu Jin and said. I wanna see if you're so brave in the dungeon. Of course, Kim Wu Jin ignored him, instead he turned to one of Oh Se Chan's staff who came together with him. Can you contact Oh Se Chan? The man nodded and immediately took out a radio and handed it to Kim Wu Jin. The same radio again? It was the radio that he had used last time. How many times do you intend to use the same radio? Li Jin Ah also seemed to be very familiar with the radio. Kim Wu Jin turned it on. Does this thing even work? Oh Se Chan's voice was heard from the radio. It works. You need to use this radio a bit longer but let's change to the main subject what's the problem? It's about the judge who will be screening my test. Why? You want a beautiful woman. This way is natural if a man and a woman go together in a dungeon will you still be focused on hunting? It was specifically set this way so that you can concentrate. No, it's not that. Then? What happens if the judge you sent dies during the dungeon run? Wu Jin turned and made eye contact with Li Jina who narrowed his eyes. Are you going to hunt monsters or players? I think both options are viable. As he listened to the conversation, Li Jina's expression subtly sank and he said. If you say go on your knees and apologize right now and beg to serve me for the rest of your life, I'll let you live. Did you hear that? Oh Se Chan. Just tell me if there is any penalty for the judge dying or not. I won't deduct any points for it. Okay. The conversation was over, Wu Jin passed the radio back to the worker but Li Jina quickly grabbed it from him and spoke into the radio. I heard the stories about a psycho and thought it was just rumors. I didn't expect them to be real he'll take care of it if you don't have a problem with that. He does sound like a psycho huh more importantly, I told you to eat moderately at the rest area. So. I just ate some cheap udon, what's the problem? You ate five bowls. What can I do if one bowl isn't enough to fill my stomach? I have to eat ten zero zero calories a day. Then buy cooking oil and drink it. Nine zero zero calories per liter. I'm turning the radio off. 
Li Jina's expression sinks again as the connection is lost he once again caught Kim Woo Jin's eyes and his face became fierce. You shouldn't do anything stupid I can't say for other places, but in a dungeon, I never spare someone who dares to threaten me. However his warning was completely ignored by Kim Woo Jin. His fighting ability is pretty good, it's good to use him like skeleton soldiers since he won't die, even if his limbs are cut off. In Kim Woo Jin's mind, Li Jina was already being treated like one of his skeleton soldiers. For any errors and issues contact me through Discord. Chapter 45 After Oh Se Chan turned off his radio he handed it to a worker beside him who looked at him and said. Is this really okay? If Kim Woo Jin really kills Jina. Oh Se Chan looked at his subordinate with a cold expression on his face. If he does, then Wu Jin will become our enemy what I want is a player capable of ending the game plus Jin Ah is not so easily killed. Isn't it bad to rush so much though? If Park Yong Wan comes back from the dungeon alive, there will be a war. Oh Se Chan stopped talking as he contemplated deeply. If the information is correct, then the master swordsman will make a move soon. The snowball that Kim Wu Jin created steadily rolled down the mountain and became larger. In fact, the war between the Phoenix Guild and the Skull Guild already showed signs of bursting out. This situation could no longer be considered a snowball, it had developed to become an avalanche. No matter how amazing Kim Woo Jin is, he will always be limited by his level and halo. The avalanche wasn't the ideal situation, but it was still good. Because this is what makes the game interesting. After all, to survive in this world, you need more than just your skills and that's what Oh Se Chan was trying to show Kim Woo Jin but now he was wondering if it was worth it to invest in Kim Woo Jin. Where's the Golden Dragon Gastric Juices? It just arrived in Busan and it's currently on its way to Seoul. It was then that a subordinate pulled out a phone marked with black tape the black tape was an indicator that it could only be used in emergency situations when Oh Se Chan saw it, his expression froze. Yes. The subordinate immediately handed the phone over to Oh Se Chan. What? You found a two floor A rank dungeon. Kill eleven kobolds to advance to the next floor. As soon as they entered the dungeon, a notification with the advancement conditions appeared before them. Eleven kobolds, you're going to have to work hard to catch all of them. Li Ji Na mumbled under his breath. Let's see. As he mumbled, Li Ji Na pulled a chocolate bar from his inventory. Even if you catch 100 a day, that will still take 11 days, so it would be better to conserve on food, otherwise you'll have to scavenge remember this advice. Of course, it wasn't really advice. Munch. Munch. At least someone giving serious advice wouldn't do so while eating a chocolate bar bite by bite. Of course Kim Woo Jin didn't care about any of that, he didn't even bat an eyelid as he saw the scene beside him he had prepared for the hunt even before he came in as he knew that the targets would be kobolds this time. Mountainous terrain huh? Wu Jin inspected his surroundings and looked for any tracks. With such a large target, that means that there should be a large number of kobolds kobolds usually lived in hordes that respected and protected their territory, so they rarely invaded each other I smell a bit of blood, maybe there was just a hunt. He ran a simulation in his head. Two days should be enough. Wu Jin turned to look at Li Jina and they made eye contact as Li Jina said. Oh, if you look at me like that you will scare me I have a weak heart after all. As he said that, Li Jina shook his head, helplessly. Maybe if you kneel on the ground and bow three times, I will offer my services and help you. At this moment, Kim Wu Jin ran another simulation in his head. Well he has the blessing of river sticks after all, it should be fine if I'm a little rough. After he had that thought, Kim Wu Jin started planning his hunt. His first prey was an unlucky kobold scout who was walking alone. Sniff. Sniff. Keck. While the attention of the kobold had been grabbed by the scent drifting from a cloth on the floor, Kim Wu Jin's arm snaked around its neck. The kobold was quickly suffocated. This. Li Jina who was watching from a distance appeared and began clapping. It was a bit weird when you were laying on the floor and sneaking around like a lizard, but your skills are pretty good. He then lifted three fingers. I give you three points. Of course, it was a bad review. What? 
do you think you deserved 10 out of 10? In the first place, this wasn't a test that required something like a score above all, Wu Jin had yet to show any of his true skills in the first place. Summon Skeleton Kim Wu Jin immediately summoned a skeleton using the cobalt corpse as the sacrifice the skin and flesh on the body melted and the bones slowly began to wake up. Fwoosh! Suddenly two flames began to burn in the eye sockets of the skeleton. Oh! Li Jina couldn't help but be amazed at the sight he witnessed. Black bones has been activated. The bones of the summoned skeleton soldier were slowly dyed black. Li Jina made another sound of surprise as he fearlessly approached the skeleton to inspect it, touching it here and there. Cute. I'll give you five points because of how cute this thing is. At this moment, the skeleton turned its head and bit down on Li Jina's hand. Dak. Li Jina tried to pull his hand away from its mouth, the sound making Kim Wu Jin turn his head to them. Hey, that's dirty. Why would you put such a dirty thing in your mouth? The skeleton soldier let go of Li Jina's hand and turned to look at Kim Wu Jin. Coming to stand in front of it, Kim Wu Jin handed a sword from his inventory to the skeleton it was the Japanese sword once owned by Matsumoto. The skeleton soldier looked at the sword and Li Jina couldn't help but laugh at the scene. Now I understand why you can complete the dungeon clear alone there's nothing that you can't do if you have such a cute guy. Li Jina, who was interested in the skeleton soldier, started clapping. Now shall we see how this cute kid fights. Kim Wu Jin once again ignored him once again it wasn't necessary to answer since he summoned it to show it off in the first place. I'll be very happy to show you. Chapter, 46 Kim Wu Jin's method of hunting was quite a sight to witness for those who never saw it before watching the skeleton soldiers in itself was a novelty. Hey that was a good fight what are these guys called? Skeletons. Combat situations are usually very complicated, even players who could be considered to be good could not guarantee that they could win. These skeletons are so cute, he gets 30 points you should put in more effort as the master. Li Jina was enjoying the view as he watched the skeleton soldier fight. Ha! Huh. Li Jina's expression changed as the effect of ruler of the battlefield overlapped with the black bones effect. Skeleton soldier has achieved 10 kills all stats increased by 30% due to the effect of ruler of the battlefield. Ha! Huh, they fight so well. The skeleton soldier kept hunting the kobolds in an unstoppable manner and Li Jina gradually grew quieter as he watched the scene. Skeleton soldier has achieved 15 kills all stats increased by 45% due to the effect of ruler of the battlefield. They fight really well. Gradually, as the dominant effects of ruler of the battlefield were unveiled before his eyes, Li Jina found it impossible to make his evaluations funny. It's just like Seichan said this guy is abnormal. The more he evaluated Kim Wu Jin, the more Li Jina found it hard to suppress a shiver from going down his spine. No, this isn't normal, even if there are only five of these guys. You didn't need to be a genius to realize the implications of Kim Wu Jin's skeleton soldiers increasing one by one and in front of his very eyes, Li Jina watched Kim Wu Jin's army gradually increase. You have summoned a skeleton. As their numbers increased, the skeleton soldiers also became empowered as they killed more they were now capable of going against normal kobold warriors, the scouts were no longer capable of pinning them down. Soon the number of skeleton soldiers under Wu Jin's control reached 9 Li Jina found himself unable to evaluate them any longer. Seichan's bottle of champagne was worth it. Li Jina found that he had to admit that Kim Wu Jin's ability to challenge dungeons was unrivaled among the current players. Great, seems like I don't need to test him more. Wu Jin looked at him and knew he'd shown enough to prove himself turning to Li Jina, he asked for confirmation. Is this not enough to get a passing grade? No, I'll go out and tell Seichan about your skill. Li Jina nodded slightly as he replied to the question. You're well worth the investment of course, if you show a little more sincerity, it'll put in an extra word for you. As he said this, Li Jina made a show of rubbing his index and thumb fingers together. Well done. Kim Wu Jin simply said a few words. Eh. Well done. As Li Jina tried to ponder the meaning behind those words, the skeleton soldiers launched an attack. Boom! 
the skeleton soldiers, who were buffed with the stacked effects of black bones and ruler of the battlefield, suddenly showed hostility toward Li Jina, surrounding him. Hey, the skeleton kids don't look so cute all of a sudden. If you beg me, and give me your loyalty for the rest of your life, I will help you, isn't that what you said? I should kowtow and call you big brother, no. As he heard Kim Woo Jin's words, Li Jin Ahs face looked as if someone had stomped on his grave. Huh, why would you remember the things from back then? That was a joke, a joke. With these words Li Jin Ah stepped toward Kim Woo Jin with his hands cupped together. Brother, if I offended you, I'm sorry. He bowed deeply toward Kim Woo Jin, his arms outstretched as if begging for forgiveness it was a clear apology. Suddenly Li Jin Ah launched his body toward Kim Woo Jin at a considerable speed the force behind his leap was considerable. The distance between them was short initially, the distance between them was 3 meters, but as he was pretending to apologize, Li Jin Ah had walked about 1 meter toward Kim Woo Jin so the distance between them was less than 2 meters, a distance that could be achieved with a single step. As he closed the short distance, Li Jin Ah's fist shot toward Kim Woo Jin's face it was an attack that could not be expected. I'll send him flying away with this punch. Li Jin Ah didn't intend to kill Kim Woo Jin with his punch at all if he managed to do it in one blow then it's fine but what if he didn't? The skeleton soldiers would attack him before he had a chance to do anything so it was better to attack first and then run away. This plan was evidence of Li Jin Ah's considerable experience and ability when it came to combat. His choice was the correct one. Even if the opponent was Kim Woo Jin, this was the best course of action. Shu. Ha. Huh. Kim Wu Jin avoided the fist that was about to hit him and grabbed it, spinning and using it to slam Li Jin Ah to the ground. Bang! Li Jin Ah's body hit the ground heavily, but he wasn't damaged by it as he dispersed the impact of the slam. Kook! Of course he was damaged a bit, but not enough to make him lose focus. Kim Wu Jin took advantage of the moment he gained with the slam, aimed his sword and pointed it toward Li Jin Ah's eyes. If you're gonna torture me, are you gonna start with this one stab? Kim Woo Jin hadn't tried to kill him yet. Of course, even if you stab my eyes you won't hear whatever it is you want, my mouth is very hard to open. Why don't you just surrender? Surrender, the word put a smile on Li Jin Ah's face. It's better to die than surrender. The smile on Li Jin Ah's face was very grim. Of course, you're free to try it for every truth you manage to get out of me, they'll give you 100 points so what will it be? Will you pull my fingernails? Cut off my fingers. Li Jin Ah easily made conversation as though he wasn't in a perilous location but this was as Kim Woo Jin expected. A guy whose head would still talk after it was cut off wouldn't be afraid of some torture. Physical torture would never work on those who had gained the blessing of the river sticks but Wu Jin intended to threaten him in another way. Okay, I'll strip you first. Ha, huh, that's smart, 10 points. Then, I'm thinking about hanging you from a tree. Oh that's creative it'll give you 20 points. After that I'll leave you for a day. You have some experience with torture. 10 more points. And then I'll eat in front of you. What ash, what? A medium well done steak, sprinkled in rock salt with some boiled potatoes and broccoli. The dash, that's. Of course, you can't have any you want eat anything tomorrow, or the day after that, or the day after that. Li Jina interrupted him. What dash, wait brother no, father. Father, this ugly son was wrong I lost. Surrender. I surrender. In response Kim Wu Jin took away his sword and stood up. Ha. Huh. Thank you father. I will be filial to you till you can't see. At the same time, Li Jin Ah grabbed a handful of dirt. You lost, you bastard. Throwing the dirt towards Kim Wu Jin's eyes, he intended to launch a sneak attack in that moment. Puk. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin, who he was trying to blind, grabbed onto Li Jin Ah. Quack. Li Jin Ah screamed loudly as Wu Jin said to him. When you use a technique, you must ensure you don't perform in front of a master. Tuck. Tuck. Kim Woo Jin calmly brushed the dirt off his hand meanwhile Li Jin Ah was coughing, sneezing and spitting as he tried to get the dirt out of his mouth and nose, his closed eyes shedding tears. Damn, 
I met a real psycho this time Achu. I just had to meet a psycho cough. Achu. Wu Jin looked at him. You have ten minutes to prepare. What? Li Jin Ah looked at him, not sure what he meant by that. You finished verifying my skills, now it's my turn to verify your skills. What the fuck? Attract the kobolds by rubbing their blood on your body then take up the role of tank and bait the skeleton soldiers will kill the kobolds. When he heard this, Li Jin Ah was full of complaints. So you want me to be your lackey and act as bait? The skeleton soldiers that were surrounding him each took a step forward and pointed their weapons at him, tightening the circle. Kim Wu Jin who stood outside the circle looked down at Li Jina and asked. So you won't do it? As Wu Jin said those words, his eyes became bloodthirsty and his aura became murderous only then did Jina truly understand. This guy is really crazy, isn't he? He had actually been caught by such a crazy monster so he quickly replied. No, no. I love being the tank the tank must be big and strong after all. For any errors and issues contact me through Discord. Chapter, 47 Kurung Kurung A large group of kobolds galloped toward a location while screaming at the top of their lungs. Hey, you bastards! An even louder cry sounded from a huge bear-like figure that appeared in front of them of course, as one could imagine, the group of kobolds charged toward that bear-like figure and a huge brawl occurred the man punched and swung the kobolds that clung to him with his bare hands. Crack! In the man's hands, the kobolds were crushed and squeezed as though they were made of clay, while the teeth, claws and spears off the kobolds dug into the man's armor and flesh. It was not long before the battlefield was filled with blood and entrails. Boom! Finally, the skeleton soldiers that were lying nearby sprung up and charged at the kobolds they stabbed and slashed at every kobold who was still moving. P.U.K. A sword tore through the skin of a kobold and caused a deep wound. Kang. The kobold's scream drowned out all other sounds on the battlefield but the other kobolds could not spare any attention to it. Come here you bastards. The combination of the bear of a man and the group skeletons completely took away Kim Wu Jin's need to join the fight. For the skeleton soldiers the battle was a breeze as the kobolds could do nothing to defend against them it was like they had laid themselves down on the chopping block to be slaughtered. As Li Jin Ah held the attention of the group of kobolds, the skeleton soldiers picked them off one by one soon, the number of slaughtered kobolds exceeded fifteen and the battle was gradually approaching its end. Kim Wu Jin watched from the sidelines as the massacre progressed in front of him, as this could no longer be considered a fight. He's not too bad. It truly wasn't bad, but Kim Wu Jin's eyes were sharp, not missing a single detail. At least he's talented. Honestly, Kim Wu Jin wasn't very satisfied with Li Jin AHS performance. It's not as good as I remembered. It was because the immortal, Li Jin Ah had survived being targeted by Kim Wu Jin twice, that had been recognized by Kim Wu Jin it was because of this recognition the comparison with his future self and his current start was so disappointing to Kim Wu Jin. In the future, Li Jin Ah was very strong, he knew how to use the immortal body granted to him by the legendary skill blessed by the river Styx, better than anyone at his previous level, it was said that he had no need to fear death since even Kim Wu Jin wasn't able to kill him. Hey, Skeelys. This one's yours. Li Jina nonchalantly punched the head of a kobold that was biting his leg and threw it toward the group of skeleton soldiers. Wu Jin looked at him and he could see none of the steadfast determination to destroy the Messiah Guild that he once knew. There must be a reason. Something had to happen to make him change so drastically. Was it the death of O Seichan that affected you? Maybe only the death of O oh Seichan could change him in such a way if the Messiah Guild killed O oh Seichan then it was possible that Li Jin Ah would want to have vengeance. What type of person is O oh Seichan exactly? Kim Wu Jin was incredibly curious about what type of character O oh Seichan was. Let's not focus on that right now. Anyway the important thing right now was to test Li Jin Ah that was Kim Wu Jin's purpose from the start he was never interested in proving himself to anyone from the start he had better things to do than spend his time to impress Oh Se Chan and Li Jin Ah. What he was really looking for, was whether Li Jin Ah was good enough to be used and whether he could be trusted. You'll have to work hard. 
His goal was to make Li Jina reach and surpass the level he remembered. Your level has risen. At that moment, a notification sounded in his ear, reminding him that his skeletons were currently annihilating the kobolds. But Kim Wu Jin wasn't interested in the notification, instead he turned and looked into the distance. Kung. The scream of a kobold could be heard in the direction he turned. Kung. Kung. Soon a group of kobolds appeared, running toward where Li Jina and the skeletons were fighting. This is driving me crazy. Li Jina who had just started taking a break yelled loudly in frustration as he saw them he turned to the group of skeleton soldiers. Hey don't you guys want to go on strike? You're not fighting for free are you? Does that make sense in this day and age? At least you should get an hourly wage. He made a smug face. Hey, why don't you all come work for me? I'll give you a pretty fair wage and everything so let's run away. Of course, he got no answer. The skeleton started preparing for battle again as if it was no problem. Hey. Guys. Then suddenly all the skeletons fell onto the floor together in complete synchronization. As he looked at this scene, Li Jina didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I know your skills, now it's time to test your endurance. Kim Wu Jin's test was far from over. You have cleared the first floor. During Li Jina's test, they had killed all the kobolds they needed. Finally finished. Over the course of two days, Li Jina and the nine skeleton soldiers had fought and killed more than 100 kobolds. Of course, there were also the ones that Kim Wu Jin killed in the beginning to activate the effect of ruler of the battlefield so it couldn't be said that it was only Li Jin AHS hard work, but he still did most of it. Ha! Huh. I did it! What was even more surprising, was that during the course of the battle, Li Jina had not shown any weakness even though he had been extremely tired. Skili's good job. Now let's high five. High five. As Li Jina raised his arm and approached the skeletons they all just looked at him like they were looking at a retarded person. Damn, I worked so hard as the tank these heartless bastards. As Li Jina was complaining with a regretful face, Kim Wu Jin appeared before him Li Jina's expression immediately fixed his face but Wu Jin pretended that he didn't see anything. Li Jina held his stomach, fell to the ground and said. I can't take this anymore, you might as well kill me. Kim Wu Jin immediately pulled a blade from his inventory it was a kukri knife with a gleaming blade. Li Jina looked like he was about to cry. I can't even make a joke. But still, it is impossible to run forever without rest, otherwise you'll die a cow plows fields all day but he's still allowed to eat and sleep. As he listened to the sad plea, Kim Wu Jin just inspected the blade of the kukri without saying a word as if preparing for a slaughter. Li Jina sat up immediately. I've been looking for a partner for so long, but why did I run into this dog bastard? Li Jina felt like Kim Wu Jin wasn't human because of the way he treated people. The skeletons soon surrounded him and he once again rose to his feet. Scary bastards. These skeleton soldiers were the reason Li Jina battled for so long without much complaint if they were weak or clumsy, then instead of fighting the kobolds, Li Jina would have attacked and smashed the skeletons instead but these skeleton soldiers weren't so simple. It would be better to fight another thousand kobolds than fight these nine skeleton soldiers. Of course, there was still Kim Wu Jin behind them. He attracted all those kobolds without dying or even receiving a single injury. Every time Li Jina and the skeletons defeated a horde of kobolds, Kim Wu Jin would attract another group over so Li Jina was constantly fighting. Crazy bastard. Honestly, Li Jina could not even begin to fathom how it was possible this wasn't something you could do simply with strength to do this, the understanding one would need to have of the dungeon environment and the monsters would have to be at a level far exceeding common sense. Isn't the next floor filled with black werewolves? Damn, I'll probably be ripped to shreds there. Li Jina felt a wave of helplessness as he imagined the struggle he'd have to face on the second floor. It was then that Kim Wu Jin spoke to him. Good job. Ha. Huh. I'll handle the next floor. Chapter, 48. Three days after the start of the test. A huge man appeared in front of a distorted gate it was Li Jina with his easily noticeable figure, only he now had an odd expression on his face instead of the usual confident expression. Ah! 
If someone were to describe Li Jina's face at that moment, they'd say he looked like someone who'd seen a ghost at that moment, another man appeared behind Li Jina, it was Kim Wu Jin. When he saw Kim Wu Jin, Li Jina's expression became worse as he really couldn't understand what happened. This doesn't make sense. Li Jina couldn't help but recall what happened in the past hour or so everything happened so fast that it felt like it only took a few minutes. Not long ago, when Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin arrived on the second floor, Kim Wu Jin immediately summoned his skeletons and started hunting the black werewolves an hour had not even passed when Li Jina heard notifications in his ear. Black werewolf hunted complete. The dungeon has been cleared. The dungeon clear notification had appeared. He killed all the black werewolves in less than an hour. It was hard to believe. Black werewolves aren't very strong, but at least they are very hard to catch. Black werewolves were monsters that were usually very hard to handle not only did they have high strength, but they were also very cunning. There was even a boss. In particular, a pack of black werewolves that had a boss was even harder to handle whenever a monster evolves to become a boss, they receive a very large boost in power and they are no longer comparable to normal monsters. Boss level black werewolves were cunning enough to use their members as sacrifices if they found themselves in an unfavorable position they would then return with a larger number and start a vicious war if they weren't killed all at once. What's more, black werewolves were known for their speed and agility, so if they ran away, they were very hard to chase. However Kim Woo Jin had hunted such a pack of black werewolves in less than an hour. The hell. Did he use a nuclear bomb? That meant that within one hour, he managed to find a trail, track them down, set up an ambush, execute the ambush and annihilate them. No, he did more than that Kim Woo Jin started taking black werewolf hides from his inventory, showing that he even had time to skin them after he killed them, all within an hour. Is this guy really some kind of monster? It was this moment that the small bit of hostility that Li Jina still had toward Kim Wu Jin in his heart, slowly went away. On the other hand Kim Wu Jin didn't even glance at Li Jina beside him, instead he started counting the hides had taken out. Black werewolf fur is a very expensive material, so if I have this much. With that thought, he continued counting his harvest from the dungeon. Only after that did he finally accept his final reward for the dungeon. Catalog Kim Wu Jin opened his catalog to see the gains he got for defeating the black werewolf boss and completing the dungeon the catalog appeared and started shining with golden light. Ugh. Li Jin Ah suddenly grabbed his stomach as a moan escaped his lips as he saw this sight. Oh my stomach damn it, I'm so mad. Li Jin Ah's face was much worse than when he fought off those thousand kobolds, but Kim Wu Jin ignored him as he looked towards the glowing catalog with a smile on his face. Aura Field Requires, Emissary of the Underworld Required Level, Level 25 Effect, Emits an aura that can buff or debuff those in its range range increase as skill rank increases. Aura Field I'm pretty lucky. He didn't have to think to know its usefulness as he could immediately recall how difficult it was to deal with the undead summoned by the king of the underworld when he used this skill. Of course Kim Wu Jin learned it without hesitation. You have learned the skill Aura Field. This goddamn good luck I never got such a unique skill as a catalog reward. When he saw the golden glow, Li Jin Ah couldn't help but grumble under his breath it was then. You're back. The beauty who had brought Li Jin Ah to Kim Wu Jin before arrived in front of them breathlessly as she looked at the two, the surprise she felt was clearly visible. F.A. Dash, that was so fast. She had never thought that they could clear the dungeon in three days her reaction was to be expected, as while it wasn't impossible to clear a dungeon within two or three days, it was usually done with a team of about thirty players. Ah. It was then that she remembered an important item had arrived she turned to Kim Wu Jin. Your order has arrived, do you want to receive it now? Another smile appeared on Kim Wu Jin's face as he touched the stone necklace on his neck. Yes, please. In a dungeon, the more floors it has, the stronger the monsters you will find there for example, in five-floor dungeons, it was easy to find monsters that couldn't be hurt by small firearms even monsters that couldn't be hurt by large firearms could be found. 
As for six-floor dungeons there were monsters there that were capable of withstanding a missile attack in other words, these monsters were strong enough to endure even some of the strongest weapons used by humanity the power of these monsters had long since transcended common sense. An example of these monsters was the Golden Dragon, which sometimes appears as the boss monster in five floor and above dungeons a single one of its dragon scales was capable of deflecting bullets and was highly resistant to heat it was often exaggerated that you could walk on lava if you had boots made of golden dragon leather. When the first golden dragon was hunted, everyone was interested in getting its leather at that time everyone's eyes were on the team of hunters, wondering what history changing item they would make with its hide. But it wasn't the skin of the golden dragon that changed history. It wasn't easy to get this gastric juice of a golden dragon. The thing that changed history was the golden liquid inside a wooden barrel that Kim Woo Jin held in his hands, the golden dragon's gastric juices. This will help me remove the curse from the stone necklace that I haven't been able to break. It was one of the best ways to unseal the cursed stone necklace. I'll finally be able to use the necklace. Strictly speaking, the stone necklace was more than just a jewelry item. Crack. He poured the golden dragon's gastric juices onto the cursed stone necklace, causing it to begin to melt. SSS. Like ice cream on hot asphalt, the necklace melted until it was unrecognizable from its previous appearance. Eventually, the entire necklace melted away into liquid but Wu Jin was not surprised. It's not an item after all. Different from what one would expect. It's a skill. After becoming liquid, the necklace morphed into the shape of a thin slab and a skill page shining the color of obsidian appeared before Kim Woo Jin. The Eye of Horus. Requires, Emissary of the Underworld. Effect, Unable to View Skill Information. The moment he saw it, the name of a man came to Kim Woo Jin's mind. Johan George. An unforgettable face. It was this damn skill. He remembered how Johann George's eyes changed to that of a hawk. Because of this I couldn't hide any items from him. The skill allowed the user to see the target's information as well as information on all the items they were carrying, allowing them to properly plan how to deal with their target. The Eye of Horus. That was the effect, if you targeted a player, you would see their stats and items and if you targeted a monster then you would see its stats and special abilities. It was the worst. It was the worst skill to face because there wasn't much you could do to prevent it. If I could check the skills and items of players around me, I wouldn't have been betrayed. If someone was able to view players' items and skills easily, he would be almost undefeatable. It was so bad. Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but feel some regret in his heart for his past future, self as he learned the skill. You have acquired the eyes of Horus. Achievement gained the one with Horus' eyes. Inventory space increased by 5 with the achievement the one with Horus' eyes. A group of notifications sounded in Wu Jin's ear. Ring. Ring. And the ringing of a phone followed. For any errors and issues contact me through Discord. Chapter, 49. In a dull office where the only light was provided by two fixtures on the ceiling, two men sat at a table, facing each other one of them was very large and muscular with a shiny bald head, the other was much smaller and looked at the man across from him with a slightly ugly expression the sight was very strange and it wouldn't seem out of place if guns or drugs were added to the scene. Suddenly the bald man pulled a package out of his pocket in a situation like this, what one would expect would be maybe a bar of gold or drugs or something of the sort, but when the man unwrapped the package, what was revealed instead, was a bar of chocolate. Thus the image became rather strange and the smaller man couldn't help but ask. Are you really going to eat a chocolate bar now? Oh Seichan looked at the large man across from him who was munching away at his chocolate bar. This is how a man should be. When he heard that response, a smile appeared on Oh Seichan's face. Yes, if you don't eat like that, people will definitely think you're a woman when you go to the bathroom make sure to take out a chocolate bar and start eating otherwise people will think they entered the women's bathroom instead. Li Jina ignored Oh Seichan's words and instead asked in a serious tone. Why'd you call me here? An A-ranked dungeon has been discovered. If you're telling me about it, that must mean that it's at least two floors. Yeah, it's two floors, level limit is 35 and under and only 99 entries are available. 
As he listened to the report, Li Jina's face gradually became worse, but he didn't pick up the document that Oh Seichan placed on the table in front of him because he didn't think too much about it. An A-rank dungeon was only for those large and powerful guilds like the Messiah Guild or the Phoenix Guild it was not something small guilds could usually touch. The dungeon boss is a needle snake. Eh. A needle snake. However when he heard what the boss was, Li Jina reached forward and picked up the report in front of him. Who dash, huh? Isn't this supposed to be a dungeon report? Oh sorry, ignore that, the report is on the back. Ah, uh, I see. After flipping the paper over, Li Jina saw the report. Needle Snake Hunt. As he read the details of the dungeon, Li Jina couldn't help but say in a nervous tone. Will there be anyone willing to do this? For players below level 35, a needle snake is almost certain death. It truly is almost guaranteed death. The needle snake a monster that became well known around the world two years ago when it first appeared showing up in Paris, France and then the United States, Britain and Japan one after another however, there was no detailed information about it, and that was for one simple reason. Because it's never been successfully killed before. No one had ever returned from a needle snake hunt because of this, the monster was given a nickname. Snake fucker. The snake of death. The snake of death, or the snake reaper this name was given because of the large number of players that it killed. Hey, do you have to keep giving things stupid names? It's all the same, death snake, snake fucker, snake bitch, fucking bitch, they're the same thing right? Anyway, I roughly understand the situation now. Li Jina put the report and looked at Oh Se Chan, his expression becoming serious. Most guilds will probably give up their claim on this one, but you're the one who wants to eat it up first, right? That's right. And you're looking to blend into the crowd or maybe wait for a foreign guild to challenge. Right. But to snatch it from them we'd have to be really good or really strong. I know that too. Well let's discuss the plan while we eat he'll take champagne with a large serving of Tang Suyuk O oh, and please ask for a generous helping of dumplings too. O oh, Seichan shook his head at the sudden change. Where did this bullshit come from all of a sudden? You have to invest a bit to hire a skilled person don't you? That's true, but why are you the one eating? Because I'm the best person for such a job. O oh, Seichan gave him a blank stare. No. Then who could it be? Dragon Slayer? Trinity? The Brain? Or the Messiah Li Sejun? But all of them are near level 200 so they wouldn't be able to enter the dungeon. There is Kim Wu Jin. When he heard the name, Li Jina made an ugly face. Damn it! I don't want to hunt with that bastard. Why? You should know. The guy is a heartless monster. I've never met anyone as crazy as he is humans usually have a consciousness, that guy, he considers your endurance before your skill he needs to learn how to treat people right, first. Li Jina was very much against working with Kim Wu Jin. If you work with him, you would complete it more efficiently. Instead of arguing further, Oh Se Chan removed a recorder from his pocket and put it on the table after pressing the playback button. What I want in a party are people who won't hold me back. Li Jina's voice was heard from the recorder, the sound echoing in the now quiet room. I don't care about their personality whether they're a punk or a bastard, I don't care even the devil himself, as long as he can beat me if there is someone like that, I will follow him like a loyal dog please find them for me ha ha. There is no one stronger than me ha 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 ha. Li Jina's face became uglier as he heard what had said. Um, I'm a little thirsty. He picked up a cup of water from the table and took a big sip, but his expression became worse. Brother, why does this water taste weird? It smells like there's medicine in it. Probably because it's tap water. Tap water? Why? Would you like some more? When Oh Se Chan said this, Li Jina didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Brother, big brother tap water. It's not important, don't worry, you won't die even if you drank some more. It's not important. Yeah, the tap water is not important what's important is this dungeon hunt you need to get it done the first time. Li Jina's expression became serious again as Oh Seichan said, when hunting a needle snake, you had to succeed on your first try. 
Right, if the first attack fails, there won't be a chance for a second you have to succeed from the start. Li Jina knew how deadly the needle snake was. And that's why you need Kim Wu Jin. I can't handle this, where is the food? You still want to eat? When he heard that, Li Jina looked at Oh Se Chan. What do you mean by that? Oh Se Chan couldn't help laughing. After talking to Oh Se Chan on the phone, Kim Wu Jin closed it and recalled the conversation in his head. We're going to attack the Needle Snake Dungeon, are you willing to participate? Kim Wu Jin had directly refused without much thought and as if he was expecting it, Oh Se Chan had then said. I knew you wouldn't agree, so I'll we'll make you a deal. He proposed his deal to Kim Wu Jin. First I want to ask what would you do if I could give you a legendary item? What would you do in exchange for a legendary item? Kim Wu Jin said. I'd do whatever I can. Would you do everything you could? Would you do anything? As Kim Wu Jin gave an affirmative answer, Oh Se Chan asked his last question. What if I told you to kill a savior, or a hero? Could you do it? This time, Kim Wu Jin didn't answer immediately. You have to think about it. Yes, I'm thinking. Ha! No need to think about it no one would easily do something if they weren't sure they could bear the cost. Oh Se Chan returned to his proposal. Okay let's get back to the topic I'll lend you a legendary item that should greatly increase your skills the condition is that you kill the needle snake when you've completed the task, it's yours. Kim Wu Jin naturally accepted such an offer the conversation ended not long after that. At the moment however, Oh Se Chan's question kept replaying in Wu Jin's head as he gently tapped the flip phone against his head. For a legendary item, could you kill a savior or a hero? As he thought of the question, Kim Wu Jin finally gave his answer. Something like that I could do it for free. After he had this thought, Wu Jin got up and started preparing for the hunt. Hunting a needle snake that's easy. Chapter, 50 The news of the dungeon swept through the Korean peninsula like a wildfire. A rank 2 floor dungeon discovered in Singung and I, Nansan. The third A rank dungeon has appeared. Will new legends be born? People were excited when they saw the news. This is a legendary moment. If you're Korean, you better cheer for the Messiah Guild. Everyone was looking forward to the great event, however, the big event they looked forward to, didn't happen. The Phoenix Guild gives up to the opportunity to participate. The Mir Guild gives up to the opportunity to participate. The only thing that the public received were announcements from the first-rate guilds, renouncing the opportunity to take part in the dungeon hunt. What? Why are they refusing to participate? Why is this reaction so different from last time? Everyone was confused by the exact opposite reaction from the guilds when compared to the attack on the Orc Champion dungeon, when that a rank dungeon had appeared in Busan, the guilds were quite eager to take part however, the answer was soon revealed. The dungeon boss has been confirmed to be the Needle Snake. The Needle Snake, the monster avoided by the world. Information about the Needle Snake was soon spread worldwide and everyone began to understand however there were still those who argued. Fucking cowards. I thought they were strong. When the monsters are a little strong, these strong fighters all run and hide like rats. Those bastards who call themselves heroes are just full of air. The accusations to the various celebrity players were vicious, claiming they only knew how to amass their own wealth and flaunt their paltry skills. Of course, not everyone denied outright. Messiah Guild's participation is still being discussed. Park Shin Hai, I will try to challenge the dungeon as soon as I'm sufficiently prepared. Like the other guilds, the Messiah Guild had already decided to give up on the dungeon, however their strategy was much smarter and it could be seen from the public's reaction. Goddess Park Shinhai has come out. Only the Messiah Guild is brave and worthy. People didn't blame the Messiah Guild as they believed without a doubt, a doubt that they were intending to challenge the dungeon. They'll clear it. Kim Wu Jin also didn't doubt that the Messiah Guild would challenge the dungeon. After waiting for a good opportunity. They had done it a year after the dungeon opened for a few reasons. There is no one strong enough to beat it. In the Messiah Guild, there was currently no member who could challenge the dungeon without a high risk of failure and death. So there's no reason to try. Even if there was someone who had a chance, if they went alone, 
while the reputation of Messiah Guild would go up, they wouldn't be able to defeat the dungeon. If I recall correctly, the dungeon was cleared next winter. Of course, there was no reason to let them use this dungeon to increase their reputation so Kim Woojin decided to clear the dungeon. And so, he waited. If the guilds give up their bid to challenge and they're unable to find 99 people to challenge the dungeon, then the opportunity will be shared with international players. The Korean government would eventually open their doors and let foreign players participate. The Korean government allows foreign guilds to participate in the A Dungeon Challenge. And as Wu Jin expected, the doors were opened. When the dungeon gates first appeared, countries all around the world gathered to sign a treaty among them, there was a clause concerning the challenge of dungeons. For dungeons within their borders every country had the sovereignty to determine whether they wanted to challenge it or not, however, in the event that they didn't intend to challenge the dungeon or were unable to fill the quota, it was agreed that they'd open their borders, and let foreign players also participate in the attack. In truth, it was a seldom used clause there was no reason for players in Russia to travel to challenge a D rank dungeon even if players in Korea could not defeat it however in the case of an a rank dungeon it was different. Even around the world, it was very difficult for players to get the opportunity to challenge an A-rank dungeon and it would be a lie to say that there weren't many who wanted to take up the challenge regardless of whether it was the Needle Snake or Death Snake that had never been defeated or if you'd have to be crazy to challenge it. In Korea, there were maybe hundreds of so-called crazy people, but in the entire world, there were thousands of them. 41 foreign players are confirmed to join the battle. The recruitment of the 99 spots has been completed. Will this hunt of the needle snake be the first to succeed? Thus, 41 foreigners had opted to join the attack on the dungeon. Of course, Kim Woo Jin joined the attack as well, but he didn't do it under the name of the Phoenix Guild. Mr. Isaac Ivanov, please step forward. Isaac Ivanov, a Russian national belonging to the Mokosh Guild, that was Kim Woo Jin's current status. Looking at the appearance, there was no sign of Kim Woo Jin's features anywhere, from the white skin, to the blonde hair. I'm going to need a mask like this for myself. It was a sophisticated disguise prepared for him by Oh Se Chan. While it wasn't perfect, the ability of this mask was very good made with doppelganger skin, the mask allowed its wearer to change their appearance and it was very difficult to see through. What was more impressive however, was the forgery while foreign players didn't need a large number of identification documentation to access a dungeon, the ID of a player was still very hard to fake. This wasn't made specifically for me, I'm sure there are many other identities I could have used. It was obvious that Oh se -chan had many such counterfeit identities as he had so easily given one to Kim Woo Jin. He is amazing in many ways. Woo Jin originally appreciated and estimated Oh se -chan very highly, but even then it seemed that he had underestimated him. There were two reasons why Oh se -chan made Kim Woo Jin use a disguise to enter the dungeon. For one, as the Phoenix Guild had publicly renounced their opportunity to enter the dungeon, the Guild had forbidden the members from openly joining. The other reason was to hide Kim Woo Jin's skills Oh Se Chan had learned just how amazing Kim Woo Jin was from Lee Jin Ao, so he knew that if Kim Woo Jin entered under his own name and showed off his skills, he would immediately attract a lot of attention, both good and bad so in order to not expose him, he arranged for Kim Woo Jin to use a fake identity. I'm pretty lucky. Kim Woo Jin was actually grateful as he had already had a similar idea in mind. Additionally, there was another person who was also using a fake identity. Damn it. I can't go on like this. It was Lee Jin Ah, who stood beside Kim Woo Jin he also had a mask that gave him white skin and blonde hair. This mask is pretty cool, but it's too annoying to eat. Because of the mask, Lee Jin Ah couldn't eat a chocolate bar as he usually did. What are you looking at? Li Jin Ah asked in a sharp tone as he saw Kim Woo Jin looking at him. In response, Kim Woo Jin also asked a question. Are you nervous? Nervous? Li Jin Ah let out a snort. I'm a man of steel, I've never been nervous since the day I was born never. Though he said that, Li Jin Ah was actually quite nervous as it was normal to be nervous in such tense situations. The Needle Snake the Needle Snake, the snake of death that had never been defeated before, now he must enter the dungeon to hunt it. Once inside, they couldn't return before defeating the Needle Snake. What about you huh? 
Are you nervous? Yep. Kim Wu Jin was also tense, but it was for another reason, compared to what Li Jinao. I'm curious as to what will happen. Wu Jin looked at an item in his inventory as he had this thought. Grim Reaper's Mask. This item was the reason why Kim Wu Jin was tense. Even Johann George didn't manage to get his hands on it. A skill that even the King of Undead coveted was now in his control. Access and control. If he had this, then he was confident that he could destroy the Messiah Guild in three years this made Kim Wu Jin feel tense and slightly excited. Don't be worried man believe in me Li Jina, even if your personality is garbage, I never let my teammates down. This was the reason Kim Wu Jin couldn't relate to Li Jina, he was a bit too dumb. Now, shall we enter the dungeon? And with that the two of them walked toward the dungeon entrance. For any errors and issues contact me through Discord. Chapter, 51 After stepping into the gate, they were surrounded by white lights which soon disappeared, revealing their surroundings. They were in a jungle, reminiscent of the Amazon rainforest a stifling and humid heat wrapped around them. Survive for five days. At that moment, the quest notification appeared, causing almost everyone in the dungeon to exclaim. What? A survival quest? Damn. This is the worst. Shit. TL, this one was in English, took me by surprise. Survival quest in the end, even if you want to leave, you still need to survive at least four days. In other words, regardless of what they did, the first floor would take five days to be completed, but for two floor dungeons, it was always best to finish the first floor as quickly as possible. A survival quest in an A rank that means there's probably an incredibly strong monster. Regardless, the fact that surviving was a quest meant that it wouldn't be easy so naturally, many players became even more nervous, including Li Jino. He turned to Kim Wu Jin and asked. What do we do? We start the test. Test. When he remembered the last test, a shiver ran down Li Jina's spine and his knees shook a bit. I have to test some new items. Oh dash, oh. Right. Relief was visible on Li Jina's face after that the two of them started moving. Chuduk. A lonely goblin stumbled and fell to the floor, an arrow sticking out of its back the goblin had just been walking through the underbrush, was now lying motionlessly on the floor, a single arrow through the heart its only wound it was truly a great showcase of skill. What the fuck? Li Jina, who witnessed the kill from the side could barely keep his mouth closed. It's possible to hit a vital point from this far in a dense forest. Killing a goblin with one arrow wasn't hard, but to kill a moving goblin in a forest from over 100 meters away with a single arrow was hard to believe. So at that moment, Li Jina made a promise with himself. Let's not think too much about it. He decided then to never compare himself to Kim Wu Jin again. Meanwhile Wu Jin who'd finished his hunt, didn't move yet. Nothing is nearby. After confirming there were no monsters or players near them or the goblin, Kim Wu Jin approached the prey he'd killed. You have summoned a skeleton. Immediately after arriving at the body, Kim Wu Jin summoned its skeleton. Hee <laughs> hee, nice to meet you. When Li Jin Ah saw the appearance of a new skeleton soldier, he couldn't help but come over and try to stroke its head. However the skeleton soldier stepped back and avoided his hand. Eh. Li Jina frowned slightly as the skeleton soldier stepped away from him before once again reaching for the skeleton who avoided him. Ha! Then let's see what you've got. Boom! A strange confrontation of reaching and dodging broke out between Li Jina and the skeleton. As he watched this odd scene, Kim Wu Jin reached into his inventory, pulled out the Grim Reaper's mask and put it on. You have received the achievement wearer of the Grim Reaper's mask. He heard a notification, but there didn't seem to be any special effects, it felt like he was just wearing a mask. However when he turned toward where Li Jina and the skeleton were fighting, he noticed something interesting. Ha! Huh. On the head of the skeleton, a black thread appeared, floating toward him. As Kim Wu Jin reached forward and grabbed the thread, a notification appeared before him. Connected to skeleton. The skeleton soldier stopped moving the moment the notification sounded and at the same time the skeleton's field of view appeared in Kim Wu Jin's eyes. Ha! I got you! 
It was then that Li Jina lunged forward and pressed his hand to the skeleton skull. I understand now. Only then did Kim Wu Jin truly understand the ability of the Grim Reaper's mask what the mask did, was take control of a summoned undead monster. If you use the mask, you would be able to see exactly what the monster could see. I can also control it. It seemed that he was also able to control it. Move your hand. It also seemed like he could use the skeleton soldiers to speak. Oh hoo -ha. Li Jina was shocked at the turn of events and took a few steps back his face pale. Skell Dash, the skeleton can speak. As the skeleton stared at him, Li Jina couldn't help but gulp a bit especially when the skeleton's flaming eyes began burning with golden flames. Eye of Horus activated. A notification sounded in Kim Wu Jin's ear and he couldn't help but think. Johann George would have died of envy. Survival Quest. It was a quest with only one condition survive for a specific amount of time. In a way, it was a very simple quest it was natural to think that quests to hunt a fearsome monster, or to kill thousands of monsters would be harder to complete however, the situation was way different from what you would imagine. God damn it. Survival quests are like a heaven for monsters. The monsters that could be found in survival quests were much more than in any other type of quest. It's not just that there's a lot of them it's so annoying how many different types there are. For example, when doing a quest to kill 100 orcs, usually the only monsters that the player would encounter would be orcs and the total number one could find would be between 100 and 300 depending on the difficulty of the quest. However in a survival quest, especially one with a time limit of 5 days, one could probably find every monster capable of spawning in a dungeon's first floor and their numbers varied without any real limit. A rank and a survival quest the worst possible combination. I don't even want to think about how many there will be. With the rank being A it was very possible for players to encounter more monsters than they ever had before moreover, with the situation being the way it was now, the players were left with two tough choices. What do we do? Stay here. The monsters will smell our food and flock to us rather, it's better to be constantly on the move and hunt them as we go. Staying on the move and killing the monsters as they encountered them, or trying to hold a spot while withstanding the attack of the monsters. It's better to move. Most players chose the former. There are so many players around, we could join forces with them. We'll have to move around for a few days first, to assess the general situation. It wasn't wise to make rash decisions in an environment where you didn't know what direction the monsters were coming from and when you didn't know what could happen. But of course everyone didn't make the same decision rather than run from the monsters, there were those like Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin who went after the monsters instead which wasn't good news for the monsters. The three orcs that were facing off against Li Jina at the moment in a three-on-one the orcs had an advantage in numbers and size. Here's my politeness injection punch. P.U.K. However against the three orcs, Li Jina dished out unadulterated violence. He used his fists to slowly crush the bodies of the orcs like he was molding clay. A nose broke under the blow, the orc skull sinking by a third and it flew backward it didn't get up after that. When he saw this, Li Jina looked down at his fist and thought. I'm also strong. He was strong it wasn't being self-absorbed, or narcissistic. I'm not weak. As he thought that, Li Jina turned his head to look across the clearing he was in there a skeleton soldier was destroying the last of a group of five orcs using only a scimitar. It's that guy that's a complete monster. He looked at the skeleton and couldn't help but recall just a few hours ago. Having learned that the Grim Reaper's mask could access and control his skeletons, Kim Woo Jin immediately began testing it he wanted to see just how much he could do with the control he had. At first, it wasn't that scary. Naturally, controlling a creature isn't like manipulating a character by pressing buttons on a controller or a keyboard instead it was like trying to tame a wild horse it couldn't be done perfectly from the start but as time progressed, Kim Woo Jin became increasingly better at controlling the skeleton soldier. No it's insane. The five dead orcs at the skeleton's feet were the best proof. These little skeletons are no joke. The skeleton soldier controlled by Kim Woo Jin had more than twice the combat efficiency of the normal skeleton soldiers. I've never seen a summoned skeleton like this before. When using the skeleton, skills that Kim Woo Jin possessed such as blood weapon and blood poison didn't work, 
but he was still able to use skills like Bone Sword and Summon Skeleton. Eye of Anubis and Eye of Horus could also be used although there was a penalty when used by the Skeleton Soldier, the skills used about three times more magic power than normal. Though if he defeated someone with the Skeleton Soldier, the experience he gained was reduced. Though it was a small price to pay compared to the things he could do with the Grim Reaper's mask. Li Jina. Suddenly the skeleton soldier turned toward Li Jina and called this caused Li Jina's expression to become ugly. Isn't polite to talk to someone face to face. Huh. It didn't feel good to be treated like a subordinate by a mere skeleton. Would you like to try my politeness injection punch? Li Jina didn't back down because it was just the skeleton soldier and not Kim Woo Jin himself, but before he could try anything. How are you feeling? A voice filled with murderous intent sounded behind Li Jina's back. Ugh. Li Jina was startled, spinning around quickly to see Kim Woo Jin approaching him. Fuck. This bastard. Pretending to control the skeletons while approaching from behind. How's your bodice condition? As Li Jina had his internal struggle, Kim Wu Jin repeated his question, though his tone was much lower than when he asked the first almost as if to say he wouldn't ask another time. Because of this, Li Jina quickly answered. I'm fine. Ready to inject politeness into anyone who doesn't have it. No one should have bad manners. Li Jina's voice sounded much quieter than his usual boisterous tone. Good now it's time to hunt. Ha. Huh. Li Jina's smile stiffened. Haven't we been hunting this whole time? During the three hours since the dungeon had been opened, Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina had killed more than 100 monsters ordinary players couldn't reach such a number even after trying for two days. Wasn't that considered hunting? So what do you call what we've been doing so far? In response to Li Jina's question, Kim Wu Jin gave a simple answer. A warm-up. When he saw how serious Kim Wu Jin's serious expression without a hint of mischief, Li Jina knew he meant it. Actually, I think it's not a good idea for me to continue like this where am I? What time is it? Ah. I have anemia. Yes, I have anemia, it makes me so dizzy. Kim Wu Jin said nothing to Li Jina. Tuck. Instead it was the skeleton soldier that walked over to them and stabbed Li Jina in the ass, causing him to scream loudly and jump away. What the hell are you doing? You said you have anemia, I was trying to give you some iron. Iron? That's not an injection. Does it matter? Iron is entering your body anyway. Damn it, how does that make sense? Li Jina really felt like crying this Kim Wu Jin bastard was too much. Kim Wu Jin glanced at his expression and nodded. Since you look so angry, that means your anemia went away let's go. As he heard this, Li Jina gave up his futile effort. Chapter, 52 The most dangerous day in a survival quest, was the second day on the first day, there were few large-scale battles as the players and monsters took time to examine their surroundings when that was finished, was when the true fighting would start. What was more frightening however was that even when fighting, the players had to be alert against other dangers take for example, when fighting with a horde of goblins, during the fight, it was possible to then be attacked by a group of kobolds or orcs a battle of such a scale would stimulate the nearby monsters and it was possible to trigger a frenzy or as it was more commonly called, a monster wave. This was also one of the reasons why players opted to stay on the move rather than settle down in one location. Isn't it too quiet? Yeah. However the players in the dungeon couldn't help but feel that they were facing a situation that was exactly the opposite of what they expected. On the second day, the players had prepared to face a great struggle but instead were met with peace. It was quiet on the second day, but even the third. Even as the third day came and passed, there was no sign of a monster wave brewing in fact, it was hard for the players to even encounter any monsters at all. Is this really a survival quest? It should be. No one could understand the situation. Are you sure we're in an A-rank dungeon? The difficulty of quests in an A-rank dungeon was supposed to be much higher than the others and the battles that should have occurred were supposed to be very difficult but there was no sign of any such battle. Obviously something must have happened otherwise it doesn't make sense for there to be no monsters in the dungeon. I don't know first we need to figure out what's happening. 
and so some people started searching for clues. Oh my god are these all corpses? How many died here? I think there are at least 100 dead bodies here. Those who had begun investigating came across a clearing in which the bodies of monsters were piled high like a mountain and it was not just one such clearings could be found all over the jungle. Who did this? This proved that someone was hunting the monsters and slaughtering them. I don't know who did this, but it's not normal. Is this some kind of rare event? This is no rare event, look there. That huh? Are those fences? It seemed that it wasn't done purely with brute force. They made a labyrinth of fences and walls to confuse the monsters look at the ground, there are signs of digging all over. It was a giant trap. At this point, you couldn't call it a trap it was hell. The large mound of bodies were all achieved through the use of a sophisticated trap all the investigating players shivered, and they weren't alone. Oh my god. Li Jina didn't know what to say as he looked at the bodies of orcs, lizard men, and goblins in front of him. They were monsters that he had hunted, but they weren't hunted like he usually would. Is this how this guy hunts? It was Kim Wu Jin's method. How can you hunt like this you crazy bastard? From Li Jina's perspective, this method was beyond common sense. When Li Jina hunted monsters, it was like a lion hunting a wolf he would make a plan and use items, but in the end it still came down to defeating it with his power. However Kim Wu Jin was different. Kim Wu Jin didn't confront the monsters directly even though he could easily win with his strength, he still decided to set the stage. After finding a suitable location, he first used walls, fences, and natural obstacles to make a maze then using the blood weapon skill, he installed nails, swords, and various other weapons and traps throughout the maze when it was complete, Kim Wu Jin then used his skeleton soldiers to lure monsters into the maze. The attracted monsters would be afflicted with blood poison, as well as suffer wounds from the blood weapons and bone weapons that were installed in the maze, before having to fight Li Jina and the skeleton soldiers. The effect was as the players had seen before the bodies piled up like a mountain, and the blood flowed like a river. Using the bodies of the monsters, Kim Wu Jin created more blood weapons and bone weapons. As the number of bodies increase, this guy becomes more and more of a monster. The more battles they fought, the more monsters they killed, the stronger Kim Wu Jin became. Gulp. As he came out of his thoughts, Li Jina turned to look at Kim Wu Jin who was standing in a tree with the Grim Reaper's mask covering his face. Suddenly, to his surprise, Kim Wu Jin took the mask off and turned to him. What's wrong? Kim Wu Jin answered as he jumped down beside Li Jina. The situation has changed. What? Things changed. What's going on? If Kim Wu Jin who had dismissed their hunting of the monsters as a simple warm-up could say such a thing, that meant that it wasn't something simple like a monster horde or something like that. Li Jina tensed up. Ha! Huh. Did a really strong monster appear? Or did the other players find our location and are coming to kill us? Instead of answering him, Kim Wu Jin approached the mountain of corpses and chanted a spell toward an orc corpse in the middle. Summon Skeleton as the spell activated, the skin and flesh of the orc melted off leaving only the bones which began to rise then, a flame was lit in its eyes. Li Jina, who saw this, was stupefied. What dash, what the hell? Couldn't he only summon nine of them? As far as Li Jina knew, Kim Wu Jin could only summon nine skeleton soldiers but now Kim Wu Jin had summoned a tenth and that wasn't all soon after, he summoned an eleventh, and then a twelfth. Ku Dash, couldn't you only summon nine skeletons? This scene made Li Jina deeply afraid and so he couldn't help but ask. This time, Kim Wu Jin answered. I could have only summoned nine. As he said that, he summoned his thirteenth skeleton soldier. Until just a moment ago. Kim Wu Jin remembered what occurred just minutes ago. Everyone is afraid of you. The emissary of the underworld admires your actions. The Emissary of the Underworld gifts you a part of their power. The skill rank for Skeleton Warrior Mastery has increased by one rank. When he looked at the skill window after hearing the notification, Kim Wu Jin's eyes widened. Skeleton Warrior Mastery. A smile stretched across Kim Wu Jin's face. Johann George would be jealous. The number of combatants were very important in a battle, 
and the difference between 9 and 13 changes the type of tactics that can be used drastically naturally Kim Woo Jin knew how to maximize the difference. U4 will be the archers. The four new skeleton soldiers were thus converted into archers and naturally the number of tactics available to Kim Woo Jin changed. Let's go first. After consistently using the trap, Kim Woo Jin decided to go hunt the monsters instead of luring and trapping them after all if you had an increase in firepower, it was best to use it. Yeah, let's go. Lee Jin Ah welcomed the change. Let's have a real battle. Raw battles were the best, even if there was the possibility of being hurt. I'll show you how I, Lee Jin Ah will slaughter the monster. Lee Jin Ah's face was flushed with excitement, his eyes began burning brightly with fighting spirit. Ha! Huh. But the fire in his eyes dimmed a little not long after. Why are you still next to me? Seeing Li Jin Ah's expression, Kim Woo Jin walked past, to stand in front of him. Now, I'm leading the way. Kim Woo Jin, who had been controlling the battlefield from the back was now standing on the front line. Li Jin Ah laughed loudly as he looked at him. You should do your best I can handle anything else, but I can't tolerate a poor guy floundering in front of me. Chapter 53. Huff, huff. On a battlefield covered in the broken corpses of kobolds, a man stood panting. Just from looking at his face, one could tell that the man desperately wanted to lay down and rest. The man, whose eyes were full of despair looked over to another man who was also finishing up his own fight. Hey, that was all of them. His expression was earnest and polite as he continued. Can we take a break now? As usual, Kim Woo Jin didn't respond to Lee Jin Ah's question, instead a skeleton walked up to him and shook its head, as if to say. No, you can't. Lee Jin Ah closed his eyes tightly when he saw this, Kim Woo Jin's figure flashing in his mind. This motherfucker. He recalled the fight that just happened previously, Lee Jin Ah believed that without the skeleton soldiers, he could defeat Kim Woo Jin. It wasn't empty confidence either though had lost one to Kim Woo Jin before and he had even surrendered to him, he hadn't been fighting for his life then. Crazy monstrous bastard. However the battle he just witnessed caused him to rethink that thought. How is this fair for the rest of us? This guy is like a monster who returned from the future or something how could someone who isn't even level 30 be that strong? He was too efficient when fighting, the energy expended in the process of trying to injure your opponent was enormous however it seemed that Kim Woo Jin didn't feel any strain at all. This was possible because Kim Woo Jin looked at the whole picture when he fought, he did not just look at what was in front of him like an RPG game, instead he looked at the whole picture as though he was playing a strategy simulation game and made his decisions after considering the best direction. I have to learn to fight like that. For Lee Jin Ah, he didn't just watch on in surprise, instead he watched to learn. This was the actual reason why Kim Woo Jin tested and fought with Lee Jin Ah. This is how the immortal fights. Kim Woo Jin had once studied Lee Jin Ah's fighting style, and now that Lee Jin Ah was looking at him, he would ensure he taught him properly. He will digest it bit by bit. He would watch and learn. Just a little longer and he should be able to use it. In other words, Lee Jin Ah's current abilities were not up to Kim Woo Jin's standards. It was natural currently, the amount of experience that the players had was at a pitiful level when compared to Kim Woo Jin who had survived many conflicts before he was betrayed if there were many people who could meet his standards, that would be strange instead. I can work with this. But now, the circumstances were different. Johan George wouldn't be a threat anymore. With the halo that he had currently, Kim Woo Jin was certain at the rate he was gaining the favor of the emissary of the underworld, it would be hard for Johan George to reach his past level. While there wasn't much that Kim Woo Jin could do to impact him currently the halo's favor, or lack thereof would be fatal to Johan George's growth. However the absence of Johan George meant that the Messiah Guild would be much freer than in the past. Without Johan George, the influence of the Messiah Guild after the war with Japan in 2025 would spread much faster than in the past. In fact, Kim Woo Jin remembered that the greatest difficulty the Messiah Guild encountered after 2025 was the King of Undead. The Messiah Guild became the shining beacon for all those who wanted to escape from under the shadow of the King of the Undead. The speed at which they reveal their ambitions will increase. 
It meant the day that the day the Messiah Guild took off their mask it also meant that the amount of time Kim Woo Jin hand was shortened. Lee Se Jun, you will take off that damn mask even earlier. The day Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah finally met was soon approaching. Just like I wanted. Kim Woo Jin was satisfied with the situation. He started walking forward. Fuck it. Let's go till we die. With that, Lee Jin Ah followed after him. 24 hours remaining. There was a notification as the fifth day started. Your level has increased. You have achieved level 30 inventory spaces increased by 6. The emissary of the underworld is impressed by your growth inventory spaces increased by 6. The emissary of the underworld sent a catalog as a gift. At the same time, the notification that Kim Woo Jin reached level 30 also appeared. Hunting on this floor is almost over. Kim Woo Jin looked around. More than 29 corpses and skeleton soldiers and an exhausted Li Jin Ah could be seen. Who? 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 Li Jin Ah's expression was similar to that of a landmine the moment you stepped on it, it would explode. Boom! A skeleton soldier approached Li Jin Ah who turned toward it, his ferocious expression nowhere to be seen. At that moment, the skeleton soldier opened its mouth. It's time to eat. Where should we spread the mat? Li Jina smiled brightly and started looking for a place for them to eat. Meanwhile, Kim Wu Jin examined his status. Kim Wu Jin. If other players saw his status, they would wonder if something was wrong with their eyes. This should be enough to clear a level 50 dungeon. At the least, Kim Wu Jin's stats were comparable to players over level 40. It's not enough yet. However for Kim Wu Jin, his stats were far from enough the prey he was intending to hunt was more of a monster than monsters. Okay, I still have more to go. Kim turned his gaze to Li Jin Ah who was comfortably eating a chocolate bar while being surrounded by skeletons. Huh. Li Jin Ah started shaking his chocolate bar at one of the skeletons. Do you want a piece? Huh. If you want it, come and get it. Of course Li Jin Ah didn't think that the skeleton would actually try to do it. Uh. At that time the skeleton, like a trained dog, lunged toward Li Jin Ah's hand and bit it. Oh my god. See this? Now he's opened his heart to me. Li Jin Ah who was surprised by the action, pulled his hand back and placed the chocolate bar that he just started eating into the skeleton's hand then he said, his voice soaked with emotion. Ku. See, after all it was possible for us to be friends. The skeleton soldier immediately turned and delivered the chocolate bar to Kim Woo Jin. Wah. Kim Woo Jin took a moment to take off the Grim Reaper's mask before collecting the chocolate bar. Li Jin Ah shouted at him. Were you controlling it just now? In response, Kim Woo Jin took a bite of the chocolate bar. Whatever, what are we gonna do now? Hunt the needle snake. Li Jina's expression turned serious. We start the second floor tomorrow, right? Honestly Li Jina had been so busy hunting monsters that he hadn't had time to be nervous. Are you ready? If it wasn't for Kim Wu Jin, Oh Se Chan would never have sent Li Jina into the dungeon even if he begged for Li Jina, Kim Wu Jin was practically a lifeline. When Li Jina asked his question, Wu Jin had already started organizing the information he had on the needle snake. The needle snake was a 30 meter long snake that was covered in long needle like spines, like a hedgehog. It won't be easy. It was extremely dangerous. There's also the poison. Not only did the needle snake have extraordinary physical prowess, its spines were also coated in poison, extremely potent poison at that, to the point that even those who had resistance to poison would not dare guarantee they'd be unaffected. And if it shoots its spines, it would be devastating. The snake had the ability to shoot the spikes out of its body when it felt threatened this ability made it extremely hard to deal with, but it was already dangerous even without it. This is probably all that the others will be able to imagine. Of course all the parties that encountered the dungeon had made their own plans and conjectures as to the monster's abilities and how to deal with them however since it was never successfully captured before, there was no confirmed plan as to how to deal with it. In my opinion, the needle snake will probably explode like a shrapnel grenade and send spikes flying all over. 
If even Li Jina could consider this idea then it was to be expected that other players would also and prepare accordingly. The fact that no player had ever successfully defeated a needle snake, that meant that there would be something that would be hard to deal with. Maybe it shoots poison gas from its body. Gas? That could be why its nickname is Death Snake. Poison Fog. That was the real weapon of the needle snake. Its body is covered in needles and the spikes and each of the spikes are coated in poison so if the needles come out, the poison would likely come out too. That's true. So what happens to the poison, if the needles disappear? But if the poison flows out of its body won't it hurt? Li Jina made a contemplative expression. It's poison gas, it wouldn't feel it. Li Jina's face relaxed as he thought about that however Kim Wu Jin stopped paying attention to him. But this still isn't difficult enough to be in a ranked dungeon. The part that Kim Wu Jin thought of the most, was that the needle snake wasn't enough to make the dungeon a rank. If hunting a needle snake was ranked at A, then every dungeon with a mission to hunt the needle snake would be a however there were dungeons with missions to hunt needle snakes that were only B rank. The strength of a needle snake, no matter how you estimate it, was B at most. There must be another reason. This also meant that there was something else that made the dungeon A. If you couldn't find a legendary item in an A dungeon, it wasn't because it wasn't there, it's because you didn't look hard enough. In every A dungeon, if one searched hard enough, one would be able to find a legendary item or skill and that was Kim Woo Jin's goal. Right now, it's good just to hunt monsters. What? Beep. Suddenly a loud sound, similar to that of a flute could be heard from far away. An SOS beacon. Li Jina turned his head in surprise. Now. All the players who made it to the fifth day were those who at least had a bit of strength and after Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina had almost cleared out the floor completely, there was even less reason for someone to activate a help beacon. Did we miss some monsters? Though it was unlikely, that didn't mean it was impossible. It's not a rescue request. Naturally, it wasn't someone calling for help. It's a call for players to join together to hunt the needle snake on the second floor. At this Li Jina laughed. They think they can beat the snake. Their confidence pierces the sky. It was funny to him that they thought they could beat the needle snake that no one killed before simply by banding together. However Kim Wu Jin didn't laugh. You rested for four days, it's time to work. That was letting me rest. Only then did Li Jina realize that this was all part of Kim Wu Jin's plan. What are you going to do? Kim Wu Jin didn't answer him. Now I only need to check the catalog. 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 Eh. Golden again. Chapter, 54. A rank dungeons were their places where the probability to get legendary class skills and items was the highest however it was only on the first floor that one could recklessly fight and explore. In high-ranking dungeons, especially those at B rank and above, the floors after the first floor were on completely different levels. Though everyone knew that there were many opportunities to be had in higher floors, the fact was that one couldn't get them simply through their abilities, courage and determination. Kim Woo Jin also admitted to this fact. The ones left should be sufficiently talented. He had to admit that many of those who entered the dungeon with him to hunt the needle snake were exceptional, by the current standards at least. They should gain their bearings as long as they have enough time. Though they were unprepared to face the survival quest, they would be able to survive and adapt if they had enough time. So he gave them enough time. I don't need to babysit the talented ones now, I don't need to do everything on my own. He had given them five days instead of the one or two they had expected that should be enough for them to rest, gather themselves and prepare for the hunt on the second floor. For the five days, Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina had expended a little effort. Attention! A man, 2M tall, from the High Tai Guild, addressed the 85 players who had after hearing the rescue signal that Kim Wu Jin released. I'm going to notify you first, that most of the surviving are gathered here right now. On Young Jun's eyes swept across the crowd as he said. We are going to attack the needle snake are there any objections? He said this, but on Young Jun's tone did not give anyone the chance to refute moreover, as on Young Jun asked his question, many people put red bands around their arms almost in sync. 
When the others saw this, their hearts sank and a feeling of defeat welled up within them. Is it fifty-six people? The number of people with red bands amounted to fifty-six. It wouldn't help even if we got those that didn't come. In a situation where fifty-six of eighty-five people were openly showing their support for the person talking there was no one who dared to refute. Around sixty people they gathered more than I expected I suppose they're not so bad after all. This was Kim Woo Jin's thought. On Young Jun and those who followed him had no intention of missing the great opportunity they had before them while they knew that the five days of peace and the sudden gathering were not accidents, they would naturally make use of the situation to their advantage. It was clear to them that with the five days of rest and preparation that they had, as long as they went into the second floor with a plan then there would be no better chance for them to successfully kill the needle snake. There were no objections, so I will tell you the only thing you need to pay attention to we are going to hunt the needle snake, and you'd better not interfere. On Young Jun and his allies decided to put up a strong front to ensure there were no issues. For any of those who try, we will kill you. We will kill you. How ruthless. It was a warning to those who were not a part of the group. At that moment, a large black man with curly hair approached Kim Woo Jin who was among the crowd in English, he asked. Did you understand what he said? Kim Woo Jin answered as if he was waiting for such a question. Good luck. A red snake slithered through a sea of red bamboo, a type that could only be found in dungeons. SSS. The body of the snake was over 33 meters long and it was thick enough to easily swallow a car long red spikes covered its body, similar to a hedgehog. The needle snake. It moved openly and brazenly through the bamboo shoots, exuding an aura as if daring something to attack it. SSS. Suddenly the snake stopped and flicked its tongue rapidly as it flicked its tongue, the snake tasted a scent it hadn't tasted before. The needle snake's eyes became sharper and its aura changed, like a predator that had been cornered. Kia. It released an angry scream. Fire. At the same time as the shout was heard, many fireballs were launched to the needle snake. Kuyang. The fireballs hit the body of the needle snake and exploded loudly. This showed that these weren't ordinary balls of fire but had instead been enhanced with magic their power couldn't be compared to the normal fireball. The needle snake once again let out an ear-piercing scream as if to validate the power of the fireballs. However, that was only the beginning. Fireballs once again bombarded the snake as on Young Jun's voice once again repeated the order. The fireballs flew for a third time, devastating the needle snake and the red bamboo. The players were winning. It was a sight to behold. However no one expressed any joy rather, everyone became even more serious as they knew it wouldn't be so easy. Get ready. Before long, those who had been waiting in the bamboo started moving forward. Thud. Those who appeared were armored to perfection with their gleaming armor and shields even larger than themselves, they were the perfect representation of the word tank. Then the needle snake burst forth from within the flames. Sha. A uniquely horrifying sound was released from the needle snake as it charged toward its target at a speed that greatly belied its size. Ah ugh. As soon as it arrived at its target, it wound its body tightly around the unlucky individual. Pop. The player burst similar to if a child grabbed an earthworm in their hand and crushed it. All the players who saw this, froze. What ash, what? He just popped. Although they had made many plans and contingencies, the player had died before they could even begin to think properly. Wake up! At that moment the voice of An Young Jun rang out in the bamboo forest. Hurry! Mages, get ready to cast. Shoot the arrows. Immediately after the order, arrows began to fall like rain. Pfft! A long thread similar to a spider's web attached to the needle snake's tail, and many arrows pierced its body. Once again, fireballs painted the sky red. Move in. Some players began closing in on the snake with barrels of oil in their hands, intending to use the oil and fire to gravely wound the snake this showed that players had prepared a smart strategy for this battle. Will they kill it? Li Jina who watched the fight from a distance, was getting a little worried. Their strategy is perfect perfect. Then a skeleton soldier next to him replied. Those tactics are far from perfect. 
Li Jina gave the skeleton an odd look. That's far from perfect. In his opinion, it couldn't be more perfect than this starting with the initial use of fire, the skillful placement of the tanks, while using the ability of the archers to constrain the monster along with the additional attacks and great teamwork, this was a performance that was hard to recreate even by first-class guilds. This teamwork was only possible because Kim Woo Jin gave them five days. Teamwork and proper planning weren't something that could be done in just one or two days. Aren't you just bluffing? Their tactics are wrong. You're always right huh? Li Jina felt that Kim Woo Jin was simply blowing hot air instead of answering, the skeleton asked him a question. If you encounter a monster for the first time, what would you do first? First. I'd probably give it a jab. TL, a testing punch. So does that look like a jab? Jab? Ah. Li Jina nodded as he finally understood why Kim Woo Jin said their tactics were wrong. If you are not fully confident in defeating the Needle Snake, it's most important to create an element of confidence. The first to do against a Needle Snake that no one had ever killed before, was to test it. The priority should be to learn how tough its skin is, how resistant to the elements it is, how fast it moves, its strength. This is not a game. Gaining the advantage by pouring in firepower only worked in novels and video games. The bigger problem is about to start. What was about to come would be even more troublesome. There's another problem. There is no information on the needle snake, so I don't know what it would do when facing such a situation. Wouldn't it shoot out the spikes, or spray poison fog like you said? They should have prepared for such attacks. The needle snake attacks weren't the problem Kim Woo Jin was sure that they were prepared to handle whatever the needle snake threw at them. But there's probably no plan for if it was to escape. Escape. It was then. Kaya. At the same time that Li Jina showed a look of surprise, the struggling snake launched its attack. Go back. Careful. The snake rolled fiercely, its surroundings becoming a field of death and all the players jumped back to avoid it. Uh. Huh. The players were shocked and the struggling snake immediately changed from its vicious attack to something they weren't expecting. No, it's running away. The needle snake rapidly left the battlefield before the tanks knew what was happening, it pushed them aside at an incredible speed, and in the blink of an eye, it was gone. Li Jina was surprised. It really ran away. It wasn't just Li Jina that was shocked, all the players that had been fighting with great determination were at a loss. It ran away. What should we do? Chase after it. What's the command? As the skeleton soldier saw the indecision that swept through the group of players, it said in a cold voice. They just did something you should never do in front of a monster. Huh. What's that? Hesitate. It was as Kim Woo Jin expected. Kia. The needle snake, who had run away rapidly without looking back, wondered why they weren't chasing it and stopped the feelings of the players who were unsure what to do when it suddenly escaped, could be felt by the needle snake. Needless to say, though the snake could not understand words, actions or gestures, it could instinctively feel that these prey had lost their edge realizing this, the snake immediately turned and rushed towards the weakened prey. SSS Chapter, 55 The needle snake was clever it knew where the ones who shot the fireballs at it were hidden and so it charged toward them at its greatest speed. When such a sudden change happened, a proper reaction was impossible. Ma dash, it's going to the mages. St dash, stop. The tanks tried to use their bodies to stop the snake, but they were too slow. Run. The mages realized the situation and tried to escape but it was virtually impossible for them, who lacked stamina and agility to even think about outrunning the snake. Kaya. The needle snake began to sweep players away, wielding its thorn-covered body like a whip. Kook. Arg. Screams rang out as more and more people died. Everyone, back in your positions. A voice reminded them of their objective. You expected this outcome. These people had entered this place knowing they could die, they knew that such a scenario was possible from the moment they entered the dungeon. Tanks, move to the front and buy us some time. Mages and healers, fall back to a safer location. 
The players steeled their nerves and reformed the battle line the one-sided massacre had once again turned into a proper battle. Kaya. After they regrouped, the players attacked with vengeance. Fire. Boom. Fireballs filled the sky about to bombard the snake again, but this time the snake tried to counterattack. Swish. As the fireballs neared it, the needle snake took a deep breath before shutting its mouth, its body beginning to swell up like a balloon. When the players saw this, they shouted. It's gonna blow. The snake also screamed. Pyuhuk. The needle stuck in the needle snake's body swept through the area like a storm, however the players had expected such an attack. Ugh I knew this would happen, but it's even worse than I imagined. The players had somewhat expected and prepared for it, so while there were still injuries and casualties, the proof of their conjecture gave the players confidence. Now it has no needles. We just need to attack. Most importantly, the snake now covered in holes was not something they were afraid of. The players, who had gained confidence in its weakened appearance, approached the snake. Please let me take a bit of its skin to make a wallet. We will be the first to kill it, so its skin will be sold for a ridiculously high price. Everyone wanted to be the one who landed the final blow on the snake. Burke. Suddenly one of the players fell to the ground. You dash, uh. Following him, all the players who'd approached the needle snake began falling one by one and it was not difficult to figure out why. You have become afflicted with needle snake poison. A kind notification told them the reason. It has poison too. From the holes left after the spikes were shot from needle snake's body, poison began to flow. When faced with this new colorless and odorless poison, there was only one thing the players could do. Go back. Retreat. However it wasn't easy to leave the range of the poison. Fuck, retreat. The range of the needle snake's poison was much larger than the players anticipated and it was still expanding it was as if water was flowing from a spring that would never dry. What is with this difficulty? No matter how difficult an A dungeon should be, this is too much. The skeleton soldier didn't answer him, instead it kept on looking with its flaming eyes. The figure of a needle snake without its spines appeared in Kim Woo Jin's eyes as he used the vision of the skeleton soldier with the help of the Grim Reaper's mask. It finally happened. As he had expected, Kim Woo Jin had no major reaction to what was happening neither his face nor his eyes showed any change almost as if it wasn't significant in any way. However, as he kept watching, he saw something unexpected hidden in the nape of the needle snake's neck. Eye of Horus activated. Skill being used through summon monster magic power consumption increased. The skeleton's eyes became golden as the skill activated and Kim Woo Jin inspected the thing that caught his eye. Yellow Dragon Spirit Orb Wangryong's Yueju 1. This is the reason why it's a. A powerful legendary item was stuck on the needle snake, hidden from view. As soon as he confirmed what it was, Kim Woo Jin decided to make his move he got up from his seat and twelve skeleton soldiers got up off of the ground together with him. Kim Woo Jin who was in the middle of them suddenly spoke, seemingly to no one. Place the bodies. Damn, do you really think I came here to mess around with corpses? Huh? In response to Lee Jin Ah's complaint, Kim Woo Jin only gave a brief statement. If you don't want to do it, then switch with me. My childhood dream was to be a professional wrestler like The Undertaker, but now my wish has come true brother, I'll do my best. After that, Kim Woo Jin went to hunt the needle snake. Chapter, 56 No player believed that hunting monsters would be an easy task in fact, they usually entered dungeons with a good understanding of the dangers and the probability of death. Usually, the courage of those players who hunted monsters that were never successfully hunted before, like the needle snake, could not be understood by most people. To not freeze when overwhelmed by despair in the moment of death, but to instead have the courage to scream in its face and fight with all your might. But there were cases when even this bravery could be shaken. When they lose a fight? No. When they saw their allies being consumed and killed one by one in front of them, that was when the players truly felt the horror of the dungeon. Ah. Uh. 
This was the situation that Jin Young Ho found himself in wearing heavy armor that was almost double his size, Jin Young Ho was a tank it was the tank's duty to be the closest to monsters and as such they usually needed to be even more courageous and resolved than the other players. And Jin Young Ho's courage was exemplary. The moment the needle snake rallied, the moment most of the surrounding players grew fearful and fled, he instead chose to attack it, to give the others time to escape. It was a sublime example of his great courage. Gulp. However his courage couldn't help but waver when he saw the other attacking players be gobbled up or poisoned. Schwa. Soon, the needle snake started approaching him and Jean Young Ho's courage went away altogether. Fuck. 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 He cursed the fact that he would have to feel the pain of being crushed and melted in the stomach of a monster he couldn't even expect to be rescued because everyone was afraid of the snake's poison. Ah. Help me. Anyone, save me. I don't want to die. Ah. He eventually screamed in despair, but no one came to help him. Kook. The poison the needle snake emitted first caused the afflicted players to suffer from vomiting, dizziness and paralysis before causing death making it hard for the players to fight back after they inhaled it. SSS. The needle snake had great confidence in its poison as it leisurely approached its prey, not feeling threatened at all. It was at that moment. P.U.K. With the sound of something piercing into flesh, one of the needle snake's red spikes once again entered its body. Kia. The surprised needle snake turned its head in the direction that the spike came from standing there was a player who wore a skeleton mask over his face and in his hands was another red spike. A second needle also entered the body of its owner where the spikes were inserted were not just random spots on the snake's body, but were instead the holes from which the spikes had been shot from in the first place. Kia. It was an attack that the tough skin of the snake could not protect against. The needle snake has been afflicted with blood poison. A notification popped up, showing that the attacks were indeed effective additionally, the needle snake's poison clearly had no effect on the attacking player. This was clear evidence that the player was indeed Kim Woo Jin and no one else. The power of Apophis has been activated. You are immune to the needle snake's poison. The needle snake's poison has accumulated in your body and increased the strength of blood poison. No other player in the world could move so freely within such a deadly poison. After taking another spike from his inventory, he once again reunited it with its rightful owner. It seemed as though he intended to make the needleless needle snake, full of spikes once again. Needless to say, the needle snake wouldn't just lay there and let him do as he wished. The snake dived toward Kim Woo Jin who put another spike into it, as though he was arranging a bouquet of flowers the needle snake's body shook and Kim Woo Jin used this chance to run toward its head, reaching into his inventory. Upon reaching its triangular head, he stabbed the needle in his hand into the needle snake's right eye. There was a gut-wrenching sound. Sha. A scream filled with pain and anger burst forth from the snake's mouth as Kim Woo Jin easily retreated from its body. The real fight was about to begin. Kung. The needle snake slammed its body on the ground and started to writhe back and forth as if it was trying to get the spikes out of its body. Kwa Kwa. As the snake rolled around, the red bamboo forest was decimated, even rocks and the roots of the bamboo were pulled up after 30 seconds, an empty plot of land about the size of a school playground was created only then did the snake stop writhing. Sha. Sha. The snake panted slightly though it had just started fighting Kim Woo Jin, it hadn't had time to recover from the fight with the players before. As it was exhausted, its aura began to weaken, its focus was starting to wane and the range of its poison fog was also reduced. Kim Woo Jin inserted another spike into its body. The snake roared in anger as it was unable to stop this pesky prey suddenly, with its one remaining eye, it saw a black orc skeleton appear, holding a red spike. Boom! The skeleton started running towards the needle snake. Damn it! On Young Jun, the leader of the needle snake hunting team, had his face in his hands. It's over. Right now it was hard for him to hide his despair, after all it was a natural reaction. How many survived? I don't know everyone is scattered right now. About how much? About 30 people. On Young Jun's snake hunting team had consisted of 71 players now, 
only about 30 of them were still alive and the number could still be less. What about those who are still in the poisonous gas? You want to save them? They're practically dead already. Even if they managed to save those players, their numbers wouldn't surpass 50 if the total number of players on the second floor were combined, there would be 60 of them at most. Even more bad news was constantly being reported. The loss of tanks was heavy. They are the ones who are the least likely to escape the poisonous gas. The tanks who stood at the forefront of the battle had suffered the most as a result. The next battle will be even more difficult without tanks. Fighting such a monster without tank players to absorb damage, was like going to war while naked. This meant that it would be much harder for them to obtain good results even if they fought with all their might. It was basically game over. Fuck. The situation was so bad that An Young Jun couldn't help but curse twice. It was at this time that someone gave a report. There is a player fighting the needle snake right now. What? The news was unbelievable and it soon spread among the survivors. Does that make sense? What bullshit are you saying? Of course no one believed it. It's suicide to go into that poison gas. Fighting the needle snake within a cloud of poison was difficult to imagine. Go and take a look. Watch it from a distance. Of course, since the needle snake's poison was colorless and odorless one would never be able to tell if one was within its boundaries. Nadash, the needle snake is running away. What? As it was being pressured in battle once again, the needle snake decided to run away. Chapter, 57 it was not uncommon for monsters to escape from battles dragons hundreds of meters in length, turtles larger than mountains, even ice golems as hard as diamonds could run away. The needle snake has been afflicted with blood poison. The needle snake's stats have been reduced. Therefore, when the needle snake that had been stabbed by the skeleton soldier, turned its back and began to escape, Kim Woo Jin was already expecting it. There were ways to handle escaping monsters. It started running away. Of course, he had made preparations for this exact moment. Report your situation. Installation complete. But is it really gonna come this way? How could you predict which direction it would run in? In response to Li Jina's question, the view of Kim Wu Jin, who wore the Grim Reaper's mask, shifted. Then he began to see the world through the eyes of one of his skeleton soldiers there, he could see many types of monsters' bodies laid on the floor and Li Jina whistling as he hit his hand which had just held up a middle finger to the skeleton, behind his back. SSS. Is it really coming this way? How did you do it? Finally they saw a giant snake approaching them quickly. I'm falling back. When the needle snake appeared, Li Jina immediately retreated however, the skeleton soldier didn't move instead it stood there, waiting. The skeleton soldier waited till the needle snake reached the bodies laying on the ground and when it did, the skeleton then slammed its hands together and chanted a spell. Corpse explosion. Kwa Kwang. The bodies erupted in a huge explosion. Hey. Oh Se Chan who was looking at documents, lifted his and called for his subordinate. Yes sir. I have a question. Oh Se Chan's serious expression and tone made his subordinate very nervous. Please ask. When making documents, how much can we reduce the costs, if we reduce the font size by half? When he heard this, the worker's nervous expression morphed into something difficult to describe. Yes. Oh Seichan's expression didn't shift and he kept staring at the worker. If we reduce the font by half, wouldn't the ink and paper we use be only half? His subordinate gave an ugly smile, similar to if he was crying. Yes that's a great idea we can even buy A4 paper discarded by the manufacturer which costs only 51 per kilogram. Really? When he heard this, Oh Se-chan looked at his subordinate with an appreciative gaze. Ugh. The subordinate felt like crying. Oh Se-chan was maybe the only boss who was willing to use A4 paper that had been discarded by the manufacturer. Hey I was just making a joke. Breaking news. Fortunately another subordinate rushed into the office, diffusing the awkward atmosphere. News. The attack on the four-floor dungeon by the Phoenix Guild failed it was complete annihilation. Oh Se-chan was not surprised by this news. I knew it. 
One of Park Yong Wan's subordinates also died there when Park Yong Wan returns, he'll definitely be upset about it. The dungeon the subordinate was talking about is a four floor C rank dungeon that had appeared in Guangzhou. It was very well known that the leader of the Phoenix Guild party was a talent that Park Yong Wan intended to nurture. I guessed it, but those guys at the Yamato Federation really drew their blades. Oh Se Chan also knew that there was a spy of the Yamato Federation within the group that had challenged the dungeon that spy had willingly become a kamikaze fighter for their cause. So what will happen now? What happens? Naturally he also knew what would happen after. In the interview when he comes out of the dungeon, Park Yong Wan will be a hero of the world, pretending he knows nothing when he gets home, he'll shout, scream and break a few things hell want to find out what happened then, well just send a few documents. While he spoke, a smile spread across Oh Se Chan's face. We'll make the font twice as big as usual. It will be an all out war, but won't the government step in at that point? Park Yong Wan will follow the negotiations between the Japanese and Korean governments, at least on the surface, that's what his personality is like. If it's to his benefit, that guy can even sell his country, but he will always have a knife hidden behind his back, no one would be able to tell his intentions. Oh Se Chan, who was speaking, recalled. The Messiah Guild definitely knows what happened. From what he knew, there were multiple lines connecting the Messiah Guild to the Yamato Federation, the Skull Guild being just one of them. Nevertheless, the Yamato Federation has stabbed Park Yongwan's Messiah Guild must have targeted him as well. In other words, the attack on Park Yongwan was probably the will of the Messiah Guild. But the Messiah Guild won't be able to completely cover their tracks for those who know the true face of the Messiah Guild it wouldn't be hard to catch their tails. A thought came to Oh Se Chan's mind and he couldn't help but recall a man's face the start of this entire issue. I wonder how much Kim Woo Jin has grown by now. Thinking about Kim Woo Jin, Oh Se Chan turned to his subordinate. Send a car to pick up Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah. Uh, hasn't it only been eight days since they entered the dungeon? Oh Se Chan smiled at this question. I'm not spending money on a whim since I told you to do it, just do it. Ah. Only then did the subordinate nod and asked another question. What car would you like me to send? Should I get a rental car as usual? Should I call for one from the junkyard? Oh Se Chan's face dropped when he heard this. What are you talking about? Do you think I'm afraid to spend money? Naturally you have to send a vehicle for a Russian diplomat that way, even if there's a problem, we can get rid of it right? The subordinate nodded, his expression unreadable. Seeing that he understood, Oh Se Chan couldn't help but ask a final question. Actually are there any light cars among diplomatic vehicles? Chapter, 58 Corpse Explosion Requirements, Emissary of the Underworld Level, Level 30 or Higher Effect. This was Johann George's 18th skill. In commemoration for achieving level 30, he had received a catalog reward which turned out to be the skill corpse explosion when he saw the skill, Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but think of the King of Undead. Corpse explosion had been one of the skills the King of Undead used the most after acquiring it, he used it liberally like a child who'd been given a box of firecrackers. Of course, the skill's power was not weak. I almost died many times because of this. Even Kim Woo Jin had almost been killed by the King of Undead with the use of this skill thanks to the experience he had facing such a horrible power, Kim Woo Jin was well aware of the utility of the skill. He knew that it was much more powerful to use the corpse explosion as a landmine rather than use them to simply explode near the target. The needle snake has been afflicted with blood poison. In addition, they had put sharp debris using the blood weapon and bone sword skills on the bodies to use them like a shrapnel grenade. Sha! Under such a vicious attack, the needle snake's skin which boasted extreme toughness, began to bleed but it wasn't just that the snake had been fatally wounded. Kia! The needle snake found that it couldn't move away. The snake that had been fiercely escaping just a moment ago was now writhing on the ground, its mouth open in a threatening gesture. It could never have imagined that the bodies it had been traveling on could explode as if it was on a minefield. Just as I expected. Of course, the needle snake had seen the skeleton and had decided to destroy it it was very clever and it remembered seeing a similar skeleton with the prey who injured it however it wasn't smart enough to realize that the bodies on the ground were a trap. Tuck. 
Kim Woo Jin slowly walked to the snake which then opened its mouth and hissed at him threateningly. But Wu Jin didn't intend to launch an attack, he didn't need to. The needle snake's health has reduced. The needle snake's resistance has been reduced. It started. Because the time was on his side. As more time passed, the health of the snake would keep decreasing and the blood poison would eat up its health faster. However, the current situation was very volatile and it would be dumb to just sit and wait for it to die of course, it would be equally as stupid to just let it go. This was why Kim Woo Jin pretended to attack it by moving around it. This forced the needle snake to also move in response, to keep him in its sights. But every time it moved, its stamina and concentration were consumed. Boom! At that moment, the skeleton soldiers began arriving one by one and also surrounded the snake. Sha! The needle snake which was focused on Kim Woo Jin was forced to split its attention even more. Of course, the skeleton soldiers followed Kim Woo Jin's actions and only made the snake move around instead of attacking it. They threw weapons to force the snake to dodge, sometimes throwing even nearby rocks of pieces of red bamboo at their feet. The needle snake's health has greatly reduced. The needle snake's resistance has been greatly reduced. As time passed, the needle snake became noticeably weaker however, Kim Woo Jin was still wary like a string of tension wrapped around his heart. You have slain the needle snake. Soon, the notification announcing the death of the snake was heard it was a reminder that it had ended but Kim Woo Jin was still nervous. The needle snake has been slain. On the ninth day since entering the dungeon, a notification was issued, informing the players of the end of the quest. This was a moment that would be remembered in history the first time a needle snake was successfully hunted. You've gained the achievement first needle snake hunter. You've gained the achievement needle snake hunter. Naturally such a historic event came with sweet rewards. First needle snake hunter. Rarity, unique. Effect, all stats 20. Needle snake hunter. Rarity, rare. Effect, all stats 3. It was a really sweet reward. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your abilities. The Emissary of the Underworld has conveyed some power to you. The rank of the Blood Poison skill has increased by 1. A skill Stone C, has been awarded. Notifications came repeatedly it was a joyous moment. However in the face of the notifications, Kim Woo Jin didn't express any joy, rather he was moving around busily. Kim Woo Jin approached the corpse of the needle snake and began cutting into the skin just behind its head, around the yellow dragon spirit orb. The skeletons also began to move. Meanwhile, someone hunted the needle snake. Who the hell? The players who had been watching from far away began to move. This is the place. The needle snake is over there. Everyone started to approach the scene of the great battle. Who is it? I have to see who it is. Some had questions or appreciation for the players who hunted the needle snake, others had opposite intentions. I can't go out of the dungeon without any harvest. I have to take a piece of the needle snake's skin. If you're smart, then you always aim to be the Oriole. The players approached like a pack of hyenas aiming to steal the prey of others. Most of the players were those with bad intentions even those who approached in good faith were inwardly hoping for an opportunity to plunder. But this was to be expected. Nothing was off limits in the dungeon. Killing a successful hunter and stealing their prey was something that happened frequently. The number of people who went missing in dungeons was uncountable. Stop. Li Jina said as he appeared in front of the crowd who were running toward the needle snake. Eh. What dash, what the? Those who were running didn't have a choice but to stop and the situation became tense even if this was one of the players who defeated the needle snake, even a lion couldn't fight against an entire herd. However it was clear that players usually wouldn't do something they didn't have a slight amount of confidence in. I'm just going to watch her. Huh? Let us through to see how it's going. One person shamelessly stepped forward and spoke to Lee Jina confidently. You don't speak Korean. He spat the words and approached closer to Lee Jina. Should I speak English? Oh, what was it in English again? His goal was to simply narrow the distance to Lee Jina and then quickly dash past him. Can any of you speak English? 
Li Jina still didn't respond, instead he disappeared and reappeared with his fist embedded in that player's face. Pock. With a gut-wrenching sound, the player's body fell backward, unmoving. Gulp. As the players watched this scene they couldn't help but gulp slightly in fear. Oh my god. This guy is a monster. The players who'd successfully entered the second floor found themselves unable to measure the power Li Jina had shown. In fact, in the opinions of most players, Li Jina's abilities made him quite the monster. Out of all the players recruited by Oh Se Chan, Li Jina was the one who had the best talent. He was among the few players who completely overwhelmed everyone around their own level. And he wasn't the only opponent that these players had to face. From behind Li Jina, black skeletons began appearing one by one. Skeleton Soldier Skill Necromancer A necromancer helped fight the needle snake. What is he like? With the appearance of the rare skeletons, the player became even more hesitant to move forward in fact, the situation had already come to an end because the players knew they wouldn't be able to get anything by fighting, moreover they didn't know if there were any more players behind the two they knew of. So at that moment, there was only one thing they could do. Damn, let's just leave the dungeon. I'll remember your face. Some of them decided to fight outside of the dungeon. And with that, the dungeon was cleared. Chapter, 59 Nine days have passed since the players entered the dungeon, will the attack fail? Tadak A reporter who had just typed that title, raised his head all around him, other reporters also typed away on their laptops, some of them sitting in uncomfortable plastic chairs in front of a convenience store the number of reporters was substantial, many of them hailing from all over the world. All the languages blended together confusingly, there was some English, some French, even Japanese could be heard. But this was nothing strange. This was a historical event no one had ever successfully hunted a needle snake, and only a few groups in the world had successfully cleared an A-rank dungeon. They will fail. Of course, the reporter never considered the possibility of this attempt being successful. It's been nine days, but there's still no news. There's no news. It's not like we expected any in the first place. Most reporters there had never considered that the players would succeed. But there are so many people here. Well it would be quite shocking if they are successful after all. This was because there wasn't a single factor which could help to increase the chances of success. Ah, whatever happens, I hope it happens soon we can't stay here forever. To be honest, the reporters weren't here because of their professional spirit of wanting to report historical events most of them were simply following orders from the higher-ups and were in fact very reluctant to be there. Because of this, the reporters were unprepared to take a photo when the first person exited the dungeon. Huh. Eh. The reporters didn't know how to react rather it was the players who had just left the dungeon who began to move urgently. Gather people. High Thai Guild. Where are the High Thai Guild support team? Hey. Come on. Players covered in signs of intense battle began to call out to people. Who is the person in charge here? Official. Official. Some even called for government officials the reason was simple. Russian. Stop the Russians. They hunted the needle snake. Stop them. Uh, brother. You should come over here at once. They wanted to prevent the needle snake's hunters from leaving this place. Soon after, they discovered Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin who just walked out of the dungeon gate. There. There they are. They hunted the needle snake. However, they could not stop Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina as they walked toward a black Mercedes S Class sedan that had been waiting for them. Of course, it wasn't the fact that it was a luxury car that stopped them if you checked any player who had entered the second floor you could easily find someone who owned a Maybach or similarly upper class car. No, it wasn't the car that stopped them, it was the number plates that were on them. Damn, it's a diplomatic plate. Even if the players were angry enough that they found it hard to control themselves, they could only control and suppress that anger when they saw a number plate belonging to the Russian embassy in Korea. And so Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah were able to easily escape a tense situation. Hey, Se Chan is really amazing. In fact, Lee Jin Ah, who was sitting in the back seat of the car, couldn't help but exclaim, Mercedes Benz, did he have to spend some money? 
Rather than being impressed by the fact that it was a diplomatic vehicle, he was admiring the fact that it was a Mercedes S-Class. I wonder how he feels about the oil prices. Li Jina repeatedly exclaimed in admiration and surprise as he prepared to use this opportunity to its fullest. He laid down in the back seat. Now I can rest a bit. Kick. Then the car slowed down. As the vehicle stopped on an old abandoned road, Li Jina sat up. Click. The lock on the door released and its meaning was simple. We're getting off. There is another vehicle waiting for you. An affirmative answer came from the driver's seat so Li Jina had no choice but to get out, his expression sour. Kim Wu Jin also got out of the car. As soon as they got out, they saw a light car parked on the other side of the road Li Jina could only mutter helplessly when he saw the car. This is more like it damn, that guy really hates spending money. In fact this was to be expected it was impossible for them to take the diplomatic car to the embassy instead switching vehicles in the right place was the perfect way for them to hide their true identities. Li Jina was also aware of this. No, no matter how much it costs, did he really have to prepare a car like this? Did he get it out of a junkyard somewhere? Just look at it how are we supposed to ride in this huh? Is there a human who would drive this? He couldn't stop complaining after he started. There's none. Kim Woo Jin answered Lee Jina's question. This is my car. Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin opened the door, got into the car and started it up with great familiarity, proving it was his. Ha ha ha. As he saw this, Lee Jina could only smile awkwardly and walk around to the passenger side. Yes, in a country where oil prices are so high, you should drive a light car driving an expensive car that only sucks oil isn't worth it. Li Jina did his best to make excuses. Ah, did anything good come from the needle snake? It wasn't a big weapon or anything, but I think there was an inner core or spirit orb or something, no. Then he changed the topic. You took something out of its hide didn't you? Kim Wu Jin ignored him and took a cell phone out of the dashboard instead after he opened the flip phone, he held the number zero, activating the speed dial. This is Oh Seichan. Oh Seichan answered the phone immediately. The Skull Guild has declared war on Park Yongwon there's a lot of detail so well later for now, go to the nearest rest stop and relax for a bit. Tuck. The call ended immediately after. When Kim Woo Jin ended the call and folded the flip phone closed, Li Jina leaned over. What? What's up? In response, Kim Woo Jin smiled. Something good. Wangsan Biel Rest Area. This place, which had once been extremely quiet, had been booming with activity recently. This was because of the A Dungeon that had appeared in Nansan. Whenever dungeon gates appeared, they would attract the attention of the whole world, and the area they were in would become swarmed with people. The player who is said to have successfully hunted the Needle Snake is Isaac Ivanov of the Russian Mokosh Guild. When the news of the successful hunt of the needle snake was released, everyone began to pay attention. What? A Russians got it? Why didn't our country hunt it? Many people were angry. I knew it. Players in our country only know how to talk they're useless. If it were me, I'd let the Messiah Guild handle it. Why did the government open an aid dungeon to the foreigners? We should choose a new president. It was anger towards the incompetence who allowed the sweet fruit that was the needle snake, to be stolen. It was at that moment that a man walked into the rest area filled with people staring at their smartphones however no one paid attention to this man who appeared to be in his mid-twenties who was wearing a hat. The man walked toward a convenience store that was at the side of the rest area and handed the employer a thousand one bill. Please change this to coins. Yes. Ah. The convenience store worker, who had been focused intently on his phone as he watched the news about the needle snake, quickly came out of his thoughts then he handed some coins from the cash register to the man. Sorry, I didn't see you there. He quickly apologized and made an excuse, as he hadn't been paying attention to his job. Did you know? The dungeon in Sinpung the one with the needle snake it's been cleared. The man didn't answer, but the convenience store worker continued to speak. But you know, it was a foreigner who did it they should have let the Messiah Guild do it. Shouldn't they? In response to that, the man replied with a smile. That's right. 
A bright smile could be seen on the man's face. Chapter, 60 Clang! Clang! As he walked out of the rest area, Kim Woo Jin made sounds with the coins in his fist and the first thing he did was check his car. Sitting in the car was Lee Jina, looking extremely dissatisfied nevertheless, he stayed within the small light car even without the mask, given his extremely large size, they decided it would be better if he was not captured by any CCTV or dash cam. All Lee Jina could do as Kim Woo Jin was gesturing for him to hurry and make the call. Making the shape of a phone in the small car, Li Jin Ah looked exactly like a gorilla in a zoo. Kim Wu Jin laughed loudly, then made his way to the public phone booth. Ching. After inserting two coins, he dialed a number from memory. The phone rang briefly. Hey, you're really famous right now. Oh, Seichan started talking immediately as he answered. Isaac Ivanov, how does it feel to become a hero? Asked Oh Seichan in a playful voice. What's the plan for the future? Hey, don't do that you should say something else, be excited. This is a historical moment if you feel like it, you could write an autobiography then you could sell it for 1900 or even 21001. This is a public phone I don't have a lot of time for this call what is the plan for the future? Hearing his resolute words, Oh Seichan knew that he could play no longer. That name is Isaac Ivanov it's basically a disposable character with the title of First Needle Snake Hunter right? After raising it a bit, we have to use it on a bigger stage. Kim Woo Jin did not express any disagreement as Se Chan had said, if the value of Isaac Ivanov's name increases, there would be more ways to use it. As a way to get into a high-ranking dungeon, nothing was better than this name. I see that you have no disagreement. I'll leave it up to you. All right, then let's move on do you know Jin Haimi? Jin Haimi, when he heard this name, Kim Woo Jin could only think of one woman. Isn't she a member of Park Yeomwon's guards? Ah. The moment he asked the question, he realized why it was asked. Is that who the Skull Guild targeted? That's what happened blew her right up there was a spy from the Yamato Federation within the group that entered with Jean Jaime of course, no one knows the exact situation it's not unusual for players to die in a dungeon but the important thing is that something happened. Oh Seichan said in a low voice. I have the data to prove what happened and I have Park Yongwan's phone number. That was enough for Kim Woo Jin to figure out Oh Seichan's plan and how it would turn out in the future he could already imagine Park Yongwan's reaction. Park Yongwan will immediately recruit hunting dogs TL, in this case, the hunting dogs are more like assassins or bounty hunters. After finding enough hunting dogs to pay back for what he had suffered, he would then release them immediately. Of course, they would also reach out to Kim Woo Jin asking him to be a hunting dog who would go out to kill the members of the Skull Guild, instead of being bait. There's no reason to say no. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, this was exactly what had been waiting for. But I can't do it for free. He didn't intend to just work for free. Now, do you have any more questions? Oh Se Chan asked, after Kim Woo Jin went silent. I need a workshop. A workshop. I plan to make items. Directly? Yes. All right, I'll introduce you to a place I know anything else. I don't have any money on hand, can you lend me some? Don't I need to eat? While he said this, there was no change in Kim Woo Jin's voice naturally he knew that Oh Se Chan would never give him money whenever money was brought up, Oh Se Chan would immediately find some excuse to end the call. I knew you'd ask, so I prepared some in advance. But the words that came out of Oh Se Chan's mouth surprised him instead. Open the glove box there's some money for a meal then let's talk next time. The time on the call ended with that. After that, Kim Woo Jin walked toward his car Lee Jin Ah still had his disgruntled expression, and as he saw Kim Woo Jin approach, he rolled the window down. What did Se Chan say? Kim Woo Jin answered him honestly. He said that he put money in the glove box, for us to have a meal. Really? Surprised, Li Jina hastened to open the compartment in front of him. Oh my god, don't tell me Oh Se Chan actually left food money. Is the world about to end? Li Jina was surprised to find an envelope inside he immediately took it out and checked inside. What the? 2001. What he found were 2001 bills. 
Is this right? With this money you can't even add an egg or a potato to a basic udon at the rest area the only thing this can buy is a cup of ramen. Ah. Only then did the two of them realize. Who was Oh Seichan after all? The hunt of the needle snake was truly over. The hunt of the needle snake is successful. The reaction to the successful hunt of the needle snake, which had never happened before, was wild. Isaac Ivanov, the first needle snake hunter. Just who is Isaac Ivanov? Naturally, the interest in Isaac Ivanov, the first person to hunt a needle snake, was high. Is Isaac Ivanov a necromancer? Has a new skill tree appeared? Moreover, eyewitness recounts of the fight increased the interest in Isaac Ivanov very few players were capable of summoning skeleton soldiers that could fight that well. Of course, there weren't all good stories about Isaac Ivanov in fact, the reaction of the Korean public was the worst. A rank dungeon stolen by Russian bastard. Dog bastard. I'm gathering a team to go catch this bastard. From the perspective of the Korean people, the sweet fruit that was the A-rank dungeon was taken away by foreigners. Monopoly An exclusive interview with An Young Jun, who participated in the Needle Snake Dungeon. An Young Jun's interview further exacerbated the opinion of the public against Isaac Ivanov but that didn't last very long. Exclusive interview with Isaac Ivanov Isaac Ivanov says, I've always admired the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov says, I want to do something that others do not do, like the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov, Lee Sejun is my idol. When the interview with Isaac Ivanov, who heavily praised the Messiah Guild, was released, the public opinion in Korea changed rapidly. What are you doing? Why aren't you sending choco pies? If you're Korean, please support Isaac Ivanov. I admit that I'm honored to be Korean. Positive reactions toward Isaac Ivanov began pouring in. When he saw the interview, Kim Woo Jin could not stop himself from laughing in the interview, Isaac Ivanov showed nothing but pure fanaticism toward the Messiah Guild. He looks the way I used to. Like Kim Woo Jin before he returned to the past. There was another reason for this interview. I wonder if he'll need to throw more bait. The interview wasn't really to change the public's opinion about Isaac Ivanov instead it was a bit thrown by Oh Seichan toward the Messiah Guild. If he spoke about the Messiah Guild to this extent, then they would not be able to move against him. For the Messiah Guild, in order to move against Isaac Ivanov, they would need to use a different identity. They'll move sooner or later. If Kim Woo Jin knew anything about the Messiah Guild, then they would definitely move against Isaac Ivanov using a different name. Yes, attack as much as you can. This was exactly what Kim Woo Jin wanted he was eagerly waiting for that day while preparing no, he was already prepared. A armor made of the needle snake skin and a dagger made with its venom covered fangs were already completed. Yellow Dragon Spirit Orb. Rating, Legendary. Available for level 1 and above. Description, this was the Yuaju, which had once belonged to the Yellow Dragon it is said to contain near infinite magic power. Effects. Magic power increased by 50. Magic power recovery increased by 200%. His new legendary item shined brightly in Kim Woo Jin's inventory however, the most brilliant thing in his possession was his blood poisoning skill. Blood poison. Rank, A. Turn your blood into poison the higher the skill rank and player's level, the stronger the poison. With the support from his halo, Kim Woo Jin's blood poison had already reached the A rank and this didn't factor in the bonus of the plus ring this meant that with the plus ring it would become an S rank skill and if he raised it by one more level then it would become an EX rank skill which was the level of transcendence. I'll let them attack me till I'm bloody. This skill meant that Kim Woo Jin would become more deadly, the more he bled. A week later, the news Kim Woo Jin had been waiting for, finally arrived. Park Yong Wan has cleared the 6th floor dungeon. The typhoon was about to blow. The moment Park Yong Wan stepped out of the dungeon gate, the public went wild with his name. Park Yong Wan, a new legend. Park Yong Wan sits down with the president. On TV, news related to Park Yong Wan was broadcasted almost 24 hours a day, including the meeting with the Korean president, which highlighted their close relationship. Hooray, Park Yong Wan! Even the protesters who usually stood in front of the Phoenix Guild condemning them, 
were instead filled with fans singing praises for Park Yong Wan. It was truly a hero treatment thanks to this, humanity was able to escape the fear of the monsters coming out of the sixth floor dungeon. Kim Woo Jin. This hero who was now talking to Kim Woo Jin. If I ask you to kill a player, can you do it? Threw out a very unheroic question. What's wrong? There is something very bad. What's going on? First, answer the question if I ask you to kill someone, you can, can you? The silence was long as it seemed that Kim Woo Jin was thinking about the answer. Soon after, Kim Woo Jin broke the silence. Sorry I don't know if they're targeting me, I can't kill a player who has nothing to do with it. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin stood from his seat and turned to leave, not forgetting to bow first. It was a clear sign of rejection. Kim Woo Jin who just refused the request, slowly approached the door. Park Yong Wan did not try to stop him, and so Kim Woo Jin didn't stop, however he was slowly counting in his head. I'll change the question. Park Yong Wan finally called out as Kim Woo Jin grabbed the doorknob and began to twist it. How much do I have to pay you to kill a player who has nothing to do with it? Huh? Hearing the question, Kim Woo Jin returned to his seat. How much are you willing to pay? For any errors and issues contact me through Discord. Chapter, 61 In 2025, the history of humanity changed the balance between the humans and monsters shifted monsters began taking over cities, even a few small countries were conquered. It was hell. In that hell, Koreans were given shocking news. Park Yong Won. The news said that this man, one of the strongest players in Korea, who believed he was the hope for the Korean people, gathered thousands of players and powerful items and immigrated to Japan. Anyone who heard of this, knew he was selling out his country. Everyone in Korea cursed him but that was all they could do. There was no one powerful enough to judge Park yong Wan now that he had collaborated with Japan, it was too strong. However, Kim Woo Jin was different while others criticized Park yong Wan, he planned to get rid of him. Kim Woo Jin probably knew Park yong Wan better than Park yong Wan knew himself. Park yong Wan is more interested in personal gain than anything else. But it could not be considered as greed Park yong Wan wouldn't sell out his country for greed. It wasn't like there was much to be gained from selling himself, players and items to Japan, to be precise, the concept of assets was meaningless. With the way the world was being destroyed by the monsters, money had lost its value real estate was not even worth anything. Even if the cost was to sell his own country, he will do whatever it takes to protect his own interests. The reason Park yong Wan betrayed his country was because he was afraid that everything in South Korea would be absorbed by the Messiah Guild. So Kim Woo Jin was sure. That guy would never let something like this go. Revenge for that, Park yong Wan was ready to pay anything. Remuneration is good but I don't want to get involved in such a dangerous situation. Confident in what he knew, Kim Woo Jin asked. At least I want to avoid Tosa Gu Pang can you pay me if I die? Of course, Kim Woo Jin wasn't really afraid of Tosa Gu Pang. What he truly wanted was a scapegoat. The owner is responsible for the actions of the dog. If Kim Woo Jin accepted Park Yong Wan's offer, that meant it would be Park Yong Wan's responsibility even if Kim Woo Jin attacked the Messiah Guild, Park Yong Wan would have to bear the responsibility for it. And that was Kim Woo Jin's aim. Hmm. In response, Park Yong Wan stared at Kim Woo Jin, instead of answering. In fact, Park yong Wan was inwardly panicking. Look at this bitch. When he first called Kim Woo Jin, he was trying to make him into a hunting dog, and have him bite the skull guild. I didn't expect it to turn out like this. Park Woo Jin had planned to threaten him if necessary, and if he still didn't agree, then kill him but now Kim Woo Jin had given him an unexpected proposal. What's with this? Naturally Park yong Wan was able to tell that Kim Woo Jin was hiding something if it was before, he would have already killed him. Well, if he can bite the Skull Guild, it doesn't matter if he's a crazy dog. However things were different now. That's an interesting offer you have what exactly can you do if I look after you? Park yong Wan asked for more details, and Kim Woo Jim replied as if he was waiting for it. The Skull Guild are probably anxious to kill me. It was what Park yong Wan wanted to hear the most. Hyung, I'm here. Oh Se-chan, 
who was organizing documents on his desk, responded to Li Jina's greeting without looking up. I'm busy. Oh Seichan's expression was cold as if he didn't want to talk to anyone. I bought pizza have some. But when he heard what Li Jina said next, Oh Seichan's smiled brighter than the hot cheese on the pizza. Hey, my brother Li Jina. The manliest man in the world. I was waiting for you to come. Seichan, don't be like that. Sorry, what kind of pizza is it? Li Jina placed three boxes stacked on top of each other on a desk. I bought this and that. The other employees who were also working in the office, looked on in interest. I'm not a little person who's afraid to spend money to even buy a cup of noodles. Li Jina's words were full of hurt. I couldn't even buy noodles with that money I came to Seoul because I didn't want to be stuck longer in that car. I'm sorry, was it that bad? I know. Yeah. Li Jina was surprised by Oh Seichan's apology of course, his surprised expression didn't last long. At least you should have spent some money to get coffee from the vending machine sorry. Following the words of Oh Seichan, Li Jina could only smile in frustration. So what's up? You want to make a report? I finished reporting, but what is it? Oh. Kim Woo Jin cried we killed all the monsters Kim Woo Jin was great I have nothing to say and I did all I could. When he heard this, Lee Jina frowned. Then what do you say? I'll score everything Kim Woo Jin did as 1 out of 10. Lee Jina said in dissatisfaction. What's that guy's aim anyway? Oh Se Chan, who was biting into a slice of pizza and shrugged while looking at Lee Jina's expression. I don't know. Would you help him if you didn't know? I don't need a reason if he helps me get rid of the Skull Guild, right? Skull Guild. Li Jina also knew about the bad relationship between Park Yongwan, the Skull Guild and the Yamato Federation behind it. Of course, he also knew about the possible war between them. Who is it? As he asked this, his expression became quite serious. Kim Wu Jin wouldn't face off against the Skull Guild simply because of his sense of duty. Park Yongwan. Kim Jae Hoon. Kim Jae Hoon. Who is that? A player from the Yamato Federation who later joined the Skull Guild they have no achievements and they're the type who aim for the safest dungeons to challenge usually dungeons without even C rank monsters. Is that it? That's all I know. Li Jina frowned again. Why is Kim Woo Jin after a guy who isn't anything special? Li Jina who asked his questions, picked up three slices of pizza and started eating Oh Se Chan frowned as he looked at him. What? Is it because I ate three slices? No wait, I bought this pizza. He made a face as though he'd been wronged but Oh Se Chan didn't pay attention to him, that wasn't the reason. That's all the information I've managed to gather, that just means he's good at hiding it. One of the ways that Oh Se Chan collected information was through backlogs. Obviously the more the person tried to hide, the more loopholes one would be able to find in their disguise. But this player either had exceptional loyalty, cowardice and no past to speak of, or he had the reason and ability to evade Oh Se Chan's radar. Isn't that just because you're incompetent? Then Li Jina mentioned the third possibility. Oh Se Chan nodded. Well as of right now, Li Jina, your bank account has been seized, you don't have a credit card and you're being hunted by Interpol I can't help you. Li Jina's face immediately stiffened. Ah. It dash, it was a joke. His awkward laugh filled the room. Hyung do you like pepperoni pizza? Here, have a slice I also bought some pickles you can place them in the fridge and eat them as a side dish there's a lot of hot sauce too. Oh Seichan's cold face, studied Li Jina's awkward expression and the office became silent. It was at that moment. Ring. Ring. One of the many cell phones on Oh Seichan's desk began to ring. Ah, uh, the phone. Li Jina hurriedly to grab the phone and handed it to Oh Seichan. It must be urgent. Oh Seichan didn't pursue it and instead answered the phone. Oh, Isaac did the meeting go well? The caller was Kim Woo Jin. Oh, indeed. Oh Seichan's expression became firmer for a second. Yeah, yeah. Soon after, Oh Seichan hung up with a frown. What's wrong? Chapter, 62 
Many players enjoyed great wealth because of their profession boasting in expensive sports cars, luxury goods and ignoring the law they lived a life of debauchery. But not everyone was like that. Some players preferred to steadily and safely attack dungeons and they could be considered a class of their own. Kim Jae Hoon was like that. In the eyes of the public, he was just a loyal member of the Skull Guild who simply attacked low difficulty dungeons along with his guildmates. At least until something happened. Damn it. Matsumoto Naoki when Kim Jae Hoon failed to deal with Kim Woo Jin, his situation changed 180 degrees. In fact, Kim Jae Hoon only gave a bit of minor assistance to the job. I just helped. There was nothing great, nothing special I just did what I normally do. So even if it failed, it wouldn't be Kim Jae Hoon's problem. But why do I have to get fucked for it when it was Matsumoto who failed? However, after the assassination attempt failed, the Skull Guild apprehended him, accusing him of being a spy. Of course, Kim Jae Hoon professed his innocence and in the end the Skull Guild didn't expel him for it. Fuck. Instead, they let him stay but from the way they treated him, Kim Jae Hoon knew they didn't believe him just yet. If they find out anything, then it's over. It wouldn't be a good thing. The problem he had was that he actually was a spy. If the contact point with the Messiah Guild is revealed. The Messiah Guild. They were the ones who were actually behind Kim Jae Hoon. The Messiah Guild was leading the Skull Guild towards a direction they desired, with the help of Kim Jae Hoon. It's really dangerous. Naturally, if this fact was revealed, Kim Jae Hoon's life would be in danger. The Messiah Guild would get rid of me. It was clear to him what the Messiah Guild would do before the trouble truly broke out. I have to restore the Skull Guild's trust in me somehow. From Kim Jae Hoon's perspective, the only way he could live was if he resolved this situation. Therefore, Kim Jae Hoon made many preparations. Kim Woo Jin, I have to kill him with my own two hands. The recognition he'd gained from killing Kim Woo Jin was the best option he could think of so he began to look for opportunities to kill him. So even while he maintained his public persona, he began digging for information on Kim Woo Jin and in his search he found something. Thanks to that. Is this information true? I'm sure. So Kim Woo Jin is investigating me? Since he had a meeting with Park Yongwon he has requested information about you we gave him false information, as promised. Thank you. Please pay the agreed fee for this option to our account. Yes, I'll send it right away. He was able to learn that Kim Woo Jin was in fact researching him. Is this a rice cake from the sky? From the perspective of Kim Jae Hoon who was planning to kill Kim Woo Jin, this was like a rice cake falling into his lap from the sky. No, it's not the right time. Therefore Kim Jae Hoon intended to be more cautious with his movements. He fought that monster Matsumoto and managed to survive he's not some average player. Kim Jae Hoon didn't dare to underestimate Kim Woo Jin. It's hard for me alone he'll have to stick near to those guys who can surely catch him. Just as a lion hunts with its pride even while being confident in his own strength, he would not overestimate himself and intended to call a few companions. If I ask the Skull Guild for help, they'd just use me as bait. The Skull Guild was excluded from the start. If he were to go to them with the information on Kim Woo Jin, he himself would look suspicious instead. Also, the Skull Guild didn't have the time to pay attention to Kim Woo Jin. Now that the Guild had sent a war declaration to Park Yong Wan, they were now focusing on defending against the inevitable counterattack. I have no choice. At that moment, a man's face came to mind the man was seemingly in his thirties with sharp features, like an unsheathed blade. Yang Ji Hu I'll have to call him. Yang Ji Hoon. He was one of most powerful people that Kim Jae Hoon could ask, with superior skills and abilities. This was the era when players were in power in this era, Park Yong Wan's clearance of the sixth floor dungeon made a big stir. Park Yong Wan. The legendary man who cleared a sixth floor dungeon said to be Korea's new powerhouse. The value of the Park Yong Wan strategy for the sixth floor dungeon said to cost 100 trillion won. Park Yong Wan. Will he become Korea's new future? There were many waves in Korea and even in the international community however the biggest change was in the Phoenix Guild. Phoenix Guild, do they believe Park Yong Wan to be the best? 
restructuring in the Phoenix Guild expected to take place, the cause. Park Yom Wan The power structures in the Phoenix Guild began shifting, with Park Yom Wan at the center and all of his aides gained higher positions as a result. Kim Woo Jin Among them, there was one unexpected name. Kim Woo Jin That fucker who hit his colleagues. No, how on earth did he become one of Park Yom Wan's aides? He hasn't been in the guild for even half a year right? Within the Phoenix Guild, there were many who expressed surprise when they heard that the newbie Kim Woo Jin was included. As their surprise was too high, rumors also began to circulate within the guild. When he heard about the rumors, Park Yong Wan only made a short statement. Kim Woo Jin I'm interested to see where this player can go in the future he has potential. At that time, the rumors seemed to come through. I bet that Kim Woo Jin is one of Park Yong Wan's guards. Damn it, I'll have to be careful around someone else now. Kim Woo Jin became one of Park Yong Wan's men, and if you touched him then you'd have to face Park Yong Wan in the end. You kept your promise. Park Yong Wan had indeed kept his promise, and so it was time for Kim Woo Jin to keep his promise. The Skull Guild isn't making any moves, it's making me impatient. In order to keep his promise, Kim Woo Jin headed to Yang Jongdo, Incheon. Chapter 63 The higher the rank, the more popular a one floor dungeon would be, however from two floors and above, the lower-ranked dungeons were popular. When the difficulty was low, the probability of death was also low of course, there were exceptions. Two-Headed Dog Dungeon Floors, 2 Difficulty, D-Rank Maximum Number of Entries, 61 Requirement, Level 40 and below Challenge Conditions, Defeat the Two-Headed Dog Reward, None the exception to this was the two-headed dog dungeon which appeared in the rural housing complex in Sokwazan, Yangjongdo. As a D-rank dungeon, it was obviously favored by most players whose levels were in their thirties. A dog with two heads, also known as the double-headed dog, is not only a strong monster, it was also cunning. The problem was that the maximum number of entries was only 61, which meant that many monsters would spawn or that the chances of a powerful monster spawning were considerable. Players looking for low difficulty dungeons were thus forced to find something else at the same time, even the skilled players turned away as there was no reason for players who were confident in their skills to challenge a D-rank dungeon. In other words, this dungeon was nothing but a headache for the AA guild who had bid for it. Lee Yong hyun Is that correct? Yes. Of course, the AA guild didn't really care whether the applicant was an angel or a demon. That was the reason. Please sign here. The reason that Kim Woo Jin didn't need to give the AA dungeon management team proper identification when he was signing up his name to participate in the dungeon using someone else's name. It was a good place to hunt Kim Jae Hoon. There is no dungeon better than this one for this. Of course, this was also a good stage for Kim Jae Hoon when it came to Kim Woo Jin. This was why Kim Woo Jin chose this dungeon. Because you can bring any number of bodyguards. If the stage was good enough to make Kim Jae Hoon go into the dungeon, then Kim Woo Jin would also go with him. However the risk that Kim Woo Jin was taking was great. And if it's this Gie brings someone on the level of Matsumoto or higher. Even Matsumoto Naoki who was the disciple of the sword saint was helped by this guy to kill Kim Woo Jin. Maybe someone from the Messiah Guild will come. Above all, given Kim Jae Hoon's connection to the Messiah Guild, there was a chance that Kim Woo Jin would meet someone that he knows. It was then. Kukuku. A Range Rover, a car called the Rolls Royce of the Desert appeared. The vehicle pulled into a provisional parking lot and people began pouring out of it one by one. Eye of Horus has been activated. Suddenly, behind his sunglasses, Kim Woo Jin's eyes began to glow with golden light. There was no Kim Jae Hoon among that group, instead. Yang Ji Hu. It was Yang Ji Hu. A round table night better than I expected. He was one of the members of the round table from Kim Woo Jin's memories. The knights of the round table, in the beginning they weren't a large group like a guild. 
It began as a small gathering for players with legendary items relating to the great King Arthur it wasn't until 2025 that the small group suddenly became enormous as society became more scattered and broken, there was a need for more groups who would become the pillars that held it together and the Knights of the Round Table became one such group. It was like the Messiah Guild. No, actually, the Messiah Guild was their root. Park Shinhai played a decisive role. Park Shinhai, who owned the Merlin staff was one of the members of the round table and with her support the group was able to set a good foundation and expand. It was similar to the growth of the Messiah Guild. Then an incident occurred. After that, they were attacked by the King of Poison. The King of Poison attacked the round table and the result. They were naturally absorbed by the Messiah Guild. Because of that incident, the Knights of the Round Table were absorbed into the Messiah Guild and later became the members of Park Shinhai's personal guard within the Messiah Guild. At the time, Kim Woo Jin hadn't had any questions about the process. However it was different now that Kim Woo Jin knew that the King of Poison actually worked for the Messiah Guild. It was all a ploy. He now knew that everything that had happened were situations created by the Messiah Guild in a build to control the whole world. From a certain standpoint, it was enough to make one tremble in fear. In fact, Kim Woo Jin felt a pain spreading across his chest. The pain from the stab of a knife from the person whom he once trusted the most. An indescribable anger welled up inside him. Let's be calm it's not too late to grasp the situation after this job is over I just need to focus on this for now. Kim Woo Jin forcefully suppressed his shivering. If Yang Ji Hu is the bodyguard. He did not mistake his prey or his mission. A dog who mistook the prey was a crazy dog that could not be a hunting dog. I'll do my best. So Kim Woo Jin had a decision to make. Inventory. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin activated his inventory in a small voice. The inventory appeared before him and an item caught his eye. Skill Stone C. Effect, increase a skill of D rank to the C rank. Cannot be traded. Kim Woo Jin had been saving this skill stone for a more valuable skill he intended to gain, but he used it at this moment. Use skill stone on Skeleton Warrior Mastery. Skeleton Warrior Mastery has increased by one rank. Skeleton Warrior Mastery. Rank, C. Effect. Enhance the ability of summon skeletons and increase the number of skeletons that can be summoned effect increases with. Skill rank. Skeleton soldier stats increased by 20%. 14 summonable skeleton soldiers. The notifications popped immediately. It is time to enter the dungeon. Please get ready. Kill 300 to advance to the next floor. What? 3000. Screams could be heard beside a stream that flowed loudly at the foot of a 200 meter mountain. Fuck, what 300? This is a D rank dungeon. Bullshit. There must be an error. The screams came from the players when they saw the conditions to clear the first floor. Of course, not all of them screamed, instead some of the players welcomed this situation. If the objective is 300, then it's possible that they will probably be weak monsters. If you look at it differently, they should be on the same level as goblins. It's better to kill 300 monsters like goblins that fight a few strong monsters. It was thanks to that that they believed that no strong monsters would appear. Of course there were also those who didn't know how to react to it. TCH. Yang Ji Hu was one of them. Wearing black armor, he shook his head and tapped the sword at his waist. I didn't put on such expensive gear to kill a couple goblins did I? Yang Ji Hu who still had his hand on his sword turned to the man beside him, dressed in a robe. Kim J E Hoon. Please say something should I use this expensive gear to hunt goblins? For my life. Only then did the man in the robe speak Kim Jae Hoon's voice was filled with tension. The underworld's Kim Jae Hoon is very, very good huh? Young Ji Hoo laughed heartily. Bloody fucker. Kim Jae Hoon boiled internally. In actuality, the relationship between Kim Jae Hoon and Young Ji Hoo was not very good. It was similar to two employees aiming for the attention of a senior executive they were competitors. Competitors who could not show gaps, weaknesses, or regrets to each other, even if they're shown to everyone in the world. This time, 
I have to catch Kim Woo Jin. That was how desperate Kim Jae Hoon was. The Phoenix Guild and Skull Guild are at war, so the more I build my reputation, the greater their faith in me. At this very moment, Kim Jae Hoon's life was at stake. Yang Ji Hu looked at him with a smile. How many more did you bring besides me? Of course, it was obvious that Kim Jae Hoon wouldn't just rely on one Yang Ji Hu. Five more people except you and your colleagues. Then eight people. Eight, including Yang Ji Hu and his men, quite a large number of personnel to hunt Kim Woo Jin. You must be rich. The costs of this wouldn't be small. Did you have to get a loan? So noisy. Ha, huh, I guess I got it. Even the costs had to be borrowed. From Kim Jae Hoon's perspective, it was inevitable. It's better to spend money to survive. Whatever the cost, it didn't matter as long as he could save his life. Just need to survive I just need to survive. As long as he survived, when he finally became the rule of the world, he'd be able to look back at this moment with nostalgia. For that future, spending money now is good. Rather, he was relieved that he had enough for this much the talents he had among him would be his trump card at the poker table of this, Kim Jae Hoon was sure. He'd never expect this. Kim Woo Jin would never imagine. Chapter, 64 Cup A man screamed in pain as he swung at the goblin skeleton soldier that had just stabbed his side. Pock. The skeleton soldier flew to the side and landed roughly on the ground as other skeleton soldiers besieged the man. Park yun Su had been fighting them for a long time and his eyes slowly became filled with fear as he looked at the other skeletons approaching him. Why was Park yun Su fighting skeletons? The answer to this question was actually quite easy. There wasn't even a need to question why he was suddenly attacked. Fuck. I only tried to deal with one player to make a little money. In the beginning he was also one of the players who was hired to enter the dungeon to kill another player. It was not unusual for him to be attacked. No one said Kim Woo Jin was such a monster. Park Yun Su was sure that it was Kim Woo Jin that attacked him. Absolutely certain. Kim Woo Jin. Park Yun Su shouted at seemingly no one. Let's make a deal. He had decided to negotiate. I'll give you information on Kim Jae Hoon I'll give you information about all the other guys that I know about let me live, and all the information is yours. The skeletons had no reaction to his words. Boom. Instead they narrowed the distance to Park Yun Su which caused him to shout again. I dash, you better keep me alive. There are many more here than you think. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin appeared. You want to give me information? Only then did Park Yun Su fix his expression of displeasure. That dash, that's right. And how can you guarantee that this isn't a trap? Trap? Can you guarantee that you're not just saying this to escape your current situation? That. Are there any guarantees that a guy who came into this dungeon to kill me for a few dollars isn't trying to trick me now? Park Yun Su could only nod in agreement. Yes, your right trust is needed what can I do? Put down your weapons first then we'll talk. Oh dash, okay. As he heard this, Park Yun Su hesitantly put the weapon in his hand on the floor, then he took off his helmet TL, that doesn't sound like a good idea my dude. Suddenly. Quick. Kim Woo Jin threw the dagger in his hand at Park Yun Woo's forehead, where it stuck. P.U.K. At the same time, the skeletons charged forward, as if they were waiting for this moment TL, told ya. It was very underhanded to make a deal and then renege when the other party lowered their guard. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't care about that. It was funny to think that people who came to kill him really thought he would negotiate with them. Eye of Anubis has been activated. Kim Woo Jin's eyes became black. Day 2 of the Dungeon Challenge The players who'd initially despaired at the task to slay 300 monsters eventually regained their calm. Are there really no monsters as strong as we thought? I only found one or two orcs. The monsters that appeared were much weaker than they expected in any case, they had no information on the second floor and those who experienced this large battle could not figure out the situation. No one knew what to do, but they were not in a hurry. In the situation, if you overdo it, you lose. Everyone's thinking was similar slowly and safely, 
moving forward while saving energy. After spending time on the first floor, everyone wanted to go to the second. However, Kim Jae Hoon was different. Fuck. Unlike most players who grew more calm and patient the longer they stayed in the dungeon, he grew more impatient. You said you hired five people. Before entering the dungeon, Kim Jae Hoon had made preparations with the players he hired. He would leave marks around and they were to follow the marks to find the designated place. Indeed. But no one's coming. However no one had arrived at the designated place. Even after waiting for a few hours, not even one of them showed up at the designated place. At this time, Kim Jae Hoon's mind was filled with thoughts. What happened? All the players he hired were very skilled, at least in terms of hunting players. Therefore when faced with these weak monsters that even ordinary players could kill, they would not suffer even a scratch. Could they all have hidden their identities? Their identity counterfeiting would need to be perfect. Although there was a chance that one or two of them were fake, it was impossible for all five of them to be fake. Damn, what is this? Kim Jae Hoon's patience had long been worn thin and he was becoming confused. Hey. Fortunately his confusion didn't last long. Something's coming. What? Someone had finally come to the promised location. What is it? Are they enemies? A group of goblins and orc skeletons appeared before them, showing extreme hostility. At the sight, Kim Jae Hoon could not become any more upset. It was clear now what he had to do. Yang Ji Hu. Above all, Kim Jae Hoon's most powerful card was the one he could trust the most. Indeed, you can only trust me, I'll show you something motivating. A card called Yang Ji Hu. Oh. Behind the group of skeletons, a man could be seen. That's Kim Woo Jin, right? In response to Yang Ji Hu's question, Kim Jae Hoon closed his eyes with a wand in his hand preparing for battle. Yang Ji Hu smiled at Kim Woo Jin and said, Now then, where do you want to show me your skills? Chapter 65 Boss When he heard the voice of his subordinate, Oh Se Chan, who was having a meal with Li Jin Ah, put down his chopsticks and picked up a pickle. What's up? The signature has been confirmed. Yang Zhang Do. Yes. When this was confirmed, Oh Se Chan narrowed his eyes. From the way he is acting, there must have been a big shot protecting him, so who is it? The signature of the player who entered the dungeon under the name Jiang Unhyuk was almost identical to that of Jiang Chen. Jiang Chen. Oh Se Chan was surprised by that. You mean Yang Ji Hu? As he heard that, Oh Se Chan scratched his head, as if he could feel a headache incoming. Then Li Jin Ah, who had been eating rice as though he was about to starve to death, asked. Who's that? The best rookie under level 50. Yang Ji Hu, he was one of the strongest rookies that Oh Se Chan knew. Is he stronger than me? Yep. He was indeed stronger than Li Jin Ah. Li Jin Ah was one of the followers to whom Oh Se Chan gave his full support. His items, skills, and combat experience were all top notch, so the fact that Yang Ji Hu was stronger proved that he was a monster. You're saying Kim Wu Jin is with Yang Ji Hu right now? That's right. Ha, huh, what? This is nothing. Oh Se Chan's expression showed that he wasn't worried at all. Why isn't it a big deal? Kim Wu Jin, that guy's a monster too. True, they're both monsters when compared to you. Why did you have to say it like that to hurt my tender heart? Of course, Kim Wu Jin was also a monster. So that's the problem if those two collide, even with my standards ID be unable to judge the outcome. If the two of them truly fought, it would be hard to accurately say who'd win and who'd lose. But in terms of skills, he is better than Kim Woo Jin. As it was, without external help, Kim Woo Jin should be at a disadvantage. In the dungeon, there will probably be more people on Kim Jae Hoon's side. While in the dungeon, Kim Jae Hoon would not only have the help of Yang Ji Hoo, but also his subordinates. This meant that Kim Woo Jin would have to face many unknown variables. I don't think so. Li Jin Ah's thoughts on the other hand, were quite different. What are you talking about? What kind of player do you think Kim Woo Jin is? When asked this by Li Jin Ah, Oh Se Chan made an odd expression. 
a player who is stronger than you. Ah, really? He eats until there are no side dishes and no rice, but keeps on eating. Does he eat the air? What are you trying to say? What kind of player is Kim Woo Jin? What does he have more than any other player? Coarseness. He never fights a losing battle. Isn't he going to fight a losing battle now? Li Jina looked at Oh Se Chan and said with conviction. That guy never fights a battle he cannot win never. Clang. Kim Woo Jin's scimitar and Yang Ji Hu's long sword struck each other roughly before bouncing away as though they were magnets of the same pole that rejected each other. Wow. Yang Ji Hu let out a sound of surprise. You have better physical strength than I expected where did you get that leather armor? Conversely, Kim Woo Jin just calmly stared at him. I tried my best, but this guy could still match me. Just now Kim Woo Jin had used his full power to class against Yang Ji Hu, but they came up even. Our health is similar. This meant that the physical stats of Kim Woo Jin and Yang Ji Hu were almost the same. It wasn't that surprising however. Kim Woo Jin's physical strength was much higher than others his level but that didn't mean there weren't others like him in the world. Yang Ji Hu was definitely not behind him when it came to the quality of their equipment. I'm in a little trouble. In fact, if they were to directly compare items, Kim Woo Jin might be at a disadvantage. There was also something else to consider. Gawain's Necklace Gawain's necklace as a legendary item, its attributes were amazing it was this necklace that gave Yang Ji Hu his entrance into the round table. If you only considered stamina, Kim Wu Jin's situation was more unfavorable. When we start using skills, I'll be suppressed. This was because Yang Ji Hu's halo was the undying fighter when it came to comprehensive ability, the emissary of the underworld was much better, but when it came to prolonged melee combat, the undying fighter was much more advantageous. Kim Wu Jin knew this better than anyone. The emissary of the underworld shows interest in this battle. Suddenly a notification sounded in Kim Wu Jin's ear a notification that could only be heard when players who had gained the attention of their respective halos fought. Oh, you got a halo notification right? If you weren't worthy to fight, I wouldn't get a notification like this. Yang Ji Hu also got the notification. If I win this fight, I should get at least one rank up shouldn't I? This meant that Yang Ji Hu was also a player who received a lot of attention from his halo. It will be difficult to win. Kim Wu Jin came to the conclusion that it would be difficult to overpower or kill Yang Ji Hu as he was now. I'll have to go all in. Suddenly, more skeleton soldiers appeared. What the? Yang Ji Hu's face contorted when he saw the additional nine skeletons. Hey, everyone. With his face still frozen. He turned his head to look at Kim Jae Hoon and his subordinates who were stuck in battle with ten skeletons already. Sorry. We'll finish quickly. The two subordinates felt his gaze and responded immediately. Hurry up. Kim Jae Hoon also shouted toward Yang Ji Hu, though his message was different. Yang Ji Hu smiled and turned back to Kim Woo Jin. I think it'll be quite hard, but I must kill you. The skeleton soldiers seemed to respond for Kim Woo Jin as they started running toward Yang Ji Hu. Seeing this, Yang Ji Hu gripped his sword tighter it would be difficult to fight Kim Woo Jin along with the nine skeletons but even under these circumstances, Yang Ji Hu did not lose confidence. Even if it's ten to one, I need to create a legend every once in a while. Rather, he was prepared to enjoy the battle. Ha! Huh. However, unexpectedly, the skeleton soldiers bypassed Yang Ji Hu and instead went to fight his companions. What? A stream of light flashed as Kim Wu Jin swung his scimitar at the distracted Yang Ji Hu. Yang Ji Hu blocked the fierce attack and shouted at Kim Wu Jin's face. What are you trying to do? However, Kim Wu Jin didn't respond, instead, he launched a fierce offensive against Yang Ji Hu. They began to clash constantly. The strikes of the blades resounded again and again. What is this kid? Yang Ji Hu found it hard to understand what was going on he knew that Kim Wu Jin was an expert, but he clearly couldn't withstand such fighting since his halo appeared to be the emissary of the underworld. How could Kim Wu Jin not know that it was against common sense to treat himself like a skeleton soldier? What the hell? While such questions filled his mind. Kook. 
In the distance he heard what sounded like someone holding back a pain scream it was a strange sound. How many skeletons had been added to that battle? No way, is this kid? As soon as he heard the sound from the other battlefield, he understood Kim Woo Jin's aim TL, a bit slow there Ji Hun really. Their blades clashed again and he was now more convinced than ever. He's just stalling for time. It was as he expected Kim Woo Jin did not intend to defeat Yang Ji Hu after all, Yang Ji Hu wasn't his prey. Kim Woo Jin's target was Kim Jae Hoon from the start, he was just pinning Yang Ji Hu down to accomplish that. Of course, he had prepared much more than this. Shit. There's poison. As he took a few hits, Yang Ji Hu shouted loudly to warn everyone. Be careful of their web dash. At that moment, Yang Ji Hu stumbled. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. It was as though as soon as he realized that Kim Wu Jin was using poison, the power of the poison intensified. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin heard a notification in his ear. The enemy has been afflicted with blood poison. The needle snake's poison accumulated in your body has strengthened the effects of blood poison. The needle snake's poison which had accumulated in his body was another of trump cards that Kim Wu Jin prepared. The method was simple using the fangs of the needle snake he had created two poison daggers then, when he entered the dungeon, he stabbed them into his body. Due to the effect of the daggers, the poison spread throughout his body, which then activated the power of Apophis. In other words, by stabbing himself with the daggers, he had strengthened the blood poison. It's the Poison King's secret technique. It was a secret that helped the Poison King used to become a terrifying monster. The secret that slaughtered the Knights of the Round Table. It was this powerful trick that allowed the Poison King to annihilate the strong members of the Knight of the Round Table. In front of the secret technique, there seemed to be nothing Yang Ji Hu could do. With a black face, Yang Ji Hu looked up at Kim Woo Jin. Unfortunately, you faced the wrong person. At that moment, Yang Ji Hu's armor began glowing with soft, warm light. Protection of the sun. The light completely covered Yang Ji Hu's body the moment he completed his spell. The skill he'd activated was the powerful buff skill of Gawain's necklace that could only be used once a day, the protection of the sun. It was at that moment that Yang Ji Hu finally showed his conviction to fight Kim Woo Jin with all he had. He finally used it. It was the moment that Kim Woo Jin was waiting for. Retreat. Suddenly Kim Woo Jin and the skeleton soldiers all ran away without turning back. Chapter 66 Protection of the Sun The effect of this skill, which can only be used once a day by the owner of Gawain's necklace, was a 20% increase in all abilities. This included stats, defense, resistances, even attack power and skill effects were buffed. Everything was increased by 20%. It was a crazy effect, but there were restrictions. For one, the duration was 10 minutes, which couldn't be said to be too long or too short too, after using protection of the sun, Gawain's necklace would become disabled for one day afterward meaning that all other effects that it had would also be unusable. There's a penalty like that, so I don't need to stick around. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, he had no reason to fight Yang Ji Hu while he was using protection of the sun. Retreat. At Kim Woo Jin's call, the skeleton soldiers simultaneously turned and ran away it only took a few seconds for them to scatter completely. Ha. Huh. Retreat. It was a scene which caused the few who were fighting to stand still, unsure of what to do this was especially true for Yang Ji Hu who had just been locked in fierce combat with Kim Woo Jin. Fuck. Yang Ji Hu was the first to come to his senses. After them. With a loud shout, he started to chase after Kim Woo Jin. In his head, there was only one thought. The effect ends in 10 minutes. Protection of the sun only lasted 10 minutes and after it ended, the situation would probably go back to the way it was before, or maybe even worse Yang Ji Hu knew he had to defeat Kim Woo Jin before then. Of course, Kim Woo Jin wasn't very surprised. He's following me. He had expected that Yang Ji Hu would not let him get away that easily. And so, he prepared just for that. Corpse Explosion Clap As he activated the skill, Kim Woo Jin clapped his hands together. Kwang. Then the bodies that were under Yang Ji Hu's feet, exploded with a loud bang. 
the explosion caused by a pile of three bodies was quite powerful. Cook. Young Ji Hu, who'd been caught in the explosion, was thrown to the floor by the powerful explosion. However, he immediately sprung to his feet and continued chasing Kim Woo Jin. Compared to the explosive power, the damage he sustained from it did not seem to be much. This was the power of the protection of the sun buff. If it wasn't for that buff, he wouldn't have been able to take it without a scratch but after the buff ended, he'd be much more vulnerable than before. I'll definitely catch you. From Yang Ji Hu's perspective, there was another reason why he was chasing so fiercely. If I don't, he'll die. Yang Ji Hu, who felt he was in a life and death crisis, followed Kim Wu Jin with all his power. And Kim Wu Jin kept leading him away. He kept going to where he buried bodies, and using his skill. Kim Wu Jin's accuracy was amazing even in the high speed chase, he was able to hit Yang Ji Hu perfectly every time. It was like hitting a moving stone in the air with a pebble. From a certain standpoint, if one had been constantly tossed around by explosions, they would eventually stop pursuing, even if the damage was little however Yang Ji Hu didn't stop, rather, even with Kim Wu Jin's amazing ability to always hit him, he kept closing the distance between them. The distance between them, which was rather long before, had been shortened to 20 meters at the speed that they were going, 20 meters could be covered in an instant. Rapid Speed Then, Yang Ji Hu made a winning move he casted the Rapid Speed skill which increased his movement speed by 20% for 30 seconds. Rapid Speed His actions didn't escape Kim Wu Jin's notice. Kim Wu Jin suddenly stopped running and turned, swinging his scimitar toward Yang Ji Hu, whose speed rapidly increased. I knew you'd do this. Yang Ji Hu closed the distance between them and swung his long sword toward Kim Wu Jin. Clang! The two blades clashed with a loud sound. At the same time, Kim Wu Jin was sent flying at an extreme speed the difference in power was evident. This bastard! Only then did Yang Ji Hu realize his intentions. You're really such a cheap person. Yang Ji Hu swore at Kim Wu Jin but received no response. You don't dare to attack me again huh? You're just a bastard do you not dare to face the anger of a strong guy? He didn't attack again, he just had a smug look on his face. Then let's continue. Along with that, Yang Ji Hu launched a fierce attack. It was an uneven fight. Every time there was a sound as their blades collided, Kim Wu Jin's body shook greatly. Despite the light attacks from Yang Ji Hu, Kim Wu Jin had to defend with all his might if a passerby was to see this fight, they'd be able to clearly see that Kim Wu Jin was at a disadvantage. In fact, they were no longer on the same level. Oh, you're still alive huh? I have to try harder. Yang Ji Hu stopped and stared at Kim Wu Jin, inspecting him it wasn't that he expected a trick of some sort, but rather he was just being vigilant. Protection of the sun ends in 100 seconds. 100 seconds. He was clearly measuring the time he had left. Moreover, it wasn't just for fun that he was attacking Kim Wu Jin so fiercely. There is nothing here. It was to make him pull out all of his hidden trump cards one by one. Does he really not have any more hidden cards? He confirmed that there seemed to be no more traps. Then I should finish this now. He did not intend to give Kim Wu Jin time to prepare anything else. It ends here. Yang Ji Hu prepared to make a move. Chick. Suddenly an arrow flew toward Yang Ji Hu. Tink. However it just bounced off his armor without piercing through. He received no damage, however Yang Ji Hu's expression stiffened. What is this? As he looked on, black skeletons emerged one by one. You should have about 95 seconds left. Kim Wu Jin's voice drifted into his ear. Already? Only then did Yang Ji Hu realize. Stalling for time. From the start, Kim Wu Jin had been tying him down, keeping from helping the others and now it could be seen that his so-called retreat was only an extension of that. I'll tell you one thing I don't have to give verbal commands to my skeletons. From the beginning when Kim Wu Jin shouted his order to retreat, it was like a professionally directed movie. The skeleton soldiers did not need Kim Wu Jin to tell them commands nevertheless, at that time, he had cried out. I don't have to say retreat, but I shouted it anyway why? 
then. Because I knew that you would start to chase me. By shouting, Yang Jihu and his companions would have the illusion that they really intended to retreat and follow them. And as I expected, you followed me. And in fact Yang Jihu had indeed chased after Kim Wu Jin. As if I was crazy. When Yang Jihu had chased after Kim Wu Jin he hadn't cared whether his companions were following and just kept running. While he had been chasing Kim Wu Jin, the skeletons had returned to attack his subordinates and Kim Jae Hoon the fact that they had returned now, proved that the battle was already over. You also didn't notice that we've been moving in a circle. Moreover, Kim Wu Jin didn't just run in a straight line without aim instead, he led Yang Ji Hu in a circle that way the skeletons were able to catch up faster. In other words, everything was in accordance with Kim Wu Jin's plan from the start. So, do you understand now? After saying this much, a mocking smile spread across Kim Wu Jin's face. Yang Ji Hu's eyes were clouded with confusion as he looked at that smile. You guys. Who are you exactly? Yang Ji Hu couldn't help but shout out. In response, Kim Wu Jin said. You really don't know my identity after I explained so much. Fine, I'll tell you. As he heard this, Yang Ji Hu gulped subconsciously. My identity is. Tension began to build in the clearing. But Kim Wu Jin suddenly said something else. Oh, it's almost time. What? It was then. Protection of the sun ends in 30 seconds. A notification sounded again in Yang Ji Hu's ears to inform him of the imminent end of the skill. This was the reason why Kim Wu Jin had been having a conversation with Yang Ji Hu to waste even more time. In other words, he no longer needed to talk. You cowardly bastard. As soon as Yang Ji Hu shouted, the smile on Kim Wu Jin's face disappeared, his face returning to the usual neutral expression. Kim Wu Jin and his skeletons retreated again, not intending to face Yang Ji Hu within those remaining seconds at all. Ah! Yang Ji Hu could only make a stormy expression as he saw this. Not long after, another notification sounded in his ear. Protection of the sun buff has ended. Gawain's necklace is now disabled. In addition, Kim Wu Jin and his skeletons had disappeared. Chapter 67 what were the requirements to become a good hunting dog? The most important thing was courage. You need the courage to stand and face whatever is in front of you, even if it's bigger and stronger than you are. But that doesn't mean you had to face them head on really good hunting dogs would not go face to face with a bear, but they still had to know how to keep the bear there long enough for the hunters to catch up. When Kim Woo Jin first became a member of the Messiah Guild, this was what they asked him to do. It was Kim Woo Jin's job to make time while his companions casted their powerful skills. Of course, after that, Kim Woo Jin became a hunting dog that could bite anything, but it was clear that he hadn't been a good hunter from the start. Fuck. This was horrible news for Yang Ji Hu of course as his current state was evidence of what a good hunting dog could do. The black armor that he'd been so proud of was now ripped like a rag and blood could be clearly seen through the gashes. You have been afflicted by blood poison. Your health has greatly reduced. Your defense has greatly reduced. Your resistance has been greatly reduced. However, it was the blood poison that flowed within his body that worried him the most. Of course, Yang Ji Hu wasn't that easily attacked. He was remarkably powerful and fierce the fragments of black skeleton soldiers were scattered all around him and the fact that there were only two skeletons remaining were all proof of his skill fucking bastard. In such a situation, the fact that Kim Woo Jin still refused to face Yang Ji Hu head on showed how highly he regarded his skills. If it had been just a normal expert then Kim Woo Jin would have already killed him with his scimitar. Kim Woo Jin waited till the end simply because Yang Ji Hu could be considered an expert among experts. Tashuk. Eventually, Yang Ji Hu could no longer withstand the assault and collapsed even then, Kim Woo Jin didn't carelessly approach him. The Emissary of the Underworld is pleased by your victory. The Emissary of the Underworld bestows some of its power to you. The skill rank of the Skeleton Soldier skill has increased by 1, TL, I believe the author meant Skeleton Warrior Mastery here but they wrote Skeleton Soldier skill and I'll leave it as that. Only after confirming his victory did Kim Woo Jin approach Yang Ji Hu's body he didn't celebrate or cheer for his victory. 
After a tiger finished hunting, instead of roaring to announce it, it immediately feasted on its prey and Kim Woo Jin also confirmed his harvest after a successful hunt. The first thing he inspected was Yang Ji Hu's sword. Sword made from an ogre warrior's blade fragment. Rarity, unique. Physical attack, 161. Available for level 30 or higher. Description, a sword made from a piece of an ogre warrior's sword it is extremely powerful. 30 health when equipped. Increases damage by 25%. It was a good item in fact, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that it was among the best items in the level 30 range if sold, one could afford to live in a modest commercial building with reasonable rent. However Kim Woo Jin had no interest in such items. Gawain's Necklace. Rarity, Legendary. Available for level 22 or higher. Description, the necklace worn by Gawain, one of the knights of the round table it is protected by the sun. 40 health when equipped. 40 magic power when equipped. 40 stamina when equipped. Increased damage by 10%. Increased defense by 10%. Increase resistance by 10%. Protection of the sun activatable and daily. Legendary items were amazing enough to understand why players so willingly risked their lives for them. This is the first legendary item from a Knight of the Round Table. Moreover, before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin had never encountered any legendary items related to the Knights of the Round Table, so it was quite the novel experience. However, despite that fact, Kim Woo Jin did not look happy. It's time to see how stupid I was. Rather he prepared for the despair that he would feel again. The eye of Anubis has been activated. His black eyes turned to Yang Jihu's slowly cooling body. Then Yang Jihu's memories slowly flowed into his mind. Kim Woo Jin. Park Yong Wan. You need my help. What's going on? A memory gradually appeared. Knowing the real identity of the Messiah Guild, I wonder how the world will turn out. I liked it because it was an elite course, but what was this elite course? It tastes like death. The faces of his past colleagues and those who'd risked their lives to save the world flashed in front of his eyes he also watched as Yang Ji Hu helped prepare to devour the world. In fact, this information was pretty important to Kim Wu Jin. I finally got to know the faces of the guys I'm going to have to kill. He knew there were some past colleagues who had concealed themselves in various places, waiting for the opportune time to do as they were ordered. However the moment he saw their faces, he couldn't help but feel his anger rise. I'm Yang Ji Hu it's an honor to meet the great hero. In Kim Wu Jin's mind, a memory of Yang Ji Hu meeting Li Se Jun appeared. In that memory, Li Se Jun said one thing to Yang Ji Hu. I will become the ruler of this world. When he heard this, Kim Woo Jin was no longer angry. Instead he had a cool, indifferent expression. I will kill you. He was getting ready to hunt the biggest monster in the world. In a dense forest, eleven players were hidden within the trees. Their appearances were rather odd to look at this was because every one of them was covered in mud. This wasn't at the level of rolling on the ground a few times either instead they were soaked from head to foot in mud. Of course, this was on purpose. Will this really work? I told you the two-headed dog has a strong sense of smell because of its two heads. They had covered themselves in dirt to deal with the two-headed dog which was the boss of the second floor that they were currently on. Trust me. This had been the idea of Park Ju Man, the middle-aged man who seemed to be around his early forties that was talking. I've hunted the two-headed dog before. The other man, who appeared to be in his twenties kept his mouth shut, but his displeasure was visible on his face. He wasn't the only one everyone was showing some dissatisfaction or discomfort at this point. Of course. This is too much isn't it? Damn, how much longer do we have to do this? It was one thing to get muddy, but staying still while doing it was like a form of high-level torture. We've entered the second floor of the dungeon and been in the position for an hour, how much longer do we need to do this? If anyone was made to wait for an hour, they would be dissatisfied. The two-headed dog is more savage and cruel than you think and more cunning I learned this the hard way last time by losing two companions. This was why he made them wait. And in the process of fighting him, 
We lost three more people I saw it clearly with my own two eyes a monster bigger than two tigers bit the heads off of two of my colleagues at the same time I assure you that it takes at least 30 players at level 30 to kill it this is because the monster has very high stamina. As the explanation continued, the shouts of dissatisfaction from before were suddenly absent. You mustn't hurry when against this type of monster hurrying would not help you instead we need to move step by step. When he was finished, there were no longer any complaints. Everyone was tense again. And it's not like other players could kill the boss right now as you said, it's only been an hour no player has probably even seen the two-headed dog yet if they had, then they must be dead already. The last few words made everyone relax a bit some even laughed lightly. It was at that moment. The two-headed dog has been slain. The dungeon has been cleared. Ha. Huh. Ah. Uh. The dungeon was cleared. Chapter. 68. It's the players. The dungeon is clear. As players began to appear from the dungeon gate, one after another, the soldiers who were guarding it began to cheer. What? Clear. Damn it. Everyone move. Quickly. The management team of the AA guild who was in charge of the dungeon moved towards the gate. You are Mr. Yung Hyun Su, right? Please sign here Mr. Kim Ji Hyun. They were busy telling the surviving players to sign the document to show that they have successfully cleared the dungeon. It was a lot of work as there were members of several guilds that participated in the attack and not just those from the AA guild. Kim Woo Jin also couldn't avoid it. Ah! A member of the AA guild who noticed Kim Woo Jin walked out of the dungeon gate came up to him and checked his face and name. You are Mr. Kim Jae Hoon, right? The face of Kim Woo Jin who nodded at the question was now that of Kim Jae Hoon to whoever saw him. It was a mask. Like Isaac Ivanov, Kim Woo Jin now wore a mask with Kim Jae Hoon's face. Please sign here. With the mask covering his face, Kim Woo Jin signed the document that the staff of the management team offered him. Shik. With the memories of Kim Jae Hoon in his head, the way he signed was exactly the same as Kim Jae Hoon. The staff of the management team, who confirmed the signature, bowed toward him. I will bring your belongings right away. Kim Woo Jin didn't answer and instead waited for the staff to retrieve the safe with Kim Jae Hoon's wallet, car keys, and smartphone. Now I just need to send a text message from his phone. Kim Woo Jin intended to have Kim Jae Hoon be the sole survivor at the same time, he intended to turn him into a traitor. It was not difficult. Kim Woo Jin deliberately intended to make a crack between Kim Jae Hoon and the Skull Guild. In this situation, what would happen if Kim Jae Hoon disappeared right after completing the dungeon? The Skull Guild would try to find him. They would find out that Kim Jae Hoon sent a message as soon as he left the dungeon. They would then find out that the text was sent to a black phone in the Phoenix Guild headquarters and they would come to their own conclusion. They'd believe that Kim Jae Hoon had betrayed them and sided with the Phoenix Guild. And then I will become their main target. Naturally, they would go after Kim Woo Jin first to get to the traitor Kim Jae Hoon. After all, it was Kim Woo Jin who'd first made them suspicious of Kim Jae Hoon. This promise should be enough. As agreed with Park Yong Wan, the Skull Guild would definitely try to capture Kim Woo Jin with all of its ability. The Messiah Guild will make a move too. Kim Jae Hoon was one of the key figures who had both his hands and feet in the secrets of the Messiah Guild it would be strange if they stood still in a situation where he was deemed a traitor, especially since the last known communication he appeared to have had was with the Phoenix Guild. The Messiah Guild would also move to find Kim Jae Hoon and at the same time put pressure on Park Yong Wan. If Park Yong Wan shows the skills he used when he sold out the country, there should be no problem. Then Park Yong Wan would then begin to fight the Messiah Guild just like before he reverted. The AA Guild staff member soon returned with a safe that contained Kim Jae Hoon's personal effects and Kim Woo Jin opened it using the password without hesitation. Then he saw Kim Jae Hoon's wallet, keys and chalky smartphone. Do you need anything else? They asked as Kim Woo Jin took the items. Can you fill up my car's gas? Kim Woo Jin acted the way Kim Jae Hoon would. Fine. With perfect acting, Kim Woo Jin retrieved the car and immediately headed to Incheon International Airport. The Incheon International Airport, 
despite the occurrence of monsters, was still packed with travelers the parking lot was also filled with vehicles left there by passengers. Unsurprisingly, no one paid it any mind when another car was added to the group. The fact that the man who got out of the vehicle entered another one in the vicinity also went unnoticed. Oh, you're here. A man sat in the driver's seat with a nasty expression and tried to get Kim Woojin's attention. However, when all he was met with was resistance, the man proceeded to tear his face off. Before long, Kim Woojin was greeted by what he considered to be the equally ugly face of Lee Jina, who sat in the driver's seat with a wide grin. I feel like I'm a spy this is like Mission Impossible if later my biography becomes a movie, my role would be played by an actor like Leonardo DiCaprio. TL, Dun Dunin Dun Dunin Denin. You just drove a car. I barely use a car that costs oil these days, he usually makes me use the train. Li Jina clicked his tongue as he spoke, recalling his earlier conversation with Oh Seichan. So thank me if it wasn't for me, you might have had to spend two hours on the train. At that time, Kim Jae Hoon's car that Kim Woo Jin had left was driven off. He's fast. It was evident that Oh Seichan's men had begun working. From now on, Oh Seichan's men would be the ones manipulating Kim Jae Hoon's actions and had be sure to leave enough trails and clues as he went. Like Hansel and Gretel, the trackers would follow the trail and go where they wanted them to go. By doing so, they would be able to find the identities of the trackers and also connect them to the Messiah Guild. Also, he isn't an ordinary person the Messiah Guild should be wary. This was why Oh Seichan's name was one of the top priority objects that remained in Kim Woo Jin's memory. Maybe at this point, the Messiah Guild's greatest enemy is Oh Seichan. What happened to that guy named Yang Ji Hu? Of course, in Yang Ji Hu's memories, there was mention of Oh Seichan's name, but it wasn't that important to Kim Woo Jin. Yang Ji Hu concealed his identity to enter the dungeon, but he learned that. In Yang Ji Hu's memory, had gone to hunt Kim Woo Jin with a perfect identity however Oh Se Chan had still been able to identify him. He's great. Even Kim Woo Jin had to express his admiration. Didn't you meet in the dungeon? How was it? Li Jin Ah, who didn't know the significance to Kim Woo Jin, was merely asking out of curiosity. He was stronger than you. Hey, really? When he heard this, Li Jin Ah's expression crumpled. What kind of combat power do I have? Do you all know my skills? Ha! Huh. I'm not joking, if I were to show it properly. Li Jina complained as he pouted like a baby. Yang Ji Hu fought 14 of my skeletons and destroyed all 14 of them if you want to prove that you're stronger than that, just tell me we can check at any time we'll be happy to help. The truly strong don't reveal their powers. Not willing to say more, Li Jina immediately started the car. Burung. The car engine gave a low roar and Li Jina finally said what he really wanted to say. There's a dungeon. Li Jina would never come there just to catch up with Kim Woo Jin. The two of us will go and clear it. The reason he'd come was to prepare to attack the dungeon. There's a dungeon report on the back seat. Kim Woo Jin immediately opened the envelope and took out the file inside. Then he checked the details. Horned Fox Hunt. The title caught his eye. It's that dungeon in Buncheon. He knew a lot about this dungeon. You know it? Li Jina wouldn't have expected it. Because the attack failed twelve times. He was serious. The Horned Fox dungeon was a dungeon that had failed twelve times at this point. This meant two things. One, it was difficult. Yeah, the Horned Fox killed a lot of people. The other was that monsters like horned foxes were worth taking such risks and challenging to hunt them. Well, the horned fox truly is worth it. Of course it is, but I'm completing it as Isaac. The first needle snake hunter, at least that title was needed. So what do we do? Kim Woo Jin did not have to think about it for too long. In fact, he wasn't worried nor would he lose sleep. There's no reason to reject the dungeon that I already cleared before returning to the past. The Horned Fox dungeon was one Kim Woo Jin had attacked personally before returning to the past and it was one of the decisive dungeons that led him to become famous. There were two differences. In his other life, Kim Woo Jin cleared this dungeon in September, three months from now, 
and at that time he'd already failed 19 times. And. What's your answer? We'll participate. Right now Kim Woo Jin was a monster that his past self wouldn't be able to compare to. For any errors and issues contact me through Discord HTTPS, Discord Q3DSTGO. Chapter, 69. It's been a week since the battle with Kim Jae Hoon and Yang Ji Hoo in the dungeon. In that time the world kept moving as normal without any major changes. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, cobalt prices spiked rapidly due to the appearance of monsters and in France the casualties caused by terrorist players were on the rise. However situations like these were no longer uncommon in the world. The world has been quiet these few days. Li Jina ran his mouth while lounging in Oh se -chan's office during lunch. Oh se -chan looked at him with a cold gaze. Seeing this, Li Jina only smiled. What did I do wrong? Li Jina looked at the small pot filled with ramen that was between him and Oh se -chan. You're not looking at me like that because I ate your ramen right? His connection crumpled as he said that. Damn I didn't even eat any high quality snacks. In the face of his fierce protest, Oh se -chan made a face at him. Hey, do you really think I'm looking at you like this cause of ramen? Li Jina hesitated a little. Yes. You drive me crazy. Is that not it? Oh se -chan answered in an annoyed voice. No, it's not. Damn, then that's good. But that's not all. Oh se -chan tapped his head. In your eyes, the world is peaceful and beautiful, but to me, it is the complete opposite. What's going on? I discarded Kim Jae Hoon. Yes. It was an unexpected response. Lee Ji Na also knew what Kim Jae Hoon was worth at this point. What does that mean? He couldn't help asking. A shark took the bait I threw to catch a fish, what else could I do? I had to cut the fishing line quickly. Oh se -chan's face was firm and serious. We don't have much time two years, three years at least from then, unless we have the strength to contain them, they will actively show their ambitions and the moment they show their ambitions, it's virtually game over not game won't end if they show their ambition. Li Jina's expression also hardened when he heard that. Oh se -chan looked at him and said. So when you hunt the horned fox the plans for the future will be completely different, depending on what happens. Trust me who am I? A hungry bastard. Ah, uh, really? Brother. I need to stockpile energy to fight well. You're like a dog, but there's two things you can do. Ignoring him, Oh se -chan raised two fingers. One, is to support Kim Woo Jin as best as you can the other hand, you need to properly verify Kim Woo Jin's ability. You want me to check his ability? That's right. But you know already, don't you? In return Oh se -chan shook his head. No, in my opinion, Kim Woo Jin hasn't even revealed half of his abilities. Yeah. Oh se -chan continued to stare at the surprised Lee Jina. And in the horned fox hunt, Kim Woo Jin will probably reveal 100% he's going to have a real exercise. After saying this much, Oh se -chan sank into his thoughts. Now it's not time for me to be laid back anymore now it's time to go all in. Oh se -chan thought of Kim Woo Jin. I have to make Isaac Ivanov the equivalent of the Messiah Guild somehow. Thinking this, Oh se -chan smiled bitterly. I'm sorry Kim Woo Jin but I need you to be a sacrifice to stop the Messiah Guild. He let out a bitter laugh, filled with his guilt. I'm sorry, but I need all the help I can get. Kim Woo Jin's bloody and wounded body looked clean compared to the corpse of the horned fox at his feet in front of him, a woman with golden armor appeared. Are you Kim Woo Jin? I heard rumors about you but the real thing is even better than the rumors what do you think? Would you like to join the Messiah Guild? The Messiah Guild had offered him a position. Kim Woo Jin replied calmly. I want to talk to the leader directly, not some small management. Bring the leader of the Messiah Guild of course it was a clear rejection. At that time Kim Woo Jin didn't think that he and the Messiah Guild would ever get along. But he didn't expect them to agree. When the next proposal was brought, Lee Se Jun came to meet him personally and recruited him. Kim Woo Jin, the world needs more hunters like you. That was a memory. Wu Wunga. 
Kim Woo Jin's cell phone vibrated as he received a text message and he opened his eyes to check. Date confirmed, June 7. Kim Woo Jin closed his eyes once again after reading it. Then another text arrived. You must exercise your skills properly. When he saw the text, Kim Woo Jin's facial expression didn't change instead he looked at what was in front of him. An armor made completely from needle snake skin, its shape seeming as if it wouldn't fit him. This armor was Kim Woo Jin's answer instead. He was ready to show off his skills. Chapter, 70 Horned Fox Hunt The Horned Fox Dungeon It was a cemetery of a dungeon that had already been failed twelve times and nearly five hundred players had been buried there. This cemetery was currently managed by the Messiah Guild The value of the Horned Fox's horns was very high, but at this point, in the eyes of most other guilds, the dungeon was no longer worth managing. So far, all the other guilds except the Messiah Guild had abandoned the dungeon after failing it twice in such a situation, could they tell the media that they entered the dungeon and failed it twelve times just to get the horned fox's horns? It was not a good excuse therefore, those guilds had given up their rights to the dungeon. For the horned fox dungeon, it was impossible for Kim Wujino, for Isaac Ivanov to enter without the permission of the Messiah Guild. Of course, there was a reason why he needed this permission and he didn't need to ask to know what they were. They want to properly assess my skills, that's all this is. To put it simply, this was a test. The Messiah Guild intended to conduct a full-fledged test on Isaac Ivanov who showed a very friendly attitude towards them this was to see if an agreement was worth signing and what conditions should be provided in said agreement. They may want me to clear the dungeon. Of course, apart from testing him, it was necessary to invite an expert to clear the dungeon as it had been failed twelve times before. These failures were proof that either the dungeon's difficulty was too much for the player's skills or that the abilities of the horned fox were abnormal, otherwise so many players would not have died. Honestly, it was good as long as the dungeon was cleared, even if it was a foreigner, so all they needed to do was find the right talent. If it was Kim Woo Jin, this would be impossible. In this sense, Isaac Ivanov was the best option. He was a player who was openly friendly toward the Messiah Guild, stood out in terms of skill, and his team only comprised two people which meant they didn't have to leave many spots for him. The size of his team also meant that in the event of any surprises, the overall dungeon team would not be affected even if they were to leave on purpose. It was almost as though this team was custom-built for their needs. Oh, Seichan is really good. No, Actually this was all part of Oh Seichan's custom design. Completing the dungeon is the top priority please assist unconditionally when help is requested failure to do so will result in a penalty on the other hand, if faced with a dangerous situation, please request help unconditionally. It was thanks to Oh Seichan that he could currently listen to the conditions of the Messiah Guild's dungeon management team in Russian. The Messiah Guild puts clearing the dungeon first trust me and keep that in mind. After listening to the explanation, Kim Woo Jin nodded. Then I will go into the dungeon. The staff from the Messiah Guild praised him. Mr. Isaac Ivanov, the Messiah Guild will pray earnestly for the day you return alive. Survive for five days. As soon as the forty players entered the dungeon, they were greeted with a notification however, most of them didn't pay attention to that. It's cold. Pretty cold at that. They inspected their surroundings, looking for a place to escape the cold. We're in trouble. I prepared winter gear, but isn't it too cold? Could it be more than 10 degrees below zero? Even the wind is blowing heavily. They were nervous. Li Jina looked at Kim Wu Jin with a question in his eyes seeming to ask if it wasn't more dangerous than they'd expected. His body was tense as he looked at Kim Wu Jin, which was a reaction worthy of experienced and knowledgeable players. Cold is much more difficult than a monster. The cold was a terrifying factor first, there was the risk of freezing to death the player's abilities might be strong, but that didn't mean they were able to overcome such a cold environment perfectly. Weak players arrange your cold resistance items carefully. Mages and healers, take good care of your bodies. Moreover, in cases like this, players who invested more in magic power rather than their physique would not be much better off than the general public. Everyone keep in mind condition management is the most important if you enter the second floor while sick, then you will definitely die. There's no time for proper conditioning we will enter the second floor in five days. 
Indeed they had to be careful even though they were on the first floor, they couldn't enter the second floor without properly managing their conditions. Should we light a fire? Let's see what happens first if we light a fire and monsters attack then we'll be in even more trouble. They would expend more energy if they had to deal with monsters repeated attacks. Remember it has the reputation of 12 fails. It meant they should be prepared for the worst battles at the worst times. At this time, Kim Woojin signaled to Lee Jina. Move. When he saw the signal the two of them moved as the group gathered, the two of them quietly left the crowd. After they walked for a while and he confirmed there was no one around, Li Jina came to Kim Woojin. Is this okay? It was clear from his tone that he was still tense. Isn't it better to move with them for now? In such an environment, things can go south quickly. It was because he knew the horror of the cold Kim Woojin looked at Li Jina who was once again complaining. Are you the type who can't handle the cold? What a ridiculous question. Of course, Li Jina protested hurriedly. My nickname is Siberian Bear. For me, this temperature is a breeze. It's best to cool down quickly after you sweat. Ha ha ha. In response to that, Kim Woojin gave him a smile TL, KWJ smiled scary. Good. What? This time, it will be much harder than the needle snake. Nadash, than the needle snake. Yeah. If they want to see my skills, then I'll show them properly. Equipped plus ring all skills rank increased by 1. Equipped Gawain's necklace cold resistance increased. Equipped Grim Reaper's mask summons can now be controlled. This time he had expressed his determination to reveal his real power. Kim Woojin's fighting style is a style that actively made use of his terrain or the situations around him to his advantage. He enjoyed using traps rather than fighting fiercely and he rarely allowed fights to devolve in a disadvantageous manner. Therefore Kim Woojin usually minimized the armors he put on the skeleton soldiers if he did heavily armor a skeleton, it usually meant that he wouldn't fight himself. You dressed up the skeleton kids today. But today was different. Kim Woo Jin had armored the skeleton soldier that he summoned from a slain black werewolf. It was not just armored it wore heavy armament, complete with a helmet, boots, even arm, and leg armor was included. Well the skeleton's kids are a dry TL, basically stick figure, yet the fit is no joke it was made for their form. Oh. Boots. Li Jina inspected the skeleton in curiosity. Huh. It was only after feeling the leather armor a bit that his expression changed. Is this needle snakeskin? Kim Woo Jin didn't answer, though no answer was needed. He didn't do anything to prevent players from viewing the level of the items on the skeleton soldier. Is this a full set of unique items? As Li Jina had said, all the items that he equipped the skeleton with, were unique items. Oh my god. It was amazing at this moment, the price of armor made from the skin of the needle snake would probably exceed common sense it was not an exaggeration to say that it was a legendary item only held in the hands of Kim Woojin TL, Ah Woojin didn't give Jina anything after they came out of the dungeon stingy. Even if it wasn't legendary, it was probably among the best armor for anyone level 40 and below. Its value spoke for itself. In many ways than one, it was overkill for a skeleton soldier. I can't wear it either. Of course, this was not Kim Woo Jin's style either. As mentioned earlier, Kim Woo Jin's style was that if he armored a skeleton, then he himself would not fight at all. Nevertheless, this was shown more with the armor. The ability to ignore terrain limitations and enemy numbers rushing forward with overwhelming power. This was the style of Johann George. This was what the King of the Undead did regardless of the geographical features and without a need to consider strategy, it was his style to ruthlessly and unilaterally slaughter monsters using skeletons armed with legendary items. This was a style that terrified everyone even the Messiah Guild had been wary of that monster. Of course, this was all before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past. If you want to see your skills, then I'll be happy to oblige. Johann George would probably not be able to scare the Messiah Guild in this life. It's time to start fighting. Chapter, 71. 38. The appearance of the woman who said this stood out in many ways. She wore bright, golden armor, had a short, sporty haircut and yet her beauty was eye-opening. 
None of these things were ordinary but these weren't what made her the most unique. Two people are missing. Her name was Kong Young Ji, a member of the Messiah Guild who was said to be among the best players under level 40 in the guild. More precisely, she was deliberately not trying to pass level 40. After reaching level 40 and waiting for a month. She'd reached level 40 more than a month ago and after that she had stopped trying to level up. This was all in preparation to hunt the Horned Fox dungeon. The Horned Fox's horn was worth a lot and she was willing to sacrifice a few months for it. In other words she was determined to clear this dungeon somehow. We just entered the dungeon yet two guys disappeared silently before the first battle. However two people had already disappeared. Sorry. This problem didn't give a good or a bad feeling. Don't apologize send a search party. Yes. The dungeon was one that had been failed 12 times and the maximum number of entries was 40 people. Send out a search party and bring the two of them back alive. The absence of two out of a group of 40 was a percentage that couldn't be ignored as it represented 5% of the group. Without the Needle Snake Hunter, the plan will change. Needless to say, when the Needle Snake Hunter's group had been brought in by the Messiah Guild, they had been made the core of a plan. Go quickly. At the words of Kong Young Ji the Messiah Guild members began to move hurriedly. Kong Young Ji also prepared to move. The other Messiah Guild members also became aware of the situation. Do you want us to all move directly? It's too dangerous, we should just send a team to search. Everyone was a bit worried, but Kong Young Ji was different. We need to be cautious in case the two of them intend to betray us. Betrayal. Everyone shut up when they heard that word. When you first entered the Messiah Guild you need to be wary of the things you hear don't believe anyone but us. The Messiah Guild fought to save the world without caring about the other guilds. The Messiah Guild members all stood and nodded at Kong Young Ji's words. Then let's all move together. It's better to exercise your body than stay still in the cold anyway. It wasn't just the Messiah Guild members who stood, members of the other guilds who had entered the dungeon with them also began to rise. What should we do if we're left alone? We should take a look too. Kong Young Ji looked at them with a smile. This is not a joke and we are in a dungeon we still need to watch the base camp. At that time, the players of the search party gathered around her when she saw this, she put on her golden helmet. Very well then shall we go see the skills of the first needle snake hunter. Kong Young Ji was an expert even within the Messiah Guild which was one of the top five guilds in the world, she was a person who could receive special treatment. In fact, when she was just level 10 she'd received a scout offer that guaranteed billions of one. So when she'd heard that someone had successfully hunted the needle snake, she was more annoyed than surprised. There was a resentment because someone stole what she felt should have been hers so this time she willingly agreed to the offer when she knew that the needle snake's hunter would be in this dungeon. She was prepared to show that she was much stronger than the so-called needle snake hunter and she was very confident if they were to fight. But her plan wasn't so simple she was planning to beat the first needle snake hunter skillfully and put him below her she would then work with him to fight to save the world, using him as a colleague or subordinate at the same approximate level. That was the plan she'd had until a few moments ago. This is ridiculous TL, done done another one bites the dust. However, the moment she saw twenty fully armed skeleton soldiers slaughtering a group of monsters, she was forced to think again, even her common sense seemed to have shifted. How is that? Of course she'd heard the news. The fact that Isaac Ivanov was a necromancer with extremely strong skeletons was a rather famous story the Messiah Guild also conducted serious investigations and discussions to see if it was worth it to nurture a necromancer player however, the skeleton soldiers that they had, simply weren't strong enough. How can the skeletons fight so well? These skeleton soldiers' fighting abilities were much higher than regular players. No, they were like expert players. If it's like this. It wasn't easy for Khan Young Ji to think of a player who fought as well as they did. Eventually a thought came to her mind. What would happen if they were made to fight that group of skeletons? Gulp. A sound came from her throat. Hey, what do we do captain? Then the subordinate next to her asked a question. Not surprisingly, the men who came with her were also embarrassed. When Isaac Ivanov's group disappeared, they came to rescue them however no one needed rescue. 
Should we help? Should we help? With that said, Kong Young Ji looked back at the battlefield. It's a good place to hunt, if he needs help we can go exercise our skills. This was his hunting ground and the screams of monsters could be heard throughout. Kong Young Ji made a decision as she saw this. I'm not someone who can defeat him. Isaac Ivanov was not someone who could just be beaten by anyone. I need to properly inform the guild. For this, the opinion of the Messiah Guild's executive officers was needed. Kong Young Ji was planning to properly describe Isaac Ivanov's abilities to the guild. He must be on our side. Also she was intending to have them invite him to join the Messiah Guild. Then someone shouted. There's a big problem. What's wrong? More monsters are coming. Chapter, 72. Another one. TL, DJ Khaled. Li Jina's fist, accompanied by his loud cry in Russian, struck the skull of a black werewolf that had hit him. Kek. The black werewolf which fell to the ground was then unable to even make a sound. Li Jina's power could make one's hair stand on end however it was the skeletons that drew the most attention. Boom! Armed with needle snake body armor and helmet, a skeleton soldier holding a long spear thrusted into the chest of the falling black werewolf. P.U.K. Turning his head slightly, Li Jina looked at the skeleton. Spasaba. T.L., Russian for thank you the author usually puts the words in the intended language be it Russian or English, but this was written in Korean so I translated it directly. It seemed that Li Jina had become fond of shouting in Russian as he shouted his gratitude. Siba. However it seemed that he was just saying the words as there was no hint of gratitude on Li Jina's face. The humans got food and the skeletons are all eating it. Siba Siba. It was because there was no way he'd be grateful when his kill was stolen. Ha. Huh. Li Jina turned and saw a skeleton staring right at him. Does it know that I was cursing? The skeleton soldier slowly opened its mouth as Li Jina despaired under its gaze. It's time to eat. The voice that came out of it was Kim Woo Jin's. When he heard Kim Woo Jin's voice, he returned with a whisper that even those close to him would struggle to hear. We have an audience can you speak Korean? Li Jina was aware that there were players watching them no rather, even their audience had to fight now. Of course, in front of their audience, Li Jina and Kim Woo Jin must act and speak like Russians. This was also the reason why Li Jina had been talking and shouting in Russian. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew that. We're retreating. We're retreating. Why? The skeleton soldier answered his question. There are many more monsters in a dungeon with a survival quest than one without. Everyone knows that. No player didn't know that one of the reasons why survival quests were more difficult was because of the large number of monsters. Do you know what happens if a dungeon was failed 12 times? However, no one knew what happened in a dungeon with a survival quest that had been failed more than 10 times. Psychos who challenged dungeons that were failed more than 10 times were few in the world. That wait a minute. Because of Kim Woo Jin's question, Li Jina began thinking. The monsters would overflow. An endless flow of monsters is what the players would face. The players come again and again, the battle is refreshed constantly. The thought of the players risking their lives to enter over and over entered his mind. Black werewolves only converge in large groups if they have a boss. Soon after, Li Jina turned his head to observe the black werewolves nearby. Oh my god! The monsters might be hundreds, even thousands. A monster wave. As he heard Li Jina's conclusion, Kim Woo Jin didn't explain more. Li Jina also didn't ask for further explanation. If there were truly hundreds or thousands of monsters, then the battle would be very different than they'd expected. They'd have to prepare for battle in a few hours instead of five days. Inventory. In preparation for the battle, Li Jina quickly pulled food out of his inventory and started eating. Kim Woo Jin also prepared for the battle. He took the Grim Reaper's mask from his inventory and also checked one of his skills. Aura Field. Rank, E. Effect, emits an aura that can buff or debuff a target the range will increase as the skill rank increases. Aura Field. Looking at this skill Kim Woo Jin recalled how the King of Undead used it in the past. 
A single target type buff skill effect could be changed to an area of effect type buff skill effect using the aura field skill. As he thought this, Kim Woo Jin touched his necklace. The centripetal point is very important. For humans, without any connection, even with a large number, it was hard for them to properly form a group of 100. However the moment a concept like religion or state was introduced and became a focal point, humans were easily able to make groups of thousands to even tens of millions. Monsters were no different. Normally, it was possible for groups of monsters to form when faced with a powerful enemy, even a group of a hundred was possible however, when a boss monster was born. A wool. A group of black werewolves were howling toward the night sky. Twelve challenges by the players had caused the population to reach the thousands this also meant that some of them had faced many groups of players. The thousands of wolves began to converge like a wave toward the group of forty players. Damn, this is a monster wave. The monster wave had started and it was a sight to behold. I've never seen anything like this before. I don't even want to see it. It was a sight that could never be forgotten. Get ready. However the players from the Messiah Guild began preparing for battle without hesitation. That was the image of the Messiah Guild. If one side falls, then we will all die. So hold your position as best as you can. Only those who were ready to give their lives to save the world could possess such courage and only those who had the ability to showcase their courage. In other words, those who stepped forward were those trying to save the world TL, poor things got tricked by their guild. Prepare for battle. In front of the wave of black werewolves that charged toward them, the players steeled their nerves. Tanks with heavy shields created a front line and the damage dealers arranged themselves behind them behind those were the healers and mages in the center with their wands at the ready to cast their spells. In the trees, the archers were waiting with their bows at the ready. Soon the distance between the two groups was small enough that they could see each other's eyes and they both screamed together. A wool. The battle has started. The combat that began was at a fierce, blood-boiling level. Kahung. Cook. Screams burst out from place to place. Use your magic. Be careful. Kwang. Between the sounds of battle, fireballs began to burst forward. Less than a minute before the fight had started, the battlefield became like hell. These motherfuckers. How dare you. Clang. Of course, these wolves were not so easy to deal with. The players who entered a dungeon with a survival quest that had been failed twelve times for the first time were surprised. There's no reason to panic. At most, they're just a lot of first floor monsters. Just hold your ground. From their levels, to their items, the players were prepared. More importantly, the players didn't need to work together. Do what you know to do. For this dungeon, the players had been preparing for weeks and months, not a few days also the players had another hope. The boss should come back soon. We just need to hold on until the boss comes back. Kan Young Ji many of the players believed that she was strong enough to save them. Come. I'm the captain here. Then she appeared. Standing with her shining, golden armor, Kan Young Ji's appearance was like rain after a long drought. After she arrived, she immediately demonstrated why her allies had been waiting for her tearing through the group of werewolves with no signs of stopping. As she swept past, she smashed the head of a werewolf with her hammer, showcasing her extraordinary strength. Ki Hung. Kung Kung. In the face of the black werewolf horde, Kong Young Ji forcefully suppressed them and shouted. Almost everyone stopped fighting and stared at her. Wow. Li Jina who was watching Kong Young Ji's performance from a distance, couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. She's no joke she might be as good as me. Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to Li Jin Ahs words, instead he got lost in his memories. Her skill is outstanding. His relationship with Kong Young Ji had lasted longer than expected. This was proof that her talent was much higher than most at that time, the number of players that were able to keep up with Kim Wu Jin was extremely small. When I first witnessed her skills here, it was shocking. It was this very dungeon where his interaction with her began a similar situation to now as well. The members were different, but the situation was much the same. 
As soon as they entered the dungeon, the cold wind struck and a swarm of black werewolves attacked. Back then, it was impossible to come out unscathed. Five people had died in that first battle it was extremely shocking when five people out of forty were killed in the very first battle. We were able to survive because we ran. But even that suffered a setback and only five people managed to escape. If Khan Youngji hadn't listened to me then. At that time, Kim Woo Jin had suggested that they retreat. Kim Woo Jin was such a player rather than to fight with unfavorable odds, he preferred to run until he could find an advantageous position. This may be the same as back then. What Kim Woo Jin thought was that the current situation the players faced would be the same or much worse than what he'd experienced. Will it get more dangerous? It'll be over if the tanks get pressed down. The situation was bad, even Lee Jin Ah could see that. How many will die if they all use their skills and go into cooldown time? As he said that, Li Jin Ah began preparing for battle then he turned toward Kim Woo Jin. So when are we going in? After all, shouldn't the heroes appear in the time of crisis? Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin slipped on the Grim Reaper's mask. Chapter, 73 When dealing with multiple monsters, it was important to not get dragged into a protracted battle. However, if the difference in head count exceeded thousands or tens of thousands, then it became more important to minimize the damage inflicted to your side rather than killing a few more monsters. Kong Youngji and her colleagues knew this the form of the base camp they constructed, was also done with this in mind. Those injured fall back immediately. Don't advance. Just hold your positions. With the help of barriers that were set up in between the extremely large trees, the heavily armored tank players blocked entry behind them, the mage players continuously cast their magic at the black werewolves. Twang. The archers on the trees took down one werewolf after another. However Kong Young Ji's performance was the most remarkable. While blocking waves of black werewolves, she was still able to slay them easily. Ki Hung. The movement of the monster wave toward the players was forcefully twisted by Kong Young Ji's actions. The monsters either stumbled or collided with each other in essence, Kong Young Ji's actions were like causing a major accident on a busy eight-lane highway. Thanks to this, the pressure the players faced was greatly reduced. It was an amazing sight. However, the thoughts of the players weren't filled with admiration at the performance they were seeing. How much longer do we need to fight? They instead were hoping for the situation to end swiftly. Moreover, monsters weren't something that could be completely understood by people. The black werewolves would never fight simply in the way the players wished them to. Ki Hung. Ki Hung. Ki Hung. In fact, the black werewolves had already begun to change the way they fought. Those that were blocked by their allies began to climb onto and over those in front of them. Similar to a group of ants stepping on each other's heads to make a bridge, the werewolves at the back began to use their allies as stepping stones. After some time it seemed like a second floor of werewolves was made. Tanks. Use your skills. At the same time, the players who were defending the front line began to use the skills they'd been saving up to this point. Crash. Kwong. The crash skill A skill that sends out a shockwave in the direction the user was facing quickly broke through the formation of wolves. The damage was great. Kang. A black werewolf, that had climbed onto one of its allies, fell, crashing into another werewolf and they all became entangled. The battlefield became even more chaotic. However, none of the players were able to rejoice. 5 minutes. The cooldown for the crash skill was 5 minutes so they had to hold out during that time. However, everyone's expressions were no longer as determined as before. Everyone had enough experience and skill however, there was one thing that could not be ignored. So tiring. Even after we kill one, another. The fact that the battle was currently not in their favor also, they were in a dungeon, where they couldn't request for reinforcements. It was the one place where they were forced to survive on their own. It was why no one asked for help and just pressed forward continuously. Suddenly. There's backup. An archer on a tree stopped firing and instead shouted at the top of his lungs. Everyone heard his cry. What the hell? Support. Everything we have is already here. 
It was so ridiculous that even a dog wouldn't believe it. It's support. Support troops are really here. But this time, another person shouted that reinforcements had come. It was good news. Kang. Ha. Huh. Oh. The sounds of the black werewolves being attacked a distance away, could be heard. Kim Woo Jin preferred to fight on a stage that he created from start to finish, he wanted everything to flow as he intended. However, the stages that best displayed his ability, were those without any planning. This was always the case. This was because Kim Woo Jin was more proficient at brawling than anyone else. And now it was the same for the skeleton soldiers, whose combat greatly resembled their owner, who took control of the situation the moment they entered the battlefield. Boom! The skeletons charged toward the black werewolves fiercely. Moreover, the skeletons' movements were very organized. When the leading soldier cuts a thigh, the following soldier cuts the other thigh and when the werewolf turns to attack the ones who attacked it, a third skeleton finishes it off with a blade between its ribs. Like a well-oiled machine, the group of skeletons quickly moved through the black werewolves. It was a sight that was hard to believe. Oh my god! It was like the archers who were able to see such a scene, fell in love and forgot to do their jobs. How does this make sense? They're just sweeping them away. However, they were able to witness an even more amazing scene before the admiration sank in the black werewolves recognized the new threat and moved to eliminate it. Ki Hung. Ki Hung. When the two sides clashed fiercely suddenly, a golden glow began to shine from a skeleton wearing snakeskin armor and wielding a scimitar. Protection of the sun has been activated. You have possessed a skeleton soldier. It was the moment protection of the sun had been activated on the skeleton controlled by Kim Woo Jin. Aura field has been activated. You are connected to a skeleton magic power consumption increased. The glow of the protection of the sun then began to spill from the skeleton soldier's armor, and began to spread to its companions. The shimmering golden light surrounded all of the skeletons and seemed to go into their eyes as well. The skeleton soldiers all began to shake as if they'd been injected with powerful drugs. Ki Hung. At the sight, the black werewolves were all confused. Tuck. Soon after, the golden light faded and revealed a group of skeletons with golden eyes like eagles that seemed to reflect the light of the sun. And then the already one-sided battle became a massacre. Pyohak. The skeleton soldiers which could only cut skin before, began cutting flesh TL, basically they were making superficial wounds before and are now dealing real damage. Shik. Some of the black werewolves were cut to pieces within moments. The battlefield became soaked in blood and littered with limbs. Then, the situation changed once more. It was Li Jina who was basically the icing on the cake. Goodbye. Quajik. As he screamed goodbye in Russian, the black werewolves were overwhelmed by Li Jina's kicks and punches. At an incredible pace, he began accumulating a large pile of bodies. This was only the beginning. Wearing the Grim Reaper's mask, Kim Woo Jin appeared among the corpses, after which he grabbed one, touched it for a moment then threw it into the group of werewolves. The fact that he threw the body of their dead at them, infuriated all the black werewolves but none of them paid much interest to the body now in their midst. Corpse Explosion So when it exploded, the damage it had dealt was very high. The werewolves began to panic, but Kim Woo Jin paid no attention to their screams. The ruler of the battlefield effect has been activated. The emissary of the underworld smiles at you. What he heard instead was a notification telling him that the real fight had just begun. Kim Woo Jin smiled. Today, he was the hero who saved the Messiah Guild. If you are to be a hero who will save the world, you have to help everyone that is in need of help, TL, is this some kind of insinuation? A necromancer is the savior of the world. By doing this, he intended to gain the full cooperation and support of the Messiah Guild. And the Messiah Guild had no choice but to give it to him. While I wear the hero's mask. Even Lee Sejun, while he wore the mask of the savior of the world, he had no choice but to be a hero. A self-sacrificing hero who provides unlimited charity, consideration and help to those who follow and believe in you. Chapter, 74 Save the Messiah Guild 
The surprise in Gorbachev's voice was clear as he picked up one of the individually wrapped pieces of chocolate that Oh Seichan bought him as a gift. Does a hero work for benefits? You're not asking them to give you a reward when you save them right? What's most important is that they wouldn't attack the benefactor who saved them at least while they're wearing their mask. Gorbachev didn't respond, instead, he ate a piece of chocolate and watched as Oh Seichan put a couple in his pocket. After chewing for a few seconds with a firm expression, he said to Oh Seichan. So it's reverse psychology. Oh, Seichan's plan was simple. He wanted to turn Isaac Ivanov into the savior of the Messiah Guild. If that happened, the heroic Messiah Guild would take care of their benefactor as best as they could. It might be reverse psychology, but it's still a good method what's more, it would be great if the supporters of the Messiah Guild supported him instead. The goal wasn't just the Messiah Guild with one move, had be able to get the support of the countless people supporting the Messiah Guild. Just as the enemies of the Messiah Guild were viewed as cruel and evil by the world, the Messiah Guild's benefactor would similarly have their position lifted. For the Messiah Guild, if they clear this dungeon, they could say anything. Gorbachev relaxed his firm expression and stared at Oh Seichan. But why did you decide to carry out this operation now? At this question, Oh Seichan simply shrugged. That's because I never had a player capable of doing this. Did you really not? Think about it who can save the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild is overflowing with the best of the best. Ah. Only then did Gorbachev realize the truth about Oh Seichan's words. Not just anyone could become the benefactor of the Messiah Guild. Saving the Messiah Guild would be something that was thought to be impossible the publicity and amazement, such an action would cause would be intense. Is that player named Kim Woo Jin really that good? Implementing this now meant that he truly had faith that Kim Woo Jin was stronger than those members of the Messiah Guild. Have you ever seen me spend money if it wasn't necessary? Spend money. Gorbachev nodded at those two words. Seeing Oh Seichan spend more money without hesitation was something Gorbachev had never seen before and it was probably something he wouldn't see in the future. That's true. Gorbachev moved on to the next thing he wanted to talk about. The question is when the truth is exposed are you confident you won't get caught? Unless the Messiah Guild was useless, they would eventually investigate and realize that Isaac Ivanov was in fact a counterfeit identity. I might get caught. Oh. Seichan wasn't completely confident that he'd be able to evade capture. If Russia suddenly had a German-level wave of democracy and all the corruption committed by those in power was revealed while all the higher-ups sat in their offices sipping vodka and watching TV, I'd be caught in a year. Gorbachev laughed at his words. You don't have to worry too much then. That was more reliable than anything. Then that should be enough for the formalities. You're leaving. Because the company is expanding, there is a lot of work to be done we must also try our best to keep Isaac Ivanov's true identity undetected. Yeah, we should encourage more corruption. Following Gorbachev's words, Oh Seichan rose to his feet as he got up, he took another chocolate and put it in his pocket. Gorbachev couldn't help but shake his head. Why do you keep putting the chocolate you brought as a gift in your pocket? Huh? Oh Seichan gave a look of surprise and checked the chocolates in his pocket. Ah, it's a habit, a habit every time I go to a restaurant or bank, I always bring away all the candy that they have there haha. <laughs> oh Seichan gave an awkward smile and Gorbachev shook his head again. Ah. How is Isaac doing? I hope he's safe. P.U.K. The battle ended as the chest of a black werewolf was pierced by a spear wielded by an armored skeleton soldier. This signified the end of the incredibly long battle against close to a thousand black werewolves. Ah. Is it over? The battlefield was quiet as no one had the energy to cheer in victory. They just stared at the skeleton standing over the corpse of the werewolf with a blank look, unsure of what to do. Everyone had clearly seen what had happened in the battle. The image of a group of armored skeletons charging into a wave of black werewolves was something that would be imprinted into their memories for the rest of their lives. What was that? What the hell are these monsters? However, no one truly understood what had unfolded before their eyes. The battle by the skeleton soldiers seemed to have transcended their common sense. It was none other than the Captain Kong Youngji who awoke from her stupor first. 
I should probably say hello to our savior. After making up her mind, she approached Kim Woo Jin who wore a skull mask, and bowed her head. Thank you. As she expressed her thanks, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at Kong Young Ji through his mask. Oh, you might not be able to speak Korean. It was only then that she remembered that the other was Russian. I did what I had to do. Kim Woo Jin spat out the Korean in a broken, dry tone. Kong Young Ji nodded at that and bowed again. Nevertheless, thank you. Kim Woo Jin also nodded at her following that, he turned his back to her and began to walk away TL, so rude KWJ we finally get a good enough female character and you just shun her. Uh. Kong Young Ji's eyes widened as she watched him walk away. Wa dash, wait. Surprised, she shouted as she started following Kim Woo Jin. What now? He couldn't believe she wanted something else after had just helped fight such a fierce battle. However, it wasn't necessary for him to answer her anyway as Kim Woo Jin stopped, the skeleton soldiers came to surround him, their blazing eyes staring right at Kong Young Ji. He was intending to truly start hunting in the dungeon from now. Kong Young Ji swallowed her saliva, along with the words she was about to say. Chapter, 75 There was one thing the Messiah Guild always told their guild members. Don't trust anyone except your guildmates. To not trust any player other than their peers. The more you talk, the more you tell. If someone who you talked to a lot asked a favor, it was hard to refuse. In a dungeon it's better to trust a reliable guy than to have hostility. But the most important thing in a dungeon was your ability to survive and kill monsters. Kim Woo Jin himself had taught this to the members of the Messiah Guild when he was a part of it. Kong Young Ji is a typical Messiah Guild member. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew them he didn't have to talk for a long time with Kong Young Ji and her colleagues to know what they were like. Players who could trade with the devil, just to clear a dungeon. But if you were too overwhelmingly strong, they might point the tips of their spears at you instead of the monsters. Hey, you're gonna just leave like that? You're not gonna give a big speech. Of course Li Jina wouldn't really know this so he could only ask. Li Jina also knew that their goal in the dungeon wasn't just to secure the horns of the horn fox, but also to become the benefactors of the Messiah Guild. So, he thought that this was a good time to gain some favor. In response to his question, Kim Woo Jin only spoke briefly. There's no reason to do that. Li Jina then nodded. You're right a talkative man wouldn't be popular there's nothing as unseemly as a mouth flapping with nothing to say instead a man should talk with his body, without needing any words like me. Kim Woo Jin turned his head slightly to look at Li Jina, who caught his gaze. What? Did I say something wrong? When Kim Woo Jin didn't respond to him, Li Jina kept looking at him he didn't think he said anything wrong. What is our plan now? He asked. You could say that the group of black werewolves just now was the largest group here. That's true. A little while ago, that group was wiped out, that means that we're the owners of this stage now. So. So that means that we can now hunt for five days without resting. Li Jina's expression stiffened. He wants to go mess around like that again. He knew that he was about to experience another period of hardship. Li Jina carefully studied the man opposite him. Well, how about we eat some rice before that? You know I have anemia no, actually I don't have anemia actually, I'm full of iron it's so overflowing that I'm going to become bald like Seichan. TL, Jina has PTSD. Despite saying that, in his head, Li Jina was saying. This son of a bitch wouldn't give me time to eat. But contrary to his expectations, Kim Wu Jin nodded. You have to eat to fight. Huh? Li Jina, who'd rarely been given even a chance to eat, was surprised. Really? Because you always get a last meal before the death penalty. What? Kim Wu Jin didn't say anything longer in the face of Li Jin AHS surprise. On the first day, even though the battle with the black werewolves ended, screams could be heard from within the frozen forest. The screams were also present on the second day. Throughout the forest, an unadulterated massacre seemed to be occurring as Kim Woo Jin said, he began hunting in earnest. There is no better stage to level up. 
he knew the spots where the monsters appeared the most, so using the effect of ruler of the battlefield to the maximum, and with Li Jina serving as a tank, the skeleton soldiers swept through them. My current level is 32, I should reach level 35 in this dungeon. Kim Wu Jin was using the stage that he'd created to quickly raise his level. Damn, I'm going crazy being in a team with this guy would make anyone go crazy. Of course, Li Jina was still willing to use it as well. The hunt, which fit the term hacking, eventually came to an end. 24 hours remaining. Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina were finished by the fifth day as they wrapped up, Kim Wu Jin received a notification. Your level has increased. I reached level 35 foot. It was the message that signified that he'd reached his goal. Feeling happy, Kim Wu Jin wanted to immediately activate his status window and check his stats. The emissary of the underworld is now paying attention to only you. His halo paid more attention to him. Of course, this always happened to Kim Wu Jin, however his expression changed when he realized that the notification was different from usual. Paying attention. Kim Wu Jin's expression changed at those two words, because he knew what they meant to get a lot of attention from a halo. What's wrong? What's going on? Li Jina tilted his head in confusion at Kim Wu Jin's expression. Is it because of my complaining moaning? Hey, that was a joke between us. Of course Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to Li Jina, instead he lifted his finger to his lips. Shu. Li Jina who saw this, suddenly tensed up. Why are you so scared? The emissary of the underworld wants you to be active. The emissary of the underworld conveys some of his power to you. The skill rank of the blood poison skill has been increased by one. The blood poison skill has transcended its rank due to the effect of the plus ultra ring. Another string of notifications brought with them an amazing gift. There were stages in the process in which the halos became interested in the players that chose it. At first, they gained its interest the players were considered as prospects at this level. If you continued to be active in the Halo spotlight, you would become expected at that point, the players had a chance to get out of the prospects and be recognized as a good player. When a player reached such a level, the Halo would want you to be even more active. The sponsorship of a Halo was made up of various levels Kim Woo Jin knew this better than anyone. The second time. Even though he'd become a player later than most other players, it was thanks to his Halo sponsorship that he was able to reach the level of Lee Sejun and the world's strongest players. Of course, it had been after a while that he'd reached the level where the Halo wanted him to be active with the name of the hunting dog had been active in the Messiah Guild. It was when I reached level 160 and cleared the sixth floor dungeon. To be honest, around that time, even without the attention of a Halo, he would have been called a monster. And now it had happened to Kim Woo Jin again. It's quite different this time. After a little over half a year, his halo wanted to see his performance and it gave him appropriate support. Blood Poison Rank, X Effect Turns your blood into poison. Consume magic power to create black blood with increased toxicity. Blood Poison had become an EX rank skill of course, all the halo had done was make the blood poison skill which was a rank, S rank, and that was the limit. Kim Wu Jin had never experienced or heard of an S rank skill become EX rank before. Johann George must have been delighted. This would explain why the King of Undead would hunt someone for an item. But this favoritism is too much. Even then, Kim Wu Jin had not expected the level of favoritism the emissary of the underworld showed. The reason for the difference in strength between Johann George and the rest of the players was now evident. I'll need to change my tactics again. And it was then that Kim Woo Jin had to abandon all the scenarios and plans he had made for the Horned Fox and create a new one. What's going on? At that time, Li Jina threw a question toward Kim Woo Jin with a worried look. What is it so suddenly huh? Your face is all screwed, did you eat real poop? In a situation where he couldn't see or sense anything, Kim Woo Jin's reaction was strange. Kim Woo Jin turned to Li Jina. I'll only ask you one thing. At that time, Li Jina's expression became serious. Kim Wu Jin pointed toward the spear that a nearby skeleton soldier was holding. How long can you keep standing if you were impaled by a spear? Li Jina answered the question. 
Hey, have I ever cheated you? If I have, I will kneel down here and apologize. Chapter, 76 The first floor of the dungeon was swept by frigid winds. Proceed to the second floor. The players who had moved into the new stage after spending five days on the first floor were faced with an entirely white world a colder world, with snow as far as the eye could see. Lee Jina and Kim Woo Jin were moving through a snow field. Ah! Suddenly Lee Jina stopped walking, and Kim Woo Jin who was beside him, stopped as well, looking around cautiously. What's wrong? No, this snow. Lee Jina caught some flakes in his hand. Isn't it possible to make Pat Bing Su one with it? The words he spoke was something that no one would imagine however, Kim Woo Jin didn't express any surprise. It wouldn't taste as good as you expect. Rather, he responded without hesitation. Huh. Instead it was Lee Jina who was amazed. Have you ever eaten it? When he heard this accusation, Kim Woo Jin remembered a few bitter memories as he'd said, Kim Woo Jin had indeed eaten snow, a lot of it. I didn't eat it because it tasted good. Of course, he'd never eaten snow as food in harsh situations where drinking water is unavailable, if there was snow then it could be swallowed to save your life, he had only done it in such cases tl, do not try this at home. So why did you eat it then? It was a rather desperate option and some might say it was better to die. It can only be done when there is a goal you need to accomplish before you die. Of course, there had to be a reason why he fiercely wanted to survive. Like them. The place where Kim Woo Jin was looking was a pile of snow that looked like a tombstone. As he said those words, Woo Jin approached the pile of snow. Then he saw a body the body was almost completely intact except for a large hole from an unknown source the fist of the body was clenched tightly, holding something. Opening the hand, Kim Woo Jin discovered a note. Characteristics of the horned fox. You endured till the end. It was a note with the information on horned foxes that the player managed to write before they died. After he read it, Kim Woo Jin passed the note to Lee Jina who also gave a bitter smile as he read its contents. To leave information instead of a will and testament. To write a note before you died with your eyes closed and your neck bleeding, just to leave as much information as possible for those who would come after you. It's like the Messiah Guild. That was the Messiah Guild where there are many sublime players willing to give their lives to save the world. Yeah it's like the Messiah Guild. This made the anger buried within Kim Woo Jin burn hotter. So I can't forgive them even more. Lee Se Jun he treated the sacrifices of these noble people, and treated it as firewood to maintain the flames of his ambition. Lee Se Jun, you should have been a villain. But I don't think there's any useful information here. At that time, Li Jina was done looking over the contents of the note and handed it back to Kim Woo Jin. He wasn't wrong. Obviously the player had risked their lives to get this information, but the information they gained was only on the appearance of the horned fox and even then a lot of the information was subjective. Kim Woo Jin also didn't expect much. The information left before death is usually like this. Usually the information that was written before death was done while in a panicked state so there was nothing wrong with it it wasn't easy to write legible text in such a situation it could be said that they wrote a note, but in the end it wasn't that much. It doesn't matter since we didn't come here to get information in the first place. In the end Kim Woo Jin hadn't gone there intending to look for information in the first place. You're not trying to get information. Then why? Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin asked a question to Lee Jin Ah in return. What would you do if someone touched a snack you'd save to eat later? That son of a bitch better watch his back. It was then. Gur. You would smash them. The horned fox battle had begun. The horned fox's appearance didn't differ too much from that of a regular fox with silver fur. However with a body 5 meters long, musculature size, similar to a Siberian tiger and two 50 centimeters horns on its head made it clear that this was no ordinary fox. However, the thing that really stood out, was the beautiful silver fur that flowed in the wind, as sharp as needles. Gur. The sound was so sharp it stung the faces of those before it. Ku. Li Jina coughed lightly. It's a monster. At the same moment that Li Jina began to speak, the fox suddenly charged toward him. Pot. 
The horned fox's charge was so fast that it could remind you of a cheetah not only was it big, but it was also very fast. These two elements, combined with the pair of lethal horns on its head, made the horned fox much more lethal than the needle snake. In addition, with the fox's speed, it was almost impossible to see or dodge its attacks before you could react, the horned fox would already be in front of your nose. This was the situation Li Jina faced right now. When he'd started talking, the distance between him and the fox was about 20 meters for the fox, such a distance was something that could be quickly crossed even at a leisure speed and Li Jina couldn't avoid it. P.U.K. The fox's horns pierced through Li Jin A.H.S. stomach, the force of the charge pushing them away from Kim Wu Jin. After 100 meters, the momentum behind the charge finally dissipated. I got you, bitch. As blood dripped from the corner of his mouth, Li Jina looked at the fox with a smile and grabbed it as an arrow flew in from a distance. The thick arrowhead, which was as black as obsidian, pierced the body of the horned fox. Cree. The fox screamed in pain, but Kim Wu Jin's attention was instead grabbed by a group of notifications. The horned fox has been poisoned by the black blood. The health of the horned fox has been greatly reduced. The attack power of the horned fox has been greatly reduced. The defense of the horned fox has been greatly reduced. It was a notification which let him know of the horrifying effects of his skill. First, grab the leg. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't give too much attention to the notification. Then, grab the body. Instead, he immediately shot another arrow from his bow. Boom! And the skeleton soldiers also began to move. Chapter 77 In a field of snow there were a few strange-looking structures for all intents and purposes, they could be called igloos. Um, Captain. Kong Young-ji and her companions had built the igloos to withstand the cold winds and snow. It was a great idea considering the igloos' ability to protect them from the cold no, rather, thanks to the igloos they were finally able to create a somewhat warmer environment than on the first floor. In the igloo with the fire, the temperature had risen to over 20 degrees it was the best luxury they could receive in the dungeon when they didn't even know when they'd die. Is it okay to stay like this? However the expressions of Kong Young-ji and her subordinates who should have been enjoying this bit of luxury were not good. It's only the two of them hunting the fox. It would be dangerous. Isaac Ivanov and his companion had forced them to watch as they went to hunt the horned fox. It was actually really crazy. It's not that dangerous the horned fox it's not like it can stand up to those two. The scariest thing about the horned fox was that it was faster than a cheetah even in a snow field, it could move as fast as it wanted to. The amount of destructive damage produced by an attack at such a speed didn't need to be expressly stated. Even if it wanted to escape, it would be hard to catch it. Its speed was its most useful tool if it found that it was fighting a losing battle it was incredibly fast and it would be almost impossible to catch it even after surrounding it. In order to deal with such a difficult opponent, it was necessary to have a party with impeccable teamwork so that they could block, capture and deal damage to the horned fox all at once it wasn't something one would expect two people to do. We made an offer. Before entering the second floor of the dungeon, Kong Young-ji made an offer to Isaac Ivanov to work together to hunt the horned fox, but she was rejected. There's nothing we can do since we were refused. They would hunt the horned fox alone and they asked that no one interfered. We could only listen to their demands as they'd helped us before. There was no way they could just reject the request of the ones who saved their lives. So for now we just wait the moment they request for help, they'll have to pay a high price for their lives. They were just waiting for the situation to change. And change it did. The horned fox has been successfully hunted. The dungeon has been cleared. Ha! Huh. They cleared the dungeon. The dungeon gate for the horned fox dungeon was located near the Buchan Sports Complex Stadium. Damn, what sort of war is this? An untimely disturbance had broken out there. The dungeon has been cleared. Cleared in six days. The reason for the turmoil was the fact that the dungeon had been cleared six days after the players, including those from the Messiah Guild had entered it. Who cleared it? The Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov. Everyone must be interviewed. We need to interview every single one of the players. 
The dungeon that had failed twelve times before, had finally been cleared so of course there was a large fuss. Ah! There! Isaac Ivanov just got into that car. In the chaos, a Mercedes-Benz S-Class could be seen driving away. Damn it! But no one dared to rush toward the vehicle. Diplomat! What exactly is the identity of Isaac Ivanov? Whenever he moves, does he have to do so in a diplomatic vehicle? Against the diplomatic number plate on the vehicle, neither the reporter nor even members of the Messiah Guild dared to act. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. Li Jina, who was riding in the back seat of the car, let out a cry in pain as they escaped the bustle. Naturally, getting intentionally stabbed by a horned fox was something that most players wouldn't be able to survive. He had done some temporary treatment with potions, but he needed to have more authentic treatment. The driver, who was Oh se -chan's subordinate, quickly responded to him. I will go to the hospital immediately dash. Li Jina interrupted him before he could finish. Go to a convenience store near the hospital first. Yes. I think it's better to eat about 50 Samgak Kimbap TL, Triangular Kimbap, oh yeah, did Seichan give you his card? TL, he means credit card, it's common for team leaders and managers to sponsor meals with the company card or even their personal ones as a reward or celebration. Is this a prank? Li Jina answered Oh Seichan's subordinate with a serious tone TL, they keep saying Oh Seichan's subordinate but isn't Li Jina technically one as well? LOL. You don't think I'm serious? It wasn't really a joke the thing that Li Jina, who had received the blessing of the river sticks, needed the most right now was fuel and calories to maximize his resilience and healing. What would you like to eat? Li Jina then threw a question toward Kim Wu Jin who was sitting beside him in the back seat but he received no answer. Instead, Kim Wu Jin was staring at a 50 centimeters long silver horn in his hands. Seeing this, Li Jina could only let out a laugh. Ah, uh, fuck it I guess I'll just eat everything on my own. It was then that Kim Wu Jin said to the driver. Please make a note. A note? The subordinate nodded. What report do you want me to write? If the Messiah Guild desperately wants it, I will willingly donate the horned fox's horn to them. What? Hey. Are you crazy? Willingly donate it. The Messiah Guild. Not only was the driver surprised, but so was Li Jina as he bombarded Kim Wu Jin with questions. Kim Wu Jin simply repeated himself. If the Messiah Guild desperately wants it, please give it to them. TL, what's Kim Wu Jin up to this time? The hunt of the horned fox succeeds. Successfully hunted the horned fox after twelve failed tries. When the horned fox dungeon was cleared, of course the related articles broke out like a storm. But that was it it was an A-rank dungeon with a unique monster that had been failed numerous times yet there were only a few articles about it. Even in the main news portal sites it was hard to find any articles even if you washed your eyes and looked around. As the media was all quiet, the public opinion was also forced to be quiet however, the moment the articles appeared, the situation changed. Horned Fox Hunter Isaac Ivanov Even hunting the horned fox after the needle snake The needle snake hunter Isaac Ivanov had once again grabbed the attention of the world. Isaac Ivanov defeated the Messiah Guild and succeeded in hunting the horned fox. Chapter, 78 the Messiah Guild loses the horned fox's horn. The atmosphere changed when it was announced that Isaac Ivanov had gained the fox's horn over the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov escapes like a fugitive in a diplomatic vehicle. Will we continue to give Korean dungeons to foreigners? Is it really okay to just give away our property like this? It is urgent that we enact special laws for foreign players. Bad reports started to appear about Isaac Ivanov. Who had cleared the dungeon and naturally, public opinion also shifted TL, poof it seems the public in this world are really easily swayed. Who is this bastard Isaac? We gave choco pies to this bastard last time. We should go protest in front of the Russian embassy. In an era where foreigners were invited to handle local dungeons that couldn't be completed, the price to be paid for touching the Messiah Guild rather than anyone else was beyond everyone's imagination. As the public was getting ready to really rip into him, Isaac Ivanov's interview was released. In the interview, Isaac Ivanov said directly. 
If the Messiah Guild really needs it, I'm willing to donate the horn to them. Isaac Ivanov I've always been a fan of the Messiah Guild. Messiah Guild's rising star Kong Youngji says, it would not have been possible to complete the dungeon without Isaac Ivanov. At the same time, Isaac Ivanov even revealed that he saved the members of the Messiah Guild once in the dungeon. After that interview, public opinion changed once again TL, cough sheeple cough. The needle snake hunter is a good person. Where can I find his address to send choco pies? If you're Korean, please support Isaac Ivanov. Kim Woo Jin, who saw all of this from his smartphone, was forced to make a bitter smile. It's obviously your actions. It was quite natural to say that Kim Woo Jin knew the Messiah Guild's tactics better than anyone. He knew that they would never let him keep the horned fox's horn. They would never let it go. Did it matter if the Messiah Guild, who was enemies to anyone not on their side, weren't in the position to choose? They would have been prepared to start at any time. The media play was actually a very light beginning the Messiah Guild was more than willing to use force to get what they want if they deemed it necessary. The last card they would play in such a scenario, would be the hunting dogs. The moment an item became the target of their hunting dogs, the item more or less already belonged to the Messiah Guild. Though fighting against the Messiah Guild and keeping the item was possible, it was very very difficult this is why Kim Woo Jin suggested they donate it. The Messiah Guild's aggression was only directed towards their enemies and toward their allies, they couldn't be more loving. No, there were many who would willingly give their lives for their allies. The calculation method toward allies changed a lot. Did Isaac Ivanov, who saved the members of the Messiah Guild, really want to donate the horn? Absolutely not. Of course, if you're a hero, you must show the mentality of a hero. Above all else, the Messiah Guild was a hero. They may be merciless predators toward their enemies, but as a hero, when dealing with your allies, one must be benign. If they really wanted the horned fox's horn, then they'd have to give a lot. I wonder what kind of reward they will give. Now they just had to wait for the Messiah Guild's response. It was then. Wu Wu. A message arrived on his phone. Just on time. The message was from Park Yongwon. There's a lot of speculation about Isaac Ivanov going around. The first thing that greeted Kim Woo Jin as he entered Park Yongwon's office was a news report coming from the big high definition TV. Oh, you're here. Park Yongwon welcomed him after the news report passed. Every day, all I hear about is this guy Isaac Ivanov, you don't need me to explain who he is, right? Yes. Kim Woo Jin nodded to Park Yongwon who pointed at a chair in front of him. Sit. The chair he pointed at was the closest to him among the many chairs that surrounded the table, it was a signal to say that Kim Woo Jin was the closest to him. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew what it meant. But even the closest person would be left behind if he was considered useless at any time. For Park Yongwon, even his closest allies were consumables that could be used and discarded at any time. Despite knowing that, Kim Woo Jin didn't mind the treatment. Kim Woo Jin sat and Park Yong Wan immediately began to speak. I thought I valued you highly, but you're even better than I thought. Thank you. Park Yong Wan was very surprised. What exactly did this guy do to make the Skull Guild try to find information about him so desperately? Before, the Skull Guild had been moving so secretly that Park Yong Wan couldn't keep track of their movements, however now they were openly trying to find as much information as they could about Kim Woo Jin. It proved that they were somewhat struggling to deal with him. Well, that's not important. It was a good thing for Park Yong Wan. In the end, it meant that the Skull Guild was shaken by Kim Woo Jin, this meant that he could use Kim Woo Jin in the future to shake the Skull Guild again. So Park Yong Wan didn't pry too deeply. You kept your promise, so now it's my turn to pay you back. Instead of talking nonsense, he decided to give an incredible reward, to set the stage for the future. All right. Park Yongwon didn't even wait for him to respond, instead he pulled out a skill page radiating gold light and handed it to Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin received it. This. When Kim Woo Jin confirmed what it was, he couldn't help but make a surprised expression. Blood fog. Conditions, emissary of the underworld. Required level, 40 or higher. Effect, 
create fog using your blood. Blood fog there was no better skill for Kim Woo Jin who used blood poison as one of his main skills. This is better than I expected. It was also one of the skills that Kim Woo Jin considered very hard to obtain. The golden glow signified that it was a skill at the unique level however the value of the skill couldn't be seen unless it was used in conjunction with skills like blood poison. In a situation where the blood poison skill was also hard to obtain, there weren't many players who would use the blood fog skill, even if they obtained it. Let's get down to business. Of course, Park Yongwan wouldn't give him such a skill simply as a reward. For the time being, we need to build our strength while being careful then when the time is right, we'll make our move without warning. In order to use Kim Woo Jin even more, it was necessary to feed him, and Park Yongwan didn't try to hide it. Kim Woo Jin also didn't say anything about it. He gave a simple answer, after which silence fell in the room. The TV soon announced. Breaking news. The Messiah Guild has announced their decision to summarize the content, they say that they appreciate the heroic heart of Isaac Ivanov and they will reward him greatly for his actions. As he heard the breaking news, Park Yong Wan could not help but ridicule. They can keep their pride and just lose money is that it? Kim Woo Jin smiled and responded. That is exactly what it is. TL, the author just repeated the question here as a statement TT. With that, Kim Woo Jin rose and headed toward the door. The meeting was over and no more conversation was necessary. However, when he reached the door, Kim Woo Jin stopped. Could you save a dungeon for me? There's nothing I can't do. The fact that Park Yongwan gave him a level 40 skill in the first place meant that he wanted Kim Woo Jin to focus on leveling up. If you leave the bill after you purchase a dungeon from a broker, I will handle it. Park Yongwan easily accepted Kim Woo Jin's request. Afterward, Kim Woo Jin bowed slightly and left. Chapter 79 Isaac Ivanov is rewarded for his sacrifice. That's the Great Messiah Guild, willing to reward those who make sacrifices for the good of the world. Lee Jina who was watching the news on his smartphone, couldn't help but exclaim in admiration. It's really amazing how did he think about getting out like this. Oh se Chan, who was looking at documents, nodded. It's great. Right? You didn't expect that did you? Of course donation is not something I'd do even in my dreams just hearing the word gives me goosebumps. Li Jina laughed at that. Anyway, what do you think the Messiah Guild will give? An item? Or money? How much do you think they'll give? The Summon Golem skill. Yes. It was already discussed before they went to the press they'll thank us for saving them and reward us with the Summon Golem skill so it's okay. The gift was discussed with the Messiah Guild before they even made a statement in the media, so there was nothing to question. However, Li Jina still found a question. What about me? What? No, I did it with him but I get nothing. I should at least get something. When he heard that, Oh se -chan reached into his pocket and handed something to Li Jina. Then, here's something. Chocolate. That's right, chocolate don't you like chocolate? That one was pretty expensive but I deliberately didn't eat it or hide it from you. Li Jina looked at Oh se -chan with a sour expression of course. He took the chocolate anyway he already knew Oh se -chan well enough to not really expect many rewards. What have you been looking at all this time? I have a request to buy a dungeon so I'm looking for a very expensive one. If it's just a purchase request, you can make other people do it right? This time it's an important customer. Who is it? Park Yong Wan. Li Jina looked up when he heard the name. Park Yong Wan. Of course, it wasn't because he didn't know who Park Yong Wan was TL, duh. The guy who already took control of the Phoenix Guild is looking for a dungeon broker. He just had doubts that the man who had become one of the most powerful players in Korea needed help finding a dungeon. He's purchasing it for his beloved right-hand man his love for his men is really strong it's admirable. His right-hand man? Who's that? You know him too. No way, is it Kim Woo Jin? In response to his prompt, Oh se -chan only smiled. So you'll hold hands and rob Park Yongwan's pockets? Ha! Huh. Isn't that a scam? Fraud? This is called sales. 
Sales. Do I have to teach you even something like this? Okay I don't even want to get caught up in this. Li Jina reached past Oh Se Chan's hands and grabbed one of the documents. This one would be nice. 240 hours. A survival quest. What do you think? It's B rank and the number of entries is 25, plus you need to survive for 10 days it's the perfect dungeon to risk your life and level up and since it's hard to find a survival quest like this one, the price is pretty high it's a really good choice. Afterward, Li Jina nodded and handed the document to Oh Se Chan however, he pulled it back just as Oh Se Chan was about to receive it. Ha! Huh. Li Jina tilted his head, then Oh Se Chan tilted his head as well. They looked at each other like they didn't know what to say. What are you doing? Give it to me. Aren't you going to go level up too? In response, Li Jina made an expression as if he'd lost his soul TL, ah uh, I was a bit confused about this part, turns out Li Jina was signing his own death warrant without realizing. It was common knowledge that players needed to level up quickly, the players needed to hunt and kill many monsters and it was also common knowledge that dungeons with survival quests had much more monsters than the other dungeons with specialized quests. However, when they intended to level up, regardless of common knowledge or not, no player headed to a dungeon with a survival quest. Therefore Li Jina was quite nervous when they first entered the first floor of the dungeon and almost immediately reached the second floor. This is ridiculous. But contrary to his expectations, the first day was pretty relaxed. Kim Woo Jin used the first day on the second floor to prepare for the hunt rather than immediately start hunting. Exploring the terrain, setting traps, creating stages for battle, grasping the types and types of monsters. And when the hunting began on the second day, Kim Woo Jin's pace was different from usual Lee Jina talked three times more than usual and felt much more relaxed than usual. This pace lasted until the seventh day they had enough time to have tea after their meals until the seventh day. How is this possible? Therefore Li Jina was surprised. How can I level up so quickly when we're hunting in moderation? The leveling speed was faster than ever even though they were hunting at a very relaxed pace. Are you using nuclear weapons? Li Jina had good reason to be surprised. This was Kim Woo Jin's style as a hunting dog his hunting style was nothing special, or even memorable, it simply made use of the most optimal conditions to achieve a simple hunt. The time was fixed, there were no other forces to watch out for and they were both talented therefore they reached level 40 very easily. Level 40 from Kim Woo Jin's perspective, it was a great goal to open the gift he received, so for that goal, he progressed steadily. Your level has increased. Achieved level 40 inventory has been increased by 8 spaces. The emissary of the underworld admires your growth inventory has been increased by 8 spaces, TL, at this point this halo is more than a sugar daddy. The emissary of the underworld has sent a catalog as a reward for your growth, TL, point proven. Finally, he reached his goal. I can finally open my gifts. As soon as he reached level 40, Kim Woo Jin began opening his rewards one by one. Kim Woo Jin. After that he tore the two skill pages he had gained from his previous adventures. You have learned the skill Summon Golem. You have learned the skill Blood Fog. One thing remaining. All that was left was to now open the catalog sent by the Halo as a reward. What happened? Did you level up? At that time, Li Jina walked up to him. Then you should have told me we're a team. Now we should congratulate you for the rank up come on skeletons. Your master has leveled up so let's give him a round of applause. Do you want a birthday cake? Ha! Huh. Let's take this opportunity to do all the things we missed. Kim Woo Jin looked at Li Jina with a cold expression. Ah, you'll have to blow out candles. We don't have cake, but we can get candles hang on, they'll go grab a few tree branches and light them ha ha ha. TL, if I was the MC I'd want to kill him too. As if he didn't see Kim Woo Jin's expression, Li Jin Ah began to look around, further cementing how leisurely this hunt was. Kim Woo Jin ignored Li Jin Ah and focused on his gains once again. Catalog the last gift he received was finally open then a catalog appeared above Kim Woo Jin's hands. At that time, Li Jina who was tugging on a tree branch stopped pretending and shouted in surprise. Ha! Huh. What? Did you get something good? 
Chapter, 80 Book of the Dead Rank, E Effect This book contains the power of Osiris. Conceal the Dead The dead, sealed in the Book of the Dead, can display even more power with the power of Osiris. The Book of the Dead it could simply be called a dedicated inventory for undead monsters. At E rank I can use 10 pages. The space available at the E rank was only enough for 10 undead monsters TL, our author likes to reiterate things a lot, Gomenasi. The way to use it was rather simple when using the Book of the Dead skill, a book made out of slabs would appear with the undead monsters that were sealed within appearing on the faces of the slabs. It seems Johann George didn't have this one. Kim Woo Jin had no memory of this skill the King of Undead had never summoned any book like this before. If he did, it would have been terrible. Thank goodness. At that time, Kim Woo Jin was able to catch the King of Undead because he was constrained by the fact that he had to fulfill the conditions before he could summon his skeletons. But what if he was able to summon his skeletons without conditions like this? Kim Woo Jin wouldn't have even needed to be betrayed. In other words, it was a terribly useful skill. Removing the conditions for the summon skeleton skill was basically removing its only limitations and in the case of a skeleton soldier sealed in the Book of the Dead with the effect of ruler of the battlefield accumulated beforehand, the effect would remain TL, someone call the GM, this is too broken, I think he's using hacks. They can even wear items. Even the items worn by the skeleton soldiers would remain stored on them in the Book of the Dead this alone was already incredible. The power of Osiris infects the skeleton soldiers. All skeleton soldier stats increased by 20%, TL, I assume this means all the skeletons stored and not all that he has. But there was still more good news at that time, a notification sounded in Kim Woo Jin's ear. Your level has increased. When Kim Woo Jin lifted his head to look at the notification, a red mist that was floating in the jungle, caught his ITL, and the secret of speed leveling has been revealed. Lizard Man has been afflicted by blood mist. As this notification appeared, Kim Woo Jin saw a lizard man falling to the ground without any obvious wounds. Kim Woo Jin rose from his seat on the ground. Now it's time to go into the tiger's cave. At a golf course in Yangon City, Jiangi Province. A lush field had grown because the golf course had been closed for a long time and above that field, was the distorted space that represented a dungeon gate. Suddenly, a man appeared in front of the gate. The dungeon gate, which was large enough to fit a car in, could not be considered small, yet the man whose size was enormous, made it appear slightly small now. When the man appeared, he immediately collapsed on his knees. Ugh. At the same time as he appeared, a woman could be seen approaching him hurriedly, her face filled with worry. Mr. Lee Jina, what are you doing? As he heard the words of the remarkably beautiful woman, Lee Jina looked up. My stomach. Did you injure your stomach? Hungry. Yes. TL, I think I explained it before, but sometimes they say yes in place of what, uh, etc., I don't put what or how because it doesn't necessarily have the same feeling. Then a new character appeared before the dungeon gate when he appeared, he glanced at the man at the ground before calmly walking past him. Li Jina looked up as Kim Wu Jin walked past him and complained. Even slaves were given breaks to eat rice. Up until the seventh day, hunting with Kim Wu Jin had been easy however, from the eighth day, it's like Kim Wu Jin took a shot. Now that they only had three days left to hunt, he proceeded at a much faster pace a sprint. Not surprisingly, the sprint that they had at the end was seemingly too much for Li Jina. In particular, during the last three hours, before they left, Kim Woo Jin didn't even give him the chance to drink water TL, they'll be honest I feel kinda bad for Li Jina, he's so undervalued and underpaid, and he's always being bullied by Wu Jin and Seichan. That devil. He was a monster that could easily be mistaken as the devil. No, it might be better for those he targets to fight with the devil instead. Of course, Li Jina didn't call him the devil simply because Kim Wu Jin was evil. He looked at him the way Kim Wu Jin used his newly acquired skills in conjunction with his older ones was eye-opening. No one should ever try to fight him. Li Jina strengthened his resolve while looking at Kim Wu Jin's back. The woman who'd come to check on him, looked at Li Jina with an odd expression. Then Kim Wu Jin turned his head to her. 
Can you contact Oh Se Chan? Yes. Yes. The woman awoke from her stupor and took out a phone that had already been prepared. The woman immediately dialed a number, then handed the phone over to Kim Woo Jin. While this was happening, Li Jina still didn't get up from the ground. What are you contacting Se Chan for? Kim Woo Jin replied to the question easily TL, OMG, one of the few times he doesn't ignore Jina. I have an order. An order. When Kim Woo Jin nodded, Li Jina looked at him in delight. Then I want a jumbo size tray of Rajogi 10 and add rice balls. Kim Woo Jin looked down at Li Jina with an absurd expression on his face. I think he was too comfortable while hunting. Tuck. Then Oh Se Chan answered the call. Yeah, what's up? The moment he heard Oh Se Chan's voice from the phone, Kim Woo Jin immediately stated his request. I want to go to Kaesong. TL, and here I thought Wu Jin was being nice, how naive of me. Hansung Group. The number one group in Korea's business community and one of the world's most influential companies was once doubted when they became the patrons of the Messiah Guild. Why make such an investment that won't make you any money? But it had been four years since the world became like a game and by 2023 no one dared to doubt them. The Hansung Group, the Messiah Guild supporter, could be said to be one of the most influential in the world. According to the Messiah Guild, the Hansung Group was a company made to save the world, not to seek after profits. Unsurprisingly, everything relating to the Messiah Guild had the hands of the Hansung Group in it and sitting at the very top of the Hansung Group was none other than Park Shinhai, the goddess of the Messiah Guild not only did she have the title of chairman, but she was practically the ruler of the Hansung Group. Because of this, she could stand in front of anyone with a proud and confident smile. But recently her expressions were not that good the reason wasn't good. Is there still no news from Kim jae hoon Yes, there were signs showing he went to Europe but he disappeared after hiding his tracks. Is he dead? It seems so. Then where's the body? That. Please get the body whatever the cost. It was because a crack had appeared in a plan that should have been more than perfect. How are things with Park yong -won? Currently, I'm pruning the branches around him. I don't care about the branches that I'm asking is when will you go for his throat. Once I've gathered all the information on Park yong -won's actions, he'll make a move you should see results by early next year. That means for the next half year Park yong -won would be able to act freely, we can't have that. There were other troubles that she couldn't get rid of right away. Park yong -won was a card I'd created to sacrifice when necessary, but it seems I raised it too much TL, who plot twist. Park shin -hai sighed briefly. Why is everything becoming so complicated? What about that guy? That guy. The one who became Park yong -won's right hand the guy who contacted Kim jae hoon on behalf of Park yong -won. TL. Kim Jae Hoon must be spinning like a top in his grave. You mean Kim Woo Jin? Kim Woo Jin, the name that had been faint in her mind, immediately became fresh once again. That's right. I'm trying to get to him, but he is being protected it seems Park Yong Wan and the Phoenix Guild intend to nurture him. Who doesn't know that? What I want to know is how you're going to deal with him. As they heard the words that Park Shin Hai said, her general secretary bowed their head toward her. I have established a team to catch Kim Woo Jin. Who is the leader? It's Suzuki. For the first time in a while, Park Shin Hai nodded her head in satisfaction. As the owner of Lancelot's ring, their reliable TL, is this another item for our MC? Thanks, thanks. So where are they? They're currently waiting in the Kaesong special zone if Kim Woo Jin shows an opening, they will move to capture him immediately of course, they will make sure to get all the information out of him before they kill him. At that Park Shin Hai nodded and immediately stopped thinking about Kim Woo Jin instead her mind turned to another name. What about Isaac Ivanov? Do you think we can make him one of us? I think we can use him in the future regardless of his intentions, we will have to be friendly for the time being as he has shown friendliness to our side. Okay. Plan the strategy for an undefeated dungeon around him use him as much as you can. We already have an A-rank dungeon in Hokkaido, Japan in mind. Only then did Park Shinhai's somewhat tense expression relax. I'm glad I finally got a useful hunting dog. 
Rajogi is Sino-Korean dish which is basically chicken stir-fried with hot sauce. Chapter 81 After the dungeon gates appeared, all countries in the world had a very rough time, and it was still progressing. In some cases, the existence of the country was shaken by the level of suffering they had to go through. This was especially the case for those second and third world countries. Africa, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, South America, Southeast Asia, and where? North Korea. Countries like North Korea. It was impossible for such countries which had both political and national unrest to properly handle the dungeon gates. So those countries had two choices, either they let themselves be ruined, or they asked for help from stronger powers. In the case of North Korea, they chose the latter they opened their doors and asked the world for help. Of course, they didn't open that big of a door, basically only a small door was opened. Kaesong, North Korea Kaesong Special District was one such small door. After designing Kaesong as a special area for players, North Korea allowed almost all foreigners to enter freely without imposing any conditions or restrictions on dungeon attacks. Even in a socialist state, there were no restrictions on economic activity within the designated special districts. If the players could defeat the dungeon gate, then they would be able to do whatever they wanted in that area, so naturally, after becoming a special district, Kaesong became one of the greediest cities in the world. It's practically like Gotham. So it was given the nickname Gotham, like the city in the Batman, a comic in the DC series. He went there. Is he crazy? It was for this reason, that Lee jin was surprised that Kim Woo Jin went to such a place. The crazy one is you who deliberately came during lunch and ate my food you damn insect bastard. Lee jin who was now putting ramen in his bowl with a pair of chopsticks, made an odd expression as he heard those words and laughed awkwardly. Oh Se-chan gave him a dirty look before he continued talking. Kaesong is not as bad of a city as you think. Does that make sense? That's where all those criminal bastards like to gather. As Lee jin ah said, Kaesong Special District was a gathering place for criminals, but not just any criminals, it was for criminal players. A place for the people who cannot enter or work in normal countries or who simply don't want to live a normal life. If there was a wolf in a herd, then it would smell bloody and stand out but if there are only predators gathered, then it's surprisingly peaceful think of America compared to the number of firearms available, the number of deaths caused by firearms is pretty low isn't it? TL, cringe. That is considered small. Imagine what would happen if they legalized firearms in South Korea do you think the number would be as small as theirs? TL, cringe. After saying that, Oh Se-chan picked up some noodles with his chopsticks. Rather, it's the best place to hunt dungeons there is no tax, so it's easier to trade goods, which makes the prices of goods cheaper it's better than here as long as you're able to follow the rules. What are the rules? You just have to leave the dangerous guys alone. I guess there might be some dangerous guys like me there. As he heard those words, Oh Se-chan couldn't help but laugh. I would have sent you there to take a look, but I keep telling you, you're not that strong. Lee jin -ah grumbled with a sullen look on his face. Hyung, can't you give me a little compliment? I'll admit it if you give Kim Woo Jin a nosebleed. Ah, uh, really? That guy is a special kind of monster. You wouldn't understand unless you see him fight in person. There's a monster even stronger than Kim Woo Jin. When he heard this, Lee jin -ah's face became serious. Who is it? Suzuki Eiji he should be around level 50 now, but in standard two-floor dungeons, he'd find it hard to find an opponent. Lee jin -ah tilted his head when he heard the name. I've never heard of him are you just telling me that to mess with me? Despite his reaction, Oh Se-chan's expression didn't change. Believe it or don't, just don't ever cross the guy with a scar under his right eye. TL, a bit of a vague description. Oh Se-chan paused before adding another bit of information. Because he is a hound for the Messiah Guild. Li jin -ah slowly digested this information. But why did that guy Kim Woo jin go there? Is it dangerous? I don't know. Well maybe he went to catch that scary guy you just talked about. At the question, Oh Se-chan let out a laugh. Never in reality, 
even if you take an army with you, there's no guarantee that you could defeat Suzuki Eiji Kim Woojin would probably know this better than me maybe he went to do something else. As he said that, Oh Seichan's thoughts drifted briefly. If Kim Woojin really went to hunt Suzuki Eiji and if he does hunt him, then there's no doubt that he's after the Messiah Guild. Oh Seichan's expression hardened slightly. Maybe we need to uncover the power of the pharaoh in advance. The most central part of Kaesong's special district was the Kaesong Industrial Complex. Used as a factory in the past, it was now a gathering point for the players who stayed in the Kaesong special district. Life in the district was quite different to what people on the outside thought rather than a city of lawlessness, it felt much like any other place in the world. Selling items. Selling materials. The first thing one would notice was the item-covered simple shops lining the streets there, one could see items and materials gathered from monsters. These sites which were hard for the general public to even see, were laid out plainly like a fish market and the freshness of it all was quite shocking. There were even shops selling the complete corpses of monsters. Werewolf corpse, caught yesterday I'm selling it whole. It was a monster that had escaped from a dungeon gate and been captured. In other countries, the moment you were caught dealing with monsters in this way, you'd be given a nice iron bracelet, courtesy of the state but in the Kaesong special district there was no need for that worry. Wow. In English. Sogoi. TL, great, in Japanese. This was why non-player tourists clicked their cameras at the scene. Of course, it wasn't a good thing to see illegal activities were usually done in the dark, hidden places where no one could see them. I like the water here what do you think? Do you mean alcohol? There's also something even better. From alcohol, to drug trafficking the ugliest things that mankind were capable of trading, could be traded here. Kill that son of a bitch. Catch that bastard. To the sights of those under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and those whose morality had already taken large hits, something else appeared before them. And the sight before them was brutal beyond the point of being just fierce. The fight between players who had survived the horrors of dungeons was not something that could be compared to those players who did not hunt or ordinary people. Unlike fighting arenas that had rules, most fights in the Kaesong Special District were fights to the death. The battles were always extremely bloody. Fights like these, which one would be hard-pressed to find anywhere else, was one of the specialties of the Kaesong Special District as they could break out at any moment. A similar thing was happening in a club located in a corner of the Kaesong Industrial Complex it was a bar that had a few tables and chairs for the customers to sit. Clink. Bottles of alcohol could be heard shattering one after another. Fuck. Ack. Screams could be heard all over the place. Between the screams and the club's music, two men stood in front of each out, pointing the broken bottles in their hands. What did you just say? Why don't you say it again you motherfucker? Are you gonna do something about it you crazy bastard? The two drunkards swore at each other. They both looked like they were more than willing to commit murder which proved that these two were not ordinary. It's a player fight. This is crazy, someone stop them. They are both over level 30, do you want to go between them and stop them? In fact, the two players were both higher than level 30 and an ordinary person wouldn't be able to stop them even if they had an automatic rifle. They were having mulberry juice just a minute ago. Drugs? Oh my god. TL, I'm assuming mulberry juice is the colloquial name for a form of narcotic. Above all, the two of them didn't simply have alcohol. It was like two cars without brakes running into each other at top speed. The onlookers gulped collectively and some of them took a few steps backward. Suddenly. P.U.K. An arrow flew between the two who had appeared to be isolated from the outside world. The two then turned their heads at the same time to look at where it came from, their eyes wild like beasts. In their gaze, they saw a woman sitting at a table, and beside her was a man of small stature looking at them with a cool gaze. Below his right eye was a rather impressive looking scar. Hook. Ugh. As soon as they saw this man, the two men who were intoxicated with both alcohol and drugs became a lot more sober. This happened to practically everyone in the club as they all became nervous when they noticed the appearance of this man. Only one person in the entire club was more relaxed than nervous at that moment. Suzuki Eiji. 
Kim Woo Jin, disguised as a tanned man with a large mustache sitting at the bar and watching the situation, was observing the man who managed to calm the tense situation in the club with only a glance. And then a thought came to his mind. I didn't think I'd meet you this way. Chapter, 82 Before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin had joined the Messiah Guild at level 55. He had begun to gain fame through successive dungeon clears and had caught the eye of the Messiah Guild during the Horned Fox Hunt. When he had reached level 55 the Messiah Guild once again made him an offer. Hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, we need your help. Lee Se Jun, the leader of the Messiah Guild and savior of the world had personally made the offer to him and Kim Woo Jin had no reason to refuse. After that, Kim Woo Jin became a hunting dog for the Messiah Guild. Monsters upon monsters, players upon players, items upon items whatever the Messiah Guild requested, he hunted. Eventually, Kim Woo Jin became the Messiah Guild's best hunting dog. Of course, the name hunting dog wasn't created for Kim Woo Jin, he wasn't the first and he wouldn't be the last. In fact there were more than one player with the title of hunting dog, in every guild hundreds to thousands of players worldwide were known as hunting dogs. And there were people who were called hunting dogs within the Messiah Guild even before Kim Woo Jin joined it. Suzuki Eiji. He was the best hunting dog within the Messiah Guild. Of course, it was only after a while that this information became known. It was around the time he reached level 100 and attacked a four-floor dungeon. Simply put, when you reached level 100, you could retire from being a hound and move to being a regular player in the light. That was the way of the hunting dogs. If the hunting dog hunted openly, would people simply stare at them and let them do it? It was impossible. Therefore most hunting dogs remained unidentified and usually retired the moment it became hard for them to hunt or they reached the expected level. Naturally, the place they left after retiring was naturally filled by other hunting dogs eager for the position. Looking back at it, he offered me a hand because he needed a pinch hitter one foot. Kim Woo Jin became the pinch hitter for Suzuki Eiji this wasn't just a vague guess. When Suzuki Eiji was level 80, Kim Woo Jin had been level 55, the perfect level for a baton touch too. From the Messiah Guild's perspective, it would have been difficult to find someone to substitute Suzuki Eiji so the savior Lee Se Jun personally brought a new hunting dog. Of course, at that time the Messiah Guild had miscalculated. After that, I quickly caught up. Kim Woo Jin had quickly caught up to Suzuki Eiji. When Kim Woo Jin was first recruited, as he took over for Suzuki Eiji and his team, he constantly heard the legendary stories of what Suzuki Eiji had done. So naturally, he knew him well. His abilities were so amazing. Oh how great he was. His team was on a different level. Additionally, he'd made use of teamwork rather than simply fighting on his own. Kim Woo Jin knew better than anyone that hunting dogs were actually much stronger when they fought in groups rather than when they hunted alone. If I let him grow more than this he'd become a monster. So, if Kim Woo Jin let him be, he would become even more of a monster than he was now. Because in fact, in the eyes of others, he was already a monster. Even back then, even after being overtaken by Kim Woo Jin, Suzuki Eiji had still managed to make himself a key player within the Messiah Guild. Because the Messiah Guild knows that he has Lancelot's ring. This was because it was in fact the Messiah Guild who had given him Lancelot's ring in his possession. Lee Se Jun's old item. Because it was Lee Se Jun who'd once owned Lancelot's ring. So no matter how you looked at it, Kim Woo Jin definitely had to get rid of Suzuki Eiji before he could face the Messiah Guild. However, up to a few days ago, Kim Woo Jin did not have any intentions of hunting down Suzuki Eiji. I never thought we'd meet so soon. No rather, Kim Woo Jin had been thinking and preparing ways for him to avoid this monster when the Messiah Guild decided to make Suzuki Eiji hunt him. The reason was simple. I thought it would be after level 100 foot. He wasn't completely confident that he could win. It was impossible for him to deal with Suzuki Eiji and his team with the abilities he currently had at his disposal. Of course, that was a few days ago. The fact that Kim Woo Jin was there meant that it was no longer an impossibility. From then on, there was only one thing that Kim Woo Jin was considering. The sprout should be cut when it can be cut. And that was how to hunt his new prey. 
on a road that was too messy to truly be considered a road. Toll toll toll. An old bus, so worn that it was truly surprising that it could still move, shambled its way along the road while emitting weird noises. Almost there. Kim Woo Jin was on that bus. He had oily hair that suited his shirt and pants which were giving of a rather stinky smell, his dark eyes were surrounded by dark circles and his face was so pale that it looked like he was wearing powder his frame gave off a very desolate aura as he sat in a corner of the slowly moving bus. It was not the appearance of a player. In fact, Kim Woo Jin didn't come here as a player. Hey, you there. Yes. Is this your first time being a warehouse? A warehouse, that was Kim Woo Jin's role today. And it was the role of the other people on the bus. Their role was something that could only be seen in places like the Kaesong Special District in a nutshell they were there for inventory. Due to the fact that players could only bring items to and from the dungeons with their inventory, more players were needed to bring more items so players who intended to attack dungeons would hire other players and use them as substitute warehouses. To put it simply, he was selling his body he was being paid to lend his life. Of course, ordinary players wouldn't be able to understand because ordinary players were the players who were able to enjoy wealth and fame and couldn't be compared to regular people. Is this your first time as a warehouse? Ah, uh, it's not. Oh, it's my first time seeing you so what did you do to come here? What are you wanted for? Murder, rape, assault, maybe fraud. It was a role that only could be found in places like the Kaesong Special District where people who could no longer live among regular players gather. In other words, everyone there was of that sort. I think you're too nervous want me to introduce you to the other bastards so you could relax. Hey, see that bald guy? He raped and killed five people and you see the pig next to him right? He did it four times. Those who would rather live an ugly life than pay for their horrendous crimes. Oh, it's seven times if you include murder and that guy next to him when I saw him for the first time, he looked like had been drugged and raped but that's just my guess. If it was the Kim Woo Jin of the past, he would have immediately killed all of them without a second thought or care. However in front of them now, Kim Woo Jin didn't reveal his intentions. The first reason was that they weren't his prey. This is the actor that Suzuki Eiji hit here. The second was that this snake-like man was in fact an actor planted by Suzuki Eiji to monitor the warehouses in case there were any problems. It wasn't anything strange. Unless Suzuki Eiji was a fool, he'd of course check if there were any traps or issues with any of the warehouses he used. Furthermore, if it was the player's first time as a warehouse then there was all the more reason to be wary against them. So what happened to you? Therefore, Kim Woo Jin acted in front of the actor. I was betrayed by someone I believed in. The moment he saw Kim Woo Jin's expression, Jo Han Ho, who was the one speaking to him, nodded. So it's a fugitive story then. It was thanks to his genuine expression that no further explanation was needed. Just like that, Jo Han Ho nodded at Kim Woo Jin, fully believing him. Make your friend pay the price for betraying you, and force them to live a hard life in the future tell me if you ever need help. He raised his thumb in front of Kim Woo Jin who didn't respond. Yes, he has to pay for betraying the world. The reason Kim Woo Jin was there was in fact because his answer was more fitting than most would believe. Creek. They arrived at their destination. Get off. I saw someone said that I was making too many notes in the chapters and it affected their immersion, so I'm sorry about that I'll keep my thoughts to myself from now on the notes will be informative only for any slip-ups, I can only ask for forgiveness. Chapter, 83 At the foot of the Mindongsan Mountain, where no trees could be found, was a dungeon gate, appearing as though monsters would come pouring out of it at any moment. Slowly, a rundown bus drove up to the dungeon gate. Get off! As the voice rang out, people on the bus began to step off one by one, quite similar to the appearance of prisoners stepping out of a convoy arriving at a prison. Team leader, the warehouses are here. A subordinate of Suzuki Eiji, who was observing the scene from a distance, reported the situation. But instead of answering, Suzuki Eiji pointed toward the satellite phone he held to his face with his right hand and then put his left index finger to his lips. The subordinate closed his mouth. Yes I understand I'll prepare. 
Soon after, the subordinate carefully and hesitantly asked Suzuki Eiji a question. Who was it? TL, in English, the text seems rude and unlike something a subordinate would say, but this was in fact asked in a deferential way. The queen wants us to adjust our leveling pace. When he heard this, the subordinate's expression became slightly fierce. It was the expression of a hunting dog, who had been unable to fill his stomach with the food he was given so far, was given new prey. Who is the next target? Kim Woo Jin. However when the name Kim Woo Jin came out, the man's fierce expression became a bit dull it seemed he had never heard that name before. It was understandable. Suzuki Eiji and his team were the hunting dogs the Messiah Guild sent to hunt fierce tigers, many of whom were pretty famous, though it was not rare for them to not know the person. Well, we'll know when we see him, he doesn't appear to be a simple guy. In fact, the fact that they were ordered to wait and hunt this person was evidence that this Kim Woo Jin was not an ordinary person. It's fine like this. Of course, that didn't mean that they were gonna ponder about it for a long time. If the order comes, we just have to hunt. No matter who the prey was, no one would doubt Suzuki Eiji and his team's ability to hunt that person. This had always been the case. Hence, Suzuki Eiji didn't even bother to discuss this Kim Woo Jin any further. How are the warehouses? There was no special signal from our actor so we can proceed with the dungeon attack. At his subordinate's words, Suzuki Eiji nodded. Then tell everyone to get ready for the dungeon. Yes. I'll kill anyone who screams in the C rank dungeon. Quack. When Suzuki Eiji entered the dungeon, the first thing that greeted him was the screams of someone gradually moving away. Defeat all the red orcs to advance to the next floor. Subsequently, the notification of the conditions to clear the first floor sounded in his ear it was also the reminder that no more players could enter the dungeon. Of course, Suzuki Eiji didn't pay much attention to the notification, instead he grabbed one of the men near him and pulled them closed. What's going on? As soon as one of the warehouses came in, he killed one of our teammates and ran off with two others. It was then that he realized that the screams he'd heard were actually the screams of his subordinates. Shall we chase? Suzuki Eiji didn't answer his subordinates' ensuing question, instead he walked over to the corpse on the ground. It was not difficult to figure out the cause of death. It would be weird to ask how he died after seeing his head detached from his body. Nevertheless Suzuki Eiji carefully examined the corpse to properly identify how he died. He cut the skin by putting the knife in the gap before breaking the neck and cutting it. The information he got from his observations made Suzuki Eiji convinced. This is someone who knows how to properly kill a player. The person who'd come in with them was clearly targeting himself and his subordinates, this was not just some bloody murderer, instead it was a sufficiently competent and well-trained person. As he had such thoughts, Suzuki Eiji quickly gave an order to his men. Clean this up. His subordinates moved quite swiftly. Chulong. Shik. They all drew their weapons and pointed them toward the warehouses that they had hired. Ha. Huh. WH- dash, What the hell? Wa dash, wait. Cool. While the warehouse players, who had been stunned by the sudden change of situation were frozen, two people were stabbed and fell to the floor with bloody screams. Ha. Huh. Ah. Uh. Hey. Wa dash, wait. I have a different contract. Joe Han Ho, who had been hired separately also could not avoid being cut down. Fuck. Of course, the threatened players also attempted to counter-attack, after all they were still players whose skills and abilities were outside the scope of the ordinary people. It would be strange for those who committed horrendous crimes and were able to escape the hands of the government and live like low-end demons in the special district to just roll over and die. Hey, you bastards! Attack! They immediately counter-attacked and the clearing soon became a hell-like battlefield, but Suzuki Eiji paid no attention to it. In his eyes, the mouse could freely attack and bite the lion, but it could never kill a lion. Based on Suzuki Eiji's observations, the difference between his subordinates and the warehouses was even more than that. Evidence in that the warehouses treated themselves like rats in the first place. What filled Suzuki Eiji's mind instead was the battle ahead. You killed one person and captured two foot. As soon as the attacker entered the dungeon, 
they dealt with three and then ran away without engaging further. Meaning they intend for this to be a protracted battle. It was paving the path with a long-term battle in mind. And that was the standard procedure. In order for the weaker to eat the stronger, they had to dig a trap and slowly nibble away at the stronger strength. There's no reason for us to accept their dog fight. Conversely, from the Strong's perspective, they simply needed to avoid it. Cleaning up the warehouses now was also a part of that avoidance, as it eliminated any other unknown variables. The first thing to do is take our time and find out who this is. While Suzuki Eiji was planning to deal with this new opponent, and his men were busy battling the warehouses, a change occurred. Team Leader TH Dash, there. Go Dash, a golem is coming. What? Kim Woo Jin's second attack had begun. What is the best timing to hunt other players? Kim Woo Jin could answer this question without the slightest hesitation. Immediately after entering a dungeon was the best time to attack a player. Without a doubt, as soon as they entered a dungeon, players immediately focused on their surroundings. It meant that at that moment, they didn't pay attention to what those around them were doing. Moreover, Players who had just entered the dungeon would not have any formations or built any positions. Most crucially however, was the fact that most players had never been attacked the moment they entered a dungeon. As always, you cannot cope properly without experience. A preemptive strike is always valid. Aiming for this gap was one of Kim Woo Jin's specialties. In fact, before returning to the past, when Kim Woo Jin hid his name and affiliation and played as a hunting dog, Nearly half of the players he hunted were killed within an hour of entering the dungeon gate. For Kim Woo Jin, the hunting dog, the hour after entering the dungeon was the golden time for him to hunt anything. The problem was that after returning to the past, the strength he had was incomparable to the strength he had before. At the same time he had many conditions for his skills. Without any sacrifices, he had no skeletons, no blood weapons or corpse explosions and so he was forced to use the golden time to instead make preparations and build up power for his first strike. The Book of the Dead has been opened. Ten pages are currently filled. However the Book of the Dead had made all of that a story of the past. Page 1 has been destroyed a skeleton soldier that had been sealed within has been released. Page 2 has been destroyed a skeleton soldier that had been sealed within has. With the Book of the Dead, he had been able to summon ten skeletons in a minute. The effect of Ruler of the Battlefield has been superimposed to the maximum. The Black Bone effect has been applied. These were the strongest skeleton soldiers that he had at his disposal. And there was still one card he had that could be used without the need for sacrifice. Summon Golem. A Golem has been summoned. A very powerful subordinate of the Messiah Guild would instead be a gift for him. Kim Woo Jin measured the time since he'd entered the dungeon and soon figured out that it had been three minutes since he'd entered the dungeon. However the number that stayed in his mind was not three, instead. Fifty-seven minutes left. Kim Woo Jin was planning to finish his hunt within the golden time, just as he had in the past. Chapter, 84 A well-trained hunting dog focused all its senses on carrying out an order as soon as it was received. So were Suzuki Eiji's men. They were well trained to the extent that they focused on carrying out his orders the moment they were told to clean up. Kung. Ha. Huh. What the? So it was not because they were incompetent that they only noticed the golem when it was already near to them. Rather it was proof that they were a competent bunch. A golem? It's a golem. However their response to the new situation also showcased their competence. Use your heavy weapons to deal damage. Destroy the legs first. In their eyes, the golem's weakness would be its legs which had to carry the weight of its huge body plus the defense of its legs would be much weaker in comparison to its huge 4 meter large frame. There was no need to discuss. They didn't even have to discuss who would attack it or not. I'm going. Me too. Immediately, tanks wearing heavy armor sprinted toward the golem, two of them with the halo of the undying fighter. Inventory. One of the players threw away the large sword in his hand and reached into his inventory to retrieve a large hammer. It's over. Everyone who saw this and did not have any doubts that the golem would be a pile of dust in 30 seconds or less. In other words, everyone's attention was focused on the golem. 
Boom! It was at that moment that the skeletons began their attack. Ah! Uh. Ah! Uh. Suzuki Eiji's men, as well as those who they had been attacking were stunned by the sudden appearance of the skeleton soldiers moreover, these skeletons were very different from the golem. Are they players? The skeleton soldiers were completely armored and at first glance it was easy to mistake them for actual players. Where did eleven people come from? From their perspective it was weird for eleven people to suddenly emerge and this is what caused them to be stunned. What is this? Even Suzuki Eiji couldn't help the stunned expression that went across his face for a moment. Their surprise caused their reactions to slow down momentarily. Suzuki Eiji had been unable to give his men orders, and his subordinates, without order, waited for the skeletons to arrive. Damn it! I have to stop this. Moreover, the two men who'd normally have played the part as tanks to stop the skeletons had switched their weapons and were now fighting the golem. The skeleton soldiers who were much faster than the golem and also much more clever than the golem were able to close the gap. The skeletons immediately narrowed the distance to their targets in an instant, their weapons finding the gaps within their armor with ease. Puk. Immediately from the skeleton's surprise attacks, blood spilled following a piercing sound. Suzuki Eiji's men became bloody in an instant. Wake up! Of course, there were no fatalities. Even for the powerful skeleton soldiers, it was impossible for them to kill fully armored level 50 players with just a few cuts and stabs. However the skeletons didn't need to give them fatal wounds. Your blood has become fog and has begun to spread quickly. The bloody fog which began to flow out from Kim Woo Jin's body, who was hiding behind the skeletons, was enough to hurt them. You have been afflicted by blood poison. In a short period of time, Kim Woo Jin's surroundings became filled with bloody fog. The power of Apophis is in motion. The needle snake's poison accumulated in your body has made the blood poison stronger. The presence of the poisonous blood fog which was formed from the potent EX rank blood poison mixed with the venom of the needle snake was so powerful that the effect was inevitable. Hook. Padash, there's poison too. Get out of the fog. The moment the open wounds were exposed to the poisonous fog, the players who had already expended a lot of energy fighting were stunned at the fierce toxicity. In addition, the blood fog did not distinguish who to attack. Ugh. Ah. It covered both the players under Suzuki Eiji, and the warehouse players that they were fighting. Kim Woo Jin didn't put much thought into this either. All of the people here must be killed. None of them could be allowed to escape to tell the world what happened. Even if they promised not to, Kim Woo Jin was determined that there would not be a single other survivor other than himself. That man. The one making the bloody fog. He isn't a skeleton. It's a mask. He's wearing a skeleton mask. If a survivor escaped, he would be exposed immediately. Isaac? Oh my god. It's Isaac Ivanov. Then Needle Snake Hunter. Isaac Ivanov, the hero who once saved the members of the Messiah Guild was now looking at them. It's Isaac Ivanov. Suzuki Eiji's expression became serious as he saw this it would be odd if the Messiah Guild's hunting dog didn't know the man who'd come to the rescue of the Messiah Guild. But why? Of course he had no reason to be here. But the reason wasn't important. What was important was that Isaac Ivanov's power had been recognized by the Messiah Guild, and only Suzuki Eiji and his team could stop him. I have to deal with this. Suzuki Eiji made his move almost reflexively. Sususu. He quickly narrowed the distance between him and Kim Woo Jin. Woo Woo. As the distance narrowed, a katana that appeared in his hands began to let out a loud noise while emitting a bright white aura. The cutting, skill this light signified the use of a unique skill which greatly increased the cutting power of the weapon it was used on. The ensuing attack was one that few would dare to attempt to stop but Suzuki Eiji had a different thought. He will stop me. That Kim Woo Jin would be able to stop him. In order for him to stop the battle, he had to face him directly. He became more convinced in his thoughts when his eyes met Kim Woo Jin's, who turned to face him as he grew closer. Come. But contrary to his expectations, Kim Woo Jin turned his gaze away again after giving him a glance. Ignored. 
Kim Woo Jin had ignored Suzuki Eiji's advance. Instead, it was a skeleton soldier which appeared and blocked him with the blade in its hand. Clang! The sword wielded by the skeleton knocked against Suzuki Eiji's armor. Shik! At the same time, the sword wielded by Suzuki Eiji neatly cut the shoulder of the skeleton soldier through the needle snakeskin armor. If it was a regular player it would have been a fatal injury even if they had not immediately died. However the skeleton soldier simply stabilized itself quickly and sent another attack toward Suzuki Eiji who reciprocated with an attack of his own. The two blades clashed with each other loudly and at the same time the skeleton soldier faltered. This was because the difference between the two was too big to be explained simply. Of course, the subsequent engagement could no longer be called a fight. P.U.K. Suzuki Eiji kicked the faltering skeleton and cut at it as it became even more unbalanced. It took no more than ten seconds for its right arm, right leg and neck to be severed. Kook. Additionally, it was the same amount of time for the long sword wielded by Kim Woo Jin to cut one of Suzuki Eiji's subordinates in half. It was the moment when Kim Woo Jin and Suzuki Eiji exchanged each other's men at a one-to-one -one ratio. At that moment, their eyes met again, and once again, Kim Woo Jin ignored Suzuki Eiji. Instead a new skeleton appeared before him to interrupt his advance. Is that it? This didn't make Suzuki Eiji angry, instead his expression became more serious. Not a long-term battle, but exhaustion. It was at that moment that he grasped the plan of Kim Woo Jin. Chapter, 85 He noticed. The moment that Suzuki Eiji made a cold expression instead of one of anger toward him, told Kim Woo Jin that his plan had been noticed. As expected by Suzuki Eiji, Kim Woo Jin did not plan to fight him here today. The reason was quite simple. It's best to not fight a losing battle. And that was because Suzuki Eiji was currently much stronger than Kim Woo Jin. The situation was very different from the one with Yang Ji Hu the difference in levels between them was quite high. Currently, Suzuki Eiji was level 55, more than 10 levels higher than Kim Woo Jin. There was also the difference in skill and experience it was evident from the way the Messiah Guild treated the two. If Yang Ji Hu had had more experience and better skills than Suzuki Eiji, then he would have been their hunting dog instead. In the end, Suzuki Eiji was the one chosen. Blood poison doesn't work against Lancelot's ring. No negative effect worked against the legendary item, also called Lake's ring. The King of Poison knew that. It was the biggest reason why the King of Poison targeted the Knights of the Round Table in the past. Lancelot's ring was the Achilles heel of the King of Poison. Of course, this was done intentionally by the Messiah Guild. They had the antidote in the form of Lancelot's ring, so they weren't afraid to use the weapon known as the King of Poison. And Kim Woo Jin would never forget that fact. Not only was Suzuki Eiji stronger than himself, but he also couldn't use blood poison, which was one of his trump cards. If you've already noticed, then it's meaningless to stick around. So Kim Woo Jin didn't hesitate. Retreat. As Kim Woo Jin shouted his command, he immediately turned and fled into the forest along with his skeleton soldiers. Twelve people. This was the number of team members than Suzuki Eiji had prepared to attack the dungeon. The number didn't have any special meaning it was simply the hunting dogs who had the required level of experience and alertness that was required for the dungeon. The composition of the team was also nothing special. Rather, with an average level of 53, their combined power was more than enough to handle this C-rank dungeon. However, three of the twelve were killed immediately after entering. Shortly after, six more were killed in the battles which followed. Nine people died in an instant and now only three of them remained. With this situation, Suzuki Eiji concluded. He is a necromancer if we give him time we will be the ones at a disadvantage. They were the ones who would be at a disadvantage in the long run. We have to chase after him. And so Suzuki Eiji and his men began tracking down Kim Woo Jin. It was an example of wise judgment on Suzuki Eiji's part. The correct answer that few were able to reach. If he were in the same situation that Suzuki Eiji was in right now, Kim Woo Jin himself would have taken the same action. There was just one problem. You have connected to a skeleton. 
Kim Woo Jin could use the Grim Reaper's mask to manipulate his tracks. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin was the hunting dog more experienced in tracking than anyone else a clever hunting dog who knew how to track targets, also knew what to do to interfere with tracking. Damn it! Faced with Kim Woo Jin's hard work, Suzuki Eiji was forced to waste his time over and over again. And he had to pay for that wasted time as if it was gold. Kim Woo Jin once again revealed himself this time, followed by 25 skeleton soldiers. It had been three days since they'd entered the dungeon. Who? The appearance of Suzuki Eiji was much calmer than one would expect given his circumstances. However, his surroundings were anything but calm. Boom! Tranquility could not be found as 23 skeleton soldiers practically burning with fighting spirit. Nevertheless, Suzuki Eiji couldn't appear to be even calmer as he took one deep breath after another. And it wasn't a bluff. Death is the only thing that no one can escape from. At this moment, he was intended to fight this battle like his last, prepared to die. It was an ice-cold decision. There's no reason for me to lose against this group of skeletons. Over the course of losing all of his twelve men, Suzuki Eiji realized that the skeleton soldiers posed no threat to him. It's probably because he's not confident he can defeat me. At the same time he'd realized that the decision to remove all his subordinates in this way was also a choice made in the end only because he couldn't defeat him on his own. He's probably thinking the same thing. Finally, Suzuki Eiji knew that Kim Woo Jin's thoughts would be exactly the same as his. Come out. That's why Suzuki Eiji called out for Kim Woo Jin, and in the end, he appeared. Suzuki Eiji stared for a long time at the skull mask. Isaac Ivanovno, that should be a pseudonym is it Kim Woo Jin? Kim Woo Jin didn't respond to his question because he knew. What Suzuki Eiji was doing right now wasn't to figure out who he was, but to get inside his head. Such an insane monster. Suzuki Eiji grit his teeth at Kim Woo Jin who didn't fall for his trick he admitted that there was nothing he could gain from having a conversation. Naturally silence fell over the two sides and in the silence, Suzuki Eiji began to simulate the upcoming battle. If I attack him, the skeleton soldiers will block me then I can get rid of those skeletons. This time, he intended to make use of the technique that Kim Woo Jin had used before. His poison doesn't work on me anyway, so I can go directly to him after destroying his skeletons. He decided to clean up the area before he aimed at the head. That was why he purposefully let himself be surrounded he used himself as bait to get all the skeletons in one place. The skeleton soldiers are no threat to me. This was a decision after he had carefully tested the strength of the skeleton soldiers, it was not something he decided lightly. Kim Woo Jin looked toward Suzuki Eiji who had been brimming with confidence, and said. The sun's protection. Protection of the sun has been activated. Along with those words, the golden color of sunlight began exuding from a necklace on Kim Woo Jin's neck. Aura field. And with the next spell, the golden light spread out from his body. Seeing this, Suzuki Eiji couldn't help but shout. Gawain's necklace. The battle began with that shout. Kim Woo Jin, who exhaled for a long time, pulled a Japanese-style sword from his left thigh. Puk. After the knife was pulled out, his blood flowed like a fountain the sight of which would make any viewer cringe in pain. Inventory. However Kim Woo Jin simply took a potion from his inventory with one hand, while applying pressure on the wound with the other hand, his expression unchanged. Trickle. The removed potion was then poured directly onto the wound. However the bleeding was not so easily stopped, in fact, had it been anyone else, the wound would have been fatal. After consuming and using a few more potions, Kim Woo Jin managed to slow the bleeding significantly, however the wound was still open. But Kim Woo Jin was satisfied with this amount. If it wasn't for my blood skills, I might have died here. He could heal the wound away using some of his skills of course, Kim Woo Jin couldn't actually move his body at the moment so he needed to get something to help him. Rattle. Then a skeleton appeared, and around that skeleton was a mountain of bones. He was amazing. Suzuki Eiji was truly strong. If it wasn't for the Book of the Dead and if it wasn't for Gawain's necklace, Kim Woo Jin would have been the one lying dead instead at this moment. He frowned slightly at that thought. I underestimated him. 
For Kim Woo Jin, even if it was despicable, he much preferred to have a woundless victory rather than this bloody one. Nevertheless he'd won and it wasn't just a victory. Rather, this was the most valuable victory he'd had so far. Using a skeleton soldier, he retrieved the most valuable item from his victory A ring that was taken from the body of Suzuki Eiji who had the appearance of a hedgehog with arrows and swords stuck all over his body. Lancelot's Ring The Poison King's Achilles heel is now in my hands. This item was the most valuable evidence of his victory but that wasn't all had gained from this victory. The only thing left was to offer Suzuki Eiji as a sacrifice to Oh Se chan Giving Suzuki Eiji's identity to Oh Se chan Of course, Kim Woo Jin did not forget. Eye of Anubis has been activated. That his hunt had yet to truly start. Chapter, 86 When Kim Woo Jin stepped out of the dungeon gate, it was none other than the North Korean army that met him. Armed with Type 88 assault rifles and dressed in their military uniforms, anyone who wasn't wearing uniform would definitely stand out. Oh! Naturally they reacted as soon as they saw Kim Woo Jin, they reacted immediately but there wasn't any hostility. On the contrary, the moment Kim Woo Jin appeared, a fierce-looking soldier holding a gun approached Kim Woo Jin politely and handed him a radio. He understood the situation immediately when he saw that radio. They're gonna keep recycling it till I die. The radio that the Korean had handed Kim Woo Jin was as familiar to him as one of his skeleton soldiers. He turned on the radio leisurely. Ah! As soon as the radio was turned on, Oh Se Chan's voice could be heard immediately. Why did you touch him? However, the emotion in Oh Se Chan's voice wasn't one that Kim Woo Jin was used to hearing from him. Oh Se Chan's had the least emotion in it that had ever heard. It was said that the voices of robots were becoming more and more human-like, but when he heard Oh Se Chan's voice it felt like it was coming from a machine. I hope you don't say bullshit like I didn't know who Suzuki Eiji was. Even when he said more words, he didn't add any emotion in his voice. Nevertheless, his intentions were clear. The conversation they were to have was not something that could be treated as a joke or prank, so it was important that personal feelings weren't added to it. He was the Messiah Guild's hunting dog. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin also didn't joke or make a flimsy excuse. So I killed him. After he heard that, Oh Se Chan was quiet for a long time, however, Kim Woo Jin did not turn off the radio and waited for Oh Se Chan to speak. Ah, sorry. Soon, Oh Se Chan broke the silence. I was embarrassed for a moment as I couldn't think of a response to that quickly. The tone of Oh Se Chan's voice when he finally broke the silence was noticeably different. Honestly, I've seen stuff like this in movies, but this is the first time I've tried it in real life. It's harder to do than I thought, and it's kinda like an asshole. Ah, I'm not saying that I was trying to be an asshole, it just sounded a bit stupid, right? As Oh Se Chan's voice came through the radio, Kim Woo Jin smiled slightly. I want to meet him once. He thought that he'd like to meet Oh Se Chan in person and talk. While Kim Woo Jin had this thought, Oh Se Chan's voice continued. Honestly, I know your intentions you're trying to show me that you're not on the side of the Messiah Guild by killing their favorite hunting dog that the Messiah Guild is your enemy. His assumptions were correct. Also, you wanted to check if I was on the side of the Messiah Guild or not if I was on their side, I'd have had your head pierced by a sniper rifle round, not given you the radio. This was another right answer. Also by doing this you're proving that you know that those Messiah Guild guys aren't really heroes trying to save the world. And of course, the last thing he said was also correct. So I can't completely trust you yet those guys who play savior to eat the world, they'd make a plausible ally like you just to go after my neck. When Oh Se Chan said this, Kim Woo Jin wasn't surprised, instead he nodded. There's nothing wrong with being cautious. I'm not that cautious, but against such an opponent, I don't have a choice but to stay hidden at least in my opinion, the Messiah Guild is the greatest villain in the history of humanity. Kim Woo Jin had actually expected Oh Se Chan to say something like this. He knows well. Out of everyone in the world, Oh Se Chan was probably the person who had seen the true face of the Messiah Guild the most. Because of this, Kim Woo Jin wasn't actually worried. If he knew the true face of the Messiah Guild so well then he would never refuse to help. 
but from my perspective I can't just tell you to turn away those nice soldiers who came to greet you after all, they're working with us the eyes of the world, the eyes that look for the truth, the way to deal with our enemies, like a city beast. It was then. Beasts are all the same it's just the fur that is different anyway, when we use the payphone to talk, it's too costly for short conversations it's better to use the radio let's finish this so I can grab a bite to eat I've been starving for three hours already. Are you done? From the radio, Lee Jina's voice could then be heard. Hey. You guys are talking about something serious huh? Ah, uh, sorry that bastard just tackled me let's talk about this when you get back if you hunt the important members of the Messiah Guild you should get a reward that matches that'll be your new Halo give and give what do you say? Being rewarded for hunting the Messiah Guild's personnel. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective there was no reason for him to refuse. Then, what is the bounty on Suzuki Eiji's head? Of course, Kim Woo Jin intended to get a share for Suzuki Eiji while he was at it. He's the Messiah Guild's best hunting dog who could easily clear a two-floor dungeon, anyway since it's a two-floor dungeon and since it hadn't been booked in advance, maybe I can give you a bit extra Osei-chan. Huh, really? Wow, this is really discrimination. Give me some too. Hey, really hey. Li Jin Ah. Get off. Get off you bastard. As he heard the commotion happening on the other end, Kim Woo Jin didn't respond. Anything is good. There was no reason to refuse whatever was given to him. Whatever he gives me, he'll probably get more than that. At the same time he would have to be satisfied with whatever he was given. Because it will be harder from now on. Killing Suzuki Eiji was a different matter from Yang Ji Hu and Kim Jae Hoon in the eyes of the Messiah Guild, the deaths of Yang Ji Hu and Kim Jae Hoon could be considered accidents. But Suzuki Eiji was different. He was a hunting dog specially raised by the Messiah, naturally, their vigilance would be very higher as certain boundaries were crossed. Under such vigilance, Kim Woo Jin would need to become much stronger to achieve what he wanted. It's still not enough to catch Lee Sejun. Honestly, he was still very far from capturing his true target Lee Sejun. If he could be satisfied that he had barely managed to hunt Lee Sejun's hound, he would not have started his revenge in the first place. Let's make a deal. Deal. Can I get the reward in advance if I decide to hunt someone? You want me to pay in advance before I get any results? Surprised, Oh Sechan hesitated for a moment before asking. For what reason? From Oh Sechan's perspective, Kim Woo Jin's proposal was quite hard to understand. If you were good, it was better to receive a bonus after you finished your task. If you were really good, you could get even better results. Moreover, in Oh Sechan's eyes, Kim Woo Jin was a monster that could no longer be threatened in two floor dungeons. He thought that Kim Woo Jin was trying to take a loss to become stronger, but even though it was not hard to understand, it was still a bit weird. Kim Woo Jin's reply was simple. There's a man I have to kill. Oh Se Chan hesitated a bit before saying. I don't want to accept this offer, but something big happened this time too I'll give you a big one for Suzuki Eiji and I'll add a bit extra. Oh Se Chan was reluctant to agree to Kim Woo Jin's request. What big thing happened? The Messiah Guild sent Isaac Ivanov a letter. That was because the Messiah Guild's letter had arrived. Chapter 87. The Messiah Guild's Letter. A letter had come from the Messiah Guild. It looks like an ordinary letter is this the famous Messiah Guild's letter. However the power of that letter was anything but ordinary. Right, with this simple letter the products and facilities of any company that cooperates with the Messiah Guild is free and you can enter 155 countries without needing a visa or passport you could enter a wide range of forbidden locations you could even enter the red cage of the Central Park Zoo. The Messiah Guild's letter was more powerful than a diplomatic passport issued by certain powers. Well, that's how those who work with the Messiah Guild to save the world are treated. It was the content of that letter that made it possible. The Messiah Guild's letter was only sent when they requested the help for someone outside of the Guild to clear a dungeon. In other words, it was a clear show of the Messiah Guild bowing and asking for cooperation that was why the holders of the letter had such good treatment. But wouldn't someone forge one of them then? Even though it looks simple, it has its own ways to prevent forgery or alteration it has copy protection hey, don't waste paper trying to copy it. 
Of course, the Messiah Guild were not stupid so it was impossible to use their letters to do bad things. Don't you dare waste paper either way, the Messiah Guild wouldn't just let fake letters go around and be used for bad things would they? The ones who would most like react to fake letters would be the Messiah Guild itself. Li Jina nodded at that, swinging the letter in his hand slightly. Well, it doesn't seem that hard to fool the Messiah Guild anyway. As he heard Li Jina's words, Oh Seichan gave him an odd look. Do you think the Messiah Guild is stupid? It's because of Kim Wu Jin that they sent it. Unsurprisingly, the recipient of the letter was none other than Kim Wu Jin or more specifically, Isaac Ivanov. He and I are a team. Didn't you say you'd go on a hunger strike if I didn't disband the team? Ah, that was a joke how could I fight on my own? I'd rather take a swim in lava. Li Jina waved his hand and looked at the contents of the letter again. So what will you do? Are you gonna accept the request for cooperation or not? In response to the question, Oh Seichan responded calmly. The choice is Kim Wu Jin's I have no choice but to reluctantly let him make the decision on his own. Are you scared? Because I don't trust him fully, he won't trust me fully anyway from the standpoint of defeating Suzuki Eiji Kim Wu Jin can no longer live under the same sky as the Messiah Guild and I know all of his secrets in this situation, do you think he dares to enter the Messiah Guild? What would you do if you were in that position? I wouldn't join unless I could get a big reward for it. Oh Seichan laughed at Li Jina's answer. What? Am I wrong? No, I think the same. Saying this, Oh Seichan couldn't help but think. I wonder if Kim Wu Jin has the same thought. He sent the bonus toward Kim Wu Jin along with the letter. We need help completing the following dungeons, and are requesting Isaac Ivanov to assist us. Firefox Hunt Floors, 2 Difficulty, A Maximum number of entries, 100 Requirements, level 50 and below Conditions, Hunt the Firefox Reward, Catalog Reward and Achievement Firefox Hunter The moment he checked the contents of the letter, Kim Wu Jin placed it back on the table in front of him. It's finally here. The Firefox Dungeon. It was a place that Kim Wu Jin knew very well. It would be strange if he hadn't known the dungeon that made the Messiah Guild write cooperation letters a total of four times. Of course, what truly mattered to Kim Wu Jin now, above all else, was that the Messiah Guild had sent a letter to him this time it was not something that the Messiah Guild would send to just anyone. It was a sign of faith that was only sent to those who the Messiah Guild needed and trusted to attack the dungeon. Thanks to Oh Se Chan. The Isaac Ivanov identity provided by Oh Se Chan was so airtight that not even the Messiah Guild could find something to suspect. Thanks to him I can move more freely. It could be seen by the fact that Kim Woo Jin could move as fast as he wanted. Kim Woo Jin became somber. The problem is the Firefox. The most important thing needed to act to your heart's content, more than anything else, was a stage. It won't be easy. No matter how you looked at it, the Firefox dungeon was a dangerous place to go to. As mentioned earlier, the Messiah Guild had sent out letters to hunt the fox four times. It's completely different from the Horned Fox dungeon. In the case of the Horned Fox dungeon, the Messiah Guild had only worked hard to monopolize the fox's horns if they had written letters for the Horned Fox dungeon, then there would not have been as many casualties. That was the power of the Messiah Guild's letter. The fact that the Messiah Guild were willing to put aside their pride and request for help to clear this dungeon proved the difficulty of the dungeon. Because no nine-tailed fox Gumiho was weak. Even Kim Woo Jin knew how terrifying the firefoxes were so he pondered over and over. If I can't handle it then I have no choice but to refuse. Kim Wu Jin had been willing to give up the opportunity without hesitation because he was unsure. I didn't think I'd have to worry about the Firefox. No, in fact, when he'd seen the contents of the letter, Kim Wu Jin had the thought of giving up the right to hunt the fox. Now he thought it was funny that he'd had such thoughts. Power of the Pharaoh. Requirements, Emissary of the Underworld. Level one or higher. Effect, any dead body can be sacrificed. You really make me worry. However the bonus sent by Oh Se Chan made Kim Wu Jin agonize. With the power of the pharaoh, 
even the bodies of those I didn't kill can be sacrificed. The power of the pharaoh. The effect was simple, the skill allowed him to use bodies to summon skeletons, use blood weapons or make corpse explosions without having to kill them himself. The utility of such a skill was not something that could easily be calculated. But it still wouldn't be easy. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin didn't have complete confidence in hunting the Firefox even with that skill. At least, that alone wasn't enough for him to hunt the Firefox. I can't do it alone. Eventually, Kim Woo Jin took out the cell phone he'd received from Oh Se Chan instead of pondering it more. Then he made a call. Uh, so did you decide? I only want to ask one question. When Oh Se Chan heard what Kim Woo Jin said, he waited for the question. To what extent can Lee Jina die? What does that mean? How many limbs can be cut off before it's dangerous or how many degrees of burns can his body take before it's dangerous? Ah. Wait a minute he's right next to me, he'll ask him hey, Jina. Can you withstand a few burns hey? Where are you going? There was commotion on the other end for a while before Oh Se Chan answered. Just kill him in the dungeon. That was the end of Kim Woo Jin's concerns he gave his response to Oh Se Chan immediately. Tell the Messiah Guild I accept the offer. Chapter, 88 The Japanese government approves the Messiah Guild's attack on the Hokkaido Dungeon. The Hokkaido Firefox Dungeon has been transferred to the Messiah Guild. The rank is a rank. The Messiah Guild aiming for another legendary item. The Firefox Dungeon was an A-rank dungeon that had appeared in Hokkaido, Japan. The moment the Japanese government transferred the rights of the dungeon to the Messiah Guild, the news spread very rapidly around the world it was quite an amazing event. In an era where the value of an A dungeon could not even be truly estimated Japan giving the dungeon in their country over to the Messiah Guild from Korea was considered no different from giving an enemy one of the most powerful weapons in your country. But interestingly, the world was not surprised by this. Great job Messiah! I believe only in the Messiah. Of course it must be given to the Messiah. They took it for granted that the Japanese government had allowed the Messiah Guild to attack the dungeon, and even the public opinion in Japan was not opposed to their actions. What this meant was simple. Now that the fact that these things were given to the Messiah Guild was taken for granted, it meant that the influence and presence of the Messiah Guild as well as the expectations that the world held toward them was incredibly large. Moreover, the Messiah Guild did not spare the use of its influence. The Messiah Guild's letter appears. The Messiah Guild asks for help to save the world. Immediately after they sent out their cooperation letters, the Messiah Guild began mass promoting it. Global media outlets such as CNN, Fox, and the New York Times, even Google cheered for the heroes who'd received the Messiah Guild's letters. The cheers were so powerful that the recipients of the letters had no choice but to respond to this invitation. The Messiah Guild had effectively shackled the ones they invited through the strategic use of the media. The first needle snake hunter Isaac Ivanov also receives a letter from the Messiah Guild. Will the man who once saved the Messiah Guild come to save them again? Among the names announced was Kim Woo Jin's alias. The names were announced for all the people in the world to see. Fucking really. On the other hand, the alias of Lee Jin Ah was nowhere to be seen even if one tried to find it. This is bullshit without me, he would have never caught the horned fox. I did it. I got a hole in my stomach. As Li Jina was naturally complaining loudly to him, Oh Se Chan, instead of responding, threw something at him. You're noisy, try this on. It was a mask. Why so suddenly? I feel like if I talk to you while looking at your bare face, I'll throw up the lunch I had not so long ago. When he heard those words, Li Jina's expression became odd as if he heard something very strange. What's wrong with my face? It's so manly and wonderful. Oh Seichan also made an odd expression. Are you being serious? I've never been called ugly before have I? I have which crazy person would tell you that you're ugly to your face. When I first met you, I thought you should be a psychiatrist for anger issues any anger issue would be controlled just by looking at your face try the mask on anyway we've made quite a few improvements to it this time. When he heard the word improvement Li Jina immediately put the mask on. Huh. 
Immediately after putting the mask on, it seemed to become firmly attached to his skin. Does it feel completely different? We applied new technology now even your expressions would be the same the texture is also more natural to an extent and the durability has been increased it also has better resistance to heat now too it was made especially for you the unit cost of production is so how does it feel? Wonderful. As he heard Li Jina's words, Oh Seichan took something else out of his bag. What he took out was rolled like a bandage and looked very similar to the material of the mask. What's that? It's therapeutic artificial skin it's made with troll's blood, doppelganger skin and a few other materials that aid recovery it's good to put it on your skin after you've been burned. At the word burn, Li Jina's face stiffened, his expression very clear through the mask. Damn it, you're as tricky as a real Firefox. Because he could already tell why Oh Seichan was so thoroughly prepared for heat and burn injuries. At that, Oh Seichan made a playful expression. It won't be easy. Yeah yeah, well it would be funny if it was easy to hold hands with a fireball and do a dance. It's because I don't think ITLL and just at the level of dancing you experienced it before with the needle snake in a dungeon is that simple ITLL be the same for the Firefox if there was only the risk of light burns, it wouldn't be in a dungeon. When he heard the words of Oh Se Chan, Li Jina could only sigh helplessly. Just give me the details. Li Jina knew that the dungeon attack was not going to be easy. The good thing is that my partner is Kim Woo Jin. If his partner had not been Kim Woo Jin then Li Jin Ah would not have entered the dungeon even if they were to beat him to death. Kim Woo Jin's power has gotten stronger. At this, Li Jin Ah nodded. The power of the pharaoh right? That would be great now he can use the bodies that others kill too. Knowing the power of the power of the pharaoh and the power of Kim Woo Jin, Li Jina could already tell the utility of such a skill it was the same for Oh Se Chan, which is why he gave the skill to him. That's true, but the Book of the Dead is the real cheat code. However, Oh Se Chan looked at the Book of the Dead more than the power of the Pharaoh. That's scary too. No, it's even worse than you think. Yeah. Am I not right? With the Book of the Dead couldn't he easily summon the strongest skeletons he could make? Right it doesn't need sacrifices, he could summon skeletons immediately that way. Oh Se Chan gave a laugh at Li Jina's answer. It was because Li Jina didn't understand what was truly scary about that skill. You don't need the Book of the Dead to do that the real scary part is that Kim Wu Jin can summon the strongest skeleton soldiers. Yes. Li Jina still didn't understand, so Oh Se Chan explained to him. The reality is that depending on the dungeon, he can equip his skeletons as much as he wants in real time like an Iron Man suit. Kim Woo Jin had become a terrifying monster. The only difference is that Tony Stark in this world is me. It was just how amazing he was. I don't know if that's what he was aiming for, but found the best supporter. Wu Wung. As Oh Se Chan explained to Li Jin Ah with a smile, a cell phone in the corner began to ring loudly while vibrating. See, he can't do anything without me oh, right Mr. Kim Woo Jin what do you need? However, his smile didn't last very long. Huh? Money? Oh Se Chan took a deep breath after hearing the amount that was requested as a loan. Wait, I'm in an important meeting with a very important person right now how important is it fate of the world is at stake, uh, yeah, that's how important it is he's a great man he'll call you back later but don't wait it's a meeting concerning the fate of the world so it doesn't always end in a day then adios. Oh Seichan who'd hung up the phone couldn't help but grumble. Li Jin Ah laughed at his face. You're really a great supporter. Kim Woo Jin earned about 10 billion from the dungeon attack, but he still wants to borrow more where do you think he wants to spend it? Where? To the question, Oh Seichan gave an answer like it was natural. He must want to equip a skeleton. Chapter, 89 For Kim Woo Jin, time had always been more precious than money. After returning to the past, the time he had was tighter and even more precious. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin did not spare precious time in his preparation for the hunt. This was because he always believed that time spent preparing could then be subtracted from the time spent during the actual hunt. It was the same now. At the Okarayama Ski Jump Stadium in Sapporo Prefecture, Hokkaido players are gathering for the Firefox hunt one by one. 
It is not long before the heroes who will save the world gather here in the Sapporo Prefecture. Kim Woo Jin spent his time preparing for the dungeon even though it was just around the corner. He spared no time. Like an Italian craftsman, he covered a skeleton soldier with leather made from the skin of the horned fox his skill in creating custom equipment for his skeletons would have amazed the world. I'm barely ready. Soon his preparations were complete. Tomorrow is the day the Firefox dungeon hunt starts. A day till the hunt began. The dungeon was imminent, nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin was satisfied. I'm ready now. The Firefox, the confidence that he could hunt this monster, filled his heart. The Okarayama Ski Jump Stadium was located in Sapporo Prefecture, Hokkaido. In mid-August, this place, which should have been quiet and deserted at this time, was filled to the brim with people and media from all around the world as if it was hosting the Olympics, it was even filled with relay equipment from broadcasting companies. Wow! Oh my god! The people there were bursting with enthusiasm. Lin Lin. It's Lin Lin, the record maker who is breaking all the records in Taiwan. Look, it's the Japanese star Sasaki. On the day of the dungeon attack, the crowd couldn't help but express their admiration for the famous players that were appearing one after another. The players who would be participating in the Firefox hunt were on a completely different level. All the next gen heroes are here. It was verified that they received the Messiah Guild's letters. But the ones who really got the crowd to cheer for them weren't just the star players, but the players who had come here to help save the world. Of course, the biggest cheers were for them. It's the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild is here. The crowd became even more enthusiastic when the Messiah Guild, who were considered as the saviors of the world, finally made an appearance. God, please give them strength. Some people even went down on their knees, clasped their hands and prayed for the players of the Messiah Guild. The Saviors. The players who had already arrived began to greet them politely. Nice to meet you I'm Lin Lin. It was an honor to receive the letter I'm Sasaki from the Musa Guild. Everyone stopped whatever they were doing and began to express their appreciation to the Messiah Guild at the same time, envy was obvious in their eyes as they looked at the members of the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild was also an idol for the players that were gathered there. They'd received a letter from this idol and came here confidently so it would be strange if they weren't excited. Thank you very much for coming. The Messiah Guild also willingly accepted their greetings. They were willing to open their hearts to anyone who came after receiving their letters. Guildmaster Lee Sejun directly asked me to thank you all personally. No no compared to his sacrifices, we are just. Even godlike beings were willing to acknowledge them, they were overflowing with joy. It was at that moment. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. The Messiah Guild member's lofty aura faded away and another presence seemed to take its place. Then someone shouted. Isaac. From that shout, everyone began to erupt. It's Isaac Ivanov. The first needle hunter. The necromancer Isaac. This interest wasn't only unique to the crowd as even the players were paying attention to Isaac Ivanov. At that moment it was as if the entire world was focused solely on Kim Woo Jin. Such concentrated attention was enough to kill some people however Kim Woo Jin did not have much reaction to the eyes. It would be strange for Kim Woo Jin, who used to be exposed to such expectations and admiration on a daily basis, to be affected. It was the same back then. Rather it was a very disastrous feeling that was filling Kim Woo Jin's heart at that moment. All of these sacrifices are just for your ambitions. The expectations of all the people gathered here, some who were even desperate enough to pray, and the fact that all these players had come with great determination even at the risk of their own lives, were just to satisfy the ambitions of the Messiah Guild. It was horrific. In the face of such misery, Kim Woo Jin could only clench his teeth tightly. Of course, this didn't mean that Kim Woo Jin had any sympathy toward the people who were gathered here and the others tricked by the Messiah Guild. He simply intended to do his best, he never had any intention to embrace their hope, faith or determination. Lee Sejun, I'll remove your mask soon. The only reason Kim Woo Jin was willing to make sacrifices to save the world and those who'd come here was simply to remove the mask from Lee Sejun and kill him nothing else. Let's go to the gate. 
so without any hesitation, Kim Woo Jin headed toward the dungeon gate. This action left many confused and questioning for quite some time. Oh, is it time already? The time has come. Now, it was time to leave. Yeah, it's not like the monsters would wait for us in real life anyway. It's the spirit of the Messiah Guild to clear dungeons as soon as possible. He doesn't need words, so amazing. All those who tried to greet Kim Woo Jin were met with his determination instead of anything else. This determination affected them as well. The Firefox dungeon had officially begun. Chapter, 90 When players from different guilds enter dungeons together, their reactions are always the same. After they receive the notification about the conditions to clear the first floor, they would gather together with their guild members and start discussing. Though there wasn't anything special to discuss. Be wary of this person, be careful with this person, get rid of this person, ignore this person, do not help this person. To pass the first floor you must cut a tree that has been struck by lightning. All 100 members who entered the Firefox dungeon gathered together the moment they got the notification. A tree that was hit by lightning? It's a search quest. This isn't too bad we'll be able to adjust our condition sufficiently before we move on the next floor. However, the reaction of the Messiah Guild and the players they invited was different from the usual cases. Firstly, the discussion was different. Does anyone have any opinions? Does anyone need an interpreter? If you don't know the public signals, learn them now. Rather than whispering in their own groups, everyone spoke loudly as if they were competing to see who was more talkative and loud. Korean, English, Chinese and Japanese were messily mixed together as though no one cared. One way or the other, they expressed their thoughts. If you have an issue, don't forget to ask for help. If you need anything, please ask. This was the power of the Messiah Guild. They made the walls of race, nationality, status and language of all those that they'd gathered, meaningless. This way, everyone did all they could for the sake of clearing the dungeon. It's been a long time. This was the appearance of the Messiah Guild that Kim Woo Jin was willing to give his life for. Those who were passionately trying to save the world, even if it meant sacrificing their lives. That was what most of the people here were like. Most of them here had never seen or met each other before but they'd still be willing to give their lives so that the others could live. It's a completely different feeling. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin's mood became progressively worse. He felt misery at the fact that their sublime determination was only to help progress a traitorous bastard's ambitions. Of course, Kim Woo Jin wouldn't reveal his miserable emotions. What he had to do here was neither reveal his bad emotions nor wallow in his nostalgia from the past. Kuh. Kwa. There are orcs. Suddenly, as if they were waiting for guests to arrive, orcs began to appear from their surroundings. At that time, Kim Woo Jin looked toward Lee Jin Ah, who nodded. The hunt had started. The Messiah Guild was a much more closed guild than most people thought. Was there a need for any more explanation when members were told to not trust anyone except their guild members the moment they join? When the Messiah Guild sent out letters, it simply meant that they were requesting help. The requirements to receive these letters was that the abilities of the receiver must be something that couldn't already be found within their guild TL, abilities here don't just mean skills it's more comprehensive. This was why the Messiah Guild's letters were so glorious. Let's show the Messiah Guild our power today. We won't lose to anyone even if we die, we die first. For the Messiah Guild. This was also the reason why those who'd received letters from the Messiah Guild were quite excited to showcase their powers. So naturally, the first battle involved the 40 players who'd received invitations from the Messiah Guild instead of the Messiah Guild's members. It's a bunch of orcs. The number is about 200. Thousands of orcs filled the first floor of the dungeon, the players who received the Messiah Guild's letters were prepared to face off against these fearsome monsters. Don't get left behind. Show us your skills. Everyone went out competitively to hunt the monsters. The battle that ensued was quite spectacular. Without knowing what retreating meant, the players who had no intentions of backing down showcased much more determination and power than usual. They pulled out their 120% as they fought against the orcs. The competition between them was pretty even. Rattle. 
Until Kim Woo Jin summoned nine skeletons that is. Summon skeleton. A very different situation occurred when the number of skeletons became ten. While others were fighting, Kim Woo Jin and his skeletons began to slaughter the monsters in earnest. Oh my god. How does that make sense? It was hard to believe even when they could see it. In such a surprising situation, Kim Woo Jin kept advancing while thinking. Currently, the number of skeleton soldiers that I can summon is 30 foot. With the plus ring, the number of skeletons he could summon had increased to 30, 10 was only the starting point. If you were to consider in terms of cars, it was like a car that could go 300 kmh moving at only 100 kmh. And Kim Woo Jin still had the gift given to him by the Messiah Guild. Summon Golem. You have summoned a golem. This golem was the gift. Of course, by itself, the golem did not have much combat power. No matter how high its value was, it couldn't be used as much more than a walking shield. However, the golem's appearance had a greater impact than even the ten skeletons. Okay. The moment the golem appeared, Li Jina who had been acting as a tank, immediately began to focus on attacking. Spasaba. Li Jina, who'd become a spear from a shield, power was overwhelming he threw himself into a large group of orcs without hesitation and began to crush their heads with his fists. Boom! Those who were staggered by his attacks were dealt with by the skeleton soldiers. When the number of skeletons became twenty, it was no longer a competition. They're in a completely different world. So that's the first needle snake hunter. Instead of competing, they were filled with hope. With a monster like this, we'll be able to defeat the Firefox. We can definitely clear it. Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina, with the two of them here, there was no doubt that they could clear the dungeon with minimal sacrifices. This thought went through everyone's heads. It's still not enough yet. It was only Kim Woo Jin who didn't dare to believe that he could hunt the Firefox at the level he was at currently. I need to collect at least 300 bodies on the first floor. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin didn't stop advancing. Chapter, 91 On the third day after they'd entered the dungeon, the Firefox hunting team found the symbol which marked the end of their long battle with the orcs. It's a tree that was hit by lightning. They found a tree that had been struck by lightning in the forest. Everyone was excited by this. We found it much faster than I expected. This pace is the best. The situation was good enough to make their eyes shine. The sensation was about to fade. After fighting in the first two days, their combat senses had been sufficiently elevated. We minimized the food consumption, and if we cut the tree after taking a break, we will minimize fatigue as well. After taking a rest here, they'd be able to go to the second floor in their most optimal state. There were zero casualties. Moreover, there wasn't a single casualty after the fierce battles. No, in fact, there wasn't even anyone who had been injured. Such a situation was incredibly hard to believe. This was the first time in history since the world had been transformed into a game, that the first floor in none other than a two-floor A ranked dungeon was cleared without any injuries whatsoever. Of course it was because of the presence of someone who made the fires within the players who had come to hunt the Firefox, burn hotter than ever before. Thanks to Isaac. Isaac, there would never be failure as long as he's here. Isaac Ivanov had thoroughly convinced all the players who had entered the dungeon. By the way, where's Isaac? He went to clear up the bodies. Corpses. He said he needed to get as many as he could before going to the next floor. He's really a necromancer. Naturally when Isaac Ivanov did something, no one doubted or feared him for it. They simply waited for him to return. And they looked forward to the day that they would be able to decorate a page of history together with him. Of course, not everyone was looking forward to the battle with the Firefox. Damn it, I might really die. As he followed Kim Woo Jin, Li Jina's face looked like a prisoner on death row on his way to the gallows. Will it hurt a lot if I'm set on fire? Damn, if I knew it would be like this, I'd just become a movie star I don't even know if I could've enjoyed rich movie saw, my life. I ended up meeting that cheap bald head guy. He continuously expressed his complaints and dissatisfaction to Kim Woo Jin in Russian. Suddenly, Kim Woo Jin stopped walking, causing Li Jin ah to shut up. 
silence filled the surroundings. Then Kim Woo Jin opened his mouth. I think this is enough. He spoke in Korean this meant that there was no one around. Ah, uh, I can talk properly now. Lee Jin Ah also followed Kim Woo Jin and spoke Korean instead of Russian. I thought I was gonna die speaking all that Russian. It was a ridiculous story when you consider just how much he spoke for no reason. Of course, Kim Woo Jin ignored him. Rather Kim Woo Jin continued talking with a cold expression. There's a few things we need to do before hunting the Firefox. What is it? It must be done all at once there is no second chance if you get beaten, then it's practically game over. In response to that eerie warning, Lee Jin Ah smiled and smacked his chest with his arm, his expression firm. You can't do it without me. As Li Jin Ah spoke with confidence, Kim Woo Jin took off a glove he was wearing and threw a ring that he had on his finger toward him. Ha! Huh. Li Jin Ah's expression changed as he caught the ring reflexively. No way. He looked at Kim Woo Jin with an odd expression. Proposal. This caused Kim Woo Jin to frown. Ah, sorry there's no way your sexual orientation would swing that way no, it's not bad even if you do but I. Without noticing Kim Woo Jin's expression, Lee Jin Ah kept rambling with an embarrassed expression on his face. Eventually, Kim Woo Jin couldn't take it. It's Lancelot's ring. Kim Woo Jin spoke with a firm tone as if he could no longer listen to any more nonsense. It negates any negative status effect. Oh. At that, Lee Jin Ah couldn't help but show an expression of surprise as he checked the item to confirm for himself. But it doesn't work for burns it's only for poisons, hypnosis and enchantment. However his smile dropped when he heard Kim Woo Jin's subsequent explanation. Then isn't it useless? It would be useful if the Firefox's fire had the effect to enchant, confuse or hypnotize. Ah. Lee Jin Ah nodded when Kim Woo Jin added that. If the fox's fire really had any additional properties like those then Lancelot's ring would no longer be an option, it would be a necessity. And the place where something like this could happen was exactly an A-ranked dungeon. I remember the needle snake was also pretty nasty. Lee Jina knew it well. It can prevent the blinding effect of the Ninetales tail. Wu Jin didn't explain that he knew that the Firefox had one of the nine tails of the nine tailed fox's tails, and at the moment someone was touched by the flames, they would suffer blindness for a moment. Li Jin Ah nodded and slipped the ring on his finger. Kim Wu Jin looked at him and said, Five seconds, you only need to last five seconds. I don't know if I can hold out for five seconds, but if I can hold out for six seconds, what will you give me? Kim Wu Jin answered without any hesitation. I'll buy as much food as you want. You just made a really big mistake. Chapter, 92 Proceed to the second floor. The first thing that greeted the group of 100 players as they entered the second floor was a wave of sweltering heat. Ah! Extremely high heat without any moisture wrapped around them as they finally looked around at the land which welcomed them. A desert. A seemingly endless desert filled with red sand was the stage for the second floor of the dungeon. Oh my god. This is the worst. They despaired because they encountered one of the worst situations they could possibly find within a dungeon. Their feelings were understandable a desert stage was one of the scenarios where humans had the most disadvantages. We have to catch the Firefox here. Even if this is an A-rank dungeon, isn't this too much? Faced with such a situation, if the players didn't show expressions of despair when realizing that they had to face extremely difficult monsters while also fighting against the environment, it would be strange. Just as expected. Kim Woo Jin, who had already expected such a situation, didn't change his expression. He knew the danger of this desert stage more than any other person there. But the heat is worse than I expected. In the desert stage, it was not easy to find a place to rest and the most pressing concern would be the availability of drinking water. Of course, most of the people who entered the dungeon brought enough water to last them at least five days in the dungeon, and if they simply drank enough to survive they should be able to last much more than five days. The problem was that if they wanted to stay in a shape that allowed them to battle at any time, the situation would be different. The limit would be two days. Kim Woo Jin estimated that the maximum amount of time the people here could fight at their optimal conditions was only two days. 
and two days could only be guaranteed if the opponents the players faced were not too difficult for them to handle. There. Suddenly, someone shouted, pulling Kim Woo Jin out of his thoughts. There's something over there. Everyone turned to look toward where the person was pointing. Then, a giant fox about five meters long and covered in flames, appeared before their eyes. No one reacted to the unexpected appearance of the fire fox similarly, when the fire fox noticed the 100 players before it, it didn't move. It was as if time had stopped. Horus I has opened. Only Kim Woo Jin tried to understand and analyze the current situation they were in. The fire fox's information appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin's golden eyes. His eyes swept across the fire fox's body before settling on one of its tails that was glowing brightly. The nine tailed fox's third tail. Rarity, legendary. Level, level one or higher. Description, the third tail of the nine tailed fox which holds mysterious power if all nine are gathered, the holder will gain the power of the nine tailed fox. Effects. All stats 5%. 10% health recovery rate. 10% magic power recovery rate. Upon contact, blind an enemy for a certain period of time. The third tail. The tails of the nine-tailed fox was a group of nine items which had never been completed, not even before Kim Woo Jin had returned. Therefore, he had no idea what effect it would have if all nine tails were collected. The obvious thing was that they were incredibly rare and hard to collect, so their power could go without saying. There is nothing better than blinding. Even then, the effect of the third tail was more than enough for a legendary item. I need to get it somehow. Kim Woo Jin's eyes were glowing. Then, the eyes of the firefox and Kim Woo Jin met, following which the fox's eyes changed. Until then, no matter how you looked at it, to the firefox, the eyes of the players were that of prey in them was nothing but fear, surprise or worry, without daring to harbor any hostility or murderous intent toward it. However, Kim Woo Jin looked at the firefox as if it was a prey. This was enough to ignite the fighting instincts within the fox. It's coming. Kim Woo Jin noticed immediately that the fox had switched from its inquisitive mode into a hunting mode. His prediction soon became a reality. Who? The fire fox made a bizarre sound as it pounced toward the 100 players its speed was fast, appearing to be even faster than a bullet. Hook. It was too sudden. By the time the first victim noticed the fire fox's approach, it was already biting into their shoulder the people around them were not even fast enough to recognize what happened much less to respond to it. Quack. Eventually, the player whose shoulder was bitten by the fox let out a loud shout. Chike. The players could feel the great heat even in the current hot environment and a greasy smell, like cooked meat drifted into their noses. A chill went up their spines. The fear moved them. Tanks. The players were shocked by the sudden situation but they were already prepared to lose their lives in the battle against the firefox anyway. Stop it. If they were afraid and were going to hesitate before they even tried to fight, then they wouldn't be there in the first place. Ho! Tanks who seemed to be wearing armor with fire resistance, rushed toward the firefox while shouting to showcase their fighting spirit. Of course, they rushed in after ensuring that their fire resistance was as high as it could be. Each of them had items that increased their fire resistance as well as buffs that increased resistance. We just have to hold out. We'll take turns dealing with it. Furthermore they were prepared to deal with the firefox sequentially. Then we can at least get some casting time. During this time, the mages also casted their magic at the firefox. But it didn't take them very long to realize that it wasn't very effective. This monstrous bastard. The moment a tank charged toward the fox and made contact with its flames. The powers of an unknown and powerful being gives you darkness. Ha! Huh. Those nearby clearly noticed the darkness that covered his eyes before he became the second victim of the fox. What the? So suddenly. They realized that there was more to the firefox than they'd initially thought and so they had to change their plans. Of course, it wasn't that easy. What do we do? No one had an idea as to how they should progress this situation was expected since the group had no information, and no experience dealing with the firefox. Pi. Suddenly an ear-piercing whistle spread through the battlefield. 
The whistle sounded again. Soon after the players heard the third whistle, they began to move. Retreat signal. When they heard the whistle three times, the players all scattered without looking back. They all scattered. No one hesitated when they heard the previously agreed upon signal. Prioritizing the agreed signals was something that any player who survived till the second floor could understand. Let's run for it. It was a time when a retreat was necessary so naturally everyone ran away as fast as they could. There was only one person who interpreted the signal differently. Spasaba. The moment he heard the signal, Li Jina charged toward the fox with all his might. This move was completely unexpected no, it would be strange if anyone could see it coming. Run away. Don't hesitate to run. The moment the retreat signal sounded, everyone ran wildly across the desert sand without looking back one. No one looked back and even if they did, they would only think that Li Jina misinterpreted the signal. The sacrifice of the rest of the group to save one was the greatest taboo during group activities like this one. Of course, the Firefox wouldn't reject such a situation. It willingly watched as Li Jina rushed toward it. Soon the distance between them was very small and the Firefox opened its mouth wide to welcome Li Jina. However, Li Jina wrapped his arm around its neck as if holding it in a headlock. At that moment Li Jina's eyes shook as the pain of being burned alive, which was one of the greatest pains a human could suffer, spread through his entire body. Cool. The fact that he didn't scream was a surprise in itself. But that wasn't the end. Who? Who? The firefox that was caught by its neck obviously struggled so the pain Li Jina felt also increased. Nevertheless, Li Jina did not let go of the fox in his arms. Li Jina held on for dear life he gave his all as he kept repeating his goal in his head. I will hold on for six seconds and eat Hokkaido snow crab. One second then two seconds by the time three seconds passed, Kim Woojin finally appeared. In his hands was a two meter long black spear that had sunlight reflecting off of its neck. In this state, Kim Woojin rushed across the desert. Eventually, Kim Woojin thrust the tip of the spear into the mouth of the firefox that was desperately trying to escape from Li Jina's grasp. P.U.K. The spear went in so deep that the fox was not even able to scream. Soon however, the spear began to melt. The heat from the firefox's body melted the spear that had pierced its mouth in no time. Naturally, this wasn't enough to kill the fox. Instead of dying, it stared at Kim Woojin with eyes that promised murder. However, Kim Woojin was not surprised or scared and he simply gave an order. Let it go. The instant Li Jina let go of the fox's neck, Kim Woojin grabbed him and retreated. Cool. As he hung on Kim Woojin's shoulder, Li Jina couldn't help but let out a moan. How many seconds? Kim Woojin answered with a smile. 599 seconds. Re dash, really? Kim Woojin only responded to him briefly. Good job. No, was it really 599? Are you sure it's not 59 seconds? At that moment, a notification sounded in Kim Woojin's ear. The Firefox has been afflicted by black blood. The Firefox's health has been greatly reduced. The Firefox's attack has been greatly reduced. The Firefox's defense has been greatly reduced. The Firefox has been poisoned by deadly poisons and its vitality is rapidly reducing. This was the result after the Firefox consumed the blood of 300 monsters as well as the black blood formed by condensing the blood poison. This should reduce the Firefox's abilities to less than half its usual. Of course, this still wouldn't kill the Firefox immediately. Rattle. So the moment he received the notifications, the skeletons that Kim Woojin had already summoned all began to charge toward the injured fox. At the same time, Kim Woojin threw Li Jina onto the desert sand. It ends here. Book of the Dead. Then immediately summoned a large book. After Kim Woojin opened the book, the slabs that filled the inside were taken out and destroyed. The pages of the Book of the Dead have been destroyed. The fragments of the destroyed slabs soon mingled together and transformed into skeleton soldiers in white armor. Ten skeleton soldiers who had been prepared specifically for this stage had finally made their appearance and started running towards the Firefox without hesitation. 
Li Jina who saw this sight could not stop himself from commenting. I now know the power of money. Kim Wu Jin raised an eyebrow at this. He has more vitality than I expected. He considered if he should push him more in battle. Meanwhile a great fight had begun.